Talmud, Mosh Shabbat A C H A P T E R I Mishnah. The carryings out of the Sabbath are two which are four within and two which are four without house. So the poor man stands without and the master of the house within. I, if the poor man stretches his hand within and places an article into the hand of the master of the house, or two if he takes an article from it and carries it out, the poor man is liable and the master of the house is exempt. Again, I, if the master of the house stretches his hand without and places an object in the poor man's hand, or two takes an object therefrom and carries it in the master is liable while the poor man is exempt. Three, if the poor man stretches his hand within and the master takes an object from it or places an object therein and he carries it out, both are exempt. Four, if the master stretches his hand without and the poor man takes an object from it or places an article therein and he carries it inside, both are exempt. Tomorrow we learned. Elsewhere false oaths are two which are for Talmud, Mosh Shabbat be Talmud, Mosh Shabbat be the forms of consciousness of uncleanness are two which are for the appearances of leprosy are two which are for the carryings out of the Sabbath are two which are for now why is it taught here two which are for within and two which are for without whereas there it is simply stated two which are for and nothing else here since the Sabbath is the main theme both principal forms of labor and derivatives are taught but there since the main theme is not the Sabbath principal labors only are taught but not derivatives what are the principal labors carryings out but the carryings out are only two and should you answer some of these involve liability and some do not involve liability surely it is taught on a PAR with the appearances of leprosy just as they're all involve liability so here too all involve liability rather said our Papa here that the Sabbath is the main theme acts of Liability and non-liability are taught there since the Sabbath is not the main theme only acts of liability are taught but not of exemptions now what are the cases of liability carryings out but the carryings out are only two there are two forms of carrying out and two of carrying in but carryings out are taught said are ashi the Tana designates carrying in two as carrying out how do you know it because we learned if one carries out an object from one domain to another he is liable does this not mean even if he carries it in from the public to a private domain and yet it is called carrying out and what is the reason every removal of an article from its place the Tana designates carrying out Robin said our Mishnah 2 proves it because carryings out are taught yet straightway a definition of carrying in is given this proves it Robin said he the Tana teaches the number of domains the domains of the Sabbath are two are men and objected to have they are there eight but there are twelve, but according to your reasoning, there are sixteen. Said he to him, that is no difficulty. As for the first clause, it is well Talmud. Mosh of he does not teach what involves no liability and is also permitted. But the last clause, where no liability is involved, yet it is forbidden, is indeed difficult. But is there in the whole of the laws relating to Sabbath an action described as involving no liability yet permitted? Did not Samuel say everything taught as involving no liability on the Sabbath involves indeed no liability yet it is forbidden? Save these three which involve no liability and are also permitted. Is the capture of a deer, the capture of a snake, and the manipulation of an abscess? Samuel desires to say this only of exemptions where an act is performed. But as for exemptions where no act at all is done of such, there are many. Yet still there are twelve non-liable acts whereby one can come to the liability of a sin offering are counted those. Whereby one cannot come to the liability of a sin offering are not counted, both are exempt, but between them a complete action is performed, it was taught, and if any one of the common people sin unwittingly in doing any of the things, etc., only he who performs the whole of it, a forbidden action, but not he who performs a portion thereof, hence if a single person performs it, he is liable, if two perform it, they are exempt, it was stated likewise, our high became it, a said it emanated from the mouth of the company, and they said in doing, if a single person performs it, he is liable, if two perform it, they are exempt, rab asked rabbi, if one's neighbor loads him with food and drink, and he carries them without what is the law, is the removing of one's body like the removing of an article from its place, and so he is liable, or perhaps it is not so, he replied, he is liable, and it is not like his hand, what is the reason his body is at rest, whereas his hand is not at rest, Talmud, Mosh of our high to rab son of illustrious ancestors have I not told you that when rabbi is engaged on one tractate you must not question him about another lest he be not conversant with it for if rabbi were not a great man you would have put him to shame for he might have answered you incorrectly still he has now answered you correctly for it was taught if one was laden with food and drink while it was yet day and he carries them out after dark he is culpable because it is not like his hand of said. I am certain that a man's hand is neither like a public nor like a private domain it is not like a public domain this follows from the poor man's hand it is not like a private domain this follows from the hand of the master of the house have a propounded can a man's hand become as a caramel if did the rabbis penalize him not to draw it back to himself or not come and here if one's hand is filled with fruit and he stretches it without one berry the taught he may not draw it back another Taught he may draw it back, surely they differ in this one master holds that it the hand is like a caramel, and the other holds that it is not. No, all agree that it is like a caramel, yet there is no difficulty. The one refers to a case where it is below ten handbreadths, and the other where it is above ten handbreadths. Alternatively, both berries refer to a hand below ten and hold that it is not like a caramel, yet there is no difficulty. One speaks of a case while it is yet day, the other when it is already dark. The Sabbath has commenced if he stretches out his hand while it is yet day. The rabbis did not punish him if after sunset the rabbis punished it. On the contrary, the logic is the reverse if he stretches out his hand by day so that if he throws it the article away, he does not come to the liability of a sin offering. Let the rabbis penalize him, but if he does it after night fall so that if he throws it away, he incurs the liability of a sin offering. The Rabbis should not punish him now since we do not answer thus you may solve our BBBA's problem for our BBBA ask if a person places a loaf in an oven do the rabbis permit him to remove it before he incurs the liability of a sin offering or not now you may deduce that they do not permit it that is no difficulty and indeed solves it alternatively you cannot solve it after all and reply thus the one bury the refers to an unwitting the other to a deliberate act where it is unwitting. The rabbis did not punish him for it where it is deliberate they punished another alternative both bury this refer to an unwitting act but here they differ as to whether they the rabbis punished an unwitting offender on account of a deliberate one one master holds that they did punish an unwitting offender on account of a deliberate one the other that they did not punish an unwitting offender on account of a deliberate one another alternative after all they did not punish the one on. Account of the other, yet there is no difficulty. The one bury the means into the same courtyard, Talmud, Mosh of the other into a different courtyard. Even as Rabbah asked Arnaman if a person holds a handful of produce in his hand and he extends it without may he withdraw it into the same courtyard, he replied, It is permitted. And what about another courtyard? Said he to him, It is forbidden. And what is the difference when you measure out a measure of salt for it? There his intention is not carried out here. His intention is carried out to revert to the main text. Our BBB Abbe propounded, If one places a loaf of bread in an oven, do they permit him to remove it before he incurs the liability of a sin offering or not? Our Ahabi Abbe said to Rabbah, What are the circumstances? Shall we say that he did it unwittingly and he did remind himself? Then whom are they to permit? Hence it must surely mean that he did afterwards become aware thereof, but then would he be liable? Surely we. Learned all who are liable to sin offerings are liable only if the beginning and end of the forbidden action are unwitting. On the other hand, if his problem refers to a deliberate action, he should have asked whether he may remove it before he comes to an interdict involving stoning. Arshila said, After all, it means unwittingly. And as to the question, Whom are they to permit the reply is others. Arshis hate the murder is that a person told sin in order that your neighbor may gain thereby rather. Said Arashi, After all, it refers to a deliberate act, but say in the problem before he comes to an interdict involving stoning. Our Abbasan of Rabba recited it explicitly. Our BBB said, If one places a loaf in an oven, he is permitted to remove it before he comes to an interdict involving stoning. If the poor man stretches out his hand, why is he liable? Surely removal and depositing must be from and into a place for handbreadth square, which is absent here, said Rabba, the author of this. Mishnah is our Akiba who maintains we do not require a place four by four for we learned if one throws an article from one private domain to another and public ground lies between our Akiba holds him liable but the sages hold him not liable our Akiba holds we say an
And Brett Square Yeti may require removal from such a place rather said our Joseph the author of this mission is Rabbi which ruling of Rabbi intimates this shall we say this ruling of Rabbi if one throws an object and it comes to rest upon a projection of a small size Rabbi holds him liable the sages exempt him but surely there as we will state below it is in accordance with Abbe for Abbe said the reference here is to a tree standing in private ground while its branch inclines to the street and one throws an article and it comes to rest upon the branch Rabbi holding we say cast the branch after its trunk but the rabbis maintain we do not rule cast the branch after its stock rather it is this ruling of Rabbi for it was taught if one throws an article from public to public ground and private ground lies between Rabbi holds him liable but the sages exempt him now Rab Judah said in Samuel's name Rabbi imposed a twofold liability one on account of carrying out and one on account of carrying in this proves that neither removal nor depositing requires a place four by four but surely it was stated there on Rab and Samuel both assert Talmud, Moshe Bath Rabbi imposed liability only in the case of a covered in private domain for we say that a house is as though it were full but not in one which is uncovered and should you answer here too in our mission it speaks of it as covered I might retort that is well of a covered private ground but is one liable for a covered public ground did not our Samuel be Judah say in the name of our Abba in the name of our Hunan in Rab's name if one carries an article four cubits in covered public ground he is not liable because it is not like the banners of the wilderness rather said our Zara the authority of this is the others for it was taught others say if he stands still in his place and catches it he the thrower is liable if he moves from his place and catches it he the thrower is exempt now it states if he stands in his place and catches it, he the thrower is liable, but surely there must be depositing on an area for handbreadth square which is absent. Hence, this proves that we, i.e., others do not require a place four by four, yet perhaps only depositing on such an area is not required, but removal from such may be necessary. And even in respect to depositing two, perhaps it means that he spread out his garment and caught it so that there is also depositing on such an area set R0. Our mission also means that he removes it the article from a basket and places it in a basket so that there is depositing two in a place four square, but his hand is stated learn a basket in his hand now that is well of a basket in a private domain, but a basket in public ground ranks as a private domain. Must we then say that it does not agree with our Jose son of our Judah, for it was taught our Jose son of our Judah said if one fixes a rod in the street at the top of which is a basket and throws. An article and it comes to rest upon it he is liable for if it agrees with our Jose son of Arjuda where the master of the house stretches his hand without and places an object in the poor man's hand why is he liable surely he merely carries it from private ground to private ground you may even say that it agrees with our Jose son of Arjuda there it is above ten hand breadths here it is below ten this presented a difficulty to our Abba is that a basket in his hand taught surely his hand alone is stated rather said our Abba it means that he lowered his hand to within three hand breadths of the ground and accepted it but he stands is taught it refers to one who bends down alternatively he is standing in a pit another alternative this refers to a dwarf Rabba Demur does attend a trouble to inform us of all these rather said Rabba a man's hand is accounted to him as an area four by four and thus too when Rabin came he said in our Yohanan's name a man's hand is accounted to him as an area 4 by 4 Arabin said in the name of Arlay and Aryohanan's name if one throws an article and it alights on his neighbor's hand he is liable what does he inform us that a man's hand is accounted to him as an area 4 by 4 but surely Aryohanan already stated it once you might argue that is only when he himself accounts his hand such but where he does not account his hand as such I might say that it is not so therefore we are informed otherwise Arabin said in R. Delay's name in the name of Aryohanan if he the recipient stands still in his place and catches it the thrower is liable if he moves from his place and catches it he the thrower is exempt it was taught likewise others say if he stands still in his place and catches it he the thrower is liable if he moves from his place and catches it he the thrower is exempt Aryohanan propounded what if he throws an article and himself moves from his place and catches it what is his problem said Arita. B. Agaba, his problem concerns two forces in the same man are two forces in the same man accounted as the action of one man hence he is liable or perhaps they count as the action of two men the question stands over Arabin said in our Yohanan's name if he puts his hand into his neighbor's courtyard and receives some rain and then withdraws it he is liable our Zerah what does it matter whether his neighbor loads him or heaven loads him he himself did not effect removal do not say he passively receives rain but he catches it up but removal must be from a place four square which is absent said our highest son of Arhuna he catches it up as it rebounds from the wall but even on the wall it does not rest there it is as Rabba said elsewhere it refers to a sloping wall so here too it refers to a sloping wall now where was Rabba's dictum said in connection with the following for we learn Talmud Moshe Bath B if he is reading a scroll on a threshold and it rolls out of his hand he may rewind it to himself if one is reading on the top of a roof and the scroll rolls out of his hand before it comes within ten hand breadths of the ground he may wind it back himself if it comes within ten hand breadths he must turn the written side inwards now we pondered thereon why must he turn the written side inwards surely it did not come to rest and Rabba answered this refers to a sloping wall yet may it not be urged that Rabba said this only of a scroll whose nature it is to rest where it falls but is it the nature of water to rest rather said Rabba Aryohanan spoke of a case where he collected the rain from the top of a water hole a hole but then it is obvious you might argue water upon water is not at rest therefore here Aryohanan informs us that it is now Rabba follows his opinion for Rabba said water lying upon water that is its natural rest and not upon water that is not its natural rest Rabba propounded if a nut lies in a vessel and it Vessel floats on water. Do we regard the nut which is at rest or the vessel which is not at rest? Since it is unstable, the question stands over in respect to oil floating upon wine. Are you and binary? And the rabbis differ. For we learned if oil is floating upon wine and a tea bouillon touches the oil, he disqualifies the oil. Only are you and binary? Said both are attached to each other. Are Robin said in Arlay's name in the name of Are you and if one is laden with food and drink and goes in and out all day, he is liable only when he stands still. Said Abbe, providing that he stands still to rest. How do you know it? Because a master said within four cubits, if he stops to rest, he is exempt to shoulder his burden. He is liable beyond four cubits. If he stops to rest, he is liable to rearrange his burden. He is exempt. What does he? Are you and inform us that the original removal was not for this purpose, but are you and stated it once for our Safra said in Arma's name and are you and name if one is carrying articles. From corner to corner in private ground and then changes his mind and carries them out he is exempt because his original removal was not for this purpose it is dependent on Amram one stated it in the former version the other stated it in the latter version our rabbis taught if one carries an article from a shop to an open space via colonnade he is liable but Ben Eze holds him not liable as for Ben Eze it is well he holds that walking is like standing but according to the rabbis granted that they hold that walking is not like standing yet where do we find liability for such a case at our safra in the name of RMI in our Yohanan's name Talmud Moshe Bath compare it to one who carries an article in the street there surely though he is not liable as long as he holds it and proceeds yet when he lays it down he is liable so here too it is not different how compare there wherever he puts it down it is a place of liability but here if he deposits it in the colonnade is a place of non liability rather compare it to one who carries an article in the street exactly four cubits there surely though he is exempt if he deposits it within the four cubits yet when he deposits it at the end of the four cubits he is liable so here too it is not different how compare there it is a place of exemption only as far as this man is concerned but to all others it is a place of liability but here it is a place of exemption for all rather compare it to one who carries an object from private to public ground through the sides of the street there surely though he is exempt if he lays it down in the sides of the street yet when he lays it down in the street itself he is liable so here too it is not different our papa demur there too that is well according to the rabbis who maintain that the sides of the street are not regarded as the street but according to our Eliezer B. Jacob who rules that the sides of the street are regarded as the street what can be said Said our Ahasan of Rikh to him granted that you know our Eliezer B. Jacob to rule that the
public ground or from the public ground into it nor carry an object from it into private ground or from the private ground into it yet if he does carry out or and he is not liable as to courtyards with many owners and blind alleys if an Arab is made there permitted if an Arab is not made there forbidden the man standing on the threshold may take an object from the master of the house or give it to him and may take an object from the poor man or give it to him providing however that he does not take from the master of the house and give to the poor man or from the poor man and give it to the master of the house and if he does take and give the three are exempt other state a threshold serves as two domains if the door is open it is as within if shut it is as without but if the threshold is ten hand breadth high and four broad it is a separate domain the master said that is absolute private ground what does this exclude it excludes the following view of our Judah 4. It was taught even more than this did Arjuna say if one owns two houses on the opposite sides of the street he can place Talmud, Mosh Bath be a board or a beam at each side and carry between them said they to him a street cannot be made fit for carrying by an Arab in this way and why is it called absolute public ground you might argue the rabbis differ from Arjuna maintaining that it is not private ground only in respect of carrying therein but in respect of throwing they agree. With Arjuna hence we are informed otherwise the master said that is absolute public ground what does this exclude it excludes Arjuna's other ruling for we learned Arjuna said if the public thoroughfare interposes between them it must be removed to the side but the sages maintain it is unnecessary and why is it called absolute because the first clause states absolute the second does likewise now let the desert to be enumerated for it was taught what is public ground a high road a. Great open space, open alleys, and the desert said, Abay, there is no difficulty. The latter means when the Israelites dwelt in the desert, the former refers to our own days. The master said, If one carries out or in unwittingly he is liable to a sin offering, if deliberately he is punished by Gareth or stone, unwittingly he is liable to a sin offering, but it is obvious it is necessary to state if deliberately he is punished by Gareth or stone, but that too is obvious. We are informed the following. In agreement with Rab for Rab said, I found a secret scroll of the school of our high wherein it is written, Isi Bijuda said, There are thirty nine principal labors, but one is liable only for one, yet that is not so, for we learned the principal labors are forty less one, and we pondered thereon why state the number, and our Yohanan answered to teach that if one performs all of them in one state of unawareness, he is liable for each separately, rather say thus for one of these he is not liable, and so we are informed here that this one SC carrying is of those about which there is no doubt the master said but the sea of plain a colonnade and a carmelith rank neither as public nor as private ground but is a plain neither private nor public ground surely we learned a plain in summer it is private ground in respect to the sabbath and public ground in respect to uncleanness in winter it is private ground in both respects said Ula, after all it is a carmelith yet why is it called private ground because it is not public ground our ashi said talmud mosh bath eg when it has barriers and this is in accordance with the following dictum of Ula in our yohanan's name and enclosure more than two seahs in area which is not enclosed in attachment to a dwelling place even if it is a core or two core in area if one throws an article therein from public ground he is liable what is the reason it is a partitioned area but it lacks inhabitants now as for our ashi it is well that he does not explain it as Ola, but why does Ola not explain it in accordance with his own dictum? He answers you if it has barriers, is it called a plain? Surely it is an enclosure, and our ashy private ground is taught, and a carmelith are then all these sea plain and colonnade do not carmelith when our demi came. He said in the name of our Yohanan, this is necessary only in respect of a corner near a street, though the masses sometimes press and overflow therein, yet since it is inconvenient for general use, it ranks as a carmelith when our demi came. He said in our Yohanan's name, the place between the pillars is treated as a carmelith. What is the reason though the general public walk through there since they cannot proceed with ease? It is as a carmelith. Our said in Rab Judah's name, the balcony in front of the pillars is treated as a carmelith. Now he who stated thus of the ground between the pillars, how much more so the balcony, but he who mentions the balcony only the balcony ranks. As a carmelith because it is inconvenient for general use but not the ground between the pillars which is convenient for general use another version but the place between the pillars through which the public occasionally walk is as public ground Rabbi Sheila said in Arhista's name if a brick is standing upright in the street and one throws an article and it adheres to its side he is liable on top he is not liable Abbe and Rabbi both state providing that it is three hand breadths. High so that the public do not step on it but thorns and shrubs even if not three hand breadths. high high be Rab maintained even thorns and shrubs but not dung Arashi ruled even dung Rabbi of the school of Arshila said when Ardimi came he said in the name of Aryohanan no carmelith can be less than four hand breadths square and Arshis hate said and it extends up to ten what is meant by and it extends up to ten shall we say that only if there is a partition ten hand breadths high is it a Carmelith not otherwise but is it not surely Argidal said in the name of our high be Joseph in Rab's name in the case of a house the inside of which is not ten hand breadths in height but its covering makes it up to ten it is permitted to carry on the roof over the whole area but within one may carry only four cubits but what is meant by it extends up to ten that only up to ten is it a Carmelith but not higher and even as Samuel said to Rab Judah keen scholar in matters concerning the Sabbath do not consider aught above ten in what respect shall we say that there is no private ground above ten surely Arhista said if one fixes a rod in private ground and throws an article from the street and it alights on the top even if it is a hundred cubits high he is liable because private ground extends up to heaven Talmud Mosh should bath be but if it means that there is no public ground above ten it is our mission for we learned if one throws an article four cubits onto a wall above Ten hand breadths it is as though he throws it into the air if below ten it is as though he throws it onto the ground hence he must refer to a carmelite teaching that there is no carmelite above ten and our demi and our she's hate inform us that the rabbis treated it with the leniencies of both private and public ground with the leniencies of private ground that only if it measures four hand breadths square is it a carmelite but if not it is simply a place of non-liability with the leniencies of public ground only up to ten is it a carmelite but above ten it is not a carmelite to revert to the main text argidal said in the name of our high be joseph in rab's name in the case of a house the inside of which is not ten hand breadths in height but its covering makes it up to ten it is permitted to carry on the roof thereof over the whole area but within one may carry only four cubits said Abbe, but if one takes out four square hand breadths and makes it up to ten carrying over the Whole is permitted what is the reason the rest is as cavities of a private domain and such are themselves a private domain for it was stated the cavities of a private domain constitute private ground as to the cavities of a public domain Abbe said they are as public ground Rabbi said they are not as public ground said Rabbi to Abbe according to you who maintains that the cavities of public ground are as public ground wherein does it differ from what Ardimi when he came said in the name of our Yohanan this is necessary only in respect of a corner near to the street yet let it be as cavities of a public domain there the use thereof is inconvenient here the use thereof is convenient we learned if one throws an article four cubits onto a wall above ten hand breadths it is as though he throws it into the air if below ten it is as though he throws it onto the ground now we discuss this why as though he throws it on the ground surely it does not rest there and our Yohanan answered this refers to a juicy cake of figs, but if you maintain that the cavities of public ground are as public ground, why related to a juicy cake of figs related to a splinter or any article, and it is a case where it alighted in a cavity, sometimes he answered him a splinter or any other article are different because they fall back, sometimes he answered him the reference must be to a wall not possessing a cavity, how do you know it? Because the first clause states if one throws above ten hand breadths, it is as though he throws it into the air. Now, if you imagine that this refers to a wall with a cavity, why is it as though he throws it into the air? Surely it came to rest in the cavity, and should you answer our mission refers to a cavity that is not four square, surely did not Rab Judah say in our high's name if one throws an article above ten hand breadths and it goes and alights in a cavity of any size, we come to a controversy of our and the rabbis are holding we. Imaginarily hollow it out to complete it while the rabbis maintain we do not hollow it out to complete it hence it surely follows that the reference is to a wall without a cavity this proves it to revert to the main
Reason the walls are made for their contents Ola said if there is a column nine handbreadths high in the street and the public rest and rearrange their burdens thereon and one throws an object and it alights upon it he is liable what is the reason it if it is less than three the multitude step upon it from three to nine they neither walk upon it nor arrange their burdens upon it nine they certainly rearrange their burdens upon it Abbe asked our Joseph what of a pit he replied the same holds. Good of a pit Rabbah said it does not hold good of a pit what is the reason service through difficulty is not designated service are at a beam and raised an objection before Rabbah if one's basket is lying in the street ten handbreadths high and four broad one may not move an object from it into the street or from the street into it but if less one may carry and the same applies to a pit surely that refers to the second clause no to the first clause he raised an objection Talmud, Mosh of Beth. B. If one intends to take up his Sabbath abode in a public ground and places his Arab in a pit above ten handbreadths, it is a valid Arab. If below ten handbreadths, it is not a valid Arab. How is this meant? Shall we say he placed it in a pit ten handbreadths in depth and above means that he raised the bottom and set it the Arab there and below means that he lowered it and set it there? What is the difference between above and below? He is in one place and his Arab in another, hence it must surely refer to a pit not ten deep and it is taught it is a valid Arab which proves that use with difficulty is regarded as use. Sometimes he answered him both he and his Arab were in a Carmelite and why is it called public ground because it is not private ground and sometimes he answered him he was on public ground while his Arab was in a Carmelite disagreeing with Rabbi who maintained whatever is interdicted as a Shabbat was not forbidden at twilight and do not think that I am merely Putting you off, but I say it to you with exactitude, for we learned if there is a water pool and a public road traverses it, if one throws an object four cubits therein, he is liable, and what depth constitutes a pool less than ten handbreadths, and if there is a pool of water traversed by a public road and one throws an object four cubits therein, he is liable. Now, as for mentioning this pool twice, it is well, one refers to summer and the other to winter, and both are necessary, for if we were informed this about summer, it might be said the reason is because it is the practice of people to cool themselves, but in winter, I would say that it is not so, and if we were informed this of winter, it might be id the reason is because becoming mudstained, it may happen that he goes down into the water, but in summer, I would say that it is not so, thus both are necessary, but why mention traversing twice, hence it must surely follow that a passage under difficulties is regarded as a Public passage whereas use under difficulties is not regarded as public use this proves it Rab Judah said in the case of a bundle of canes if one repeatedly throws it down and raises it he is not liable unless he lifts it up the master said a man standing on a threshold may take an object from or give it to the master of the house and may take an object from or give it to the poor man what is this threshold shall we say a threshold of a public road house state that he may take an object from the master of the house surely either by carries it from private to public ground again if it is a threshold of a private domain dash house state that he may take an object from the poor man surely either by carries it from public to private ground or again if it is a threshold of a carmelite house state that he may take or give implying even at the very outset but after all the prohibition does exist rather it must mean a threshold which is merely a place of non Liability, e.g., if it is not four handbreadth square, and it is even as what Ardimi when he came said in the name of our Yohanan, a place which is less than four square, the denizens both of public and private ground may rearrange their burdens upon it, provided that they do not exchange the master said, providing that he does not take from the master of the house and give to the poor man or the reverse, and if he does take and give from one to the other, the three are exempt, shall we say that this refutes Rabba for Rabba said, if one carries an object full four cubits in the street, even if he carries a Talmud, Mosh of Bath across or over himself, he is liable there, it does not come to rest in the place of non liability, whereas here it does other state a threshold serves as two domains, if the door is open, it is as within, if the door is shut, it is as without, even if it has no state, but Arham Abigoria said in Rab's name that which lies within the opening requires another state too. Permitted and should you answer that the reference is to a threshold which is not four square surely our have a said in Rab's name that which lies within the opening even if less than four square requires another state to permit it said Rab Judah in Rab's name the reference here is to the threshold of an alley half of which threshold is covered and half uncovered the covering being toward the inner side hence if the door is open it is as within if the door is shut it is as without R. As she said after all it refers to the threshold of a house and e.g. where it is covered over with two beams neither being four handbreadths wide and there are less than three handbreadths between them while the door is in the middle if the entrance is open it is as within if shut it is as without but if the threshold is ten handbreadths high and four broad it is a separate domain that supports our Isaac B. of Dimi for our Isaac B. of Dimi said our mayor used to teach wherever you find two domains which are really one e.g. a pillar in private ground ten high and four broad one may not rearrange a burden thereon for fear of a mount in a public domain Talmud, Mosh of Bath be one must not sit down before a barber near Minha until he has prayed nor may he enter the baths or a tannery nor to eat nor for a lawsuit yet if they began they need not break off one must break off for the reading of the Shema but not for prayer tomorrow near what Minha shall we say near the major Minha but why not? Seeing that there is yet plenty of time in the day but if near the minor Minha yet if they began they need not break off shall we say that this is a refutation of our Joshua B. Levi for our Joshua B. Levi said as soon as it is time for the Minha service one may not eat anything before he has recited the Minha service no after all it means near the major Minha but the reference is to a haircut in the fashion of Bandalas similarly nor may he enter the baths means for the complete. Process of the baths nor a tannery for tanning on a large scale nor eat at a long meal of many courses nor for a lawsuit at the beginning of the trial our Ahabi Jacob said after all it refers to our mode of hair cutting and why must he not sit down for it at the very outset for fear lest the scissors be broken similarly nor to the baths means merely for sweating and why not do this in the first place for fear lest he faint there nor a tannery merely to inspect it and why not at the very outset lest he see his wares being spoiled which will trouble him nor to eat means even a small meal and why not at the very outset lest he come to prolong it nor to a lawsuit for the end of the trial and why not enter at the very outset lest he see an argument to overthrow the verdict what is the beginning of a haircut set Arabin when the barber sheet is placed on one's knees and when is the beginning of a bath set Arabin when one removes his cloak and when is the Beginning of tanning when he ties an apron round his shoulders and when is the beginning of eating grab said when one washes his hands our hannah said when he loosens his girdle but they do not differ the one refers to ourselves Babylonians the other to them Palestinians have they said these Babylonian scholars on the view that the evening service is voluntary once they have undone their girdle to eat we do not trouble them but on the view that it is obligatory do we trouble them but what of it? Minha service which all agree is obligatory and still we learned yet if they began they need not break off whereon our hannah said that means when he loosens his girdle Talmud, Mosh of Bath of their drinking is rare here it is usual alternatively as for Minha since it has a fixed time one is afraid and will not come to transgress but as for the evening service since there is time for it all night he is not afraid and may come to transgress our she's hate the murder is it any trouble to remove it? Girdle, moreover, let him stand thus ungirdled and pray because it is said, Prepare to meet thy God, O Israel, Rabbi, son of Ar, who not put on stockings and prayed, quoting, Prepare to meet, etc. Rabbi removed his cloak, clasped his hands, and prayed, saying, I pray like a slave before his master. Ar, as she said, I saw Arkahana when there was trouble in the world, removing his cloak, clasped his hands, and pray, saying, I pray like a slave before his master. When there was peace, he would put it on cover and enfold himself, and pray, quoting, Prepare to meet thy God, O Israel, Rabbi, saw Ar, Hamana, prolonging his prayer, said, He they forsake eternal life and occupy themselves with temporal life, but he, Ar, Hamana, held the times for prayer and study of the Torah are distinct from each other. Ar, Jeremiah was sitting before Arzara engaged in study as it was growing late for the service. Ar, Jeremiah was making haste to adjourn there upon Arzara applied to him the verse he that turneth away from hearing the law even. His prayer is an abomination when is the beginning of a lawsuit are Jeremiah and Arjona one maintains when the judges wrap themselves around and the other says when
Son of nobles and thy princes eat in due season for strength and not for drunkenness, i.e. in the strength of the Torah and not in the drunkenness of wine. Our rabbis taught the first hour of the day is a meal time for gladiators, the second for robbers, the third for heirs, the fourth for laborers, the fifth for all other people, but that is not so for our Papa said the fourth hour is a meal time for all people, rather the fourth hour is a meal time for all other people, the fifth for agricultural laborers and the sixth for scholars. After that it is like throwing a stone into a barrel. Abba said that was said only if nothing at all is eaten in the morning, but if something is eaten in the morning there is no objection. Our Abba Abba said one may recite his prayers, the eighteen benedictions at the baths and objection is raised if one enters the baths in the place where people stand dressed, both reading the Shema and prayer, the eighteen benedictions are permissible and the greeting of peace goes without saying and one may don the phylacteries there and it goes without saying that he need not remove them if already wearing them in the place where people stand undressed the greeting of peace is not permissible there and reading and praying goes without saying the phylacteries must be removed and it goes without saying that they must not be done when our Abba Abba made a statement it referred to baths in which no one is present but did not our Jose Bihanna say. The baths of which they the rabbi spoke are even those in which none are present the privy closet of which they spoke means even such as contains no excrement rather when our Abba stated his ruling it was in reference to new baths but surely this is just what Rabbanah propounded what if a place is designated for a privy closet is designation recognized or not and it was not solved now did not the same query of his applied to baths no perhaps Talmud, Mosh of bath be a privy is different. Because it is offensive, a greeting of peace is not permissible there. This supports the following dictum of our Hanunun Anul's authority. A man may not extend a greeting of peace to his neighbor in the baths because it is said, and he called it the Lord is peace. If so, let it also be forbidden to mention by faith in a privy, for it is written, the faithful God, and should you answer that indeed is so, but our Habibi Goria said in Rab's name, by faith may be mentioned in a privy, there the name itself is not so designated as we translate it, God is faithful, but here the name itself is designated peace as it is written, and he called it the Lord is peace. Rabbi Mahaj also said in the name of our Habibi Goria in Rab's name, if one makes a gift to his neighbor, he must inform him beforehand as it is written, that you may know that I the Lord sanctify you. It was taught likewise that you may know that I the Lord sanctify you, the Holy One, blessed be he said to Moses, I have a precious gift in my treasure. House called the Sabbath and desire to give it to Israel. Go and inform them. Hence, Arsimian B. Gamaliel said, If one gives a loaf to a child, he must inform his mother. What shall he do to him? Said Abbe, he must rub him with oil and paint him with coal. But nowadays that we fear witchcraft, what shall be done? Said our Papa, he must rub him with the self same kind. But that is not so for our Hamas, son of our Hannah. Said, If one makes a gift to his neighbor, he need not inform him as it is said. And Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone by reason of his speaking with him. There is no difficulty. The one refers to a matter which is likely to be revealed, the other to one which is not likely to be revealed. But the Sabbath is a matter which stood to be revealed. Its reward did not stand to be revealed. Our was holding two priestly gifts of oxen in his hand. Said, he, Whoever will come and tell me a new dictum in Rab's name, I will give them to him. Said Rabbi Mahaja to him, thus did Rab say. If one makes a gift to his neighbor, he must inform him as it is said that you may know that I the Lord sanctify you thereupon. He gave them to him. Our Rab stick is so dear to you. Asked he, yes, he replied, that illustrates what Rab said. He rejoined, the garment is precious to its wearer. Did Rab indeed say, thus he exclaimed, I rate the second higher than the first, and if I had another priestly gift, I would give it to you. Rabbi Mahaja also said in the name of our Hamabi Goria in Rab's name, Amen should never single out one son among his other sons, for on account of the two sellers' weight of silk which Jacob gave Joseph in excess of his other sons, his brothers became jealous of him, and the matter resulted in our forefathers' descent into Egypt. Rabbi Mahaja also said in the name of our Hamabi Goria in Rab's name, Amen should always seek to dwell in a city, but recently populated, for since it is but recently populated, since are few as it is said, behold, now the city is near Karabah to flee to. And it is a little one what is meant by Karabah shall we say that it is near and small but surely they could see that for themselves rather he meant because it has been recently populated since our few are often said what verse supports this so let me NA escape thither the numerical value of NA is 51 whereas that of Sodom is 52 whilst its peace Talmud, Mosh of they lasted 26 years as it is written 12 years they served Cheddar Laomer and 13 years they rebelled and in the 14th year etc. Rabbi Mahaja also said in the name of our Hamabi Gori and Rab's name every city whose roofs are higher than the synagogue will ultimately be destroyed as it is said to exalt the house of our God and to repair the ruins thereof yet that refers only to houses but as for towers and turrets we have no objection our Ashi said I achieved for the town of Mahaja that it was not destroyed but it was destroyed it was not destroyed as a result of that sin Rabbi. Mahaja also said in the name of our Hamabi Gori in Rab's name, let one be under an Ishmaelite, but not under a stranger, under a stranger, but not under a Gwibur, under a Parsi, but not under a scholar, under a scholar, but not under an orphan or a widow. Rabbi Mahaja also said in the name of our Hamabi Gori in Rab's name, rather any complaint, but not a complaint of the bowels, any pain, but not heart pain, any ache, but not headache, any evil, but not an evil wife. Rabbi Mahaja also said in the name of our Hamabi Gori in Rab's name, if all seas were in greeds, pens, the heavens, parchment, and all men writers, they would not suffice to write down the intricacies of government. Said our Meshur Shiawad verse teaches this the heaven for height and the earth for depth, and the heart of kings is unsearchable. Rabbi Mahaja also said in the name of our Hamabi Gori in Rab's name, fasting is as potent against a dream as fire against to set our Hisda, providing it is on that very day our Joseph added and even on. The Sabbath our Joshua son of Aridi chanced on the home of our Ashi a third grown calf was prepared for him and he was invited master partake somewhat I am engaged in a fast he replied and do you not accept Rab Judah's ruling in Rab's name one may borrow his fast and repay it it is a fast on account of a dream he answered and Rabbi Bimahaja said in the name of our Hamabi Goria in Rab's name fasting is as potent against a dream as fire against toe and our Hisda said providing it is on that very day and our Joseph added and even on the Sabbath yet if they began they need not break off one must break off for the reading of the Shema but not for prayer but the first clause teaches they need not break off the second clause refers to study for it was taught if companion scholars are engaged in studying they must break off for the reading of the Shema but not for prayer our Yohanan said this was taught only of such as our Simeon Bioha and his companions whose study was their profession but we must Break off both for the reading of the Shema and for prayer, but it was taught just as they do not break off for the service, so do they not break off for the reading of the Shema that was taught in reference to the intercalation of the year for our Abba Abba said, and the elders of Hadrani recited likewise. Our Eliezer Bizotic said, When we were engaged in intercalating the year at Yebna, we made no break for the reading of the Shema or prayer. Mishnah A. Taylor must not go out with his needle near nightfall, lest he forget and go out nor ascribe with his quill, and one may not search his garments for vermin nor read by the light of a lamp. In truth, it was said, The Hazan may see where the children read, but he himself must not read. Similarly, it was said, As Ab must not die together with his Abba, as it may lead to sin tomorrow. We learned elsewhere, one must not stand in private ground and drink in public ground, or on public ground and drink in private ground, but if he inserts his head in it, Greater part of his body into the place where he drinks it is permitted Talmud, Mosh of Bath B, and the same applies to a wine that the scholars propounded what of Carmel Abbe said it is precisely the same Rabbi said that itself is only a preventive measure are we to arise and enact a preventive measure to safeguard another preventive measure Abbe said once do I say it because it is taught and the same applies to a wine that now what is this wine that if private ground it has already been taught if public ground it has also been taught hence it must surely refer to a Carmel Rabbi said and the same applies to a wine that is stated in reference to tithes and Arshis hate said likewise and the same applies to a wine that refers to tithes for we learned one may
Have you heard our mayor to give this ruling in respect to something which it is not natural to carry thus but have you heard him in respect to something which demands that mode of carrying for should you not say so then if an unskilled worker hollows out a measure from a log on the Sabbath would he indeed be exempt on our mayor's view rather said our hand on there is no difficulty the one refers to Azab who has had two attacks the other to Azab who has had three attacks now why does Azab of two attacks differ in that he is liable presumably because he requires it for examination but then Azab of three attacks also requires it for counting it holds good only for that very day yet still he needs it to prevent the soiling of his garments said our Zara disagrees with the following Tana who maintains the prevention of soiling has no positive importance for we learned if one overturns a basin on a wall in order that the basin be washed by the rain it falls within the terms of and if it water be put etc. If in order Talmud, Moss should bath that the wall be not damaged by the rain it does not fall within the terms of and if it be put etc. But how compare there he does not want that fluid at all whereas here he needs this pouch to receive the discharge this can only be compared to the second clause if a tub is placed so that the dripping of water should fall there in the water which rebounds or overflows is not within the meaning of and if water be put but the water inside it is within the meaning of and if water be put rather said both Abay and Rabba there is no difficulty the one is according to our Judah the other agrees with our Simeon the school of our Ishmael taught a man may go out with his tefillin on the eve of Sabbath near nightfall what's the reason because Rabbi son of Arhuna said one must feel his tefillin every now and then inferring a menorah from the high priest's headplate if in the case of the headplate which contained it. Divine name only once yet the Torah said and it shall always be on his forehead i.e. his mind must not be diverted from it then with the tefillin which contained the divine name many times how much more so therefore he is fully cognizant thereof it was taught Hananiah said one must examine his garments on Sabbath eve before nightfall our Joseph observed that is a vital law for the Sabbath one may not search his garments for vermin etc. the scholars propounded does this mean one may not search his garments by day lest he kill the vermin and would disagree with our Eliezer for it was taught our Eliezer said if one kills vermin on the Sabbath it is as though he killed a camel while one may not read by the light of a lamp lest he killed it or perhaps both are forbidden lest he killed the lamp come and here one may not search his garments nor read by the light of a lamp but is it stronger than our mission to come and here one may not search his garments by the light of a lamp nor read by the light of a lamp, and these are of the halacha stated in the upper chamber of Hananiah. Hezekiah be garan. This proves that both are on account. Lest he tilt the lamp. This proves it. Rab Judah said in Samuel's name, it is forbidden even to distinguish between one's own garments and his wife's by lamplight. Said Rabba that was stated only of townspeople, but those of country folk are easily distinguished. And even in the case of townspeople, this was stated only of old women, but those of young women are readily distinguishable. Our rabbis taught one must not search his garments in the street out of decency. In like way, our Judah others state our Nehemiah said one must not cause himself to vomit in the street out of decency. Our rabbis taught if one searches his garments on the Sabbath, he may press the vermin and throw it away, providing that he does not kill it. Abbas said he must take and throw it away, providing that he does not press it. Or who not said the halacha is he may. Press and throw it away, and that is seemingly even on weekdays. Rabbi killed them, and Arshis he killed them. Rabbi threw them into a basin of water. Arnaman said to his daughters, Kill them, and let me hear the sound of the hated ones. It was taught. Arsimian B. Eliezer said, Vermin must not be killed on the Sabbath. This is the view of Beth Shammai, while Beth Hillel permitted. And Arsimian B. Eliezer said, Likewise, on the authority of Arsimian B. Gamaliel, one must not negotiate for the betrothal of children, girls, nor for a boy to teach him the book and to teach him a trade, nor may mourners be comforted, nor may the sick be visited on the Sabbath. That is the ruling of Beth Shammai, but Beth Hillel permitted. Our rabbis taught, If one enters a house to visit a sick person on the Sabbath, he should say, It is the Sabbath when one must not cry out, and recovery will soon come. Our mayor said, One should say, The Sabbath may have compassion. Talmud, Mosh of Bath B. Arjuda said, May the omnipresent have. Compassion upon you and upon the sick of Israel. Our Jose said, May the omnipresent have compassion upon you in the midst of the sick of Israel. Should a citizen of Jerusalem on entering would say, Peace and on leaving it is the Sabbath when one must not cry out and healing will soon come. His compassion is abundant and enjoy the Sabbath. Rest in peace with whom does this dictum of our Hannah agree? One who has an invalid in his house should combine him with other Jewish sick with whom with our Jose are. Hannah also said it was only with difficulty that comforting mourners and visiting the sick was permitted on the Sabbath. Rabbi Barhana said, When we followed our Eliezer to inquire after a sick person, sometimes he would say to him in Hebrew, The omnipresent visit thee in peace, and others be said in Aramaic, The omnipresent remember thee in peace. But how might he do thus? Did not Rabbi Judah say one should never petition for his needs in Aramaic? And our Yohanan said, When one petitions for his Needs in Aramaic the ministering angels do not eat him for they do not understand Aramaic an invalid is different because the divine presence is with him for Aramaic said in Rab's name how do you know that the divine presence supports an invalid because it is written the Lord supports him upon the couch of languishing it was taught likewise one who enters a house to visit the sick may sit neither upon the bed nor on a seat but must wrap himself about and sit in front of him for the divine presence is above an invalid's pillow as it is said the Lord supports him upon the couch of languishing and Rabbi said in Rabin's name how do we know that the Holy One blessed be he sustains the sick because it is said the Lord supports him on the couch of languishing nor must he read by the light of a lamp Rabbi said even if it is as high as twice a man's stature or as two ox goats high or even as ten houses on top of each other one alone may not read but for two together it is well but it was taught neither one nor two said our Eliezer there is no difficulty the former refers to one subject the latter to two are who not said but by the light of an open fire even ten people are forbidden said Rabbi if he is an important man it is permitted an objection is raised one must not read by the light of a lamp lest he tilted said our Ishmael be Elisha I will read and will not tilt yet once he read and wished to tilt how great are the words of the sages he exclaimed who said one must not read by the light of a lamp our Nathan said he read and did tilt it and wrote in his notebook I Ishmael be Elisha did read and tilt the lamp on the Sabbath when the temple is rebuilt I will bring a fat sin offering our Ishmael be Elisha was different since he treated himself as an ordinary person in respect to religious matters one buried the taught an attendant may examine glasses and plates by the light of a lamp and another taught he must not examine them there is no difficulty one refers to a Permanent attendant the other to a temporary one alternatively both refer to a permanent attendant yet there is no difficulty one refers to a lamp fed with oil the other to nap the scholars propounded what of a temporary attendant and a lamp fed with oil rab said there is a halacha but we do not teach thus our Jeremiah B. Abba said there is a halacha and we teach it so our Jeremiah B. Abba chanced to visit R.C. now his attendant arose and examined the glasses by candlelight. Thereupon his R.C.'s wife said to him R.C. but you do not act thus let him be he answered her he holds with his master in truth it was said the husband etc but you say in the first clause he may see surely that means to read no to arrange the beginnings of the sections and Rabbi B. Samuel said likewise but he may arrange the beginnings of the sections but not the whole section Talmud. Mosh of Bath an objection is raised R. Simeon B. Gamaliel said school children used to prepare there. Biblical portions and read by lamp like there is no difficulty I can answer either that it means the beginnings of the sections or that children are different since they are in awe of their teacher they will not come to tilt it similarly Azab must not dine etc. It was taught our Simeon B. Eliezer said come and see how far purity has spread in Israel for we did not learn a clean man must not eat with an unclean woman but Azab must not dine together with Azab as it may lead to sin. Similarly Azab parish may not dine with Azab who is an Amhirez lest he cause him to associate with him but what does it matter if he does cause him to associate with him rather say thus lest he offer him unclean food to eat does that Azab who is a parish not eat unclean food said Abay for fear lest he provide him with unfit food Rabbi said the majority of the Amhirez do render tithes but we fear lest he associate with him and he provide him with unclean food in the
not eaten upon the mountains, neither hath lifted up his eyes to the idols of the house of Israel, neither hath defiled his neighbor's wife, neither hath come near to a woman who is in it. Thus a woman who is in it is assimilated to his neighbor's wife, just as his neighbor's wife, he in his garment, and she in hers is forbidden. So if his wife is in it, he in his garment, and she in hers is forbidden. This proves it now. This disagrees with our path, for our path said the Torah interdicted only. Intimacy of incestuous coition, as it is said, none of you shall approach to any that is near akin to him to uncover their nakedness. Ola on his return from the college used to kiss his sisters on their bosoms, others say on their hands, but he is self contradictory. For Ola said, even any form of intimacy is forbidden because we say take a circuitous route, O Nazi, right, but do not approach the vineyard. It is taught in the Tanadib Aliyah who it once happened that a certain scholar who had studied much Bible and Mishnah and had served scholars much yet died in middle age. His wife took his tefillin and carried them about in the synagogues and schoolhouses and complained to them. It is written in the Torah, for that is thy life and the length of thy days. My husband who read Bible learned Mishnah Talmud, Mosh of Bath B, and served scholars much. Why did he die in middle age? And no man could answer her on one occasion. I was a guest at her house and she related the whole story to me, said I. To her, my daughter, how was he to thee in thy days of menstruation? God forbid she rejoined, he did not touch me even with his little finger, and how was he to thee in thy days of white garments? He ate with me, drank with me, and slept with me in bodily contact, and it did not occur to him to do other said I to her, blessed be the omnipresent for slaying him, that he did not condone on account of the Torah, for lo, the Torah hath said, and thou shalt not approach unto a woman as long as she is impure by her uncleanness. When Ardimi came, he said it was a broad bed in the West Palestine. They said, Our Isaac B. Joseph said an apron interposed between the mission and these are of the Halashath, which they stated in the upper chamber of Hananiah B. Hezekiah B. Garen. When they went up to visit him, they took account, and Beth Shammai outnumbered Beth Hillel, and on that day they enacted 18 measures. Gamar Abbe said to our Joseph, Did we learn these are or and these are did we learn and these are this? Those that we have stated in the former mission, or did we learn these are those that are to be stated soon come and here one may not search his garments by the light of a lamp nor read by the light of a lamp and these are of the halacha stated in the upper chamber of Hanani B. Hezekiah B. Garen. This proves that we learned and these are this proofs in our rabbis taught who wrote we left Tyana said they Hanani B. Hezekiah and his companions who cherish their troubles are Simeon B. Gamaliel observed we too cherish our troubles but what can we do for if we come to write them down we are inadequate another reason is a fool is not assailed another reason the flesh of the dead does not feel the scalpel but that is not so for did not our Isaac say worms are as painful to the dead as a needle in the flesh of the living for it is said but his flesh upon him hath pain and his soul within him mourneth say the dead flesh in a living person does not feel the scalpel Rab Judah said. In Rab's name in truth that man had an eye son of Ezekiel by name is to be remembered for blessing but for him the book of Ezekiel would have been hidden for its words contradicted the Torah what did he do 300 barrels of oil were taken up to him and he sat in an upper chamber and reconciled them and on that day they enacted 18 measures what are the 18 measures for we learned the following render terima unfit one who eats food of the first degree or the second degree or who drinks unclean liquid one who enters with head and the greater part of his body into drawn water a clean person upon whose head and the greater part of his body there fell three logs of drawn water a book one's hands a tea and food or utensils which were defiled by a liquid which Tana holds that one who eats food of the first or of the second degree merely renders unfit Talmud Mosh of Batha, but does not defile said Rabbi Barhan it is our Joshua for we learned our Eliezer said one who eats food of the first degree is himself defiled in the first degree of the second degree is defiled in the second degree of the third degree is defiled in the third degree. Our Joshua said, One who eats food of the first or of the second degree is defiled in the second degree of the third degree. He enters the second degree in respect of Hittish, but not in respect of Terimah. This referring to Holland subjected to the purity of Terimah when one eats food of the first or of the second degree. Why did the rabbis decree uncleanness in this case? Because one may sometimes eat unclean food Holland and take a liquid of Terimah and put it in his mouth and thus render it unfit when one drinks unclean liquid. Why did the rabbis decree uncleanness in this case? Because he may sometimes drink unclean liquid and take food of Terimah and put it in his mouth and thus render it unfit, but it is the same thing you might argue the first is usual but not the second, therefore he informs us. That it is not so, and one who comes with his head and the greater part of his body into drawn water. Why did the rabbis decree uncleanness in his case? Said R.B.B. in R.C.'s name, because originally people performed tabula and collected pit water, which was stagnant, noisome, and so they poured drawn water upon themselves. But when they began to make this a fixed law, the rabbis imposed uncleanness thereon. What is meant by a fixed law? They said they maintained not this pit water. Purifies, but both together purify. Said Rabbi to him, then what did it matter, seeing that they did perform tabula in this the pit water? But said Rabbi, they maintained not this the pit water. Purifies, but that the drawn water and a clean person upon whose head and the greater part of his body there fell three logs of drawn water. Why did the rabbis decree uncleanness in his case? For if not this, the other would not stand. And why did the rabbis impose uncleanness upon a book? Said R. Meshushia. Because originally food of Terimah was stored near the scroll of the law with the argument this is holy and that is holy but when it was seen that they, the sacred books came to harm the rabbis imposed uncleanness upon them and the hands because hands are fidgety it was taught also hands which came into contact with the book disqualified Terimah on account of Arparnok as dictum for Arparnok said in our Yohanan's name one who holds the scroll of the law naked will be buried naked naked can you really think so rather said Arzara it means naked without good deeds without good deeds can you really think so rather say naked without that good deed to his credit which was first enacted shall we say that the former was first enacted Talmud, Mosh of Bath B but since this was first enacted why was the other two needed rather the latter was first decreed and then it was enacted in respect of all hands and a Tibulyam but the law of Tibulyam is biblical for it is written and when the sun is down. He shall be clean and afterwards he shall eat of the holy things i.e. terimodily tibulyam from here and food which was defiled through liquid through liquid of which uncleanness shall we say through liquid which was defiled by a dead reptile then its law is biblical for it is written and all drink that may be drunk in every such vessel shall be unclean underscore rather it means through liquid defiled by the hands and it is a preventive measure on account of liquid defiled by a reptile and vessels which were defiled by liquid vessels which were defiled by liquid of which uncleanness shall we say by the liquid of a zab but that is biblical for it is written and if the zab spit upon him that is clean then he shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water meaning what is in the clean man's hand have I declared unclean unto thee rather it refers to liquid defiled by a reptile and it is a preventive measure on account of the fluid of a zab and the hands did then the disciples of Shammai and Hillel decreed this surely Shammai and Hillel themselves decreed it for it was taught Hosea B. Joezer of Zirda and Hosea B. Yohanan of Jerusalem decreed uncleanness in respect of the country of the heathens and glassware Simeon B. Sheda instituted the woman's marriage settlement and imposed uncleanness upon metal utensils Shammai and Hillel decreed uncleanness for the hands and should you answer it means Shammai and his band and Hillel and his band of scholars surely Rab. Judah said in Samuel's name they enacted 18 measures and they differed on 18 measures whereas Hillel and Shammai differed only in three places for Arhunah said in three places they differed and no more and should you answer the Hillel and Shammai came and decreed that it be suspended while their disciples came and decreed that it be burnt surely Elias said the original decree concerning hands was for burning rather the Hillel and Shammai came and decreed it yet it was not. Accepted from them, then their disciples came and decreed, and it was accepted from them, but still Solomon decreed it for Rabbi Judah said in Samuel's name when Solomon instituted Arabin and the washing of the hands, a heavenly echo came forth and declared, My son, if thine heart be wise, my heart shall be glad, even mine and my son be wise, and make my heart glad that I may answer him that reproacheth me Talmud. Mosh of Batha Solomon came and decreed in respect of holy things while they came and
ruled that one must not lay hands or Huna spoke only of those concerning which there is no dispute of their teachers in addition but there is also this when one vintage is great for the bad i.e. to manufacture one Shammai maintains it is made fit to become unclean while Hillel ruled it is not made fit that is accepted for their Hillel was silenced by Shammai Hosea B. Joezer of Zirda and Hosea B. Yohanan of Jerusalem decreed uncleanness in respect of the country of the heathens and Glassware, but the rabbis of the eighty years decreed this for our Kahana said when our Ishmael son of our Jose fell sick, they the rabbi sent word to him, Rabbi, tell us the two or three things which you stated formerly on your father's authority. He sent back us, did my father say one hundred and eighty years before the destruction of the temple, the wicked state SC Rome spread over Israel eighty years before the destruction of the temple, uncleanness was imposed in respect of the country of Evans and Glassware forty years before the destruction of the temple, the Sanhedrin went into exile and took its seat in the trade halls in respect to what laws the state had said our Isaac be of Dimi to teach that they did not adjudicate in laws of fines, the laws of fines can you think so, but say they did not adjudicate in capital cases, and should you answer the Jose B. Joezer and Jose B. Yohan and flourished during these eighty years too surely it was taught Hillel and Simeon his son. Gamaliel and Simeon wielded their patriarchate during 100 years of the temple's existence, whereas Jose B. Joezer of Zirda and Jose B. Yohanan were much earlier Talmud, Mosh should Bath be rather say they came and decreed in respect to a cloud that it be burnt but nothing at all in respect to the atmosphere while the rabbis of the 80 years came and decreed in respect to the atmosphere that a terima be suspended shall we say that the original enactment was for burning surely ill faucet. The original decree concerning hands was for burning us only concerning hands was the original decree for burning but concerning nothing else rather say they came and decreed in respect to a cloud that it be suspended and nothing at all in respect to the atmosphere and then the rabbis of these 80 years came and decreed in respect to a cloud that it be burnt and in respect to the atmosphere that it be suspended yet still that was decreed in Ishafer we learn terima is burnt on account of. Six doubtful cases of uncleanness I the doubt of Beth Haparis, two the doubt of earth which comes from the land of the heathens, three the doubt attached to the garments of an Amharis, four the doubt of vessels which are found be doubtful saliva, and six the doubtful human urine near cattle urine on account of their certain contact which is doubtful defilement Terramah is burnt our Jose said it is burnt even on account of their doubtful contact in the private domain but the sages maintain. If there is doubtful contact in the private domain we suspend it in public ground if the Terramah is clean now will observe these six cases of doubt were enacted at Isha rather say the Jose B. Joezer and Jose B. Yohanan came and decreed suspense in respect of a clot and nothing at all in respect of atmosphere then the rabbis of the eighty years came and decreed suspense in both cases then they came at Isha and decreed burning in respect of a clot and as to the atmosphere they left it in. Status quo why did the rabbis impose uncleanness upon glassware said are you in the name of Resh Lakish since it is manufactured from sand the rabbis declared it the same as earthenware if so let them be incapable of purification in amique why then did we learn and the following interpose in utensils pitch and mergum in the case of glass vessels the circumstances here are e.g. they were perforated and molten lead was poured into them disagreeing with our mayor who maintained everything. Depends on the support for it was taught if glass vessels are perforated and molten lead is poured into them said our Simeon B. Gamaliel our mayor declares them unclean while the sages declare them clean if so Talmud, Mosh should let them not become unclean through their flat or convex backs why did we learn earthen vessels and nether vessels are alike in regard to their uncleanness they become defiled and defile other objects through their airspace they become unclean through their Outside, but they cannot be defiled through their backs, and their breaking renders them clean. Thus, only earthen and nether vessels are alike in regard to their uncleanness, but not other things. I will tell you, since they can be repaired when broken, they were assimilated to metal utensils. If so, let them revert to their former uncleanness, like metal utensils. For we learned metal vessels, both flat and hollow, are subject to defilement. If broken, they become clean. If remade into utensils, they revert to their former uncleanness. As whereas in respect to glass vessels, we learned wooden skin bone and glass utensils. If flat, they are clean. If hollow, they are unclean. If broken, they become clean. If remade into vessels, they are liable to defilement from then onwards. Thus, only from then onwards, but not retrospectively. The uncleanness of glass utensils is rabbinical, and the resuscitation of former uncleanness is also rabbinical. Now, in the case of that which is unclean by scriptural law, the rabbis. Have imposed retrospective uncleanness upon it, but upon that which is unclean by rabbinical law, the rabbis have imposed no retrospective uncleanness yet. At least let their flat utensils be unclean, since flat metal utensils are susceptible to uncleanness by scriptural law. The rabbis made a distinction in their case so that terima and sacred food should not be burnt on their account. Talmud, Mosh should bath br ashi said after all it is similar to earthen utensils and as for your difficulty. Let them not become unclean through their flat or convex backs. The reply is because its inside is as visible as its outside. Simeon Bishaita instituted a woman's marriage settlement and imposed uncleanness upon metal utensils, but the uncleanness of metal utensils is biblical for it is written, howbeit the gold and the silver, etc. This the rabbinical law was necessary only in respect of former uncleanness for Rab Judah said in Rab's name it once happened that Queen Shulzion made a Banquet for her son and all her utensils were defiled thereupon she broke them and gave them to the goldsmith who melted them down and manufactured new utensils of them but the sages declared they revert to their previous uncleanness what is the reason they were concerned there to provide offense against the water of separation now that is well on the view that the sages did not rule thus in respect of all forms of defilement but only in respect of the defilement of the dead then it is correct but on the view that they ruled thus for all forms of uncleanness what can be said have they answered as a preventive measure lest he might not perforate it to the standard of purification Rabbah said as a preventive measure lest it be said that table of that very day is effective for it wherein do they differ they differ where a smith refashioned it and what is another for we learned if one places vessels under a spout to catch rain water therein whether they are large vessels or small or even vessels made of stone earth or dung they render them equally unfit it is all one whether he places or forgets them there that is Beth Shammai's view but Beth Hillel declare it clean if he forgets them said Armeir they took account and Beth Shammai outnumbered Beth Hillel yet Beth Shammai admitted that if he forgets the utensils in the courtyard it is clean Our Jose said the controversy still stands in its place Our Meshachia said the scholars of Rab said all agree that if he places them under the spout when clouds are massing they are unclean if he places them there when the clouds are dispersed all agree that they are clean they differ only if he places them there when the clouds were massing but they then disperse and subsequently mass together again one master Beth Hillel holds that his intention was nullified while the other master holds that his intention was not nullified now according to Our Jose who maintained the controversy still stands in its place they are Less than 18 said Arnam and B. Isaac on that same day they also enacted that the daughters of Kutians are knitted from their cradles and what is another for we learned all movable objects induce uncleanness by the thickness of an ox goat said Artarfan Talmud, Mosh of Bathamay I bury my children if this is not an erroneous halacha for the hearer heard a ruling and heard therein a peasant was passing with an ox goat on his shoulder and one end thereof overshadowed a grave end. He was declared unclean in virtue of the law of utensils which overshadowed the dead Our Akiba said I will rectify it so that the words of the sages may be fulfilled because all movable objects induce uncleanness in their bearers by the thickness of an ox goat and induce uncleanness in themselves by any thickness and in other people or utensils by the width of a handbreadth and Arjane observed and the ox goat of which they spoke is not a handbreadth in thickness but in circumference and they enacted this law concerning its circumference on account of its thickness, but according to our Tarfan, who said, May I bury my children, but this halachah is incorrect, they are less than eighteen, said Arnam and B. Isaac, that the daughters of Kutians are knitted from their cradles was also enacted on that same day, and on the other question he agrees with Armeir and another one, one vintage is great for the bad I see to manufacture one Shammai maintains it is made fit to become unclean. While
Produce of Teramah is Teramah was also enacted on that day. What is the reason our Hanana said it was a preventive measure on account of undefiled Teramah being retained in the hand of an Israelite Rabbah observed if they are suspected of this they would not separate Teramah at all and furthermore since he can render one grain of wheat as Teramah for the whole in accordance with Samuel and does not he is indeed trusted rather said Rabbah it is a preventive measure on account of unclean. Teramah in the priest's hands lest he keep it with him and be led to sin and another Arhai BMI said in Allah's name that one must give his purse to a Gentile if the Sabbath evening falls upon him on the road was also enacted on that day and another Bali said in the name of Abimi of Sanada the interdict against their bread oil wine and daughters all these are of the 18 measures now this is well according to our measure but according to our Jose there are only 17 there is also. Bet of Ara Habi Adda for Ara Habi Adda said in Ara Isaac's name their bread was forbidden on account of their oil and their oil on account of their wine their bread on account of their oil wherein is the interdict of oil stronger than that of bread rather say they decreed against their bread and oil on account of their wine and against their wine on account of their daughters and against their daughters on account of the unmentionable and they decreed something else on account of some other. Thing what is this something else said Arnaman B. Isaac they decreed that a heathen child shall defile by Goneroi so that an Israelite child should not associate with him for sodomy but if so according to our mayor too it is difficult for there are 19 food and drink which were defiled through liquid he accounts as one mission of Bethshamai ruling dyes and alkaline plants may not be steeped unless they can be dissolved while it is yet day but Beth Hillel permitted Bethshamai rule. Bundles of wet flax may not be placed in an oven unless they can begin to steam while it is yet day nor wool in the dyer's kettle unless it can assume the color of the dye but Bethilel permitted Beth Shammai maintain snares for wild beast fowls and fish may not be spread unless they can be caught while it is yet day but Bethilel permitted Beth Shammai rule one must not sell to a Gentile or help him to load an ass or lift up an article upon him unless he can reach a near place but Bethilel permitted Beth Shammai maintain hides must not be given to a tanner nor garments to a Gentile fuller unless they can be done while it is yet day but in all these cases Bethilel permit them Talmud, Mosh of Batha before sunset our Simeon B. Gamaliel said it was the practice in my father's house to give white garments to a Gentile fuller three days before the Sabbath and both schools agree that the beam of the oil press and the circular wine press may be laden tomorrow which Tana holds that pouring water into ink constitutes its steeping said our Joseph it is rabbi for it was taught if one pours in flour and another water the second s liable this is rabbi's view our Jose son of our Judah said he is not liable unless he needs them Abbe said to him yet perhaps our Jose son of our Judah ruled us only in respect to flour which is subject to kneading but as for ink which is not subject to kneading I may say that he is liable you cannot think so for it was taught if one pours in the ashes and another the water the second is liable this is rabbi's view our Jose son of our Judah said he is not liable unless he needs them yet perhaps what is meant by ashes earth dust which does require kneading but both ashes and earth dust were taught were they then taught together our rabbi's taught water may be conducted into a garden on the eve of the Sabbath just before dark and it may go on being filled the whole day and a perfume brazier may be placed under Garments which continue to absorb the perfume the whole day and sulfur may be placed under silver vessels and they undergo the process of sulfuring the whole day and an eye salve may be placed on the eye and a plaster on a wound and the process of healing continues all day but we may not be placed in a water mill unless it can be ground when it is still day what is the reason Rabbi answered because it makes a noise said our Joseph to him let the master say it is on account of the resting of utensils for it was taught and in all things that I have said unto you take yeah, he this includes the resting of utensils rather said our Joseph it is on account of the resting of utensils now that you say that according to Beth Hillel the resting of utensils is a biblical precept why are sulfur and the perfume brazier permitted because it the vessel in which they lie performs no action why are wet bundles of flax permitted because it the oven in which they lie performs no action and is Motionless but what of the trap for wild beast fowl and fish which performs an action why are they permitted there too it means with a fish hook and a trap made with little joist so that no action is performed now however that Arashai said in Arashi's name which Tana maintains that the resting of utensils is a biblical precept it is Beth Shammai then according to Beth Shammai whether it the utensil performs an action or not it is forbidden while in the opinion of Beth Hillel even if it performs an action it is permitted and now that you say that according to Beth Shammai it is forbidden even if it performs no action if so Talmud, Mosh of Bath B Y are a perfume brazier and sulfur permitted there it lies upon the earth what of a tank for brewing beer a lamp a pot and a spit why do Beth Shammai permit them because their ownership is renounced who is the author of the following which our rabbis taught a woman must not fill a pot with pounded wheat and lupins and Place it in the oven on the eve of the Sabbath shortly before nightfall and if she does put them there they are forbidden at the conclusion of the Sabbath for as long as they take to prepare similarly a baker must not fill a barrel of water and place it in the oven on the eve of the Sabbath shortly before nightfall and if he does it the water is forbidden at the conclusion of the Sabbath for as long as it takes to prepare boil shall we say that this agrees with Beth Shammai not Beth. Hillel you may even say that it is Beth Hillel it is a preventive measure lest he stir the coals if so let us decree likewise in respect of a perfume brazier and sulfur there he will not stir them for if he does the smoke will enter and harm them let us decree in respect of wet bundles of flax to there since a draft is injurious to them he will not uncover it let us decree also in respect of wool in the dye kettle Samuel answered this refers to a kettle removed from the fire but let a sphere that he may stir within it this refers to a kettle removed from the fire and sealed down and now that the master said it is a preventive measure lest one rake the coals a raw dish may be placed in an oven on the eve of sabbath shortly before nightfall what is the reason since it will not be fit for the evening he withdraws his mind from it and will not come to rake the coals again if it is quite boiled it is well if partly boiled it is forbidden yet if a raw bone is thrown into it is permitted and now that the master said whatever may be harmed by the draft one will not uncover it with flesh of a kid where it, the oven is dogged round it is well with flesh of a buck where it, the oven is not dogged round is forbidden but as to flesh of a kid where it is not dogged round or of a buck where it is dogged round our ashi permits it while our jeremiah of Dipti forbids it now according to our ashi who permits it did we not learn meat onion s or ags may not be Roasted unless they can be roasted before sunset there the reference is to flesh of a buck and where it the oven is not dogged round other state with the flesh of a kid whether it the oven is dogged round or not it is well of a buck too if it is dogged round it is well they differ in respect to flesh of a buck at the oven not being dogged our ashi permits it while our Jeremiah of Dipti forbids it now according to our ashi who permits it did we not learn meat onion s or ags may not be roasted unless they can be roasted before sunset there the reference is to meat on the coals direct rub and said as for a raw gourd it is well since a draft is injurious to it it is like flesh of a kid Betcham I maintain one must not sell etc our rabbis taught Betcham I maintain a man must not sell an article to a gentile nor lend it to him nor loan him money nor make him a gift on the eve of Sabbath unless he can reach his house before sunset while Beth rule unless he can reach the house nearest the city while our Akiva said unless he can depart from the door of his the Jews' house before the Sabbath said our Jose son of our Judah the words of our Akiva are the very words of Beth Hillel our Akiva comes only to explain the words of Beth Hillel our rabbis taught Beth Shammai maintain a man must not sell his leaven to a Gentile unless he knows that it will be consumed before Passover this is Beth Shammai's view but Beth Hillel say as long as he the Jew may he that he may sell it our Judah said Talmud, Mosh of Bath of Babylonian Qutah and any other kind of Qutah may not be sold thirty days before Passover our rabbis taught food may be placed before a dog in a courtyard and if it takes it and goes out one has no duty toward it similarly food may be placed before a Gentile in a courtyard and if he takes it and goes out one has no duty toward him what is the purpose of this further dictum surely it is the same as the first you might argue. The one is incumbent upon him whereas the other is not therefore we are informed
Rest this is rabbis view are Simeon and Gamaliel said it is unnecessary but from prior to Sidon it is permitted even on the eve of Sabbath our rabbis taught Gentile cities must not be besieged less than three days before the Sabbath yet once they commence they need not leave off and thus did Shammai say until until it fall even on the Sabbath our Simeon and Gamaliel said it was the practice in my father's house etc it was taught Arzadik said this was the practice of our Gamaliel's house as they used to. Give white garments to the fuller three days before the Sabbath, but colored garments even on the eve of the Sabbath. And from their usage, we learned that white garments are more difficult to wash than colored ones. Abbe was giving a colored garment to a fuller and asked him, How much do you want for it? As for a white garment, he answered, Our rabbis have already anticipated you. Said he, Abbe said, When one gives a garment to a fuller, he should deliver it to him by measure and receive it back by measure. For if it is more, he spoiled it by stretching, and if less, he spoiled it by shrinking. And both agree that the beam of the oil press and the circular one press may be laden. Wherein do all the other acts differ that Betchamai forbid them, and wherein do those relating to the beam of the oil press and the circular one press differ that Betchamai do not forbid them? Those other acts which have done on the Sabbath involve a sin offering. Betchamai forbid on the eve of it. Sabbath just before nightfall, but the loading of the beam of the oil press and the circular one press which have done on the Sabbath does not involve a sin offering. They did not forbid which Tana maintains that everything which comes automatically is well said. Our Jose, son of our Hannah, it is our Ishmael, for we learned in the case of garlic, half ripe grapes, and parched ears of corn were crushed before sunset. Our Ishmael said one may finish them at night. Our Akiba said Talmud, Mosh of Bathby. One may not finish them at night, and our Eliezer B. Pedaf said it is our Eliezer B. Shamu, for we learned if honeycombs are crushed on the eve of Sabbath and if the honey exudes spontaneously, it is forbidden, but our Eliezer permits it now as to our Jose, son of our Hannah. What is the reason that he did not answer as our Eliezer? He can tell you it is only there that our Eliezer permits it since it was originally food and still food, but here it was originally food and now a liquid and our Eliezer B. Pedeth, he can answer you, but we know our Eliezer B. Shamu to hold that even olives and grapes are also permitted. For when our Hashia came from Nihardia, he came and brought a veritha in his hands. If olives and grapes are crushed on the eve of Sabbath and they their juices exude spontaneously, therefore bidden our Eliezer and our Simeon permitted, and our Jose B. Our Hannah, he did not know this veritha and our Eliezer. What is the reason that he did not answer as our Jose son of our Hannah, he can tell you. Was it not stated thereon where they lack crushing? There is no controversy at all, they differ only where pounding is lacking, and these two are similar to those that lack crushing. Our Jose son of our Hannah gave a practical decision in accordance with our Ishmael as to the oil belonging to the pressers and the mats of the pressers wrap forbade it, and Samuel permitted it as to coupled mattings wrap forbids them, and Samuel permits them, or said as to a goat kept for its milk, for its. Shearings of fowl for its eggs, oxen for plowing, and dates for trading, rap for bits, and Samuel permits them, and they differ in the controversy of Arsimian and Arjuda. A certain disciple gave a practical decision in Hartog Argais in accordance with Arsimian, thereupon Arham not abandoned him, but do we not hold as Arsimian it was in the place of Rab, and so he should have acted accordingly. There were two disciples, one saved food, etc., in one utensil, and one saved it in four or five utensils, and they differ in the same dispute as that of Rabba Bizab and Arhuna Mishnah. Meat onion, S and egg, S may not be roasted unless they can be roasted while it is yet day. Bread may not be put into an oven just before nightfall, nor a cake upon coals unless its surface can form a crust while it is yet day. Our Eliezer said there must be time for the bottom surface thereof to form a crust. The Passover sacrifice may be lowered into the oven just before nightfall, and the fire may be lighted with chips. In the pile in the chamber of the heart Talmud, Mosh of Bath, but in the country there must be time for the fire to take hold of its greater part. Our Judah said in the case of charcoal, just a little suffices Gemara and how much. Our Eliezer said in Rab's name that it may be roasted before sunset as the food of the son of Dirasai. It was stated likewise. Our said in Our Yohanan's name whatever is as the food of the son of Dirasai is not subject to the interdict of the cooking of Gentiles. It was taught Hannah said whatever is as the food of the son of Dirasai may be kept on the stove though it is not swept clear of the cinders and besprinkled with ashes. Bread may not be put, etc. The scholars propounded does the bottom surface mean the one by the oven or perhaps bottom means the one by the fire come and here our Eliezer said there must be time for the surface adhering to the oven to form a crust because a whole company is present and should one man forget himself another will. Remind him the Passover sacrifice may be lowered, etc. What is the reason? Because the members of the company are extremely careful, but otherwise it would not be permitted. Yet a master said with the flesh of a kid, whether it the oven is dogged round or not, it is well there, it is cut up, whereas here it is not cut up and the fire is lighted with chips, etc. Once do we know this? Said Arhuna, you shall kindle no fire throughout your habitations, only throughout your habitations you may not kindle, but you may kindle in the pile in the chamber of the hearth. Are his daughter, if so, even on the Sabbath, you rather said, Are his daughter, verse when it comes, conies to permit the burning of limbs and the fat, while the priests are very particular, but in the country there must be time for the fire to take hold, etc. What is meant by their greater part? Rab said the greater part of each log, and Samuel said that it should not be said, Let us bring chips to place under them, are high Bury the which affords support to Samuel that the flame should ascend of its own accord and not with the help of something else as to a single log rap said the greater part of its thickness while others state the greater part of its circumference are papa observed therefore we require the greater part of both its thickness and its circumference this is a controversy of Tanamar high said that the log may be rendered unfit for an artisan's work Arjuna be but there is said that the fire should take hold on both sides and though there is no proof of the matter there is a hint thereof the fire hath devoured both the ends of it and the midst of it is burned is it profitable for any work and there was a fire lit the burning before him what is a rap said willow fire while Samuel said logs kindled by willow fire a certain man announced who wants Abana and it was found to be willows Arhuna said canes do not require the greater part but if they are tied together the greater part is required Kernels of dates do not require the greater part, but if they are put in bales, they require the greater part. Are his daughter On the contrary, separate canes may fall apart, but if tied together, they cannot fall apart. Kernels can fall apart, but if placed in bales, they cannot. It was stated likewise. Talmud, Mosh of Bath, B. Arkahana said canes tied together require the greater part. If not tied together, they do not require the greater part. Kernels require the greater part. If put in bales, they do. Not our Joseph learned four fires do not require the greater part. Viz of pitch, sulfur, cheese, and grease in a berry. It was taught straw and rakings to our Yohan and said Babylonian woods do not require the greater part. Our Joseph demurred to what does this refer? Shall we say to chips? But if concerning a wickola, said he who kindles must kindle the great part of what protrudes. Is there a question of chips? Rather said our Joseph, it refers to the bark of cedar. Rami B. Abba said it refers to dry. Twix chapter I Mishnah wherewith may we kindle the Sabbath lights and wherewith may we not kindle them we may not kindle them with lechos and tokalik bast with a desert wixi weeds of epitch shai wah wax kick oil oil of burning tail fat or tallow nahum the meat said we may kindle them with boiled halab but the sages maintain whether boiled or not you may not kindle there with gamara lechus cedar bark but cedar bark is simply what it means a woolly substance bast within it nor with hosen to our Joseph said that is hatchel flax abedimert but it is written and the hasten shall be as any earth rather said abe it is crushed but uncombed flax nor with calic Samuel said I asked all seafarers about it and they told me that it is called kalk our Isaac bzeira said gushkara rabin and abe were sitting before rabbanim the brother of the reshalitha seeing that he was wearing metoxa rabin said to abe that is the calic of which we Learn we call it paranda silk. He answered him an objection is raised garments of silk, calic and cord silk are liable to fringes. This refutes it. Alternatively, silk is one thing and paranda silk is another. Nor with the bast with i.e. willow bast. Rabin and Abbe
is manufactured and under its branches rest all the sick of the West, i.e. Palestine, Rabbah said as to the wicks which the sages said that you must not kindle therewith for the Sabbath, the reason is because their flame burns unevenly, the oils which the sages said you must not kindle therewith is because they do not flow freely to the wick, I asked Rabbah as to the oils which the sages said you must not kindle therewith for the Sabbath, is it permissible to pour a little good oil into them? And like therewith do we forbid it lest one come to light therewith the forbidden oil in its unmixed state or not he answered him you must not light therewith what is the reason because you must not light he raised an objection if one wraps a material which may be used as a wick for lighting around a material which may not be lit one must not light therewith Arsimian B. Gamaliel said in my father's house a wick was wound over a nut and they did light therewith thus he teaches that one may light he replied instead of refuting me by Arsimian B. Gamaliel's view support me by the first tan is ruling that is no difficulty and act is more weighty thus the difficulty still remains for surely it was for lighting no for floating if for floating what is the reason of the first tan it is all Arsimian B. Gamaliel but there is a lacuna and it was taught us if one wraps a material which may be used for lighting around a material which may not be lit you must not light Therewith when is that said for lighting but for floating it is permitted for our Simeon B. Gamaliel said in my father's house a wick was wound about a nut and lit yet that is not so for our Baron is said in Rab's name the melted tallow and the dissolved inwards of fish one may pour a little oil and light therewith these flow freely in their natural state while those in the mission do not flow freely in their natural state but that the rabbis forbade melted tallow on account of unmelted tallow and the dissolved inwards of fish on account of the undissolved inwards of fish then let us prohibit melted tallow and the dissolved inwards of fish diluted with oil on account of the same without an admixture of oil that itself is merely a preventive measure and are we to arise and enact one preventive measure to safeguard another preventive measure Rami Biham recited the wicks and oil which the sages said one may not light therewith on the Sabbath one must also not light. Therewith in the temple because it is said to cause a lamp to burn continually he recited and he interpreted it the flame must ascend of itself and not through something else we learned the outworn bridges and girdles of priests were unraveled and with these they kindled the lights the rejoicing of the water drawing was different come and your worn out priestly garments were unraveled and of these wicks were made for the temple surely that means the garments of composite materials no. The garments of linen are meant are who not said with regard to the wicks and oils which the sages said one must not light therewith on the Sabbath one may not light therewith on Hanukkah either on the Sabbath or on weekdays Rob observed what is Arhuna's reason he holds that if it the Hanukkah lamp goes out one must attend thereto and one may make use of its light are his dom maintained one may light therewith on weekdays but not on the Sabbath he holds if it goes out Talmud, Mosh of Bath be it. Does not require attention and one may make use of its light. Arzara said in Armadhana's name, other state Arzara said in Rab's name regarding the wicks and oils which the sages said one must not light therewith on the Sabbath, one may light therewith on Hanukkah either on weekdays or on the Sabbath, said Arjeremiah. What is Rab's reason he holds if it goes out it does not require attention and one may not make use of its light. The rabbi stated this before Abbe in Arjeremiah's name, but he did not accept it. But when Rabin came, the rabbi stated it before Abbe in Arjohanan's name, whereupon he accepted it. Had I he observed merited the great fortune, I would have learned to stick to originally, but he learned it now. The difference is in respect of the studies of one's youth. Now, if it goes out, does it not require attention? But the following contradicts it. its observances from sunset until there is no wayfarer in the street. Does that not mean that if it goes out within that period? It must be real it no if one has not yet lit he must light it or in respect of the statutory period until there is no wayfarer in the street until one is that rabbi barhana said in our Yohanan's name until the palmyrenes have departed our rabbis taught the precept of hanukkah demands one light for a man and his household the zealous kindle a light for each member of the household and the extremely zealous beth shammai maintain on the first day eight lights are lit and thereafter they are gradually reduced but beth hillel say on the first day one is lit and thereafter they are progressively increased ola said in the west palestine to amarang mar Hosei aben and our Hosei but a differ therein one maintains the reason of beth shammai is that it shall correspond to the days still to come and that of beth hillel is that it shall correspond to the days that are gone but another maintains beth shammai's reason is that it shall correspond to the bullocks of the festival whilst Beth Hillel's reason is that we promote in matters of sanctity but do not reduce Rabbi Barhana said there were two old men inside and one did as Beth Shammai and the other as Beth Hillel the former gave the reason of his action that it should correspond to the bullocks of the festival while the latter stated his reason because we promote in matters of sanctity but do not reduce our rabbis taught it is incumbent to place the Hanukkah lamp by the door of one's house on the outside if one dwells in an upper chamber he places it at the window nearest the street but in times of danger it is sufficient to place it on the table Rabbi said another lamp is required for its light to be used yet if there is a blazing fire it is unnecessary but in the case of an important person even if there is a blazing fire another lamp is required what is the reason of Hanukkah for our rabbis taught on the 25th of Kislu commence the days of Hanukkah which are eight on which a lamentation for the dead and fasting are forbidden for when the Greeks entered the temple they defiled all the oils therein and when the Hasmonean dynasty prevailed against and defeated them they made search and found only one cruise of oil which lay with the seal of the high priest but which contained sufficient for one day's lighting only yet a miracle was wrought therein and they lit the lamp therewith for eight days the following year these days were appointed a festival with the recital of hell. And thanksgiving we learned elsewhere if a spark which flies from the anvil goes forth and causes damage he the smith is liable if a camel laden with flax passes through a street and the flax overflows into a shop catches fire at the shopkeeper's lamp and sets the building alight the camel owner is liable but if the shopkeeper placed the light outside the shopkeeper is liable Arjuna said in the case of a Hanukkah lamp he is exempt Rubin is said in Rab's name this proves that the Hanukkah lamp should in the first instance be placed within ten for should you think above ten let him say to him you ought to have placed it higher than a camel and his rider yet perhaps if he is put to too much trouble he may refrain from the observance of the precept Arkahana said our Nathan Beman Yamai expounded in our Tanham's name Talmud, Mosh of Bath if a Hanukkah lamp is placed above twenty cubits from the ground it is unfit like Sukkah and a crossbeam over the entrance of an Ali Arkahana. Also said our Nathan Beman Yamai expounded in our Tanham's name why is it written and the pit was empty there was no water in it from the implication of what is said and the pit was empty do I not know that there was no water in it what then is taught by there was no water in it there was no water yet there were snakes and scorpions in it Rabbi said the Hanukkah lamp should be placed within the hand breadth nearest the door and where is it placed Arah Hassan of Rabbi said on the right hand side our Samuel. Of Dipti said on the left hand side and the law is on the left so that the Hanukkah lamp shall be on the left and the mezuzah on the right. Rab Judah said in R.C.'s name one must not count money by the Hanukkah light. When I state this before Samuel he observed to me has then the lamp sanctity R. Joseph Demer does blood possess sanctity for it was taught he shall pour out the blood thereof and cover it with dust wherewith he pours out he must cover i.e. he must not cover it with his foot so that precepts may not appear contemptible to him so here too it is that precepts may not appear contemptible to him or Joshua B. Levi was asked is it permitted to make use of the booth decorations during the whole of the seven days he answered him the questioner behold it was said one must not count money by the Hanukkah light. God of Abraham exclaimed R. Joseph he makes that which was taught dependent upon what was not taught of booths it was taught whereas of Hanukkah it was not for it was Taught if one roofs at the booth in accordance with its requirements, beautifies it with hangings and sheets and suspends therein nuts, peaches, almonds, pomegranates, great clusters, garlands of ears of corn, wines, oils, and flowers, he may not use them until the conclusion of the last day of the feast. Yet if he stipulates concerning then it is all according to his stipulation, rather said our Joseph, the basis of all is the law relating to blood. It was stated, Rab said, one must not light from lamp to lamp, but Samuel maintained you may light from lamp to lamp. Rab said, fringes may not be detached from one garment for insertion in another, but
Then this is not a refutation, but if you want Samuel's view, say that it is permitted even with the chip. Then this is a refutation. Rabbi answered, it is a preventive measure, lest he does not find his weights exact and leaves them hull and arshis hate objected without the veil of testimony. Shall Aaron order it? Does he then require its light? Surely during the entire forty years that the Israelites traveled in the wilderness, they traveled only by his light, but it is a testimony to mankind that the divine presence rests in Israel. What is a testimony? Said Rabbi, that was the western branch of the candelabrum in which the same quantity of oil was poured as into the rest, and yet he kindled the others from it and ended there with now here since the branches are immovable, it is impossible other than that he take a chip and kindle it, which is a difficulty both on the view that it is because of the cheapening of the precept and on the view that it is because of the impairing of it. Precept are proper reconciled, it thus it is lit by long wicks, yet after all on the view that it is because of the impairing of precepts there is a difficulty that is indeed a difficulty what is our decision thereon are who not the son of our Joshua said we consider if the lighting fulfills the precept one may light from lamp to lamp but if the placing of the lamp fulfills the precept one may not light from lamp to lamp for the scholars propounded does the kindling or the placing constitute it. Precept come and here for Rabbah said if one was holding a Hanukkah lamp and thus standing he does nothing this proves that the placing constitutes the precept no there a spectator may think that he is holding it for his own purposes come and here for Rabbah said if one lights it within and then takes it outside he does nothing now it is well if you say that the kindling constitutes the precept for this reason we require the kindling to be done in its proper place and therefore he does. Nothing but if you say that the placing constitutes the precept, why has he done nothing there too? An observer may think that he lit it for his own purposes. Come and here for our Joshua be Levi said Talmud, Moshe Bathe with regard to a lantern which was burning the whole day of the Sabbath at the conclusion of the Sabbath it is extinguished and then redash lit. Now it is well if you say that the kindling constitutes the precept, then it is correct. But if you say that the placing constitutes it, precept is this merely extinguished and redash lit. Surely it should have stated it must be extinguished, lifted up, replaced, and then relit. Moreover, since we pronounce a benediction who sanctified us by his commandments and commanded us to kindle the lamp of Hanukkah, it proves that the kindling constitutes the precept. This proves it. And now that we say that the kindling constitutes the precept, if a deaf mute idiot or minor lights it, he does nothing but a woman may certainly light it for our. Joshua B. Levi said the precept of the Hanukkah lamp is obligatory upon women for they too were concerned in that miracle. Arshis hate said the precept of the Hanukkah lamp is incumbent upon a guest. Arzara said originally when I was at the academy I shared the cost with mine host but after I took a wife I said now I certainly do not need it because they kindle the lamp on my behalf at my home. Our Joshua B. Levi said all oils are fit for the Hanukkah lamp but olive oil is of the best epic. Observed at first the master rabbi used to seek poppy seed oil saying the light of this is more lasting but when he heard the dictum of our Joshua B. Levi he was particular for olive oil saying this yields a clearer light. Our Joshua B. Levi also said all oils are fit for ink and olive oil is of the best the scholars propounded for kneading or for smoking come and here for our Samuel B. Zutra recited all oils are fit for ink and olive oil is of the best both for kneading and for smoking our Samuel B. Zutra recited it thus all suits are fit for ink and olive oil is the best. Arhuna said all gums are good for ink but balsam gum is the best of all. Our high Ashi said he who lights the Hanukkah lamp must pronounce a blessing while our Jeremiah said he who sees the Hanukkah lamp must pronounce a blessing. Rab Judah said on the first day he who sees must pronounce two and he who lights must pronounce three blessings. Thereafter he who lights pronounces two and he who sees pronounces one what is. Omitted the season is omitted yet let the miracle be omitted the miracle holds good for every day what benediction is uttered this who sanctified us by his commandments and commanded us to kindle the light of Hanukkah and where did he command us or we said it follows from thou shalt not turn aside from the sentence which they shall shoot the Aramaic quoted ask thy father and he will shoot thee thine elders and they will tell the Aramaic objected Demi I can be employed for an Arab end. For a joint ownership of benediction is pronounced over it and grace in common is recited after it and it may be separated by a naked person and at twilight but if you say that every rabbinical precept requires a benediction here when one stands naked how can he pronounce a benediction lo we require therefore shall thy camp be holy that he see no unclean thing in thee which is absent said a certain rabbinical law requires a benediction whereas a doubtful rabbinical law does not but what of the second day of festivals which is a rabbinical institution based on doubt and yet it requires a benediction there it was instituted in order that it should not be treated slightingly Rabbah said the majority of the am hires tie their produce are who not said if a courtyard has two doors it requires two Hanukkah lamps said Rabbah that was said only if they are situated at two different sides but if on the same side it is unnecessary what is the reason shall we say because of suspicion whose suspicion shall we say that of strangers then let it be necessary even on the same side whilst if the suspicion of townspeople then even if on two different sides it is still unnecessary after all it is on account of the suspicion of the townspeople yet perchance they may pass one door and not the other and say just as if the lamp has not been lit at this door so has it not been lit at the other and whence do you know that we pay regard to suspicions because it was Taught our Simeon said on account of four considerations the Torah ordered P.E.I. to be left at the end of the field as a precaution against the robbing of the poor against wasting the time of the poor against suspicion and against transgressing thou shalt not finish off the corners of thy field as a precaution against the robbing of the poor lest the owner see a free hour and say to his poor relations this is P.E.I. Talmud, Mosh of Bath B and against wasting the time of the poor that the poor should not have to sit and watch out now the owner will leave P.E.I. and against suspicion that passers by may not say curse be the man who has not left P.E.I. in his field and against transgressing thou shalt not finish off are not all these on account of thou shalt not finish off said Rabbah it means as a precaution against cheats our Isaac be read of a set in Arhuna's name a lamp with two spouts is credited to two people Rabbah said if one fills a dish with oil and surrounds it with wicks and places a vessel over it, it is credited to many people. If he does not place a vessel over it, he turns it into a kind of fire and is not credited even to one. Rabbah said, It is obvious to me that if one must choose between the house light and the Hanukkah light, the former is preferable on account of the importance of the peace of the home between the house light and wine for the sanctification of the day. The house light is preferable on account of the peace of the home. Rabbah propounded, What if the choice lies between the Hanukkah lamp and the sanctification of the day? Is the latter more important because it is permanent, or perhaps the Hanukkah lamp is preferable on account of advertising the miracle? After propounding, he himself solved it. The Hanukkah lamp is preferable on account of advertising the miracle. Arhuna said, He who habitually practices the lighting of the lamp will possess scholarly sons. He who is observant of the precept of Mazuza will merit a beautiful. Dwelling he who is observant of fringes will merit a beautiful garment. He who is observant of the sanctification of the day will be privileged to fill barrels of wine. Arhuna was accustomed frequently to pass the door of Arabin the carpenter, seeing that he habitually lit many lights. He remarked, Two great men will issue hence Redb Abin and Arhib Abin issued hence Arhisda was accustomed frequently to pass the house of Arshizba's father, seeing that he habitually lit many lights. He remarked, A great man will issue hence Arshizba issued hence Arjoseph's wife used to kindle the Sabbath lights late thereupon. Arjoseph said to her, It was taught he took not away the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. This teaches that the pillar of cloud overlapped the pillar of fire and the pillar of fire overlapped the pillar of cloud. Thereupon she thought of doing it very early, said an old man to her, It was taught providing that one is not too early or too late. Rabba said he. Who loves the rabbis will have sons who are rabbis, he who honors the rabbis will have rabbis for sons in law, he who stands in awe of the rabbis will himself be a rabbinical scholar, but if he is not fit for this, his words will be heated like those of a rabbinical scholar, nor with oil of burning. What is oil of burning? said Rabbi, oil of terimah, which was defiled, and why is it called oil of burning? Because it stands to be burnt, and why is this forbidden on the Sabbath, since it is one's duty to destroy it? We fear lest he tilt the
Mention at Hanukkah in the benediction, he will rebuild Jerusalem. Said Arshis hate to them the scholars. It is as the prayer, just as it is inserted in the prayer in the benediction of thanks. So is it inserted in grace after meals in the benediction of thanks. The scholars propounded his new moon to be mentioned in grace after meals. Should you say that it is unnecessary in the case of Hanukkah, which is only rabbinical, then on new moon, which is biblical, it is necessary, or perhaps since the performance of work is not forbidden, it is not mentioned. Rab said it is mentioned. Arhanana said it is not mentioned. Arzerika said hold fast to Rab's ruling because Arashai supports him. For Arashai taught on those days when there is an additional offering, this new moon and the weekdays of festivals at the evening, morning, and afternoon services. The eighteen benedictions are recited, and the nature of the occasion is inserted in the Avodah. And if one does not insert it, he is turned back. And there is no sanctification over wine and mention thereof is made in grace after meals on those days when there is no additional offering this Mondays, Thursdays, fast and Mahamedoth what business have Mondays and Thursdays here rather save us on the Mondays, Thursdays and the following Mondays of fasts, and of Mahamedoth at the evening morning and afternoon services the eighteen benedictions are recited and the nature of the occasion is inserted in thou hearkenst unto prayer yet. If one does not insert it he is not made to repeat it and no reference is made on these days in grace after meals the scholars propounded should one refer to Hanukkah in the additional services since there is no additional service for Hanukkah itself we do not refer to it or perhaps at the Sabbath and new moon is a day which requires four services are and Rab Judah both maintain it is not referred to Arnaman and Aryohan and both maintain it is referred to Abay observed to our Joseph. This ruling of Arhuna and Rab Judah is synonymous with Rab's for Argidal said in Rab's name if new moon falls on the Sabbath he who reads the half era in the prophetic lesson need not mention new moon since but for the Sabbath there is no prophetic lesson on new moon how compare there there is no prophetic lesson on new moon at all whereas here at the reference to Hanukkah is found in the evening morning and afternoon services rather it is similar to the following Bizarra Hade by said in the name of Armahana in Rab's name when a festival falls on the Sabbath he who reads the half era in the prophetic lesson at the Sabbath afternoon service need not mention the festival since but for the Sabbath there is no prophetic lesson at the afternoon service on festivals Talmud, Mosh of Bath be at the law is as none of these rulings but as our Joshua be Levi's dictum when the day of atonement falls on the Sabbath he who recites the Nila service must refer to the Sabbath it is a day. When four services are obligatory, then one law contradicts another. First, you say that the law is as our Joshua believe, whereas it is an established principle that the law is as Rabba for Rabba said on a festival that falls on the Sabbath. The reader who descends before the desk at the evening service need not make mention of the festival, since but for the Sabbath the reader would not descend before the desk at the evening service on festivals. How compare there by ritual law it is not required. Even on the Sabbath, and it was the rabbis who instituted it on account of danger, but here it is a day when four services are a statutory obligation, nor with tail fat, etc. But the sages are identical with the first ten of the different in respect to our Baron's dictum in Rab's name, but it is not clearly defined. Mishnah one may not kindle the Sabbath lamp with oil of burning on festivals, or Ishmael said one may not light IT with itron for the honor of the Sabbath, but the sages permitted with. All oils with sesame oil, nut oil, radish oil, fish oil, gourd oil, itron, and naphtha are tarfon said one may light it with olive oil only tomorrow. What is the reason? Because sacred commodities may not be burnt on festivals. Whence do we know it said Hezekiah and the school of Hezekiah taught likewise and ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning but that which remaineth of it until the morning ye shall burn with fire. Now the second until the morning need not be stated what then is the teaching of until the morning scripture comes to a point the second morning for its burning of a said scripture saith the burnt offering of the Sabbath shall be burnt on its Sabbath but not the burnt offering of weekdays on the Sabbath nor the burnt offering of weekdays on festivals Rabbah said scripture saith no manner of work shall be done on them save that which every man must eat that only may be done of you that but not its preliminaries only but not circumcision out of its proper time. Which might otherwise be inferred of Minori Arashi said on the first day shall be a solemn rest Shabbat and Talmud. Mosh Shabbat is an affirmative precept thus there is an affirmative and a negative precept in respect of festivals and an affirmative precept cannot supersede a negative and an affirmative precept thus at the burning of defiled terimah is forbidden only on festivals but on weekdays it is well what is the reason said Rab just as it is obligatory to burn defiled sacred food. So tea is obligatory to burn defiled terimah and the Torah said when it is burnt you may benefit therefom where did the Torah say thus dash it follows from our Arnaman's dictum for Arnaman said in Rabbi Abba's name scripture said and I behold I have given thee the charge of mine heat offerings the writ refers to two to is clean and unclean terimah and the divine law said I have given thee meaning let it be thine for burning it under thy pot alternatively it follows from our Abab's dictum for Arabab said in Aryohanan's name neither have I put away thereof being unclean thereof you may not put away but you may put away burn defiled oil of terimah yet perhaps say thereof you may not put away but you may put away undefiled oil of coach which is defiled does it the reverse not follow a fortiori of tithe which is light yet the Torah said neither have I put away thereof being unclean then how much more so coach which is more stringent if so in the case of terimah to let us say does it the reverse not follow a fortiori surely thereof is written and why do you prefer it thus it is logical that I do not exclude coach since it is stringent in respect of mnemonic pa and aka I pickle two nut har three sacrifice corbin for me I love you and six it is forbidden measure two and one and on the contrary terimah is not to be excluded since it is stringent in respect of its mnemonic mah pause death method two a fifth homesh talmud Mosh of Bath B3 it cannot be redeemed Pitain and 4 it is forbidden to Zareen the former are more numerous alternatively coach is more stringent since it involves the penalty of Kareth Arnam and B Isaac said scripture set the first fruits of thy corn of thy wine and of thine oil shalt thou give to him to him but not for its light hence it can be used for light if defiled Arish male said etc what is the reason Rabbi answered since it is malodorous it is feared that he the occupant of the house will leave it and go out said Abay to him and let him leave it I maintain he replied that the kindling of the lamp on the Sabbath is a duty for Arnam and B Arzab the other state Arnam and B Rabbi said in Rab's name the kindling of the lamp for the Sabbath is a duty the washing of the hands and the feet in warm water on the eve of the Sabbath is voluntary whilst I maintain that it is a mizwah how is it a mizwah for Rab Judah said in Rab's name this was the practice of R Judah Bilai on the eve of the Sabbath a basin filled with hot water was brought to him and he washed his face hands and feet and he wrapped himself and sat in French linen robes and was like an angel of the Lord of hosts but his disciples hid the corners of their garments from him said he to them my sons have I not thus taught you a linen robe in respect to fringes Beth Shammai exempted while Beth Hillel hold it liable and the Halachah is as Beth Hillel but they held it is forbidden on account of a night garment and thou hast removed my soul far off from peace I forgot prosperity what is the meaning of and thou hast removed my soul far off from peace Arabab said this refers to the kindling of the light on the Sabbath I forgot prosperity our Jeremiah said this refers to the loss of baths Aryohan and said this means the washing of hands and feet in hot water our Isaac Napaha said this refers to a beautiful bed and beautiful bed clothes upon it our Abbas said this refers to a deck. Outbet and an adorned wife for scholars are rabbis taught who is wealthy he who has pleasure in his wealth this is our Meir's Bunimonic Matt Kassar Tarfon said he who possesses a hundred vineyards a hundred fields and a hundred slaves working in them are Akiva said he who has a wife comely indeed our Jose said he who has a privy near his table it was taught our Simeon B. Eliezer said one may not like the Sabbath lamp with balsam what is the reason Rabbi said since its smell is fragrant there is the need of a preventive measure lest one draw supplies from it said Abbe to him Talmud, Mosh of let the master say because it is volatile he states one thing and yet another one thing because it is volatile and yet another as a preventive measure lest he draw supplies from it a certain mother in law hated her daughter in law said she to her
oil and what shall the Medans do who have only nut oil and what shall the Alexandrians do who have only radish oil and what shall the people of Cappadocia do who have neither the one nor the other save naphtha but you have not else but that concerning which the sages said one may not kindle therewith and one may kindle with fish oil and Etron Arsimian Chizuri said one may kindle with oil of gourds and with naphtha Simico said all that which comes from flesh we may not kindle therewith. Except fish oil, but Simicos is identical with the earlier Tana. They differ in respect to our Baroness Dictum in Rab's name, but it is not clearly defined. It was taught Arsimian B. Eliezer said, Whatever comes forth from trees is not subject to the law of three by three finger breadths, and one may cover a booth there with except flax. Abbe observed Talmud, Mosh of Bath B. Arsimian B. Eliezer, and the Tana of the school of Arishmael said the same thing. Arsimian B. Eliezer has stated the Tana of it. School of Arishmael, what is that for the school of Arishmael taught since garments are mentioned in the Torah unspecified while the red specified wool and flax in the case of one of them, and just as their wool and flax are specified, so all garments are of wool and flax. Rabba said they differ in respect to three hand breadths by three and other clothes, not wool or linen. Arsimian B. Eliezer accepts their liability to defilement, whilst the Tana of the school of Arishmael rejects it now. All at least agree that an area of three finger breadths of wool or linen is subject to the defilement of leprosy. How do we know it? Because it was taught a garment. I know it only of a complete garment. Once do I learn it of cloth three finger breadths square from the verse and the garment yet say that it is to include three hand breadths square. Does that not follow a memory of a warp and a wolf become unclean? Is there a question of three hand breadths square? If so, if it is three finger breadths square, let it also be deduced a memory. Rather, this is the reply three hand breadths square, which is of use both to the wealthy and to the poor, can be deduced a memory. Three finger breadths square, which is of use to the poor only but not to the rich, cannot be learned a memory. Hence, it is only because scripture wrote it, but had scripture not written it, we could not deduce it a memory. Yet say that its purpose is to include three hand breadths square of other materials. Scripture saith a woolen garment or a linen garment only a woolen or a linen garment but not anything else yet say when it is excluded it is from the defilement of three finger breadth square but three hand breadth square can become unclean two limitations are written a woolen garment or a linen garment hence one is to exclude them from the defilement of three finger breadth square and the other to exclude them from the defilement of three hand breadth square now according to Rabbah who said they differ in respect of three hand breadths by three and other cloths are Simeon B. Eliezer accepting their liability to defilement whilst the Tana of the school of Arishmael rejects it how does he or Simeon B. Eliezer know the defilement of three hand breadth square of other materials Talmud Mosh of Batha, he deduces it from Oriment for it was taught Oriment I only know it of Oriment how do I know it of three hand breadth square of other materials therefore it is stated or Ryman and Abe, how does he employ this or Ryman? He utilizes it to include three finger breadths square of wool or linen that it becomes unclean through creeping things and Robert the Merciful One revealed this in reference to leprosy and the same holds good of reptiles and Abe the analogy may be refuted as for leprosy the reason is because the warp and the wolf of wool or linen become defiled and their case and the other should you think that leprosy is stricter. Let the divine law write it with reference to reptiles and leprosy would be learned from them and the other leprosy could not be derived from reptiles because it may be refuted as for reptiles the reason is because they defile by the size of a lentil Abe said this tana of the school of Arishmael rebuts another tana of the school of Arishmael for the school of Arishmael taught a garment I know it only of a woolen or a linen garment whence do I know to include camel hair rabbit wool goat. Hair silk calic and from the verse or Rabba said when does this tana of the school of Arishmael reject the defilement of other materials only in respect of three finger breadths square but if it is three hand breadths square be accepts it but it was Rabba who said that in respect of three hand breadths by three and other clothes are Simeon B. Eliezer accepts their liability to defilement while the tana of the school of Arishmael rejects it Rabba retracted from that view. Alternatively this latter statement was made by our papa our papa said so all are of wool or flax is to include kilayim but of kilayim it is explicitly stated thou shalt not wear a mingled stuff wool and linen together I might argue that is only in the manner of wearing but to place it over oneself any two materials mingled are forbidden now does that not follow a fortiori of wearing though the whole body derives benefit from kilayim you say wool and linen alone are forbidden but Nothing else, how much more so wrapping oneself, hence the dictum of our papa is a fiction, our nom and B. Isaac said so, all etc. Talmud, Mosh of Bath B is to include fringes, but of fringes it is explicitly stated, thou shalt not wear a mingled stuff wool and linen together, and then it is written, thou shalt make the fringes, I might argue it is as Rabba for Rabba opposed two verses, it is written, and that they put upon the fringe of each border, which indicates of the same kind of material as the border, but it is also written, thou shalt not wear a mingled stuff wool and linen together, how is this to be reconciled, wool and linen fulfill the precept, both in their own kind and not in their own kind, other kinds of materials discharge the obligation in their own kind, but not in a different kind, thus you might argue it is as Rabba, therefore we are informed otherwise, our son of Rabba asked our Ashi according to the Tana of the school of Arishmael, why is uncleanness different? That we include other garments because or is written then here too let us say that other garments are included from the verse wherewith thou coverest thyself that comes to include a blind person's garment for it was taught that ye may look upon it this excludes a night garment you say this excludes a night garment yet perhaps it is not so but rather it excludes a blind man's garment when it is said wherewith thou coverest thyself lo a blind man's garment is stated how then do I interpret that ye may look upon it as excluding a night garment and what reason do you see to include a blind man's garment and to exclude a night garment I include a blind man's garment which can be seen by others while I exclude night garments which are not seen by others yet say rather that it is to include other garments it is logical that when one treats of wool and linen he includes a particular garment of wool and linen but when one treats of wool and linen shall he include other Garments Abbe said Arsimian B. Eliezer and Simico said the same thing Arsimian B. Eliezer as stated Simico's for it was taught Simico said if one covers it the booth with spun flax it is unfit because it may be defiled by leprosy with whom does that agree with this tana for we learned the warp and the wolf are defiled by leprosy immediately this is our mayor's ruling but our Judah maintain the warp when it is removed the wool immediately and bundles of wet flax after bleaching. Mishnah whatever comes forth from a tree easy you may not like the Sabbath lamp there with save flax and whatever comes forth from a tree cannot be defiled with the uncle and S of tents except linen gamara how do we know that flax is designated tree easy said Marzitra because scripture saith but she had brought them up to the roof and hid them with the stalks easy of the flax and whatever comes forth from a tree cannot be defiled with the uncle and S of tents except linen how do we know it? Said our Eliezer, the meaning of tent oval is learned Talmud, Mosh of Batha from the tabernacle. Here it is written, This is the law when a man dieth in a tent oval, and there it is written, and he spread the tent oval over the tabernacle, just as there the covering of linen is designated tent, so here too a covering of linen is designated tent. If so, just as there it was twisted and the thread was doubled sixfold, so here too it must be twisted and its thread doubled sixfold. The repetition of tent is an extension. If the repetition of tent is an extension, then everything else you should be included. If so, what avails the Gazirish Yet perhaps say, just as there the tabernacle was a board, so here too a tent of boards is meant. Scripture saith, And thou shalt make boards for the tabernacle. The tabernacle is called tabernacle, but the boards are not designated tabernacle. If so, when it is stated, And thou shalt make a covering for the tent oval, is the covering indeed not. Designated tent oval, but when our Eliezer propounded, can the skin of an unclean animal be defiled by overshadowing the dead? Dash, what doubt was there seeing that the skin of a clean animal cannot be defiled? Is there a question of the skin of an unclean animal? There it is different because scripture restored it as it is written, they shall bear the curtains of the tabernacle and the tent of meeting its covering and the covering of seal skin that is above it, thus the upper covering is assimilated. To the lower, just as the lower is designated tent, so is the upper
Defiled in their case rather it is learned from leprosy for it was taught skin I know it only of the skin of a clean animal how do I know it of the skin of an unclean animal therefore it is stated or skin but this may be refuted as for reptiles the reason is they defiled by the size of a lentil let leprosy prove it and thus the argument revolves the characteristic of one is not that of the other and vice versa the feature common to both is that skin is unclean in their case and the skin of an unclean animal was assimilated to that of a clean animal so also do I just the tent of the dead that skin is unclean in its case and the skin of an unclean animal is assimilated to that of a clean animal Rabbah Barnish observed to our ashi but this can be refuted as for the feature common to both it is that they defile others in less than the size of an olive will you say the same of the dead which defile only by the size of an olive rather said Rabbah Barnish Talmud Mosh of Bath B it is inferred a minority from goat's hair which is not defiled by leprosy yet is defiled by overshadowing the dead and the skin of an unclean animal which is defiled by leprosy is surely defiled by overshadowing the dead and when our Joseph recited for the sacred work none but the skin of a clean animal was considered fit for what practical law did he say it in respect of phylacteries of phylacteries it is explicitly stated that the law of the Lord may be in thy mouth meaning of that which is permitted in thy mouth rather in respect of their hide but Abbe said the skin of phylacteries is a law of Moses from Sinai rather it is in respect of tying it with hair and sewing it with its tendons but that is a law of Moses from Sinai for it was taught rectangular phylacteries are a law of Moses from Sinai they must be tied with their hair and sewn with their tendons rather it is in respect of their straps but our Isaac said black straps are a law of Moses from Sinai granted that black is Traditional is clean traditional what is our conclusion with respect to the Tahash which existed in Moses' day said Arlay in the name of Arsimian Belakish Armeir used to maintain the Tahash of Moses' day was a separate species and the sages could not decide whether it belonged to the genus of wild beasts or to the genus of domestic animals and it bad one horn in its forehead and it came to Moses' hand providentially just for the occasion and he made the covering of the tabernacle and then it was hidden now since he says that it had one horn in its forehead it follows that it was clean for our Judah said the ox which Adam the first man sacrificed had one horn in its forehead for it is said and it shall please the Lord better than an ox or a bullock that hath a horn sick and hoofs but Macron implies two said Arnam and B. Isaac Mikaran is written then let us solve thence that it was a genus of domestic animals since there is the Kirsh which is a species of beast and it has only one horn one can say that the Tahash is a kind of wild beast Mishnah which made of a cloth which was twisted but not cinched Aralizer said it is unclean and one may not light the Sabbath lamp there with our Akiba maintained it is clean and one may light there with Gemara as for the matter of uncleanness it is well for they differ in this Aralizer holds that twisting is of no effect and it remains in its previous condition while our Akiba holds that twisting is effective and it is Previous condition is indeed an old but with reference to lighting wherein do they differ our Eliezer said in our Ashai's name and our Adabi Akiba said likewise the reference here is to a rag exactly three finger breadth square and also to a festival falling on the eve of the Sabbath now all agree with our Judah who maintained one may fire an oven etc with whole utensils but not with broken utensils further all agree with holistic tumvis who lights must light the greater part of the wick which protrudes our Eliezer holds that twisting is of no avail and immediately one kindles it slightly it becomes a broken utensil and when he goes on kindling it he kindles a broken utensil but our Akiba holds that twisting is effective and it does not bear the character of a utensil and therefore when he kindles he kindles a mere piece of wood our Joseph observed this is what I learned exactly three finger breadth square but did not know in reference to what law now since our Adabi Akiba explains it in accordance with our Judah it follows that he himself holds as our Judah yet did our Adabi Akiba say thus surely our Adabi Akiba said Talmud Mosh of Bath if a Gentile hollows out a cabin log in Israel like may heat the oven there with on a festival yet why is it not no he states it according to the views of our Eliezer and our Akiba but does not hold thus himself Rabbi said this is our Eliezer's reason because one must not light the Sabbath lamp with an unsing or unsing. Rags then when our Joseph recited exactly three finger breadth square in respect of what law was it in respect of uncleanness for we learned the three finger breadth square of which they the sages spoke is exclusive of the hem this is our Simeon's view but the sages say exactly three finger breadth square Rab Judah said in Rab's name one may fire an oven etc with whole utensils but not with broken utensils this is our Judah's opinion but our Simeon permits it one may fire it with dates but if they are eaten one may not fire it with their stones that is our Judah's opinion but our Simeon permits it one may heat with nuts if they are eaten one must not heat with their shells this is our Judah's ruling but our Simeon permits it now they are all necessary for if we were told the first our Judah rules us in that case because it was a utensil before but only a fragment of a utensil now and so it is no hence forbidden but as for dates since they were stones originally and are Stones now I might argue that it is well permitted and if we were informed this of dates I might say the reason is because they the stones were originally concealed but are now revealed but as for nutshells which were uncovered originally and are uncovered still I might argue that it is well permitted thus they are necessary now this ruling of Rab was stated not explicitly but by implication for Rab ate dates and threw the stones into a pen whereupon our high said to him son of great ancestors a similar act on festivals is forbidden did he accept this ruling from him or not come and here for when Rab came to Babylon he ate dates and threw the stones to animals surely this means Persian dates no this means Syrian dates since they are fit for handling on account of their flesh our Samuel B. Barhana said to our Joseph according to our Judah who ruled one may fire an oven with utensils but not with broken utensils immediately one lights with it a little it becomes a broken Utensil and when he stirs the fuel he is stirring something that is forbidden he acts in accordance with our Matana for our Matana said in Rab's name if wood falls from a palm tree into a stove on a festival one adds more prepared wood and lights them our Hamada said the reference here in our Mishnah is to a rag less than three handbreadths square and they taught here some of the leniencies relating to the law of rags both our Eliezer and our Akiba following their views for we learned if material less than three handbreadths square is set aside for stopping a bath pouring from a pot or cleaning a mill there with whether it is a prepared material or not it is unclean that is our Eliezer's view our Joshua maintained whether it is a prepared material or not it is clean our Akiba ruled if a prepared material it is unclean if unprepared it is clean now will other state Rabbi be Barhan in our Yohanan's name said all admit that if it was thrown away on the refuse heap it is Universally agreed that it is clean Talmud, Mosh of Bath B. If one placed it in a chest, all agree that it is unclean. They differ only where he hung it on a frame or placed it behind the door. Our Eliezer holds since he did not throw it on the refuse heap, he had his mind upon it. Why then does he call it unprepared? Because relatively to placing it in a chest, it is not prepared. While our Joshua maintains since he did not place it in a chest, he has indeed accounted it as not. And why then does he call it prepared? Because relatively to throwing it on a refuse heap, it is prepared. But our Akiba agrees with our Eliezer where he hangs it on a clothes frame and with our Joshua where he puts it behind the door. Yet our Akiba retracted in favor of our Joshua. As view once is this deduced, said Rabbah, since it is stated a wig made of a cloth, why choose to teach a wig made of a cloth? Teach a wig of cloth, why a wig made of a cloth to show that it is still a cloth mission. A man may not pierce. An egg shall fill it with oil and place it over the mouth of a lamp in order that it should drip and even if it is a pot but our Judah permits it but if the potter joins it beforehand it is permitted because it is one utensil a man must not fill a dish of oil place it at the side of a lamp and put the wick and therein in order that it should draw but our Judah permits it tomorrow now they are all necessary for if we were told about an egg shell there the rabbis say that it is forbidden because since it is not loathsome he will come to take supplies therefrom but as for an earthen shell which is loathsome I might argue that they agree with our Judah while if we were told of an earthen shell only there does our Judah rule us but in the other case I might say that he agrees with the rabbis and if we were told of these two our Judah rules us of these because nothing interposes but as for a dish which interposes I would say that he agrees with the rabbis while if we were told of that only there do
providing that he does not intend making a ruckus both large and small articles are taught which is a difficulty on both views Ola reconciles it according to his view and our Jeremiah Rabba reconciles it according to his Ola reconciles it according to his view the couch is like the chair while our Jeremiah Rabba reconciles it according to his the chair is like the couch Rabba objected clothes merchants sell in their normal fashion providing that one does not intend to gain protection from the sun in hot weather or from the rain when it is raining but the strictly religious lingam on a staff behind their back now here that it is possible to do as the strictly religious it is the same as small articles of furniture yet when one has no intention our simian permits it at the outset this refutation of our Jeremiah Rabba is indeed a refutation mission if one extinguishes a lamp because he is afraid of gentiles robbers or an evil spirit or for the sake of an invalid that he should sleep he is not culpable if because he would spare the lamp the oil or the wick he is culpable our Jose exempts him in all cases except in respect of the wick because he makes charcoal Talmud Mosh of Bathagamara since the second clause teaches he is culpable it may be inferred that it is our Judah then to what does the first clause refer if to an invalid dangerously old Tana should have stated it is permitted while if to an invalid who is not in danger he should have stated he is liable to a sin offering after all it refers to an invalid dangerously sick and logically he should teach it is permitted but because he wishes to teach he is culpable in the second clause he also teaches he is not culpable in the first and as for what our Ashai taught if it is for the sake of a sick person that he should sleep he must not extinguish it but if he extinguishes it he is not liable though it is forbidden that refers to one who is not dangerously ill and agrees with our Simeon. This question was asked before our Tantum of Nemway one about extinguishing a burning lamp for a sick man on the Sabbath thereupon he commenced and spake thou Solomon where is thy wisdom and where is thy understanding it is not enough for thee that thy words contradict the words of thy father David but that they are self-contradictory thy father David said the dead praise not the Lord whilst thou saidest wherefore I praise the dead which are already dead but yet again thou saidest pray. Living dog is better than a dead lion yet there is no difficulty as to what David said the dead praise not the Lord this is what he meant let a man always engage in Torah and good deeds before he dies for as soon as he dies he is restrained from the practice of Torah and good deeds and the Holy One blessed be he finds not to praise in him and thus our Yohanan said what is meant by the verse among the dead I am free once a man dies he becomes free of the Torah and good deeds and as to what Solomon said wherefore I praise the dead that are already dead for when Israel sinned in the wilderness Moses stood before the Holy One blessed be he and uttered many prayers and supplications before him but he was not answered yet when he exclaimed remember Abraham Isaac and Israel thy servants he was immediately answered did not then Solomon well say wherefore I praise the dead that are already dead another interpretation in worldly affairs when a prince of flesh and blood issues a decree. It is doubtful whether it will be obeyed or not and even if you say that it is obeyed it is obeyed during his lifetime but not after his death whereas Moses our teacher decreed many decrees and enacted numerous enactments and they endure forever and unto all eternity did then not Solomon well say wherefore I praise the dead etc another interpretation of wherefore I praise etc is in accordance with Rab Judas dictum in Rab's name is what is meant by Shumi a token for good that they which Hate me may see it and be ashamed David prayed before the Holy One blessed be he sovereign of the universe forgive me for that sin it is forgiven he replied he shoo me a token in my lifetime he entreated in thy lifetime I will not make it known he answered but I will make it known in the lifetime of thy son Solomon for when Solomon built the temple he desired to take the ark into the Holy of Holies whereupon the gates clave to each other Solomon uttered twenty-four prayers yet he was not answered he opened his mouth and exclaimed lift up your heads O ye gates and be lifted up ye everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come and they rushed upon him to swallow him up crying who is the king of glory the Lord strong and mighty answered he then he repeated lift up your heads O ye gates ye lift them up ye everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come and who is this king of glory the Lord of hosts he is the king of glory seal yet he was not answered but as soon as he Pray, O Lord God, turn not away the face of thine anointed. Remember the good deeds of David, thy servant. He was immediately answered in that hour. The faces of all David's enemies turned black like the bottom of a pot, and all Israel knew that the Holy One, blessed be He, had forgiven him that sin. Did and not Solomon well say, Wherefore I praise the dead which are already dead. And thus it is written on the eighth day He sent the people away, and they blessed the king and went into their tents, joyful and glad of heart for all the goodness that the Lord had shewed unto David his servant and to Israel his people. And they went unto their tents means that they found their wives clean, joyful because they had enjoyed the luster of the divine presence, and glad of heart because their wives conceived, and each one bore a male child for all the goodness that the Lord had shewed unto David his servant that He had forgiven him that sin, and to Israel his people for He had forgiven them the sin. Of the day of atonement, and as to what Solomon said, for a living dog is better than a dead lion. That is as Rab Judah said in Rab's name, is what is meant by the verse, Lord, make me to know mine end, and the measure of my days when it is. Let me know how frail I am. David said before the Holy One, Blessed be He, Sovereign of the Universe, Lord, make me to know mine end. It is a decree before me. Replied He that the end of a mortal is not made known, and the measure of my days what it is. It is a decree before me that a person's span of life is not made known. Let me know how frail hateful I am. Said He to him, Thou wilt die on the Sabbath. Let me die on the first day of the week. The reign of Thy son Solomon shall already have become due, and one reign may not overlap another even by a hair Then let me die on the eve of the Sabbath. Said He for a day in Thy courts is better than a thousand. Better is to me the one day that Thou sittest and engagest in learning than a thousand burnt. Offerings which thy son Solomon is destined to sacrifice before me on the altar Talmud, Mosh of Bath be now every Sabbath day he would sit and study all day on the day that his soul was to be at rest the angel of death stood before him but could not prevail against him because learning did not cease from his mouth what shall I do to him said he now there was a garden before his house so the angel of death went ascended and sucked in the trees he David went out to see as he was ascending the latter it broke under him thereupon he became silent from his studies and his soul had reposed and Solomon sent to Beth Hamidrash my father is dead and lying in the sun and the dogs of my father's house are hungry what shall I do they sent back cut up a carcass and place it before the dogs and as for thy father put a loaf of bread or a child upon him and carry him away did and not Solomon well say for a living dog is better than a dead lion and as for the question which I asked before you Lamp is designated lamp and the soul of man is called a lamp better it is that the lamp of flesh and blood be extinguished before the lamp of the Holy One blessed be he Rab Judah son of our Samuel Bishalath said in Rab's name the sages wish to hide the book of Ecclesiastes because its words are self-contradictory yet why did they not hide it because its beginning is religious teaching and its end is religious teaching its beginning is religious teaching as it is written what profit hath man of all his labor wherein he laboreth under the sun and the school of our Janet commented under the sun he has none but he has an SC prophet before the sun the end thereof is religious teaching as it is written let us hear the conclusion of the matter fear God and keep his commandments for this is the whole of man what is meant by for this is the whole of man said our Eliezer the entire world was created only for the sake of this type of man Simeon Bezay other state Simeon Bezoma said Entire world was created only to be a companion to this man, and how are its words self contradictory? It is written, anger is better than play, but it is written, I said of laughter, it is to be praised, it is written, then I commend joy, but it is written, and of joy, I said, what doth it? There is no difficulty, anger is better than laughter, the anger which the Holy One blessed be he displays to the righteous in this world is better than the laughter which the Holy One blessed be he laughs with the wicked in this world, and I said of laughter, it is to be praised, that refers to the laughter which the Holy One blessed be he laughs with the righteous in the world to come, then I commend joy, this refers to the joy of a precept, and of joy, I said, what doth it? This refers to joy which is not in connection with the precept, this teaches you that the divine presence rests upon man neither through gloom nor through sloth nor through frivolity nor through levity nor through talk nor through. Idle chatter save through a matter of joy in connection with the precept as it is said but now bring me a minstrel and it came to pass when the minstrel played that the hand of the Lord came upon
Other to general matters even as a certain person came before Rabbi and said to him your wife is my wife and your children are mine would you like to drink a glass of wine asked he, he drank and burst a certain man came before Arhai and said to him your mother is my wife and you are my son would you like to drink a glass of wine asked he, he drank and burst Arhai observed Rabbi's prayer was in so far effective that his sons were not made illegitimate for when Rabbi prayed he used to say me. It be thy will O Lord our God to save me the stay from the impudent and from impudence matters of learning what is that as our Gamaliel sat and lectured woman is destined to bear every day for it is said the woman conceived and beareth simultaneously but a certain disciple scoffed at him quoting there is no new thing under the sun come and I will show you its equal in this world he replied he went forth and showed him a foul on another occasion our Gamaliel sat and lectured trees are destined to yield fruit every day for it is said and it shall bring forth boughs and bear fruit just as the boughs exist every day so shall there be fruit every day but a certain disciple scoffed at him saying but it is written there is no new thing under the sun come and I will show you its equal in this world replied he, he went forth and showed him the caper bush on another occasion our Gamaliel sat and expounded Palestine is destined to bring forth cakes and wool robes for it is said there shall be an Handful of corn in the land, but a certain disciple scoffed at him, quoting, There is no new thing under the sun come, and I will show you their equal in this world, replied he. He went forth and showed him morels and truffles, and for silk robes he showed him the bark of a young palm shoot. Our rabbis taught a man should always be gentle like Hillel and not impatient like Shammai. It once happened that two men Talmud, Mosh of Batha, made a wager with each other, saying, He who goes and makes Hillel angry shall receive four hundred. Zeus said, One I will go and incense him. That day was the Sabbath, eve, and Hillel was washing his head. He went past by the door of his house and called out, Is Hillel here? Is Hillel here? Thereupon he robed and went out to him, saying, My son, what do you require? I have a question to ask. Said he, Ask my son. He prompted thereupon, He asked, Why are the heads of the Babylonians round my son? You have asked a great question, replied he, Because they have no skillful midwives. He departed tarried a while returned and called out his Hillel here is Hillel here he robed and went out to him saying my son what do you require I have a question to ask said he asked my son he prompted thereupon he asked why are the eyes of the Pomeranians bleared my son you have asked a great question replied he because they live in sandy places he departed tarried a while returned and called out his Hillel here is Hillel here he robed and went out to him saying my son what do you require I have a question to ask said he asked my son he prompted he asked why are the feet of the Africans Negroes why my son you have asked a great question said he because they live in watery marshes I have many questions to ask said he but fear that you may become angry thereupon he robed sat before him and said ask all the questions you have to ask are you the Hillel who is called the Nasi of Israel yes he replied if that is you he retorted may there not be many like you in Israel why my son queried he because I have lost four hundred Zeus through you complained he be careful of your moods he answered Hillel is worth it that you should lose four hundred Zeus and yet another four hundred Zeus through him yet Hillel shall not lose his temper our rabbis taught a certain heathen once came before Shammai and asked him how many Torah have you too he replied the written Torah and the oral Torah I believe you with respect to the written but not with respect to the oral Torah make me a proselyte on condition that you teach me the written Torah only but he scolded and repulsed him in anger when he went before Hillel he accepted him as a proselyte on the first day he taught him all at Beth Himmel the following day he reversed them to him but yesterday you did not teach them to me thus he protested must you then not rely upon me then rely upon me with respect to the oral Torah too on another occasion it happened that a certain heathen came before Shammai and said to him make me a proselyte on condition that you teach me the whole Torah while I stand on one foot thereupon he repulsed him with the builder's cupid which was in his hand when he went before Hillel he said to him what is hateful to you do not to your neighbor that is the whole Torah while the rest is a commentary thereof go and learn it on another occasion it happened that a certain heathen was passing behind the Beth Hamid Rash when he heard the voice of a teacher reciting and these are the garments which they shall make a breastplate and an ephod said he for whom are these for the high priest he was told and said that even to himself I will go and become a proselyte that I may be appointed a high priest so he went before Shammai and said to him make me a proselyte on condition that you appoint me a high priest but he repulsed him with the builder's cupid which was in his hand he then went before Hillel who made him a proselyte said he to him can any man be made a king but he who knows it Arts of government, do you go and study the arts of government? He went and read when he came to, and the stranger that cometh nigh shall be put to death. He asked him to whom does this verse apply? Even to David, king of Israel, was the answer thereupon that proselyte reasoned within himself. Before she arrived, of Israel, who are called sons of the omnipresent, and who in his love for them he designated them, Israel is my son, my firstborn. Yet it is written of them, and the stranger that cometh nigh shall be put to death. How much more so a mere proselyte who comes with his staff and wallet? Then he went before Shammai and said to him, Am I then eligible to be a high priest? Is it not written in the Torah? And the stranger that cometh nigh shall be put to death. He went before Hillel and said to him, O gentle Hillel, blessings rest on thy head for bringing me under the wings of the Shechem. Some time later, the three men in one place said the Shammai's impatience sought to drive us from the world, but Hillel's. Gentleness brought us under the wings of the Shechen Arash said what is meant by the verse and there shall be faith in thy time strength salvation wisdom and knowledge faith refers to the order of seeds thy times the order of festival strength the order of women salvation the order of Nezikin wisdom the order of sacrifices and knowledge to the order of purity yet even so the fear of the Lord is his treasure Rabbah said when man is let in for judgment he is asked did you deal faithfully i.e. with integrity did you fix times for learning did you engage in procreation did you hope for salvation did you engage in the dialectics of wisdom did you understand one thing from another yet even so if the fear of the Lord is his treasure it is well if not it is not well this may be compared to a man who instructed his agent take me up the core of wheat in the loft and he went and did so did you mix in a cab of humtan he asked him no reply he then it were better that you had not carried it up he retorted the school of our Ishmael taught a man may mix a cab of humtan in a core of grain and have no fear Rabbi B.R. Huna said every man who possesses learning without Talmud, Mosh of Bath be the fear of heaven is like a treasurer who is entrusted with the inner keys but not with the outer how is he to enter our Janet proclaimed woe to him who has no courtyard yet makes a gate for same Rab Judah said the Holy One blessed be he created his world only that men should fear him for it is said and God hath done it that men should fear before him our Simon and our Eliezer were sitting when our Jacob Biah came walking past said one to his companion let us arise before him because he is a sin fearing man said the other let us arise before him because he is a man of learning I tell you that he is a sin fearing man and you tell me that he is a man of learning retorted he it may be proved that it was our Eliezer who observed that he was a sin fearing man for our Yohan and said in our Eliezer's Name the Holy One, blessed be he has not else in his world but the fear of heaven alone, for it is said, and now Israel, what doth the Lord thy God requires of thee but to fear the Lord thy God, and it is written, and unto man he said, Behold, and the fear of the Lord that is wisdom, and in Greek one is hand that proves it early expounded, why is it written, be not much wicked, must one not be much wicked, yet he may be a little wicked, but if one has eaten garlic and his breath smells, shall he eat some? More garlic that his breath may continue to smell, Rabbi son of Arola expounded what is meant by for there are no pangs harzu both in their death, but their strength is from Bari Ulam the Holy One, blessed be he said, it is not enough for the wicked that they do not tremble and are not grief stricken before the day of death, but their hearts are as firm as an edifice, and that is what Rabbi said, what is meant by this their way is their confidence, Kessel, the wicked know that their way is to Death, but they have fat on their loins, Kislam. But lest you think that it is their forgetfulness, therefore it is stated, and they approve their end with their own mouths. If he would spare the lamp, etc., with whom does our Jose agree? If with our Judah, then one should be liable for the others too. And if with our Simeon, he should be exempt even for sparing the wicks. Well, after all, he agrees with our Judah. Yet our Jose holds that demolishing in order to rebuild on the same side is destroying. But if it is in order to rebuild elsewhere,
Wherefore I commanded you concerning the lap if ye fulfill them tis well but if not I will take your souls and why particularly in childbirth Rabbah said when the ox is fallen sharpen the knife Abbe said let the bondmaid increase her rebellion and will all be punished by the same rod Arhista said leave the drunkard alone he will follow himself Marakba said when the shepherd is lame and the goats are fleet at the gate of the fold our words and in the fold there is the account our papa said at the gate of the shop there are many brothers and friends at the gate of loss there are neither brothers nor friends and when our men examined said Reshlehish when they pass over a bridge a bridge and nothing else say that which is similar to a bridge Rab would not cross a bridge where a heathen was sitting said he lest judgment be visited upon him and I be seized together with him Samuel would cross a bridge only when a heathen was upon it saying Satan has no power over two nations simultaneously. Arjane examined the bridge and then crossed over Arjane acted upon his views for he said a man should never stand in a place of danger and say that a miracle will be wrought for him lest it is not and if a miracle is wrought for him it is deducted from his merits Arhanin said which verse teaches this I am become diminished by reason of all the deeds of kindness and all the truth Arzera would not go out among the palm trees on the day of the strong south wind Ar Isaac the son of Rab Judah said let one always pray for mercy not to fall sick for the fall sick he is told show thy merits rights and be quit said Marakba which verse teaches this if any man fall the man who is from him a man of that proof must be brought the school of our Ishmael taught if any man had fall from hence this man was predestined to fall since the six days of creation for lo he has not yet fallen and the writ already calls him no a faller but reward Zekat is brought about through it. Person of merit Zakai and punishment hope through a person of guilt are rabbis taught if one falls sick and his life is in danger he is told make confession for all who are sentenced to death make confession when a man goes out into the street let him imagine that he is given in charge of an officer when he has a headache let him imagine that he is put in irons when he takes to bed let him imagine that he ascended the scaffold to be punished for whoever ascends the scaffold to be punished if he has great advocates he is saved but if not he is not saved and these are man's advocates repentance and good deeds and even if 999 argue for his guilt while one argues in his favor he is saved for it is said if there be with him an angel and advocate one among a thousand to shew unto man what is right for him and he is gracious unto him and Seth deliver him from going down to the pit etc our Eliezer the son of our Jose the Galilean said even if 900 and ninety nine parts of that angel are in his disfavour, and one part is in his favour. Be a safe, for it is said, and advocate one part in a thousand. Our rabbis taught for three sins: women die in childbirth. Our Eliezer said, women die young. Our Aha said, as a punishment for washing their children's napkins on the Sabbath. Others say, because they call the holy ark a chest. It was taught. Our Ishmael B. Eliezer said, on account of two sins, am Hiras die because they call the holy ark a chest, and because they call a synagogue Bethlehem. It was taught. Our Jose said, three death scrutineers were created in women. Others state, three causes of death in hell, and the kindling of the Sabbath lights. One agrees with our Eliezer, and the other with the rabbis. It was taught. Our Simeon B. Gamaliel said, the laws of Hittish, Jerumoth, and tithes are indeed essential parts of the law. Talmud, Moshe, Bath B. And they were entrusted to the ignorant. It was taught. Our Nathan said, a man's wife dies in punishment for his. Unfulfilled vows for it is said if thou hast not wherewith to pay thy vows why should he take away thy bed i.e. wife from under thee rabbi said for the sin of unfulfilled vows once children die young for it is said suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin neither say thou before the angel that it was an error wherefore should God be angry at thy voice and destroy the work of thine hands what is the work of a man's hands say it is a man's sons and daughters our rabbis taught children die as a punishment for unfulfilled vows this is the view of our Eliezer B. our Simeon our Judah the Nasi said for the sin of neglect of Torah study as for the view that it is for the sin of vows it is well even as we have said but on the view that it is for the sin of neglect of Torah what verse teaches this for it is written have I smitten your children for not they received no instruction our Naman B. Isaac said the view that it is for the sin of vows is also deduced from this for vain. Utterance have I smitten your children, i.e., on account of being neglected vows. Consider our Judah the Nasi is identical with Rabbi, whereas Rabbi said that is it for the sin of vows. He said that after he had heard it from our Eliezer, son of our Simeon, our Hai Abba, and our Jose differ therein. One maintained it is for the sin of neglect of Mezuzah, while the other held that it is for the sin of neglect of Torah. On the view that it is for the sin of Mezuzah, verse is interpreted with its precedent, but not with its anti precedent verse. While on the view that it is for the sin of neglect of Torah, verse is interpreted with its precedent and its anti precedent are Meir and our Judah differ therein. One maintains it is for the neglect of Mezuzah, while the other holds that it is for the neglect of fringes. Now, as for the view that it is for the neglect of Mezuzah, it is well, for it is written, and thou shalt write them upon the doorpost Mezuzah of thine house, which is followed by that your days may. Be multiplied in the days of your children, but what is the reason of the view that it is for the neglect of fringes? Said Arkahana, other state Shilamari, because it is written also in thy skirts is found the blood of the souls of the innocent poor Arnaman B. Isaac said the view that it is for the neglect of Mezuzah is also learned from this. Did I not find them like caves, which means that they made their entrances like caves? Reshlehish said he who is observant of fringes will be privileged to be served by 2,800 slaves. For it is said, Thus saith the Lord of hosts in those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold out of all the languages of the nations, shall even take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, saying, We will go with you, etc. Nemon, hate halatari marab laoth, shedding uncovering folly. It was taught Arnaman said as a punishment for causeless hate strife multiplies in a man's house, his wife miscarries, and his sons end. Daughters die young are Eliezer B. R. Judah said because of the neglect of Hala there is no blessing in what is stored a curse is sent upon prices and seed is sown and others consume it for it is said I also will do this unto you I will visit you with terror behala even consumption and fever that shall consume the eyes and make the soul to pine away and ye shall sow your seed in vain for your enemies shall eat it red not behala but behala but if they give it they are blessed for it is said ye shall also give unto the priest the first of your dough to cause a blessing to rest on thine house as a punishment for the neglect of the room and tithes the heavens are shut up from pouring down dew and rain high prices are prevalent wages are lost and people pursue livelihood but cannot attain it for it is written drought and he hong consume the snow water so doth the grave those which have sinned how does this imply it the school of Arish male taught on account of it Things which I commanded you in summer, but ye did them not. The snowy waters shall rob you in winter, but if they render them, they are blessed. For it is said, Bring ye the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now here with Seth the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. At belly day, what is meant by at belly day? Said Rami Biham, until your lips are exhausted through saying enough day for the crime of robbery, locusts make invasion, famine is prevalent, and people eat the flesh of their sons and daughters. For it is said here, this word ye kind of patient that are in the mountain of Samaria, which oppress the poor, which crush the needy. Said Rabbi, e.g., these women of Mahosa Talmud, Masha Batha, who eat without working, and it is further written, I have smitten you with blessing, and mildew the multitude of your gardens and your vineyards and your Fig trees and your olive trees hath the palmer worm devoured, and it is also written that which the palmer worm hath left hath the locust eaten, and that which the locust hath left hath the canker worm eaten, and that which the canker worm hath left hath the caterpillar eaten, and it is written, and one shall snatch on the right hand and be hungry, and he shall eat on the left hand, and they shall not be satisfied, they shall eat every man the flesh of his own arm red, not the flesh of his own arm zero. But the flesh of his own seeds are o as a punishment for delay of judgment, perversion of judgment, spoiling of judgment, and neglect of Torah sword, and spoil increase pestilence and famine come people eat and are not satisfied and eat their bread by way for it is written, and I will bring a sword upon you that shall execute the vengeance of the covenant. Now covenant means nothing else but Torah as it is written, but for my covenant of day and night I had not appointed the ordinances of heaven.
Jubilee exile comes to the world that the Jews are exiled and others come and dwell in their place for it is said for all these abominations have the men of the land done etc and it is written and the land is defiled therefore do I visit the iniquity thereof upon it and it is written that the land vomit not you out also when ye defile it again with respect to idolatry it is written and I will cast your carcasses upon the carcasses of your idols and it is written and I will make your cities a waste and will bring your sanctuaries into desolation etc and you will I scatter among the nations further in reference to release and jubilee years it is written then shall the land enjoy her sabbaths as long as it leath desolate and ye be in your enemy's land etc and it is written as long as it leath desolate it shall have rest as a punishment for obscenity troubles multiply cruel decrees are proclaimed the fresh the youth of Israel's enemies die and the fatherless and widows cry out and are not answered for it is said therefore shall the Lord not rejoice over the young men neither shall he have compassion over their fatherless and their widows for everyone is profane and an evildoer and every mouth speak folly for all is his anger is not turned away but his hand is stretched out still what is meant by but his hand is stretched out still said Arhan and Birabah all know for what purpose a bride enters the bridal canopy yet against whomsoever who speaks obscenely thereof. Even if a sentence of seventy years happiness had been sealed for him it is reversed for evil Rabbi Sheila said in Arhistah's name he who puts his mouth to folly Gehenna is made deep for him as it is said a deep pit is for the mouth that speak perversity Arnam and B. Isaac said also for one who hears and is silent for it is said he that is abhorred of the Lord shall fall therein Arashai said he who devotes himself to sin wounds and bruises break out over him as it is said stripes and Wounds are for him that devote himself to evil, moreover he is punished by dropsy for it is said and strokes reach the innermost parts of the belly are and B. Isaac said dropsy is a sign of sin or rabbis taught there are three kinds of dropsy that which is a punishment of sin is thick that caused by hunger is swollen and what is caused by magic is thin Samuel the little suffered through it sovereign of the universe he cried out who will cast lots thereupon he recovered Abbe suffered from. It said Rabbi I know of Namani that he practices hunger Rabbi suffered from it but was it not Rabbi himself who said more numerous are those slain by delayed calls of nature than the victims of starvation Rabbi was different because the scholars compelled him to practice restraint at the set times four lectures are rabbis taught there are four signs dash I dropsy is a sign of sin to jaundice is a sign of causeless hatred three poverty is a sign of conceit group is a sign of slander are rabbis. Talk group comes to the world Talmud, Moshe Bath B on account of neglect of tithes, R. Eliezer B. R. Jose said on account of slander said Rob others maintain R. Joshua B. Levi what verse teaches this but the king shall rejoice in God everyone that sweareth by him shall glory for the mouth of them that speak lies shall be stopped yet sacred the scholars propounded does R. Eliezer son of R. Jose say only on account of slander or perhaps on account of slander to come and hear for what R. Rabbis entered the vineyard in Yavna R. Judah R. Eliezer son of R. Jose and R. Simeon were present and this question was raised before them why does this affliction commence in the bowels and end in the throat thereupon R. Judah son of R. Eli the first speaker on all occasions answered and said though the kidneys counsel the heart gives understanding and the tongue gives form yet the mouth completes it R. Eliezer son of R. Jose answered because they eat unclean food there with unclean food can you Think so rather say because they eat unfit food are Simeon answered and said as a punishment for the neglect of study said they to him let women prove it that is because they restrain their husbands from study let Gentiles prove it that is because they restrain Israel let children prove it that is because they make their fathers to neglect study then let school children prove it there it is as Argorian for Argorian other state are Joseph son of Arshimea said when there are righteous men. In the generation the righteous are seized by death for the sins of the generation when there are no righteous in the generation school children are seized for the generation are Isaac Bzeiri other state are Simeon Ben said which verse teaches this if thou know not O thou fairest among women go thy way forth by the footsteps of the flock etc and we interpret this as referring to the goats which are taken in flesh for the debts of the shepherds thus this proves that he said on. Account of slander to this proves it now why is he our Judah son of our I called the first speaker on all occasions for our Judah our Jose and our Simeon were sitting and Judah son of proselytes was sitting near them our Judah commenced the discussion by observing how fine are the works of this people they have made streets they have built bridges they have erected baths our Jose was silent our Simeon he answered and said all that they made they made for themselves they built marketplaces to set harlots in the baths to rejuvenate themselves bridges to levy tolls for them now Judah the son of proselytes went and related their talk which reached the government they decreed Judah who exalted us shall be exalted Jose who was silent shall be exiled to set Hori Simeon who censured let him be executed he and his son went and hid themselves in the Beth Hamid Rash and his wife brought him bread and a mug of water and they dined but when the decree became more severe he said to his son Women are of unstable temperament, she may be put to the torture and expose us. So they went and hid in a cave. A miracle occurred, and a carob tree and a water well were created for them. They would strip their garments and sit up to their necks in sand the whole day. They studied when it was time for prayers. They robed, covered themselves, prayed, and then put off their garments again so that they should not wear out. Thus they dwelt twelve years in the cave. Then Elijah came and stood at the entrance to the cave and exclaimed, Who will inform the son of Yohei that the emperor is dead and his decree annulled? So they emerged, seeing a man plowing and sowing. They exclaimed, They forsake life eternal and engage in life temporal. Whatever they cast their eyes upon was immediately burnt up. Thereupon a heavenly echo came forth and cried out, Have ye emerged to destroy my world? Return to your cave. So they returned and dwelt there twelve months, saying, The punishment of the wicked in Gehenna is limited. To twelve months a heavenly echo then came forth and said go forth from your cave thus they issued wherever our Eliezer are wounded our Simeon healed said he to him my son you and I are sufficient for the world on the eve of the Sabbath before sunset they saw an old man holding two bundles of myrtle and running at twilight what are these for they asked him they are in honor of the Sabbath he replied but one should suffice you one is for remember and one for observe said he to his son see how precious are the commandments to Israel thereat their minds were tranquilized our finches bii his son in law heard thereof and went out to meet him he took him into the baths and massaged his flesh seeing the clefts in his body he wept and the tears streamed from his eyes woe to me that I see you in such a state he cried out happy are you that you see me thus he retorted for if you did not see me in such a state you would not find me thus learned for originally when our Simeon bii Raised a difficulty, Arfinehas Biyar would give him 13 answers, whereas subsequently, when Arfinehas Biyar raised a difficulty, Arsimian Biyohe would give him 24 answers. Since a miracle has occurred, said he, let me go and amend something for it is written. And Jacob came whole to the city of Shechem, which Rab interpreted bodily whole, sound financially whole, and whole in his learning. And he was gracious to the city. Rab said he instituted coinage for them. Samuel said he instituted markets for them. Or Yohan and said he instituted baths for them. Is there aught that requires amending? He asked, There is a place of doubtful uncleanness. He was informed, Talmud, Moshe, Bathe, and priests have the trouble of going round it. Said he, Does any man know that there was a presumption of cleanness here? A certain old man replied, Here are Yohan and Bizakai cut down lupins of Terramaso. He did likewise wherever it, the ground was hard, he declared it clean while wherever it was. Lucy he marked it out said a certain old man the son of Yohei has purified a cemetery said he had you not been with us even if you have been with us but did not vote you might have said well but now that you were with us and voted with us it will be said even horse paint one another how much more so scholars he cast his eye upon him and he died then he went out into the street and saw Judah the son of proselytes that man is still in the world he exclaimed he cast his eyes upon him and he became a heap of bones mission on the eve of the Sabbath just before night a man must say three things in his house have you rendered tithes have you prepared the ERU be kindled the Sabbath lamp when it is doubtful whether it is night or not that which is certainly untithed may not be tithed utensils may not be immersed and the lights may not be kindled but demi I may be tithed and ERU be may be prepared and hot food may be stored away tomorrow whence do we know it said our Joshua be Levi scripture Seth and thou shalt
After nightfall, even in a substance that does not add heat for fear, lest he make it boil, said Abay to him, If so, let us forbid it at twilight to the average pot is at the boil. He replied, Rabbah also said, Talmud, Mosh of Bath, why was it said that one must not put away food in a substance which adds heat even by day for fear, lest he put it away in hot ashes containing a burning coal, said Abay to him, then let him put it away, dash that is forbidden for fear, lest he rake the coals are rabbis. Taught as to twilight period, it is doubtful whether it is partly day and partly night, or the whole of it belongs to the day or the whole of it night, therefore it is cast upon the stringencies of both days, and what is twilight from sunset as long as the face of the east has a reddish glow when the lower horizon is pale, but not the upper it is twilight, but when the upper horizon is pale and the same as the lower it is night, this is the opinion of our Judah, our Nehemiah said for as long as it takes a man to walk half a mil from sunset. Our Jose said twilight is as the twilight of an eye one entering and the other departing, and it is impossible to determine it. The master said one applies to it the stringencies of both days in respect of what point of law said our Hunasan of our Joshua in respect of uncleanness, even as we learned if he saw discharges on two days at twilight, he is doubtful in respect of uncleanness and sacrifice if he sees a discharge one day at twilight, he is. Doubtful in respect of uncleanness, this is self contradictory. You say what is twilight from sunset as long as the face of the east has a reddish glow, hence if the lower horizon is pale but not the upper it is night, then it is taught when the lower horizon is pale but not the upper it is twilight. Rab answered in the name of Rab Judah and Samuel's name, combine them and learn what is twilight from sunset as long as the face of the east has a reddish glow and if the lower horizon is pale. But not the upper that too is twilight, but when the upper horizon is pale and the same as the lower it is night, while our Joseph answered in the name of Rab Judah and Samuel's name, this is what he teaches from sunset as long as the face of the east has a reddish glow, it is day if the lower horizon is pale but not the upper it is twilight, when the upper is pale and the same as the lower it is night, now they follow their views for it was stated how long is the period of twilight Rabbah said in it. Name of Rab Judah and Samuel's name three parts of a mill. What is meant by three parts of a mill? Shall we say three half mills? Then let him say a mill and a half. While if it is three thirds of a mill, let him say one mill. Hence it must mean three quarters of a mill. While our Joseph said in the name of Rab Judah and Rab's name two parts of a mill. What is two parts of a mill? Shall we say two halves? Let him say one mill. While if it means two quarters of a mill, let him say half a mill. Hence Talmud, Mosh of Bathe. It must mean two thirds of a mill. What is the difference between them? One half of a sixth. Now it is the reverse in respect of a beehive. For Rabbah said a beehive of two cores capacity may be moved. A three cores capacity may not be moved. But our Joseph said three cores capacity also is permitted. Four cores is forbidden. Abay said I asked it of Mar at the time of action and he did not permit one to move even a two core size. With whom does that agree with the following tenet? For we learned a. Receptacle of stubble or of staves and the cistern of an Alexandrian boat, though they have rooms and contain 40 seahs in liquid measure, which is two cores in dry measure, are clean. Abe observed this proves that the heap in dry measures is a third of a saraba gazing at the west, said he to him, but it was taught as long as the face of the east has a reddish glow. Do you think that the face of the east is meant literally? He replied, it means the face which casts a red glow upon the east end. Your token is a window, our Nehemiah said, for as long as it takes a man to walk half a mil from sunset, our Hannah said, one who wishes to know our Nehemiah's period should leave the sun on the top of the Carmel, descend dip in the sea and reascend, and this is our Nehemiah's period, our high said, one who wishes to see Miriam's well should ascend to the top of the Carmel and gaze when he will observe a kind of sea in the sea, and that is Miriam's well, Rab said, a movable well is clean, and that is Miriam's. Well, Rab Judah said in Samuel's name, at twilight as defined by our Judah, unclean priests may perform table according to whom shall we say according to our Judah himself, but it is doubtful. But if it means twilight as defined by our Judah according to our Jose, why state priests may perform table, then it is obvious I might think that twilight as defined by our Jose is a continuation of our Judah's. Therefore, we are told that our Judah's twilight ends and then our Jose's commences. Rabbi Bar Hannah said in our Yohanan's name, the Halachah is as our Judah in respect to the Sabbath, and the Halachah is as our Jose in respect to Terima. Now, as for the Halachah being as our Judah in respect to the Sabbath, it is well, this is in the direction of stringency, but in respect of Terima, what is it shall we say for table? It is doubtful. Talmud, Mosh of Bath, be rather, it is in respect of the eating of Terima, because the priests may not eat Terima until twilight as defined by our Jose ends. Rab Judah said in. Samuel's name when only one star is visible it is day when two appear it is twilight three it is night it was taught likewise when one star is visible it is day when two appear it is twilight three it is night our Jose B. Abin said not the large stars which are visible by day nor the small ones which are visible only at night but the medium sized our Jose son of Arzibita said if one performs work at two twilights he incurs a sin offering whatever view you take Rabbah said to his attendant you who are not clear in the rabbinical standards like the lamp when the sun is at the top of the palm trees how is it on a cloudy day in town observe the fowls in the field observe the ravens or Aaron our rabbis taught six blasts were blown on the eve of the Sabbath the first for people to cease work in the fields the second for the city and shops to cease work the third for the lights to be kindled that is our Nathan's view our Judah the Nasi said the third is for the Tefillin to be removed. Then there was an interval for as long as it takes to bake a small fish or to put a loaf in the oven, and then a tekiah, teruah, and a tekiah were blown, and one commenced the Sabbath, said our Simeon be Gamaliel, what shall we do to the Babylonians who blow a tekiah and a teruah and commence the Sabbath in the midst of the teruah? They blow a tekiah and a teruah only, but then there are five, rather they blow a tekiah, repeat the tekiah, and then blow a teruah and commence the Sabbath in the midst of the teruah. They retain their father's practice. Rab Judah recited to our Isaac his son, the second is for the kindling of the lights, as which Tana neither as our Nathan nor as our Judah the Nasi rather read the third is for the kindling of the lights, as which Tana as our Nathan the school of our Ishmael taught six blasts were blown on the eve of the Sabbath when the first was begun, those who stood in the field ceased to hope plow or do any work in the fields, and those who were near to. Town were not permitted to enter it until the more distant ones arrived so that they should all enter simultaneously but the shops were still open and the shutters were lying when the second blast began the shutters were removed and the shops closed yet hot water and pots still stood on the range when the third blast was begun what was to be removed was removed and what was to be stored away was stored away and the lamp was lit then there was an interval for as long as it takes to bake a small fish or to place a loaf in the oven then a tekiah teruah and a tekiah were sounded and one commenced the sabbath our jose b our hannah said i have heard that if one comes to light after the sixth blast he may do so since the sages gave the husband of the community time to carry his chauffeur home said they to him if so your rule depends on variable standards rather the husband of the community had a hidden place on the top of his roof where he placed his chauffeur because neither a chauffeur nor a Trumpet may be handled on the Sabbath, but it was taught a chauffeur may be handled, but not a trumpet. Said our Joseph, there is no difficulty. The one refers to an individual, as the other to a community. As said Abay to him, and in the case of an individual, what is it fit for? It is possible to give a child a drink there with Talmud, Mosh of Bath. And in the case of a community, as to it is fit for giving a drink to a poor child. Moreover, as to what was taught, just as a chauffeur may be moved, so may a trumpet be moved. With whom does that agree? Rather reply thus: There is no difficulty. One agrees with our Judah, one with our Simeon, and one with our Nehemiah. And what indeed is meant by chauffeur a trumpet in accordance with our Histah? For our Histah said the following three things: reverse their designations after the destruction of the temple. I trumpet changed to chauffeur and chauffeur to trumpet. What is the practical bearing thereof in respect of the chauffeur blown on New Year? Two Arab willow changed. To Zafzafa and Zafzafa to Arab, what is the practical bearing thereof in respect of the Lalab? Three Pathra changed to Pathorda and Pathorda to Pathra, what is the practical bearing thereof in respect of buying and selling? Abay observed, we too can
keeping it there it is well for this is what he the Tana teaches if a stove is heated with stubble or rakings a pot may be kept thereon with peat or wood one may not keep a pot there until he sweeps it or covers it with ashes and what may be kept there Beth Shammai maintain hot water but not a dish but Beth Hillel rule both hot water and a dish and just as they differ in respect to keeping it there so do they differ in respect to putting it back where Beth Shammai maintain one may remove. IT but not put IT back but Beth Hillel rule one may put IT back too but if you say that we learned about putting it back then this is what he teaches if a stove is heated with stubble or rakings a pot may be put back thereon with peat or wood one must not put it back until he sweeps it or covers it with ashes and what may be put back Beth Shammai maintain hot water but not a dish but Beth Hillel rule both hot water and a dish Beth Shammai maintain one may remove IT but not put IT. Back but Beth Hillel rule one may put IT back to then what is the purpose of this addition Talmud, Mosh of Beth after all I can tell you that we learned about replacing it but the text is defective and this is what he the Tana teaches if a stove is heated with stubble or rakings a pot may be placed thereon with peat or wood one must not replace it until he sweeps it or covers it with ashes but as for keeping it there that is permitted even if it is neither swept nor covered with ashes. Yet what may be kept there Beth Shammai maintain hot water but not a dish while Beth Hillel rule both hot water and a dish and as to this replacing of which I tell you it is not an agreed ruling but the subject of a controversy between Beth Shammai and Beth Hillel for Beth Shammai maintain we may remove IT but not replace IT but Beth Hillel rule we may replace IT to come and here for our said in the name of our Hamba Bigoria in Rab's name we learned this only of the top of the stove. But within it is forbidden now if you say that we learned about replacing it it is well hence there is a difference between the inside and the top but if you say that we learned about keeping it there what does it matter whether it is within or on top do you think that our helbo refers to the first clause he refers to the last but Beth Hillel rule we may replace IT to we're on our helbo set in the name of our Hamba Bigoria in Rab's name we learned this only of the top but within it is forbidden come. And here are two stoves that are joined one being swept or covered with ashes whilst the other is not we may keep out upon the one that is swept or covered with ashes but not upon the one that is not swept or covered with ashes and what may be kept there Beth Shammai maintain nothing at all while Beth Hillel rule hot water but not a dish if one removes it all agree that he must not replace it that is our Meir's view our Judah said Beth Shammai maintain hot water but not a dish while Beth Hillel rule both hot water and a dish Beth Shammai maintain we may remove but not replace it while Beth Hillel rule we may replace it too now if you say that we learned about keeping it there it is well with whom does our mission agree our Judah but if you say that we learned about replacing who is the authority of our mission neither our Judah nor our Meir for if our Meir there is a difficulty on Beth Shammai's view in one respect and on Hillel's in two if our Judah the case of a stove that is swept or Covered with ashes is difficult after all I can tell you that we learned about replacing it but Artana agrees with our Judah in one respect and disagrees with him in another he agrees with our Judah in one respect is in respect to hot water and a dish and removing and replacing them but he disagrees with him in another for whereas Artana holds that keeping them there is permitted even if it is neither swept nor covered with ashes our Judah maintains that even keeping them there is permitted only if it is swept or covered with ashes but not otherwise the scholars propounded may one lean upon against it on the inside and top thereof it is forbidden but leaning against it may be permitted or perhaps there is no difference come and here if two stoves are joined one being swept and covered with ashes whilst the other is neither swept nor covered with ashes we may keep out upon the one that is swept or covered with ashes but not upon the one that is not swept or Covered with ashes though the heat reaches it from the other perhaps there it is different because since it is elevated the air affects it come and here for our saffir said in our highest name if it the stove was covered with ashes yet placed up again one may lean the pot against it keep a pot upon it remove it thence and replace it this proves that even leaning is permitted only when it is covered with ashes but not otherwise yet according to your reasoning when he states one may remove. It thence does this imply only if covered with ashes but not otherwise but you must answer removing is mentioned on account of replacing so here too leaning is stated on account of keeping how compare there since removing and replacing refer to the same place removing is stated on account of replacing but here the leaning is in one place whereas the keeping is in another what is our decision thereon come and here if a stove is heated with peat or wood one may lean the pot against it but must not keep it there unless it is swept or covered with ashes if the coals have died down or thoroughly beaten flax is placed upon it it is as though covered with ashes our Isaac Binamani said in our Ashai's name if he covered it with ashes yet it placed up again one may keep upon it hot water that has previously been heated as much as is required or a dish which has been boiled all it needs Talmud, Mosh of Bath B then this proves that when it shrinks and is improved thereby it is permitted dash no there it is different because he covered it with ashes if so why state ITIT is necessary to state it because it placed up again you might argue since it placed up again it reverts to its original state hence he informs us that it is not so Rabbi Barhana said in our Yohanan's name if he covered it with ashes yet it placed up again one may keep upon it hot water if that has been heated all it needs or a dish which has been boiled all it needs even if they are coals of Room and this proves that when it shrinks and is improved thereby it is permitted dash no here it is different because he covered it with ashes if so why state it, it is necessary to state it where it placed up again then it is identical with the first dictum it is necessary to state it of coals of broom arshis hate said in our Yohanan's name if a stove is fired with peat or wood hot water insufficiently heated and a dish insufficiently cooked may be kept upon it but if he the owner moved them he must not replace them before he sweeps or covers it with ashes thus he holds that we learned our mission with respect to replacing but keeping is permitted even if it is not swept or covered with ashes said Rabba we learned both we learned with respect to keeping bread may not be set in an oven before nightfall nor a cake set upon coals unless its surface can form a crust while it is yet day hence if its surface formed a crust it is permitted with respect to replacing we also learned Beth Hillel rule we may replace to now Beth Hillel permit it only when it is swept or covered with ashes but not if it is neither swept nor covered with ashes our she's hate indeed informs us of the deduction of the mission our Samuel B. Judah said in our Yohanan's name if a stove is fired with peat or wood one may keep upon it a dish sufficiently cooked or hot water which is sufficiently heated even if it the dish shrinks and is improved thereby said one of the rabbis to our Samuel B. Judah but Rab and Samuel both maintain if it shrinks and is improved thereby it is forbidden he answered him do I then not know that our Joseph said in Rab Judah's name in Samuel's name if it shrinks and is improved thereby it is forbidden I tell it to you according to our Yohanan our Abba Messine said to our Ashi you who are near to Rab and Samuel do act as Rab and Samuel but we will act according to our Yohanan Abba asked our Joseph what about keeping a pot on the stove he answered him it is indeed kept for Rab. Judah and he eats thereof put Rab Judah aside said he for since he is in danger it may be done for him even on the Sabbath what about keeping it for me and you and Surah he replied they do keep it for Arnam and B Isaac is most particular and yet they keep it for him and he eats Arashi said I was standing before Arunah when he ate a fish pie which they bad kept on the stove for him and I do not know whether it is because he holds that if it shrinks and is improved thereby it is permitted or because since it contains flour paste it deteriorates in shrinking Arnam and said if it shrinks and is improved thereby it is forbidden if it shrinks and deteriorates it is permitted this is the general rule of the matter whatever contains flour paste shrinks and deteriorates except a stew of turnips which though containing flour paste shrinks and improves yet that is only if it contains meat but if it contains no meat it shrinks and deteriorates and even if it contains meat we say thus only if it is not intended for guests, but if it is intended for guests, it deteriorates in the shrinking path of dates. Design and a dish of dates shrink and deteriorate. Our high B Abba was asked Talmud, Mosh of Batha, what if one forgot a pot on the stove and thus cooked it on the Sabbath? He was silent and said nothing to them. His questioners on the morrow he went out and lectured to them. If one cooks food on the Sabbath unwittingly, he may eat it. If deliberately, he may not eat it. And there is no difference what is
Preventive measure deliberate is a difficulty if after the preventive measure even unwitting to is a difficulty that is indeed a difficulty what was the preventive measure for our Judah B. Samuel said in the name of our Abba in the name of our Kahana in Rab's name at first it was ruled one who cooks food on the Sabbath unwittingly he may eat thereof if deliberately he may not eat and the same applies to one who forgets but when those who intentionally left it there grew numerous and they pleaded we had forgotten it on the stove they the sages retraced their steps and penalized him who forgot now our mayor is self-contradictory and our Judah is likewise self-contradictory our mayor is not self-contradictory the one means at the outset the other if done our Judah too is not self-contradictory there it means that if the stove was swept or covered with ashes here that it was not swept or covered with ashes the scholars propounded what if one transgressed and deliberately left it did. The rabbis penalized him or not come and here for Samuel be Nathan said in our Hannah's name when our Jose went to Sephoris he found hot water which had been left on the stove and did not forbid it to them he also found shrunken eggs and forbade them to them surely it means for that Sabbath no for the following Sabbath now this implies that shrunken eggs go on shrinking and are thereby improved yes for our Hannah said my master and I were once guests in a certain place and eggs shrunk to the size of crab apples were brought before us and we ate many of them Beth Hillel rule one may replace it to our she's hate set on the view of him who maintains Talmud Moth should bath be that one may replace it it is permitted even on the Sabbath and our Ashai two holds that one may replace it two means even on the Sabbath for our Ashai said we were once standing before our high rabbi and we brought up a kettle of hot water for him from the lower to the upper story mix the cup for him and then replaced it and he said not a word to us our Zerika said in the name of our Abba in our Tadai's name we learnt this only if they are still in his hand but if he set them down on the ground it is forbidden our Mi observed our Tadai who acted thus acted for himself only but thus did our Hai say in our Yohanan's name even if he set them down on the ground it is permitted our Dimi and our Samuel be Judah differ therein and both state their views in our Eliezer's name one says if they are still in his hand it is permitted on the ground it is forbidden while the other maintains even if he placed them on the ground it is still permitted Hezekiah observed in Abbe's name as to what you say that if it is still in his hand it is permitted that was said only where it was his original intention to replace them but if it was not his intention to replace them it is forbidden hence it follows that if they are on the ground even if it was his intention to replace them it is forbidden other state Hezekiah observed in Abbe's name as to what you say that if they are on the ground it is forbidden that was said only if it was not his original intention to replace them but if it was his intention to replace them it is permitted hence it follows that if they are in his hand even if it was not his intention to replace them it is permitted our Jeremiah propounded what if he hung them on a staff or placed them on a couch our Ashi propounded what if he emptied them from one kettle to another the question stand over mission if an oven was heated with stubble or rakings one must not place a pot etc either inside or on top if a cup was heated with stubble or rakings it is like a double stove with peat or timber it is like an oven gemara if an oven was heated our Joseph thought to explain inside and on top literally but as for leaning a pot against it that is well Abbe objected to him if a cup was heated with stubble or rakings it is like a double stove with peat or timber it is like an oven and is forbidden hence if it were like a double stove it would be permitted to what is the reference shall we say on its top and under what circumstance shall we say that it is not swept or covered with ashes is the top of a stove permitted when it is not swept or covered with ashes hence it must surely mean to lean against it yet it is taught it is like an oven and forbidden said our Abba but here the reference is to a cup that is swept or covered with ashes and an oven that is swept or covered with ashes it is like an oven in that though it is swept or covered with ashes the top is forbidden for if it were like a double stove if swept or covered with ashes it would be well it was taught in accordance with Abba if an oven is heated with stubble or rakings one may not lean a pot etc against it and placing on the top goes without saying and in the inside goes without saying and it goes without saying when it is heated with peat or wood if a cup is Heated with stubble or rakings, one may lean a pot against it, but not place it on top. But if it is heated with peat or wood, one must not lean a pot against it. Or Ahasan of Rabba asked Arashi, How is this cup regarded if like a double stove even with peat or wood too? If like an oven, neither with stubble or rakings, he answered, Its heat is greater than a double stove, but less than an oven's. What is a cup and what is a double stove? Kira said, Our Jose Bihan and a cup has room. For placing one pot, a double stove Kira has room for placing two pots. Have a other state, our Jeremiah said, We learned likewise if a double stove Kira is divided along its length, it is clean along its breadth, it is unclean. If a cup is divided whether along its length or along its breadth, it is clean. Mission one must not place an egg at the side of a boiler for it to be roasted, and one must not break it into a hot cloth, but our Jose permits it, and one may not put it away in hot. Sand or road dust for it to be roasted. It once happened that the people of Tiberias did thus they conducted a pipe of cold water through an arm of the hot spring, said the sages to them, If on the Sabbath it is like hot water heated on the Sabbath and is forbidden both for washing and for drinking, if on a festival it is like water heated on a festival which is forbidden for washing but permitted for drinking tomorrow, the scholars propounded what if one does roast it, said our Joseph, if one roasts it, he is liable to a sin offering. Mar son of Rabbanah said, We learned likewise Talmud, Mosh of that which came into hot water before the Sabbath may be steeped in hot water on the Sabbath, but whatever did not come into hot water before the Sabbath may be rinsed with hot water on the Sabbath except old salted pickled fish and the coleus of the Spaniards because their rinsing completes their preparation, this proves it and he must not break it into a hot cloth now as to what we learned to dish. May be placed in a pit in order that it should be guarded and wholesome water into noisome water for it to be cooled or cold water in the sun for it to be heated. Shall we say that that agrees with our Jose but not with the rabbi said our nomin in the sun all agree that it is permitted in a fire heated object all agree that it is forbidden where do they differ concerning a sun heated object one master holds that we forbid a sun heated object on account of a fire heated object whilst the other master holds that we do not forbid it and one may not put it away in hot sand now let our Jose differ here too rabbi said it is a preventive measure lest one come to hide it in hot ashes our Jose said because he may move earth sand from its place wherein do they differ in respect of crushed earth an objection is raised our Simeon B. Gamaliel said an egg may be rolled roasted on a hot roof but not on boiling lime as for the view that it is forbidden lest he hide it in hot ashes it is well there is not to fear here but on the view that it is because he may move earth from its place let us forbid it the average roof has no earth come and here it once happened that the people of Tiberias did thus they conducted a pipe of cold water through an arm of the hot springs etc on the view that it is forbidden lest he hide it in hot ashes it is well hence this is similar to hiding but on the view that it is because he may move earth from its place what can be said do you think that the incident of Tiberias refers to the second clause it refers to he first clause one must not break it into a hot cloth but our Jose permits it and the rabbis argued thus with our Jose but in the incident of the people of Tiberias it was a sun heated object yet the rabbis forbade it that was a product of fire he retorted because they pass over the entrance to Gehenna our Hisda said Talmud Moth should bath be on account of the incident of what the people of Tiberias did and the rabbis forbade them it. Practice of putting away out in anything that adds heat even by day has no sanction. Ulla said the Halacha agrees with the inhabitants of Tiberias said Arnaman to him the Tiberians have broken their pipe long ago. It once happened that the people of Tiberias did this etc. Which washing is meant shall we say of the whole body is only hot water heated on the Sabbath forbidden whereas hot water heated on the eve of the Sabbath is permitted surely it was taught as to hot water which was heated on the eve of the Sabbath on the morrow Sabbath day one may wash his face hands and feet in it but not his whole body hence it must refer to his face hands and feet and consider the second clause if on a festival it is like water heated on a festival which is forbidden for washing but permitted for drinking shall we say that we learned an anonymous mission in accordance with Beth Shammai for we learned Beth Shammai maintain a man must not eat water for washing his feet unless it is fit for drinking, but Bethilel permitted said R.I.K. Behan the references to the sousing of
heard it explicitly said he to him it was stated if hot water is heated on the eve of the Sabbath Rav said on the morrow one may wash his whole body in it limb by limb while Samuel ruled that the sages permitted one to wash his face hands and feet only an objection is raised if hot water is heated on the eve of the Sabbath on the morrow one may wash his face hands and feet therein but not his whole body this refutes Rav Rav can answer you not his whole body at once but limb by limb but he the Tana states his face hands and feet dash it means similar to the face hands and feet come and here it was permitted to wash only one's face hands and feet on the Sabbath in water heated on the eve of the Sabbath here too it means similar to the face hands and feet it was taught in accordance with Samuel if hot water is heated on the eve of the Sabbath on the morrow of the Sabbath day one may wash his face hands and feet therein but not his whole body limb by limb and with water heated on a festival it goes without saying Rav recited this ruling of Rav in the following version if hot water is heated on the eve of the Sabbath Rav said on the morrow one may wash his whole body in it but must omit one limb he raised against him all the above objections he is indeed refuted our Joseph asked Abbe did Rav act in accordance with Rabbi's ruling I do not know he replied what question is this it is obvious that he did not act for he was refuted he did not hear them but if he had not heard them he certainly acted thus for Abbe said in all matters the master S.C. Rabbi acted in accordance with Rav except in these three where he did as Samuel is one may life from lamp to lamp one can detach the fringes from one garment for insertion in another and the Halacha is as our Simeon in respect to dragging he followed Rav's restrictions but not his leniencies our rabbis taught if the holes of the bathhouse are plugged on the eve of the Sabbath one may bathe therein Immediately after the conclusion of the Sabbath if on the eve of a festival one may enter on the morrow sweat and go out and have a south bath in the outer chamber Rav Judah said it once happened at the baths of Baini Barak that the holes were plugged on the eve of a festival on the morrow our Eliezer B. Ezra and our Akiva entered sweated there and went out and had a south bath in the outer chamber but the warm water was covered over with boards when the matter came before the sages they said even if the warm water is not covered with boards but when transgressors grew in number they began forbidding it one may stroll through the baths of large cities and need have no fear what is this reference to transgressors for our Simeon because he said in the name of our Joshua be Levi on the authority of Barkaper at first people used to wash in pit water heated on the eve of the Sabbath and bath attendants began to heat the water on the Sabbath maintaining that it was done on the eve of the Sabbath. So the use of hot water was forbidden but sweating was permitted yet still they used to bathe in hot water and maintain we were perspiring so sweating was forbidden yet the thermal springs of Tiberias were permitted yet they bathed in water heated by fire and maintained we bathed in the thermal springs of Tiberias so they forbade the hot springs of Tiberias but permitted cold water but when they saw that the series of restriction could not stand they permitted the hot springs of Tiberias. While sweating remained in status quo Rabbi said he who violates even a rabbinical enactment may be stigmatized a transgressor according to whom Talmud, Mosh should bath be according to this Tana one may stroll through the baths of large cities and need have no fear Rabbi said only in large cities but not in villages what is the reason since they are small their heat is great our rabbis taught a man may warm himself at a big fire go out and have a sousing cold water providing that he does not. Have a sousing cold water first and then warm himself at the fire because he warms the water upon him. Our rabbis taught a man may heat a cloth on the Sabbath to place it on his stomach but must not bring a hot water bottle and place it on his stomach on the Sabbath and this is forbidden even on weekdays because of its danger. Our rabbis taught a man may bring a jug of water and stand it in front of the fire not for it to become warm but for its coldness to be tempered. Our Judah said a woman may bring a cruise of oil and place it in front of the fire not for it to boil but to become lukewarm. Our Simeon B. Gamaliel said a woman may smear her hand with oil, warm it at a fire and massage her infant son without fear. The scholars propounded what is the first tannis view on oil. Rabbi and our Joseph both interpreted permissibly. Our and B. Isaac interprets it restrictively. Rabbi and our Joseph both interpreted permissibly oil even if the hand shrinks from it is permitted the first tana holding. That oil is not subject to the prohibition of cooking then Arjuna comes to say that oil is subject to cooking but making it lukewarm is not cooking boiling it whereupon our Simeon B. Gamaliel comes to say that oil is subject to cooking and making it lukewarm is tantamount to cooking in its case our and B. Isaac interprets it restrictively oil even if the hand does not shrink from it is forbidden the first tana holding that oil is subject to the prohibition of cooking and making it lukewarm is cooking it then Arjuna comes to say that oil is subject to cooking but making it lukewarm is not boiling it whereupon our Simeon B. Gamaliel comes to say oil is subject to boiling and making it lukewarm is tantamount to boiling it then our Simeon B. Gamaliel is identical with the first tana they differ in respect to a backhanded manner of Judah said in Samuel's name both in the case of oil and water if the hand shrinks from it it is forbidden if the hand does not shrink from it it is Permitted and how is the hand shrinking from it? Defined said Rehoboth, if an infant's belly is scalded by it, or Isaac B. of Dimi said, I once followed Rabbi into the baths and wished to place a cruise of oil for him in the bath, whereupon he said to me, Take some water in a second vessel and put the cruise of oil in it. Three things are inferred from this. I oil is subject to the prohibition of boiling to a second vessel, cannot boil three, making it lukewarm is boiling it, but how might you, Rabbi? Act thus did not Rabbi B. Barhanna say in our Yohanan's name, one may meditate on the words of the Torah everywhere except at the baths or a privy, and should you answer, he said it to him in secular language. Surely Abbe said, Secular matters may be uttered in the holy language, whereas sacred matters must not be uttered in secular language, restraining one from transgression is different. The proof is Rab Judah said in Samuel's name, it once happened that a disciple of our Mayor followed him into the Baths and wished to swill the ground for him, but he said to him, One may not swill, and he wished to oil the ground for him, but he said to him, One may not oil. This proves that restraining one from transgression is different. So here, too, restraining one from transgression is different. Rabbanah said, This proves that if one cooks in the hot waters of Tiberias on the Sabbath, he is liable for the incident of Rabbi happened after the decree. Yet he said to him, Take some water in a second vessel and put the cruise of oil in it, but that is not so for Arhista said, If one cooks in the hot springs of Tiberias on the Sabbath, he is exempt by libel. He too meant flagellation for disobedience. Arzera said, I saw Rabbi swimming in a bath, but I do not know whether he lifted his feet or not. Is it not obvious that he did not lift his feet? For it was taught one must not swim in a pool full of water, even if it stands in a courtyard. There is no difficulty in the one case, Talmud, Mosh bath it. The pool has no embankments in the other case it has Arzera also said I saw Arabab put his hand near his buttocks but do not know whether he touched them or not it is obvious that he did not touch them for it was taught our Eliezer said he who holds his member and passes water is as though he brought a flood upon the world said Abay it was accounted as analogous to a marauding band for we learned if a marauding band enters a town in peacetime open barrels of wine are forbidden closed. Barrels are permitted in wartime both are permitted because they have no time to make Nizek thus we see since they are afraid they do not make Nizek so here too since he is in fear he will not come to meditate impure thoughts and what fear is there here the fear of the river but that is not so for our Abba said in the name of our who not in Rab's name he who puts his hand near his buttocks is as though he denied the covenant of Abraham there is no difficulty the one means when he descends into the River the other refers to when he ascends just as Rabbi used to bend over Arzera would stand upright the scholars of the college of Arashi when they descended they stood upright but when they ascended they bent over Arzera was evading Rab Judah for he Arzera desired to emigrate to Palestine whereas Rab Judah said he who emigrates from Babylon to Palestine violates a positive command for it is said they shall be carried to Babylon and there they shall be said he I will go here a teaching. From him return and emigrate he went and found him standing at the baths and saying to his attendant bring me natron bring me a comb open your mouths and expel the heat and drink of the water of the bath said he had I come to hear not but this it would suffice me as for bring me natron bring me a comb it is well he informs us that secular matters may be said in the holy tongue open your mouths and expel the heat
Heat submission if a boiler is removed one may not pour cold water therein to heat it but one may pour it water therein the boiler or into a goblet in order to temper it tomorrow what does this mean said our Adabi Mahenda this is its meaning in the case of a boiler from which the hot water is removed one must not pour into it a little cold water in order to heat it but he may pour in a large quantity of cold water to temper it Talmud, Moss should bath be but does he not harden it this? Agrees with our Simeon who ruled that which is unintentional is permitted Abay to this is it then stated a boiler from which the water is removed surely it is stated if a boiler is removed rather said Abay this is the meaning if a boiler is removed from the fire and it contains hot water one must not pour therein a little water to heat it the added water but he may pour a large quantity of cold water therein to temper it but if the water is removed from a boiler no water at all. May be poured therein because that hardens it disagreeing with Arjuna who maintains even that which is unintentional is forbidden Rab said they taught that it is permitted only to temper the water but if it is to harden the metal it is forbidden whereas Samuel ruled even if to harden it it is still permitted if the primary purpose is to harden it can it be permitted rather if stated it was thus stated Rab said they taught this only where there is merely a sufficient quantity to temper it but if there is enough to harden it it is forbidden whereas Samuel maintained even if there is a sufficient quantity to harden it Talmud, Mosh should bath it is permitted shall we say that Samuel agrees with Arsimian but surely Samuel said one may extinguish a lump of fiery metal in the street that it should not harm the public but not a burning piece of wood and now if you think that he agrees with Arsimian even that of wood too should be permitted in respect to what is unintentional. He holds with Arsimian but in the matter of work which is not needed per se he agrees with Arjuna Rabbin said as a corollary a thorn in public ground may be carried away in stages of less than four cubits whilst in a Carmel even a great distance too is permitted but one may pour etc. Our rabbis taught a man may pour hot water into cold but not cold water into hot this is the view of Beth Shammai while Beth Hillel maintained both hot into cold and cold into hot are permitted this applies only to a cup but in the case of a bath hot into cold is permitted but not cold into hot but Arsimian Bimanasi forbids it Arnaman said the Halachah is as Arsimian Bimanasi our Joseph thought to rule a basin is as a bath said Abay to him our high thought a basin is not as a bath now on the original supposition that it is as a bath while Arnaman ruled the Halachah is as Arsimian can there be no washing in hot water on the Sabbath do you think that Arsimian refers to the second clause he refers to the first clause while Beth Hillel maintained both hot into cold and cold into hot are permitted but Arsimian Bimanasi forbids even cold into hot shall we say that Arsimian Bimanasi rules as Beth Shammai he says thus Beth Shammai and Beth Hillel did not differ in this matter Arhuna son of Arjashua said I saw that Rabba was not particular about vessel since our high thought a person may pour a jug of water into a basin of water hot into cold or cold into hot said Arhuna to Arashi perhaps it is different there because the vessel intervenes it is stated that he pours it was his answer thus a person may pour a jug of water into a basin of water both hot into cold and cold into hot mission if a stew pot or a boiling pot is removed seating from the fire one must not put spices there in Talmud Mosh of Bathby but one may put spices into a dish or a terrine Arjuna said he may put spices into anything except what contains vinegar or brine Gamara the scholars propounded does are Judah referred to the first clause and he rules in the direction of leniency or perhaps he refers to the second clause inclining to stringency come and here Arjuna said one may put spices into all stew pots and into all boiling pots that are seething except pot that contains vinegar or brine Arjuna thought to rule that salt is like spices because that it boils in a first vessel but not in a second vessel said Abay to him our high thought salt is not like spices for it boils even in a Second vessel now he differs from Arnaman who said salt requires as much boiling as ox flesh other state Arjuna thought to rule salt is like spices because that it boils in a first vessel but not in a second vessel said Abay to him our high thought salt is not like spices for it does not boil even in a first vessel and this is identical with Arnaman's dictum salt requires as much boiling as ox flesh Mishnah one may not place a vessel under a lamp to catch the oil but if it is pierced there before sunset it is permitted yet one may not benefit from it because it is not of Mukhan Gamara Arhista said though the sages ruled a vessel may not be placed under a fowl to receive its eggs yet a vessel may be overturned upon it the egg that it should not be broken said Rabba what is Arhista's reason he holds that it is usual for a fowl to lay her eggs in a dung heap but not on sloping ground now they, the sages permitted in a common case of saving but in an uncommon case of saving they did not permit Abbe raised an objection now did they, the sages not permit in an uncommon case of saving surely it was taught if a person's barrel of people burst on the top of his roof he may bring a vessel and place it beneath it the references to new jars which frequently burst he raised an objection a vessel may be placed under a lamp to catch the sparks sparks to our common Talmud Mosh Bath he raised an objection a dish may be overturned above a lamp that they, Beams should not catch fire. This refers to houses with low ceilings, for it is a common thing for them to catch fire. He raised a further objection, and likewise, if a beam is broken, it may be supported by a bench or bed staves. This refers to new planks, for it is a common thing for them to split. Another objection: a utensil may be placed under a leak in the roof on the Sabbath. This refers to new houses where leaking is common. Our Joseph said, "This is our Hista's reason, viz. because he deprives the vessel of its readiness for use." Abay objected to him. If a barrel of teeple is broken, another vessel may be brought and placed under it. Teeple is ready for use in respect to the Sabbath. Replied he, for if he transgresses and prepares it, it is prepared. Another objection: a vessel may be placed under a lamp to catch the sparks. Said Arhuna, son of Arjashua, sparks are intangible. Another objection: and likewise, if a beam is broken, it may be supported by a bench or bed staves. That means that. It is loose so that if he desires he can remove it. Another objection a vessel may be placed under drippings on the Sabbath. The reference is to drippings that are fit for use. Another objection a basket may be overturned before fledglings for them to ascend or descend. He holds that if the basket may still be moved but it was taught it may not be moved. That is only while the fledglings are yet upon it but it was taught though they are not still upon it. It is forbidden said R. Above that means that they were upon it throughout the period of twilight since it was forbidden to handle at twilight it remains so forbidden for the whole day. R. Isaac said just as a vessel may not be placed under a fowl to receive her egg so may a vessel not be overturned upon it. The egg that it should not be broken he holds that a vessel may be handled only for the sake of that which itself may be handled on the Sabbath. All the foregoing objections were raised and he answered it means. That its place is required come and here an egg laid on the Sabbath or an egg laid on a festival may not be moved neither for covering a vessel nor for supporting the legs of a bed therewith but a vessel may be turned over it that it the egg should not be broken here too it means that its place is required come and here mats may be spread over stones on the Sabbath the reference is to smoothly rounded stones which are fit for use in a privy come and here mats may be spread on the Sabbath upon bricks which were left over from a building that is because they are fit for reclining thereon come and here one may spread mats over beehives on the Sabbath in the sun on account of the sun and in the rain on account of the rain providing he has no intention of capturing the bees the circumstances are that they contain honey said Arakbab messing to Arashi that is correct of summer Talmud Mosh of Bath be when there is honey but what can be said of winter when it does not contain Honey it is in respect of two loaves but they are muksa it means that he designated them and what if he did not designate them it is forbidden if so instead of teaching providing he has no intention of capturing the bees let a distinction be drawn and taught in that itself thus when is that said when he designated them but if he did not designate them it is forbidden he the tana teaches us this even if he designated them yet there is a proviso that he must not intend to capture the bees with whom does this agree if our Simeon surely he rejects the prohibition of muksa if Arjuna then what matters if one does not intend to capture the bees dash surely he holds that an unintentional act is forbidden in truth this agrees with Arjuna and what is meant by providing he has no intention of capturing the bees that he must not arrange it like a net namely he must leave an opening so that they, the bees should not be automatically caught Arashi said is it then taught in Summer and in
A child is available what is the reason of the first tana if it is not what is the reason of Arjuna Bilakish hence they surely differ in respect to sidelong moving one master holding that such is designated moving while the other master holds that it is not no all agree that sidelong moving is designated moving but this is the reason of Arjuna Bilakish since a man is agitated over his dead Talmud, Masha Bath if you do not permit it to him he will come to extinguish the fire Arjuna. Bishila said in the name of R.C. and R. Yohanan's name the Halachah is as Arjuna Bilakish in the matter of the corpse yet one may not benefit from it because it is not of Mugan our rabbis taught the residue of oil in the lamp or in the dishes forbidden but our Simeon permits admission a new lamp may be handled but not an old one our Simeon maintained all lamps may be handled except the lamp actually burning on the Sabbath Gemara our rabbis taught a new lamp may be moved but not an old one this. Is Arjuna's opinion Armeyer ruled all lamps may be moved except the lamp which was lit on the Sabbath. Our Simeon said except the lamp burning on the Sabbath if it is extinguished it may be moved but a cup dish or glass lantern may not be stirred from its place. Our Eliezer son of Our Simeon said one may take supplies from an extinguished lamp or from dripping oil even while the lamp is burning. Abay observed Our Eliezer son of Our Simeon agrees with his father on one point and disagrees with him on another. He agrees with his father on one point in reflecting the prohibition of Muksa yet he disagrees with him on another for whereas his father holds only if it is extinguished is it permitted but not otherwise he holds even if it is not extinguished but a cup dish or glass lantern may not be stirred from its place wherein do these differ said well this last clause follows Arjuna Marzitra demur to this if so what but rather said Marzitra in truth it follows Our Simeon yet Our Simeon permits. Handling only in the case of a small lamp because one's mind is set upon it, but not in the case of these which are large. But it was taught the residue of oil in the lamp or in the dishes forbidden. While our Simeon permits it, there the dish is similar to the lamp here. The dish is similar to the cup. Our Zara said a shaft in which a lamp was lit on that Sabbath. In the view of him who permits an earthen lamp, this is prohibited. In the view of him who forbids an earthen lamp, this is permitted. Shall we say that Arjuna accepts the prohibition of Muksa on account of repulsiveness, but rejects that of Muksa on account of an interdict? But it was taught Arjuna said all metal lamps may be handled except the lamp which was lit on the Sabbath. But if stated it was thus stated, our Zara said a shaft on which a lamp was lit on the Sabbath. All agree that it is forbidden to handle it if a lamp was not lit there, and all agree that it is permitted. Rab Judah said in Rab's name if a bed is. Designated for money, it may not be moved. Arnam and B. Isaac objected a new lamp may be handled, but not an old one. Talmud, Masha Bath B. Now, if a lamp though made for that purpose may be handled, if it was not lit, how much more so a bed which was not made for that purpose? Rather, if stated it was thus stated, Rab Judah said in Rab's name, in the case of a bed which was designated for money, if money was placed upon it, it may not be handled. If money was not placed upon it, it may be handled, but if it was not designated for money, then if money is lying upon it, now it may not be handled. If money is not lying upon it, it may be handled, provided that there was none upon it. At twilight, R. L. Azer objected as for its will work, if detachable, it has no connection there with is not measured with it, does not protect together with it in the matter of a covering above the dead, and it may not be rolled on the Sabbath. If there is money upon it, hence if there is no money upon it, now it is permitted. Though it was there at twilight, that is according to our Simeon who rejects the law of Muksa, whereas Rab agrees with Arjuna Talmud. Masha Bath, a logic to a verse that Rab agrees with Arjuna, for Rab said a lamp may be placed on a palm tree for the Sabbath but not on a festival. Now it is well if you admit that Rab holds as Arjuna, hence he draws a distinction between the Sabbath and festivals, but if you say that he holds as our Simeon, what is the difference between the Sabbath and festivals? But does Rab hold as Arjuna? Surely Rab was asked, is it permitted to move the Hanukkah lamp on account of the Gwebris on the Sabbath? And he answered them, it is well a time of emergency is different for our Kahana and our Ashi asked Rab, is that the law whereat he answered them, our Simeon is sufficient to be relied upon in an emergency rush like asked our Yohan, and what if we sowed in the earth or eggs under a fowl? When does our Simeon reflect the prohibition of Muksa where one has not rejected it? An object with his own hands, but where one rejects it with his own hands, he accepts the interdict of Muksa, or perhaps there is no difference. He answered him, Our Simeon accepts Muksa only in respect of the oil in the Sabbath lamp while it is burning, since it was set apart for its precept and set apart on account of its prohibition, but does he not accept it where it only was set apart for its precept? Surely it was taught if one roofs at the booth in accordance with its requirements. Beautifies it with hangings and sheets and suspends therein nuts, peaches, almonds, pomegranates, grape clusters, garlands of ears of corn, wines, oil, and flowers. He may not use them until the conclusion of the last festival day of the feast, yet if he stipulates concerning them, it is all according to his stipulation. And how do you know that this is Our Simeon's view? Because our high Joseph recited before our Yohanan would must not be taken from a hut on a festival save from what is near it, but our Simeon. Permits it yet both agree in respect to the sukkah of the festival that it is forbidden on the festival yet if he the owner stipulated concerning it it all depends on his stipulation we mean similar to the oil in the lamp since it was set apart for its precept it was set apart for its interdict it was stated likewise our high B Abba said in our Yohanan's name our Simeon rejects Muksa save in a case similar to the oil in the lamp while it is burning since it was set apart for its precept it was set apart for its interdict Rab Judah said in Samuel's name in our Simeon's view Muksa applies only to drying figs and grapes but does it apply to nothing else surely it was taught if one was eating figs left some over and took them up to the roof to make dry figs or grapes and left some over and took them up to the roof to make raisins he may not eat of them unless he designates them and you must say the same of peaches quinces and other kinds of fruit which Tana is this shall we say Arjuna seeing that he maintains the prohibition of Muksa even where one does not reject it with his own hands how much more so where he does reject it with his own hands hence it must surely be our Simeon after all it is Arjuna yet the case of eating is necessary I might argue since he was engaged in eating no designation is required hence we are informed that since he took them up to the roof he withdrew his thoughts thence our Simeon be rabbi asked rabbi Talmud, Masha Bath be what of unripe dates according to our Simeon said he to him our Simeon holds that Muksa applies only to drying figs and raisins but does not rabbi accept Muksa surely we learned pasture animals may not be watered and killed but home animals may be watered and killed and it was taught these are pasture animals those that go out on Passover and re-enter the town limits at the rainfall home animals those that go out and graze beyond the Tihum and re-enter and spend the night within the Tihum rabbi said both of these are home animals but the following are pasture animals those that graze in the meadow and do not enter the town limits either in summer or in winter if you wish I can answer these two are like drying figs and raisins alternatively he answered according to our Simeon's view which he himself does not accept another alternative he speaks according to the view of the rabbis as for me I do not accept Muksa at all but even on your view you must at least agree with me that if they go out on Passover and return at the rainfall they are home animals but the rabbis answered him no they are pasture animals Rabbi Barhana said in our Yohanan's name they ruled the Halachahs as our Simeon but did our Yohanan say thus surely a certain old man of Cairo others say of survey asked our Yohanan may a foul nest be handled on the Sabbath he answered him is it made for aught but fowls here the circumstances are that it contains a dead bird that is well according to Marbi Amimar in Rabbis. Name who said our Simeon admits that if living creatures die they are forbidden but on the view of Marsan of our Joseph in Rav's name who maintained our Simeon differed even in respect of living creatures that died ruling that they are permitted what can be said the reference here is to one Essia hen coop that contains an egg but our Naman said he who accepts the prohibition of Muksa accepts that of Nola he who rejects Muksa rejects Nola that is when it contains the egg of the fledgling. When our Isaac son of our Joseph came he said in the name of our Yohanan the Halachahs as our Judah while our Joshua believe I said the Halachahs as our Simeon our Joseph observed hence Rabbi Barhana said in our Yohanan's name they said the Halachahs as our
and we learned as for its will work if detachable it has no connection there with is not measured with it and does not protect together with it in the matter of a covering over the dead and it may not be rolled on the Sabbath if there is money upon it hence if there is no money upon it it is permitted though it was upon it at twilight said Arzara interpret our mission as meaning that there was no money upon it during the whole of twilight so as not to overthrow our Yohanan's words our Joshua B. Levi said Rabbi once went to Dios Pera and gave a practical ruling in respect to a candelabrum as Arsimian's view in respect to a lamp. The scholars asked, Did he give a practical ruling in respect to a candelabrum as Arsimian's view in respect to a lamp? I.e. permissibly, or perhaps he gave a restrictive ruling in respect to a candelabrum and as Arsimian in respect to a lamp. I.e. permissibly, the question stands over Armachia visited Arsimlay's home and moved the lamp to which Arsimlay took exception. R. Jose of Galilee visited the town of Ar Jose son of Arhanan. He moved the lamp to which Ar Jose son of Arhanan took exception. When Arabab visited Ar Joshua B. Levi's town, he would move a lamp. When he visited Ar Yohanan's town, he would not move a lamp. What will you if he holds as Ar Judah let him act accordingly? While if he holds as Ar Simeon let him act accordingly? In truth, he agreed with Ar Simeon but did not act thus out of respect to Ar Yohanan. Ar Judah said an oil lamp may be handled in Aptha. Lamp may not be handled. Rabbah and our Joseph both maintained a nap. The lamp too may be handled. Our we visited Rabbah's home. Now his boots were mudded with clay. Yet he sat down on a bed before Rabbah. Thereupon Rabbah was annoyed and wished to vex him. Said he to him, What is the reason that Rabbah and our Joseph both maintained that a nap? The lamp too may be handled because it is fit for covering a utensil. Replied he, If so, all ships of the yard may be handled since they are fit to cover a utensil. The one a nap. The lamp bears the character of a utensil. The others do not bear the character of a utensil. Was it not taught Talmud? Moss should bath be bracelets. Earrings and finger rings are like all utensils which may be handled in a yard. And Ula said, What is the reason since they bear the character of a utensil? So here too, since it bears the character of a utensil, it may be handled. Our nomin be Isaac observed. Praise be the all merciful that Rabbah did not put our we to shame. Abbe pointed out a. Contradiction to Rabbi, it was taught the residue of the oil in the lamp or in the dish is forbidden, but Arsimian permits it. Thus, we see that Arsimian rejects Muksa, but the following opposes it. Arsimian said, Wherever the blemish was not perceptible from the eve of the festival, it is not Mukan. How compare there a man sits and hopes when will his lamp go out? But here does a man sit and hope when will it receive a blemish? Or he argues who can say that it will receive a blemish? And even if you say that it will, who can say that it will be a permanent blemish? And even if you say that it will be a permanent blemish, who can say that a scholar will oblige him? Rami Biham objected, Thou's can be annulled on the Sabbath, and one may apply for absolution from vows where such is necessary for the Sabbath. Yet why let us argue who can say that her husband will oblige her? There it is as our Phinehas in Rabbah's name, for our Phinehas said in Rabbah's name, whoever vows does so conditional upon her. Husband's consent come and here one may apply for absolution from vows on the Sabbath where it is necessary for the Sabbath yet why let us argue who can say that a sage will oblige him there if a sage will not oblige three layman suffice but here who can say that a sage will oblige him have a raised a difficulty before our Joseph did then our Simeon rule if the lamp is extinguished it may be handled thus only if it is extinguished but not if it is not extinguished what is the reason presumably lest through his handling it it goes out but we know our Simeon to rule that whatever is unintentional is permitted for it was taught our Simeon said one may drag a bed seat or bench providing that he does not intend to make a rut wherever there is a scriptural interdict if it is intentional our Simeon forbids it by rabbinical law even if unintentional but wherever there is only a rabbinical interdict even if it is intentional our Simeon permits it at the outset if unintentional Rob objected Clothes merchants may sell in their normal fashion, providing that one does not intend to gain protection from the sun in hot weather or from the rain when it is raining, but the strictly religious lingam on a staff behind their back now here, though it is scripturally intentional, yet if unintentional, our Simeon permits it at the outset, rather said Rabbi Talmud, Moss should bath leave the lamp oil and wicks alone because they become a base for a forbidden thing. Arzara said in R.C.'s name in R. Yuanani's name in R. Hanan's name in the name of our Romanus Rabbi permitted me to handle a pen with its ashes, said Arzara to R.C. Did R. Yohanan say thus, but we learned a man may take up his son while he is holding a stone or a basket containing a stone, whereon Rabbi Bar Hanan said in R. Yohanan's name the reference is to a basket filled with fruit thus only because it contains fruit, but if it does not contain fruit, it is not so he was a study for a while, then answered here too, it means that. If the pen contains also some grains of spice, Abbe objected, did grains have any value in Rabbi's house? And should you answer, they were fit for the poor. Surely it was taught the garments of the poor for the poor and the garments of the wealthy for the wealthy, but those of the poor are not deemed fit for the purpose of the wealthy. But said Abbe, it is analogous to a chamber pot. Rabbi observed, there are two refutations to this. Firstly, a chamber pot is repulsive, while this is not repulsive. And secondly, a chamber pot is uncovered, whereas this is covered. Rather, said Rabbi, when we were at our Namanis, we would handle a brazier on account of its ashes, even if broken pieces of wood were lying upon it. An objection is raised, and both agree that if a lamp contains fragments of a wick, it may not be handled. Said Abbe, they learned this of Galilee Levi B. Samuel met Arabah and Arhuna B. High standing at the door of Arhuna's college, said he to them, is it permissible to reassemble a weavers? Frame on the Sabbath it is well answered. Then he went before Rab Judah who said, Surely Rab and Samuel both rule. If one reassembles a weaver's frame on the Sabbath, he is liable to a sin offering. An objection is raised. If one puts back the branch of a candelabrum on the Sabbath, he is liable to a sin offering. As for the joint of a whitewasher's pole, it must not be reinserted. Yet if one does reinsert it, he is exempt. But it is forbidden. Arsim I said, For a circular horn, one is liable for a straight horn. One is exempt. They ruled as this tanner, for it was taught the sockets of a bed, the legs of a bed, and the archer's tablets may not be reinserted. Yet if one does reinsert them, he is not liable to a sin offering. Talmud, Moss should bath be, but it is forbidden, nor must they be tightly fixed. In, and if one does so, he is liable to a sin offering. Arsim and Begamaliel said, If it is loose, it is permitted. At our home, there was a folding bed which they used to put up on festival set. One of the rabbis to Rabbah, what is your view that it is building from the side? Granted that there is no scriptural prohibition, yet it is rabbinically forbidden. Said he to him, I agree with Arsimian B. Gamaliel, who ruled if it is loose, it is permitted. Mishnah, a vessel may be placed under a lamp to catch the sparks, but one must not pour water therein because he extinguishes them. Gemara, but he deprives the vessel of its readiness. Said Arhuna, the son of our Joshua, sparks are intangible, but one must not pour water therein because he extinguishes them. Shall we say that we learned anonymously as our Jose, who maintained that which is a cause of extinguishing is forbidden? Now is that logical? Granted that our Jose ruled thus for the Sabbath, did he rule thus for the eve of the Sabbath? And should you say here also it refers to the eve of the Sabbath? Surely it was taught a vessel may be placed under a lamp on the Sabbath to catch the sparks, and on the eve of the Sabbath goes without saying but one. Must not pour water therein on the eve of the Sabbath because he extinguishes them and the Sabbath goes without saying rather said Arashi you may say that it agrees even with the rabbis here it is different because one brings the extinguisher near C-H-A-P-T-E-R-I-V Mishnah wherein may we store food and wherein may we not store IT we may not store IT in peat foliage salt lime or sand whether moist or dry nor in straw grapes in soft flocking or herbage when they are moist but we may store food in them when they are dry Gemara the scholars propounded did we learn peat of olives whereas peat of poppy seed as well or perhaps we learn peat of poppy seed and how much more so of olives come and here for our Zara said on the authority of one of the disciples of the school of Arjana a basket in which one put away food may not be placed on peat of olives this proves that we learn peat of olives dash no after all I may tell you that in respect of storing peat of poppy seed too. Is forbidden, but as for
The neck of a shirt on the Sabbath incurs a sin offering our Kahana objected Talmud, Mosh Shabbath be what is the difference between this and the bung of a barrel said Robert to him the one is an integral part thereof whereas the other is not our Jeremiah pointed out a contradiction to our zero we learned the fuller's loosely stitched bundle or a bunch of keys or a garment stitched together with kilaim thread are counted as connected in respect of uncleanness until one begins to undo them this. Proves that they are regarded as joined even not at the time of work but the following is opposed thereto if a stick is improvised to serve as a handle for an axe it is counted as connected in respect of uncleanness at the time of work thus only at the time of work but not otherwise there he replied a man is wont to throw at the handle among the timber when it is not being used here a man prefers that pieces remain together even not at the time of work so that if they are soiled he can. Rewash them in sir the following discussion was recited in our Histah's name in Pumadiva it was recited in our Kahana's name other state in Rabba's name who is the tanner responsible for the statement of the rabbis whatever is joined to an article is counted as the article itself said Rab Judah in Rab's name it is our Meir for we learned the receptacles on a stove for the oil flasks by spot and the lamp are defiled through contact but not through airspace this is our Meir's opinion but our Simeon declares them clean now as for our Simeon it is well he holds that they are not as a stove but according to our Meir if they are as a stove let them be defiled even through airspace if they are not as a stove let them not be defiled even through contact in truth they are not as a stove but the rabbis decreed uncleanness in their case if they decreed it let them be defiled even through airspace too the rabbis made a distinction so that people might not come to burn terima and holy food. On account of them, our rabbis taught a shears of separate blades and the cutter of a carpenter's plane are counted as connected in respect of uncleanness, but not in respect of sprinkling. What will you if they are both counted as connected? They are so even in respect of sprinkling too. If they do not count as connected, they are not so even in respect of defilement. Said Rabbi by scriptural law, when in use, they are counted as connected in respect of both defilement and sprinkling. When not in use, they are counted as connected in respect of neither defilement nor sprinkling. Talmud, Mosh of Bath, but the rabbis impose a preventive measure in respect of defilement when they are not in use. On account of defilement when they are in use, and in respect of sprinkling when they are in use. On account of when they are not in use when they are moist, the scholars propounded naturally moist or artificially moist. Come and here we may not store in straw grapes, skins, flocking. Or herbage when they are moist now if you say that it means artificially moistened it is well but if you say naturally moist how can flocking be naturally moist dash it is possible in the case of wool plucked from between the flanks and as to what our Ashaya taught we may store food in a dry cloth and in dry produce but not in a damp cloth or moist produce how is naturally damp cloth possible in the case of wool plucked from between the flanks mission we may store food in garments produce. Dubs wings carpenters sawdust and thoroughly beaten hash held flax are judah forbid storing in fine but permits it in coarse beaten flax gamara are janay said tefillin demand a pure body like Alicia the man of wings what does this mean Abbe said that one must not pass wind while wearing the rabbi said that one must not sleep in them and why is he called the man of wings because the wicked Roman government once proclaimed a decree against Israel that whoever don tefillin should have. His brains pierced through yet Elisha put them on and went out into the streets when Aquatus saw him he fled before him whereupon he gave pursuit as he overtook him he Elisha removed them from his head and held them in his hand what is that in your hand he demanded the wings of a dove was his reply he stretched out his hand and lo they were the wings of a dove therefore he is called Elisha the man of the wings and why the wings of a dove rather than that of other birds because the congregation of Israel is likened to a dove as it is said as the wings of a dove covered with silver just as a dove is protected by its wings so is Israel protected by the precepts in carpenter's sawdust etc the scholars propounded does our Judah refer to carpenter's sawdust or to hashal flax come and here our Judah said fine hashal flax is like foliage this proves that he refers to hashal flax this proves admission we may store food in fresh hides and they may be handled in wool Sharings, but they may not be handled. What then is done? The lid of the pot is lifted, and they the sharings fall off of their own accord. Our Eliezer B. Ezra said the basket is lifted on one side, and the food is removed. Lest one lift the lid of the pot and be unable to replace it. But the sages say one may take and replace. It Gemara, our Jonathan B. Akina, and our Jonathan B. Eliezer were sitting, and our Hannah B. Hamas sat with them, and it was asked, Did we learn fresh hides belonging to a private individual? But those of an artisan, since he is particular about them, may not be handled. Or perhaps we learned about those of an artisan, and all the more so those of a private individual. Said our Jonathan B. Eliezer to them, It stands to reason that we learned about those belonging to a private individual. But as for those of an artisan, he is particular about them. Thereupon our Hannah B. Hamas observed to them, Thus did our Ishmael B. Our Jose say Talmud, Mosh Shabbat B. My father was a hide worker, and he would. Say fetch hides and that we may sit on them. An objection is raised. Boards belonging to a householder may be handled. Those of an artisan may not be handled. But if one intended to place bread upon them for guests, in both cases they may be handled. Boards are different. For one is certainly particular about them. Come and hear hides whether tent or not may be handled on the Sabbath. Tent being specified only in respect to uncleanness. Now surely no distinction is drawn whether they belong to a householder or an artisan. No, it means those of a householder. But what of those of an artisan they may not be handled. If so, when it is taught, tent being specified only in respect to uncleanness, let a distinction be drawn and taught in that itself. Is when is that said only of those belonging to a householder, but not concerning those of an artisan. The whole deals with those of a householder. This is dependent on tent. Hides of a private individual may be handled, but those of an Artisan may not our Jose maintained either the one or the other may be handled again they sat and pondered regarding what we learned the principal categories of labor are forty less one to what do they correspond said our Hannah be hammered to them to the forms of labor in the tabernacle our Jonathan son of our Eliezer said to them thus did our Simeon be our Jose be like and he say they correspond to the words work Malika his work Malakto and the work of Malik which are written thirty nine times in the Torah our Joseph asked is and he went into the house to do his work included in this number or not said Abbe to him then let a scroll of the Torah be brought and we will count did not Rabbi Barhana say in our Yohanan's name they did not stir thence until they brought a scroll of the Torah and counted them the reason that I am doubtful replied he is because it is written for the work they had was sufficient is that of the number while this is to be interpreted in accordance with the view. That he entered to perform his business, or perhaps, and he went into the house to do his work, is of a number. While this for the work they had was sufficient, is meant. Thus, their business was completed. The question stands over. It was taught as the opinion that it corresponds to the forms of labor in the tabernacle. For it was taught liability is incurred only for work of which the same was performed in the tabernacle. They sowed hence, he must not sow. They reaped hence, he must not reap. They lifted up the boards from the ground to the wagon hence, he must not carry in from a public to a private domain. They lowered the boards from the wagon to the ground hence, he must not carry out from a private to a public domain. They transported boards, etc., from wagon to wagon hence, he must not carry from one private to another private domain. From one private to another private domain, what wrong is done? Abbe and Rabba both explained. Others say, Abbe, it means from one private to another. Private domain by a public ground in wool shearings, but they may not be handled. Rabbi said they learned this only where one had not stored food in them, but if one had stored food in them on that Sabbath, they may be handled. A certain student of one day standing refuted Rabbi, we may store food in wool shearings, but they may not be handled. What then is done? Talmud, Mosh of Bath, the lid of the pot is lifted, and they the shearings fall off of their own accord. Rather, if stated it was thus. Stated Rabbi said they learned this only when one had not designated them for storing, but if he had, they may be handled. It was stated likewise when Rabin came, he said in the name of our Jacob, in the name of our CB Saul, in Rab's name, they learned this only where one had not designated them for constant storing, but if he had designated them for constant storing, they may be handled. Rabbi said they the sages of the mission learned in reference to the merchant's shelves, it was taught likewise. Wool shearings of the shelves may not be handled, but if a private individual prepared them for use, they may be handled. Rabbi Barhana recited before
Gamaliel Arhanab Akiba for when Ardini came he said in the name of Zeiri and Arhanab's name Arhanab Akiba once went to a certain place and found dry branches of a palm tree cut down and he said to his disciples go out and declare your intention so that we may be able to sit upon them tomorrow and I do not know whether it was a house of feasting or a house of mourning since he says I do not know whether it was a house of feasting or a house of mourning it implies only there because they are occupied but elsewhere it must be tied together but if not it is not permitted Rab Judah said a man may bring a sack full of earth into the house and use it for his general needs Marzitra lectured in the name of Marzitra Rabbi providing that he allotted a certain corner to it said the students before our Papa with whom does this agree our Simeon be Gamaliel for if with the rabbis an act is required our Papa answered you may even say with the rabbis the rabbis rule that an act is Required only where an act is possible but not where it is impossible shall we say that this is disputed by tanning utensils may be cleaned with anything save silver vessels with white earth this implies that natron and sand are permitted but surely it was taught natron and sand are forbidden surely they differ in this one master holds that an act is required while the other master holds that no act is required no all agree that no act is required yet there is no difficulty one is according to our Judah who maintains what is unintentional is forbidden the other is according to our Simeon who rules what is unintentional is permitted how have you explained the view that it is permitted as agreeing with our Simeon then consider the last clause but one must not cleanse his hair with them rather if our Simeon surely he permits it for we learn Talmud Moshe Bath be a Nazi right may cleanse his hair and part it but he must not comb it rather both are according to our Judah yet to tanning. Differ as to our Judah's view, one Tana holds that in our Judah's view they natron and sand smooth, while the other Tana holds that in our Judah's view they do not smooth. How have you explained them as agreeing with our Judah? Then consider the second clause, but the face, hands, and feet are permitted, but surely it removes the hair if you wish. I can answer that it refers to a child, alternatively to a woman, another alternative to a unit by nature. Rab Judah said powdered brick is permitted, our Joseph. Said poppy pomace scented with jasmine is permitted, Rabba said crushed pepper is permitted, our she's hate said barda is permitted, what is barda said, our Joseph a compound consisting of a third aloes, a third myrtle, and a third violets, our Nehemiah B. Joseph said providing that there is not a greater quantity of aloes, it is well, our she's hate was asked, is it permissible to bruise olives on the Sabbath? He answered them who permitted it, then on weekdays he holds that it is forbidden on account of it. Destruction of food shall we say that he disagrees with Samuel for Samuel said one may do whatever he desires with bread I will tell you a loaf crumbled is not repulsive but these are Amimar Marzitra and Arashi were sitting when Barda was brought before the Amimar and Arashi washed their hands there with Marzitra did not say they to him do you not accept Arshesh's ruling that Barda is permitted our Mordecai answered them exclude the master Marzitra who does not hold it permitted. Even on weekdays his view is as what was taught one may scrape off the dirt scabs and wound scabs that are on his flesh because of the pain but if in order to beautify himself it is forbidden and whose view do they adopt as what was taught one must wash his face hands and feet daily in his maker's honor for it is said the Lord hath made everything for his own purpose our Eliezer B. Ezra said the basket is tilted on one side and the food I has removed less one lift the lid of the pot etc. R. Abba said in our high B. Ashi's name all agree that if the cavity becomes disordered we may not replace the pot we learned but the sages say one may take and replace it what are the circumstances if the cavity is not disordered the rabbis surely say well hence it must mean even if the cavity becomes disordered no in truth it means that the cavity was not disordered but here they differ as to whether we fear one master holds we fear lest the cavity become disordered while the other master holds we do not fear our Hannah said with respect to Selakusha if one put it in drew it out and put it in again it is permitted if not it is forbidden Samuel said as regards the knife between the rows of bricks if one inserted it withdrew it and reinserted it it is permitted if not it is forbidden Marzitra other state our Ashi said yet it is well to insert a knife between the branches of a reed hedge our Mordecai said to rob our cat and raised an objection if one stores turnips or radishes under a Vine provided some of their leaves are uncovered, he need have no fear. Talmud, Mosh of Bath on account of Kilai more the seventh year or tithes, and they may be removed on the Sabbath. This is indeed a refutation mission. If the pot was not covered while it was yet day, it may not be covered after nightfall. If it was covered but became uncovered, it may be recovered. A cruise may be filled with cold water and placed under a pillow or bolster. Gemara Rab Judah said in Samuel's name, cold water. Food, etc., may be hidden, said our Joseph. What does he inform us? We learned a cruise may be filled with cold water and placed under a pillow or a bolster. Abbe answered him, he tells us much, for if we learn from the mission alone, I might argue that applies only to an object which it is not customary to store away, but not to an object which it is customary to store away. Therefore, he informs us that it is not so. Our said on Rabbi's authority, cold water, food, etc., may not be hidden, but it was. Taught Rabbi permitted cold water etc. to be hidden there is no difficulty the one ruling was given before he heard it from our Ishmael son of our Jose the other after he heard it from him for Rabbi sat and declared cold water etc. may not be hidden said our Ishmael son of our Jose to him my father permitted cold water to be hidden then the elder has already given a ruling answered he or Papa observed come and see how much they loved each other for were our Jose alive he would have sat submissively before Rabbi since our Ishmael son of our Jose who occupied his father's place sat submissively before Rabbi yet he Rabbi said then the elder has already given a ruling our nom and said to his slave there put away cold water for me and bring me water heated by a Gentile cook when our MI heard thereof he objected said our Joseph why should he have objected he acted in accordance with his teachers one act being according to Rab and the other according to Samuel according to Samuel for Rab. Judah said in Samuel's name cold water etc. may be hidden according to Rab for our Samuel son of our Isaac said in Rab's name whatever can be eaten in its natural state raw is not subject to the interdict against the cooking of Gentiles but here am I held that an important man is different our rabbis taught though it was said one may not store food after nightfall even in a substance which does not add heat yet if one comes to add he may add how does he do it our Simeon Begamaliel said he may remove the sheets and replace them with blankets or remove the blankets and replace them with sheets and thus did our Simeon Begamaliel say only the self same boiler was forbidden but if it, the food was emptied from that boiler into another it is permitted seeing that he cools it will he indeed heat it up if one stored food in and covered it with a substance that may be handled on the Sabbath or if he stored it in something that may not be handled on the Sabbath but covered it with Something that may be handled on the Sabbath, he may remove the covering and replace it if one stored food in and covered it with a substance that may not be handled on the Sabbath, or if he stored it in something that may be handled on the Sabbath but covered it with something that may not be handled on the Sabbath, provided it was partly uncovered, he may take it out and replace it. But if not Talmud, Mosh of Bath B, it may not be removed and replaced. Our Judah said thoroughly beaten flax is the same as foliage. A boiler may be placed upon the boiler and a pot upon the pot, but not a pot upon the boiler or a boiler upon the pot, and the mouth thereof may also be daubed over with dough, not in order to make them hotter, but that their heat may be retained. And just as hot food may not be hidden, so may cold food not be hidden. Rabbi permitted cold food to be hidden, and neither snow nor hail may be broken up on the Sabbath in order that the water should flow, but they may be placed in. A goblet or dish without fear, C-H-A-P-T-E-R-B, Mishnah, wherewith may an animal go out on the Sabbath, and wherewith may it not go out, a camel may go forth with a bit, a dromedary, and E-A-K-A-H, with its nose ring, Odom, a Libyan, ass with a halter, a horse with its chain, and all chain-wearing animals may go out with their chains, and B-L-E-D by their chains, and water of L-U-S-T-R-A-T-I-O-N may be sprinkled upon them, and they may be immersed in their place, Gamara, what is meant by N-E-A-K-A-H, with a Odom said. Rabbi B. Barhan, a white female camel with its iron nose ring, a Libyan ass with a halter, Arhuna said that means a Libyan ass with an iron halter. Levi sent money to be Hosey for a Libyan ass to be bought for him, but they parcelled up some barley and sent it
Fourth, wearing a halter on the Sabbath, thus did your father say in Samuel's name, he answered him, the Halachagas as Hananiah, the school of Manasseh, taught if groups are made between the goat's horns, it may be let out with a bit on the Sabbath. Our Joseph asked, What if one fastened it through its beard, since it is painful to the goat to tug at it, it will not come to do so, or perhaps it may chance to loosen and fall, and he will come to carry it four cubits in the street. The question stands over we. Learned elsewhere, nor with the strap between its horns are Jeremiah B. Abba said, Rav and Samuel differ therein. One maintains whether as an ornament or as a guard it is forbidden, while the other rules as an ornament it is forbidden, as a guard it is permitted. Our Joseph observed it may be proved that it was Samuel who maintained as an ornament it is forbidden, as a guard it is permitted for our Hunabi High said in Samuel's name, the Halachagas as Hananiah said, Abba to him, on the contrary, it may be proved that it was Samuel who maintained whether as an ornament or as a guard it is forbidden for Rav Judah said in Samuel's name, they transposed them in their questions before Rabbi, what about one animal going forth with the accoutrement of the other said, Arishmael B. R. Jose before him, thus did my father rule four animals may go out with a bit a horse mule camel and ask, what does it exclude? Surely it excludes a camel from being let out with a nose ring, delete the letter on account of it. Former and what reason do you see to delete the letter on account of the former? Delete the former on account of the latter because we find that it was Samuel who ruled as an ornament. It is forbidden as a guard. It is permitted for it was stated. Our high B. Ashi said in Rab's name whether as an ornament or as a guard. It is forbidden while our high B. Avin said in Samuel's name as an ornament. It is forbidden as a guard. It is permitted. An objection is raised if it the red heifer was tied up in a lock by a cord. It is fit now if you say that it is a burden. Surely scripture said upon which never came. Yokabe answered this is when it is led from one town to another. Rabbi said the red heifer is different because its value is high. Rabbi said this refers to an intractable animal, a horse with its chain, etc. What is go out and what is ledr? Huna said it means they may either go out with the chain wound around them or led by the chain. While Samuel maintained it means they may go. Outled by the chain, but they may not go out with the chain wound round them in a very that it was taught they may go out with the chain wound round and ready to be led. Our Joseph said, I saw the calves of Arhuna's house go forth with their cords wound about them on the Sabbath when our Dimi came, he related in Arhana's name the mules of Rabbi's house went forth with their reins on the Sabbath. The scholars propounded wound about them or let come and hear when our Samuel B. Judah came, he related in Arhana's name the mules of Rabbi's house went forth on the Sabbath with their reins wound about them. Said the Rabbis before our see the dictum of our Samuel B. Judah is unnecessary because it may be deduced from our Dimi's statement. For should you think that our Dimi meant let it would follow from Rab Judah's statement in Samuel's name? For Rab Judah said in Samuel's name they the scholars transposed them in their questions before Rabbi what about one animal going forth with? The accoutrement of the other said our Ishmael son of our Jose before him thus did my father rule four animals may go out with a bit a horse mule camel and asset our seed to them this our Samuel B. Judah statement is necessary for if it were derived from Rab Judah's dictum I could argue here Ishmael son of our Jose stated it before him but he did not accept it hence our Dimi's statement informs us that he did and if there were our Dimi's alone I could argue it means led but not merely wound. Round hence our Samuel B. Judah statement informs us otherwise and water of lustration may be sprinkled upon them and they may be immersed in their place are we to say that they can contract uncleanness but we learned a man's ring is unclean but the rings of animals and utensils and all other rings Talmud, Mosh of Bath B are clean said our Isaac our mission refers to such as pass from being men's ornaments to become animals ornaments while our Joseph said they become unclean. Because a man leads the animal by them, for was it not taught an animal's staff of metal is susceptible to uncleanness? What is the reason since a man beats the animal with it? So here too they are unclean because a man leads the animals by them and they may be immersed in their place, but there is an intervention said RMI. It means that he beat them out. Shall we say that RMI holds as our Joseph for if as our Isaac who maintained that it refers to such as pass from being men's ornaments? To become animals' ornaments since he beat them out, he has performed an act and their uncleanness vanishes, for we learned all utensils enter upon their uncleanness by intention but are relieved from their uncleanness only by a change affecting act. He holds as our Judah who maintained an act to adapt an object is not considered an act, for it was taught our Judah said a change affecting act was not mentioned where it adapts the object save where it spoils it in a very that it was taught it are. Mission refers to chains with movable links. A certain disciple from Upper Galilee asked our Eliezer, I have heard that a distinction is drawn between one ring and another. Perhaps you heard it only in reference to the Sabbath, for if in connection with uncleanness they are all alike. Now in connection with uncleanness are they all alike? Surely we learned a man's ring is unclean, but the rings of animals and utensils and all other rings are clean. He too was referring to men's rings and are all. Men's rings alike. Surely it was taught a ring made to gird one's loins therewith or to fasten the clothes about the shoulders is clean and only a finger ring was declared to be unclean. He too was referring to finger rings and are all finger rings alike. Surely we learned if the ring is of metal and its signet is of coral, it is unclean. If it is of coral while the signet is of metal, it is clean. He too referred to rings holy of metal. He asked him further, I have heard that we distinguish. Between one needle and another, perhaps you heard it only in respect to the Sabbath. For if in the matter of uncleanness they are all alike, now in the matter of uncleanness are they all alike? Surely we learned if the eye hole or the point of a needle is removed, it is clean. You refer to a whole needle and are all whole needles alike? Surely we learned if a needle gathers rust and it hinders the sewing, it is clean. If not, it is unclean. And the school of our Janay said, providing that its mark is perceptible, you refer to a bright needle. But are all bright needles alike? Surely it was taught a needle whether containing an eye hole or not may be handled on the Sabbath, while a needle with an eye hole was specified only in respect to uncleanness. Surely I may interpret it according to Rabbah as referring to unfinished utensils. Mission and ass may go out with its cushion if it is tied to it. Rams may go out. Couple love you and use may go out with their posteriors exposed shields off tied. Kabilat and covered kabundoth goats may go out with their udders tied up. Our Jose forbids in all these cases save views that are covered. Our Judah said goats may go out with their udders tied in order to dry up but not to save their milk. Kamara Talmud, Mosh of Bath Samuel said providing it was tied there too since the eve of the Sabbath. Our Naman observed our mission to proves it as it states an ass may not go out with its cushion if it is not tied there too. How is this meant? Shall we say that? It is not tied there too at all then it is obvious lest it fall off and he come to carry it hence it must mean that it was not tied to it since the eve of the Sabbath. Whence it follows that the first clause means that it was tied there too since the eve of the Sabbath. This proves that it was taught likewise an ass may go out with its cushion when it was tied there too on the eve of the Sabbath but not with its saddle even if tied there too on the eve of the Sabbath. Our Simeon Begamaliel said with its Saddle too if it was tied to it since the eve of the Sabbath providing however that he does not tie its band thereto and providing that he does not pass the strap under its tail R.C.B. Nathan asked our high B.R. Ashi may the cushion be placed on an ass on the Sabbath it is permitted replied he said he to him yet wherein does this differ from a saddle he remained silent thereupon he refuted him one must not move by hand the saddle upon an ass but must lead it the ass up and down in the courtyard until it the saddle falls off of its own accord seeing that you say that it must not even be moved can there be a question about placing it on the ass said our to him leave him alone he agrees with his teacher for our high B. Ashi said in Rab's name a fodder bag may be hung around the neck of an animal on the Sabbath and how much more so may a cushion be placed on its back for if it is permitted therefore the animal's pleasures how much more so here that it is to save. The animal suffering Samuel said a cushion is permitted a fodder bag is forbidden our high B. Joseph went and related Rab's ruling before Samuel said he of Abba said thus he knows nothing at all in matters pertaining to the Sabbath when Arzera went up to Palestine he found our Benjamin B. Jephet sitting and saying in our Yohanan's name a cushion may be placed on an ass on the Sabbath said he to him well spoken and thus did Arik teach it
Does this not refer to large holes? Its purpose being the animal's greater pleasure. No, it refers to small ones. The purpose being to obviate suffering. This may be proved too because it is taught Talmud. Mas should bath be analogous to an amulet. This proves that the master said nor with an amulet, though it is proven. But we learned nor with an amulet that is not proven. Hence, if it is proven, it is permitted. That means proven in respect of human beings, but not in respect of animals. But can they be? Proven in respect of human beings yet not in respect of animals yes for it may help man who is under planetary influence but not animals who are not under planetary influence if so how is this a greater stringency in the case of an animal than in the case of a human being do you think that that refers to amulets it refers to the shoe come and here one may anoint a sore and scrape a scab off for a human being but not for an animal surely that means that there is still a sore of the purpose. Being to obviate pain no it means that the sore has healed the purpose being pleasure come and here if an animal has an attack of congestion it may not be made to stand in water to be cooled if a human being has an attack of congestion he may be made to stand in water to be cooled Little answered it is a preventive measure on account of the crushing of medical ingredients if so the same should also apply to man a man may appear to be cooling himself if so an animal too may appear to be. Cooling itself, there is no mere cooling for an animal. Now, do we enact a preventive measure in the case of animal? But it was taught if an animal is standing without the tiham, one calls it and it comes, and we do not forbid this lest either by come to fetch it. Said Rabban, it means e.g. that its tiham fell within its tiham. Arnam and B. Isaac said the crushing of ingredients itself is dependent on tanaim, for it was taught if an animal ate an abundance of vetch, one must not cause it to run about in the courtyard to be cured. But our Josiah permits it. Rabba lectured the halachah. as our Josiah, the master said, as Ab may not go out with his pouch nor goats with the pouch attached to their others, but it was taught goats may go out with the pouch attached to their others. Said Rab Judah, there is no difficulty here. It means that it is tightly fastened. There it is not tightly fastened. Our Joseph answered, you quote tanaim at random. This is a controversy of tanaim, for we learned goats may be. LED out with their udders tied up our Jose forbids in all these cases save views that are covered our Judah said goats may be LED out with their udders tied up in order to go dry but not in order to save their milk alternatively both are according to our Judah in the one case it is in order that they may go dry in the other it is for milking it was taught our Judah said it once happened that goats in a household of Antioch had large udders and pouches were made for them that their udders should not be lacerated our rabbis taught it once happened that a man's wife died and left a child to be suckled and he could not afford to pay what nurse whereupon a miracle was performed for him and his teats opened like the two teats of a woman and he suckled his son our Joseph observed come and see how great was this man that such a miracle was performed on his account said Abbe to him on the contrary how lowly was this man that the order of the creation was changed on his account Rab Judah observed Come and see how difficult are men's wants of being satisfied that the order of the creation had to be altered for him or and said the proof is that miracles do frequently occur whereas food is rarely created miraculously or rabbis taught it once happened that a man married a woman with a stump hand yet he did not perceive it in her until the day of her death rabbi observed how modest this woman must have been that her husband did not know her said our high to him for her it was natural but how modest was this man that he did not scrutinize his wife rams may go out coupled love you been what is love you been arhuna said coupled how is it indicated that love you been implies nearness for it is written thou hast drawn me near my sister my bride Ola said it refers to the hide which is tied over their hearts that wolves should not attack them do then wolves attack rams only but not use yes because the rams travel at the head of the flock and do wolves attack the head of it Flock and not the rear, rather they attack rams because they are fat, but are there no fat ones among you? Moreover, can they distinguish between them? Rather, it is because their noses are elevated and they march along as though looking out for the wolf. Arnam and B. Isaac said it means the skin which is tied under their genitals to restrain them from copulating with the females. Whence is this interpretation derived? Because the following clause states and use may go out, she goes off what is? She goes off with their tails tied back upwards for the males to copulate with them. Thus, in the first clause, it is that they should not copulate with the females, whilst in the second, it is for the males to copulate with them. Where is it implied that she goes off the notes exposed in the verse and behold, there met him a woman Talmud, Mas Shabbat, exposed and wily apart, use may go out tied kabilath, what is kabilath with their tails tied downwards to restrain the males from copulating with them? How is it implied that Kabul denotes non-productively because it is written what cities are these which thou hast given me my brother and he called them the land of Kabul unto this day what is the land of Kabul said Arhuna it contained inhabitants who were smothered me Kabbalan with silver and gold said Rabba to him if so is that why it is written and they pleased him not because they were smothered with silver and gold they pleased him not even so he replied being wealthy and soft living. They would do no work Arnam and B. Isaac said it was a sandy region and why was it called Kabul because the lake sinks into it up to the ankle and people designated an ankle bound land which produces no fruit and covered Kabunoth what is Kabunoth it means that they the sheep are covered for the sake of the fine wool as we learned the hue of arising is like white wool what is white wool said RBBB of a like pure wool from a sheep which is covered from birth in order to produce fine. Wool and goats may be led out with their udders tied up. It was stated. Rab said the halachah is as our Judah, while Samuel said the halachah is as our Jose. Others learn this controversy independently. Rab said if it is in order to go dry, it is permitted, but if it is for milking, it is forbidden. While Samuel said both are forbidden. Others learn it in reference to the following: goats may go out with their udders tied up in order to go dry, but not for milking on the authority of our Judah. Be period. Was said that is the halachah, but who can vouch which is for going dry and which is for milking? And since we cannot distinguish between them, both are forbidden. Said Samuel. Others say Rab Judah said in Samuel's name the halachah is as our Judah. Be period. When Rabin came, he said in the name of our Yohanan and the halachah is as the first ten mission and wherewith may it not go out. A camel may not go out with a pad tied to its tail or a kud or regal and similarly other animals one must not tie. Camels together and pull one of them, but he may take the cords in his hand and pull them, providing he does not twine them together. Gemara, it was taught a camel must not go out with a pad tied to its tail, but it may go out with a pad tied to its tail and its hump. Rabbi son of Arhuna said a camel may be let out with a pad tied to its afterbirth or a kud or regal. Rab Judah said a kud means the tying of hand and foot together, like Isaac the son of Abraham. Regal means that the forefoot must not be bent back onto the shoulder and tied. An objection is raised. Akad refers to the two forefeet or the two hind feet tied together. Regal means that the forefoot must not be bent back onto the shoulder and tied. He interprets as the following tana for it was taught Akad means the tying together of the forefoot and the hind foot or of the two forefeet or the two hind feet. Regal means that the forefoot must not be bent back onto the shoulder and tied. Yet it is still not the same as for the first. And the last clause is it is well, but the middle one is difficult. Rather, he maintains as the following tenet for it was taught. Akad means the tying of hand and foot, like Isaac the son of Abraham. Ragal means that the forefoot must not be bent back onto the shoulder and tied. One must not tie camels together. What is the reason? Said Arashi because it looks as if he is going to the fair, but he may take etc. Arashi said this was taught only in respect to kilaim kilaim of what shall we say? Kilaim of man. Surely we learned a man is permitted to plow and pull with all of them, but if it means kilaim of the cords, surely we learned if one fastens two pieces together with one fastening, it is not a connection. After all, it means kilaim of the cords, but this is its teaching, providing that he does not twine and knot them together. Samuel said, providing that a handbreadth of a cord does not hang out of his hand, but the school of Arishmael taught two handbreadths. Said Abena. That Samuel said one hand breadth while the school of Arishmael taught two hand breadth. Samuel comes to inform us the halachah in actual practice Talmud, Mas Shabbat be, but it was taught providing that he lifted a hand breadth from the ground that was taught of the cord between Mishnah and As may not go out with a cushion when it is not tied to it or with a bell even if it is plugged or with a ladder shaped yoke around its neck or with a thong around its foot fowls may not go out with ribbons or with a strap on their legs rams may not go out with a w
Yalfa but said Arhuna there is a certain wood in the sea towns called Hanun where a chip is brought and placed in her nostril to make her sneeze so that the worms in her head should fall out if so the same is required for males since the males but each other they fall out in any case Simeon the Nazi writes said a chip of the juniper tree is placed in its nostril as for Arhuna it is well hence Hanun oath is mentioned but according to the rabbis what is the meaning of Hanun that an act of Kindness is done for it, nor may a calf go out with a gaiman. What is the meaning of a calf with a gaiman? Said Arhuna a little look, where is it implied that gaiman connotes bending in the verse? Is it to bow down his head as a rush kayagmon, nor a cow with the skin of a hedgehog? It is placed upon it to prevent hedgehogs from sucking it, nor with the strap between its horns on Rab's view, whether as an ornament or as a protection. It is forbidden on Samuel's view as an ornament. It is forbidden as a protection. It is permitted. Rla's or Bezariah's cow did he have but one cow? Surely Rab other state Rab Judah in Rab's name said the tithe of Rla's or Bezariah's flocks amounted to 13,000 calves annually. It was taught this was not his but a female neighbor of his, yet since he did not protest thereat, it was designated his Rab and Arhanan or Yohanan and Arhabba taught the following in the whole of the order mode whenever the spirit or some substitute are Jonathan for Ar. Yohanan whoever can forbid his household to commit a sin but does not cease for the sins of his household if he can forbid his fellow citizens he is seized for the sins of his fellow citizens if the whole world he is seized for the sins of the whole world are Papa observed and the members of the rest of his household are seized for the whole world even as Arhanan has said why is it written the Lord will enter into judgment with the elders of his people and the princes thereof if the princes in Talmud, Mosh of how did the elders sin but say he will bring punishment upon the elders because they do not forbid the princes Rab Judah was sitting before Samuel when a woman came and cried before him but he ignored her said he to him does not the master agree that whoso stopped his ears at the cry of the poor he also shall cry but shall not be heard O king scholar he replied your superior will be punished with cold water but your superior superior will be punished with hot surely Marak Bavi of Bethdin is sitting for it is written O house of David thus saith the Lord execute judgment in the morning and deliver the spoiled out of the hand of the oppressor lest my fury go forth like fire and burn that none can quench it because of the evil of your doing etc. Arzara said to our Simeon let the master rebuke the members of the Reshel of the sweet they will not accept it from me was his reply though they will not accept its return he yet you should rebuke them for Araha Bi Arhanan said never did a favorable word go forth from the mouth of the Holy One blessed be he of which he retracted for evil save the following where it is written and the Lord said unto him go through the midst of the city through the midst of Jerusalem and set a mark to upon the foreheads of the men at Zion that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof etc. The Holy One blessed be he said to Gabriel go and set a tar of ink upon the foreheads of the righteous that the destroying angels may have no power over them and it blood upon the foreheads of the wicked that the destroying angels may have power over them said the attribute of justice before the holy one blessed be he sovereign of the universe wherein are these different from those those are completely righteous men while these are completely wicked replied he sovereign of the universe it continued they had the power to protest but did not it was fully known to them that had they protested they would not have heeded them sovereign of the universe said he if it was revealed to thee was it revealed to them hence it is written slay utterly the old man the young and the maiden and little children and women but come not near any man upon whom is the mark and begin at my sanctuary mikdashi then they began at the elders which were before the house are joseph recited read not mikdashi but mikdashi my sanctified ones this refers to the people who Fulfilled the Torah from Allah to Ta and straightway, and behold, six men came from the way of the upper gate which lay toward the north, every man with his slaughter weapon in his hand, and one man in the midst of them clothed in linen with a writer's ink horn by his side, and they went in and stood beside the brazen altar. Was then the brazen altar still in existence? The Holy One, blessed be he, spake thus to them, commence destruction from the place where song is uttered before me, and who were. The six men said, Are his dying indignation, Kazef, Anger, Af, Rafim, a destroyer, Mashit, Breaker, Meshabir, and Annihilator, Mikhaili, and Waitas, and Rab, Tas, and Sfortai, Thou shalt live, Tas, and Sfortai, Thou shalt die. Samuel said, The Tah denotes the merit of the patriarchs is exhausted. Tom, Ar, Yohanan said, The merit of the patriarchs will confer grace to Han, while Reshlaikish said, Tah is the end of the seal of the Holy One, blessed be he, for Arhan, said, The seal of. The Holy One, blessed be he, is Emeth Truth, our Samuel Binamani said it denotes the people who fulfilled the Torah from Aleph to Ta, and since when has the merit of the patriarchs been exhausted? Rab said, Since the days of Hosea the son of Beri, for it is written, and now will I discover her lewdness in the sight of her lovers, and none shall deliver her out of mine hand. Samuel said, Since the days of Hazael, for it is said, and Hazael king of Syria oppressed Israel all the days of Jehoahaz, and it is written, But the Lord was gracious unto them, and had compassion upon them, and had respect unto them, because of the covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and would not destroy them, neither cast ye them from his presence until now. Our Joshua be Levi said, Since the days of Elijah, for it is said, and it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening oblation that Elijah the prophet came near and said, O Lord the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God. In Israel, and that I am thy servant, and that I have done all these things at thy word, are Yohanan said since the days of Hezekiah, for it is said of the increase of his government and of peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with judgment and with righteousness, for henceforth even forever the zeal of the Lord of hosts shall perform this. RMI said there is no death without sin, and there is no suffering without iniquity. There is no death without sin, for it is written, The soul that sinneth it shall die, the son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son, the righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him, etc. There is no suffering without iniquity, for it is written, Then will I visit their transgression with the rod and their iniquity with stripes, Talmud, Mosh be Talmud, Mosh be an objection is raised. The ministering angels asked the Holy One, Blessed be he, sovereign of the universe, why didst thou impose the penalty of death upon Adam? Said he to them, I gave him an easy command, yet he violated it. But Moses and Aaron fulfilled the whole Torah they pursued, yet they died. There is one event to the righteous and to the wicked, to the good, etc. He replied, He maintains as the following tenet, for it was taught our Simeon B. Eliezer said, Moses and Aaron too died through their sin, for it is said, Because ye believed not in me, therefore ye shall not bring this assembly into the land which I have given them. Hence, had ye believed in me, your time had not yet come to depart from the world. An objection is raised, for died through the serpent's machinations, Viz Benjamin, the son of Jacob, Marum, the father of Moses, Jesse, the father of David, and Caleb, the son of David. Now all are known by tradition, save Jesse, the father of David, in whose case the writ gives an explicit intimation, for it is written and Absalom said Amasa over the host instead of Job. Now Amasa was the son of a man whose name was Ithra the Israelite that went into Abigail, the daughter of Nahash's sister, to Zeruiah. Job's mother now was she the daughter of Nahash. Surely she was the daughter of Jesse, for it is written, and their sisters were Zeruiah and Abigail. Hence it must mean the daughter of one who died through the machinations of the Nahash serpent, who is the author of this. Shall we say the Tanah who taught about the ministering angels? Surely there were Moses and Aaron too. Hence it must surely be Arsimian B. Eliezer, which proves that there is death without sin and suffering without iniquity. Thus the refutation of RMI is indeed a refutation. Our Samuel B. Naman said in our Jonathan's name, whoever maintains that Reuben sinned is merely making an error, for it is said now the sons of Jacob were twelve, teaching that they were all equal. Then how do I interpret and he lay with Bilhah, his father's concubine this? Teaches that he transposed his father's couch and the writ imputes blame to him as though he had lain with her. It was taught our Simeon B. Eliezer said that righteous man was saved from that sin and that deed did not come to his hand. Is it possible that his seed was destined to stand on Mount Ebel and proclaim curse be he that lieth with his father's wife
Sin hence Hopni is likened to Phineas just as Phineas did not sin so did Hopni not sin and how do I interpret and how that the S.E.E. lies sons lay with the women because they delayed their birth offering so that they did not go to their husbands the writ stigmatizes them as though they had lain with them it was stated above Rab said Phineas did not sin for it is said and Ahijah the son of Ahidah Bichabad's brother the son of Phineas the son of Eli the priest of the Lord etc. Now is it possible that sin had come to his hand yet the writ states his descent surely it is said the Lord will cut off to the man that doth this him that wake the ear and him that answer without of the tents of Jacob and him that offereth an offering unto the Lord of hosts this means if an Israelite he shall have none awakening i.e. teaching among the sages and none responding among the disciples if a priest he shall have no son to offer an offering hence it follows that Phineas did not sin but it is Written how that they lay, etc. He lays written, but it is written, nay, my sons, for it is no good report that I hear said Arnaman be Isaac, my son is written, but it is written, ye make the Lord's people to transgress, said Arhuna, son of Ar Joshua, it is written, he causes them to transgress, but it is written, sons of Belial, because Phineas should have protested to Hopni, but did not the writ regards him as though he too sent our Samuel be Naman, he said in our Jonathan's name, whoever maintains. Talmud, Mosh of that Samuel's son sinned is merely erring, for it is said, and it came to pass when Samuel was old that his sons walked not in his ways, thus they merely walked not in his ways, yet they did not sin either, then how do I fulfill they turned aside for lucre? That means that they did not act like their father for Samuel the righteous used to travel to all the places of Israel and judge them in their towns as it is said, and he went from year to year in circuit to Bethel and Gilgal and Mizpah and he judged Israel but they did not act thus but sat in their own towns in order to increase the fees of their beetles and scribes this is a controversy of Tanaim they turned aside for lucre our Meir said that means they openly demanded their portions our Judah said they forced goods on private people our Akiva said they took an extra basket of tithes by force our Jose said they took the gifts by force our Samuel be Naman he said in our Jonathan's name whoever says that David sinned is merely erring for it is said and David behaved himself wisely in all his ways and the Lord was with him is it possible that sin came to his hand yet the divine presence was with him and how do I interpret wherefore hast thou despised the word of the Lord to do that which is evil in his sight he wished to do evil but did not rap observed rabbi who is descended from David seeks to defend him and expounds the verse in David's favor thus the evil mentioned here is unlike every other evil Mentioned elsewhere in the Torah, for of every other evil mentioned in the Torah, it is written, and he did, whereas here it is written to do this means that he desired to do, but did not. Thou hast smitten Uriah the Hittite with the sword, thou shouldst have had him tried by the Sanhedrin, but didst not, and hast taken his wife to be thy wife. Thou hast marriage rights in her, for our Samuel be Naman, he said in our Jonathan's name, everyone who went out in the wars of the house of David wrote a bill of divorcement for his wife, for it is said, and bring these ten cheeses unto the captain of their thousand, and look how thy brethren fear and take their pleasure. Rubatam, what is meant by Rubatam, our Joseph learned the things which pledge man and woman to one another, and thou hast slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon, just as thou art not to be punished for the sword of the Ammonites, so art thou not to be punished for the death of Uriah the Hittite. What is the reason he was? Rebellious against royal authority, saying to him, And my lord Job and the servants of my lord are encamped in the open field, etc. Rab said, When you examine the life of David, you find not but save only in the matter of Uriah the Hittite. Abay the elder pointed out a contradiction in Rab Estic. Did Rab say, Thus surely Rab said, David paid heed to slander. The difficulty remains to revert to the main text. Rab said, David paid heed to slander, for it is written, And the king said unto him, Where is he? And Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he is in the house of Machir the son of Amiel, Belodabar, and Lodabar. And it is written, And David sent and fetched him out of the house of Machir the son of Amiel, Melodabar, from Lodabar. Now consider he, David, saw that he, Ziba, was a liar. Then when he slandered him a second time, why did he pay heed thereto? For it is written, And the king said, And where is thy master's son? And Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he abides at Jerusalem, for he Said today shall the house of Israel restore me the kingdom of my father, and how do we know that he accepted it the slander from him? Because it is written, then said the king to Ziba, Behold, thine is all that pertaineth unto Mephibosheth, and Ziba said, I do obeisance, let me find favor in thy sight, my lord, O king. But Samuel maintained David did not pay heed to slander, for he saw self evident things in him, for it is written, and Mephibosheth the son of Saul came down to meet the king, and he had neither dressed his feet nor trimmed his beard nor washed his clothes, etc. While it is written, and it came to pass when he was come to Jerusalem to meet the king, that the king said unto him, Wherefore wentest thou not with me, Mephibosheth? And he answered, My lord, O king, my servant deceived me, for thy servant said, I will saddle me and ask that I may ride thereon and go with the king, because thy servant is lame Talmud, Mosh of Bath be, and he hath slandered thy servant unto my lord the king, but my Lord the king is as an angel of God do therefore what is good in thine eyes for all my father's house were but dead men before my lord the king yet didst thou set thy servant among them that did eat at thine own table what right therefore have I yet that I should cry and more unto the king and the king said unto him why speakest thou any more of thy matters I say thou and Ziba divide the land and Mephibosheth said unto the king you let him take all for as much as my lord the king is come in peace unto his own house he said thus to him I prayed when wilt thou return in peace yet thou treatest me so not against thee have I resentment but against him who restored thee in peace hence it is written and the son of Jonathan was Meribah was then his name Meribah surely it was Mephibosheth but because he raised a quarrel Meribah with his master a heavenly echo went forth and rebuked him thou man of strife and the son of a man of strife man of strife as we have stated son of a man of Strive for it is written, and Saul came to the city of Amalek and strove in the valley. Our man he said that means concerning the matter of the valley. Rab Judah said in Rab's name when David said to Mephibosheth, Thou and Ziba divide the land. A heavenly echo came forth and declared to him, Rehoboam and Jeroboam shall divide the kingdom. Rab Judah said in Rab's name, Had not David paid heed to slander the kingdom of the house of David, would not have been divided. Israel had not engaged in idolatry, and we would not have been exiled from our country. Our Samuel be Naman he said in our Jonathan's name, Whoever maintains that Solomon sinned is merely making an error, for it is said, and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as was the heart of David his father. It was merely not as the heart of David his father, but neither did he sin. And how do I interpret? For it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives turned away his heart. That is to be explained as our Nathan for our Nathan opposed. Two verses it is written for it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives turned away his heart whereas it is also written and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God as was the heart of David his father implying that it was merely not as the heart of David his father but neither did he sin this is its meaning his wives turned away his heart to go after other gods but he did not go but it is written then would Solomon build a high place for Chemosh the abomination of Moab. That means he desired to build but did not if so then Joshua built Yidna an altar unto the Lord does this too mean he desired to build but did not hence it surely means that he actually built so here too it means that he built rather it is as was taught our Jose said and the high places that were before Jerusalem which were on the right hand of the mount of corruption which Solomon the king of Israel had built for Ashtoreth the abomination of Moab now is it possible that Asa came and did not destroy them and Jehoshaphat and he did not destroy them until Josiah came and destroyed them but surely Asa and Jehoshaphat destroyed all the idolatrous cults in Palestine hence the explanation is that the earlier are assimilated to the later just as the later did not do yet it was ascribed to them to their glory so the earlier ones too did not do yet it was ascribed to them to their shame but it is written and Solomon did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord but because he should have restrained his wives but did not the writ regards him as though he sent Rab Judah said in Samuel's name better had it been for that righteous man to be an acolyte to the unmentionable only that it should not be written of him and he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord Rab Judah said in Samuel's name when Solomon married Pharaoh's daughter she brought him a thousand musical instruments and said
and saw in a dream how one an angel stretched out his hand and received him Talmud, Moshab Bath ACHAPTER 6 Mishnah wherewith may a woman go out and wherewith may she not go out a woman may not go out with ribbons of wool and ribbons or fillets round her head nor may she perform ritual immersion whilst wearing them unless she loosens them she may not go out with frontlets garlands or if they are not sewn or with a hairnet cobble into the street or with a golden sitting or with a necklace catla or with earrings or with a finger ring which has no signet or with a needle which is unpierced yet if she goes out with these she is not liable to a sin offering Gemara who mentioned anything about ritual immersion said Arnaman B. Isaac in Rabbi Abba's name he the ten estates what is the reason thus what is the reason that a woman may not go out with wool ribbons or linen ribbons because the sages rule she may not perform ritual immersion whilst wearing them unless she loosens them and since she may not perform ritual immersion on weekdays while wearing them she may not go out with them on the Sabbath lest she happen to need immersion by ritual law and she untie them and so come to carry them for cubits in the street Arkahana asked Rab what of open work band said he to him you speak of something woven whatever is woven no prohibition was enacted in respect thereof and was stated likewise Arhuna son of Arjashua said whatever is woven no Prohibition was enacted in respect thereof. Other state Arhuna son of Arjashua said, I saw that my sisters are not particular about them. What is the difference between the latter version and the former? There is a difference where they are soiled on the version that no prohibition was enacted for anything that is woven. These two are woven, but according to the version which bases it on not being particular, since they are soiled, one does indeed object to them. We learned elsewhere and it. Following constitute interpositions in the case of human beings, wool ribbons, linen ribbons, and the fillet round maidens' heads are Judah said ribbons of wool or of hair do not interpose because the water enters through them are who not observed and we learned all with reference to maidens' heads are Joseph the Murd. What does this exclude? Shall we say it excludes ribbons of the neck and of what material shall we say it excludes wool? The question can be raised if soft material on hard forms and Interposition is there a question of soft upon soft again if it excludes linen ribbons one might ask if hard upon hard constitutes an interposition is there a question of hard upon soft rather said our Joseph this is Arhuna's reason because a woman does not strangle herself have they refuted him maidens may go out with the threads through their ears but not with fillets round their necks now if you say that a woman will not strangle herself why not with fillets round their necks said Rabbi Natal good. Moshe Bath be the reference here is to a broad band which a woman ties very tightly as she is pleased to have a fleshy appearance our Judah said ribbons of wool or of hair do not interpose because the water enters through them our Joseph said in the name of Rab Judah in Samuel's name the Halachah is as our Judah in respect of ribbons of hair said Abbe to him the Halachah is thus implies that they differ thereon and should you say had he not known the first tenet to treat of ribbons of hair Two, he would not have treated thereof either, but perhaps he argued with them from analogy, just as you agree with me in the matter of ribbons of hair, so should you agree with me in respect of wool ribbons. It was stated Arnaman said in Samuel's name the sages agree with Arjuda in respect to ribbons of hair. It was taught likewise ribbons of wool interpose ribbons of hair do not interpose Arjuda maintained ribbons of wool or of hair do not interpose Arnaman B. Isaac said Armishna too. Proves this for it teaches a woman may go out with ribbons of hair, whether of her own hair or of her companions who is the authority for this shall we say Arjuda even ribbons of wool too are permitted, hence it must surely be the rabbis which proves that they do not disagree in respect of ribbons of hair. This proves that she may not go out with frontlets tote what is tote said our Joseph a charm containing balsam said of to him let it be regarded as an approved amulet. And hence permitted rather said Rab Judah on Abbe's authority it is an ornament of beads it was taught likewise a woman may go out with a gilded hair net a totfet and with sarbiton that are fastened to her what is totfet and what is sarbiton said Arabawe totfet encompasses her head from ear to ear sarbiton reached to her cheeks Arhuna said poor women make them of various dyed materials wealthy women make them of gold and silver nor with a hair net cobble Arjane said I do not know what is this cobble whether we learned of a slave's chain but a wool hair net is permitted or perhaps we learned of a wool hair net and how much more so a slave's neck chain said Arabawe reason supports the view that we learned of a wool hair net and it was taught likewise a woman may go out into a courtyard with a cobble and a clasp our Simeon B. Eliezer said she may go out with a cobble into the street to our Simeon B. Eliezer stated a general rule whatever is worn beneath the net one may Go out there with whatever is worn above the net one may not go out with it what is istima said our rabbi bazayun what is bazayun said abay in rab's name that which imprisons the flying locks our rabbis taught three things were said of an istima it is not subject to the interdict of kilayim it is not defiled by leprosy and one may not go out with it into the street on the authority of our simeon it was said it is also not subject to the interdict against talmud mosh of the bridle crowns but samuel maintained we learned of a slave's neck chain now did samuel say thus surely samuel said a slave may go out with a seal round his neck but not with a seal on his garments there is no difficulty in the one case the reference is where his master said it upon him and the other where he said it upon himself how have you explained this latter dictum of samuel that his master said it upon him then why may he not go out with the seal on his garment lest it break off and he be Afraid and folded the garment and put it over his shoulder. This is as our Isaac be Joseph who said in our Yohanan's name, if one goes out on the Sabbath with a folded garment slung over his shoulder, he incurs a sin offering. And this is as Samuel said to our Hina of no scholar of the house of the Reshalitha may go out with a cloak bearing a seal except you, because the house of the Reshalitha is not particular about you. It was stated above Samuel said a slave may go out with a seal around his neck, but not with the seal on his garments. It was taught likewise a slave may go out with a seal around his neck, but not with the seal on his garments. But the following contradicts this a slave may not go out with the seal around his neck, nor with the seal on his garments, and neither are susceptible to defilement. He may not go out with the bell around his neck, but he may go out with the bell on his garments, and both are susceptible to defilement. An animal may not go out with a seal. Around its neck, nor with the seal on its covering, nor with the bell on its covering, nor with the bell around its neck, and none of these are susceptible to defilement. Shall we say that in the one case his master had set it upon him, while in the other he had set it upon himself? No, in both cases his master had set it upon him, but one refers to a metal seal, while the other refers to a clay seal. And this is as Arnaman said in Rabbi Abba's name that about which the master is particular one. A slave may not go out with it, that about which the master is not particular one may go out with it. Reason two supports this since it is stated none of these are susceptible to defilement. Now, if you say that the reference is to metal seals, it is well, hence only these are not susceptible to defilement, but their utensils are. But if you say that we learned of clay seals, it might be asked, are only these not susceptible to defilement, whereas their utensils are surely it was taught. Utensils of stone dung or earth do not contract uncleanness either by biblical or by rabbinical law, hence it follows that the reference is to metal seals. This proves that the master said he may not go out with the bell around his neck, but he may go out with the bell on his garment. Why not with the bell around his neck? Presumably lest it snap off and he come to carry it. Then also in the case of the bell on his garment, let us fear that it may snap off and he come to carry it. The reference here is to one that was woven sewn into it, and this is in agreement with Arhuna, the son of our Joshua, who said concerning whatever is woven, they enacted no prohibition. The master said an animal may not go out with a seal around its neck, with a seal on its covering, nor with a bell around its neck, nor with a bell on its coat, and none of these are susceptible to defilement. Now does not an animal's bell contract uncleanness, but the following contradicts it. An animal's bell is unclean. Talmud, Moss. Shabbat be but a doorbell is clean a doorbell appointed for an animal s use is unclean an animal bell appointed for fixing to a door even if attached to the door and fastened with nails is unclean for all utensils enter upon their uncleanness by intention but are relieved from their uncleanness only by a change affecting act there is no difficulty in the one case the reference is where it has a clapper in the other where it has no clapper what will you if it is a utensil then even if it has no clapper it is unclean if it is not a utensil
Should you answer this is its meaning even when they are not connected they are counted as connected surely it was taught a shears of separate blades and the cutter of a carpenter's plane are counted as connected in respect of uncleanness but not in respect of sprinkling now we objected what will you if they are counted as connected they should be so even in respect of sprinkling too if they count not as connected they should not be so even in respect of defilement either end. Rabbi answered by scriptural law when in use they are counted as connected in respect of both defilement and sprinkling when not in use they are counted as connected in respect of neither defilement nor sprinkling but they the rabbis enacted a preventive measure in respect of defilement when they are not in use on account of defilement when they are in use and in respect of sprinkling when they are in use on account of when they are not in use rather said Rabbi Talmud, Moshe Bathe. The reason is because they are fit for beating on an earthen utensil it was stated likewise our Jose son of Arhanan said the reason is because they are fit for beating on an earthen utensil our Yohanan said because they are fit for giving a child a drink of water therein now does not our Yohanan require that it shall be fit for a usage of its original nature surely it was taught and everything whereon he said it shall be unclean I might think that if he the Zab overturns S E I and sits upon it or a Tarkab and sits upon it it is unclean hence it is stated whereon he said of teaching only that which is appointed for sitting excluding this where we say to him get up that we may do our business our Eliezer said in cases of Midras we say get up that we may do our business but we do not say in the case of the defilement of the dead get up that we may do our business but our Yohanan maintained in the case of defilement through the dead too we say get up that we may do our business. Reverse the former, but what reason do you see to reverse the former? Reverse the latter, because we know our Yohanan to require fitness for usage of its original nature. For we learned an animal's shoe if a metal is unclean. For what is it fit? Rab said it is fit for drinking water therein. In battle, our Hanan said it is fit for anointing oneself with oil from it. In battle, our Yohanan said when one is fleeing from the field of battle, he places the shoe on his own feet and runs over briars and thorns. Wherein do Rab and our Yohanan differ? Where it is repulsive, our Yohanan and our Hanan differ. Where it is too heavy, nor with a golden city. What is meant by with a golden city? Rab will be Bar said in our Yohanan's name, a golden Jerusalem Talmud. Mosh of Bath be such as our Akiba made for his wife. Our rabbis taught a woman must not go out with a golden city, and if she does, she incurs a sin offering. This is our Meir's view. The sages maintain she may not go out there with, but if she does, she is. Not liable our Eliza ruled a woman may go out with a golden city at the very outset wherein do they differ our Meir holds that it is a burden while the rabbis hold that it is an ornament and it is forbidden only lest she remove it to show to a friend and thus come to carry it in the street but our Eliza reasons whose practice is it to go out with a golden city that of a woman of rank and such will not remove it for display as for a coronet rab forbids it Samuel permits it where it is. Made of cast metal all agree that it is forbidden they differ about an embroidered stuff one master holds that the cast metal sewn onto it is the chief part while the other master holds that the embroidered stuff is the chief part our Ashi learned it in the direction of leniency as for an embroidered stuff all agree that it is permitted they differ only about what is made of cast metal one master holds that it is forbidden lest she remove it in order to show and thus come to carry it while. The other master holds whose practice is it to go out with a coronet that of a woman of rank and such will not remove it for display. Our Samuel B. Barhanna said to our Joseph, you explicitly told us in Rab's name that a coronet is permitted. Rab was told a great tall and lame man has come to Nihartia and has lectured a coronet is permitted. Said he who is a great tall man who is lamely by this proves that Rx is dead and our Hanana now sits at the head of the academy so that Levi has none for a companion and therefore he has come hither. But perhaps our Hanana had died Rx remaining as before and since Levi now had no companion he had come hither had our Hanana died Levi would indeed have subordinated himself to Rx. Moreover it could not be that our Hanana should not rule for when Rabbi was dying he ordered let Hanana son of our sit at the head and of the righteous man it is written thou shalt also decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee Levi lectured in Nihartia. Coronet is permitted whereupon there went forth twenty-four coronets from the whole of Nihar here Rabbi Abu lectured in Mahose Coronet is permitted whereupon there went forth eighteen coronets from a single Ali Rab Judah said in the name of our Samuel A girdle Kamrat is permitted some say that means of embroidered stuff and our Safra said it may be compared to a rope shot through with gold others say it means of cast metal whereon our Safra observed it may be compared to a royal girdle. Rabban asked Arashi what about wearing a Kamrat over a plain girdle he Mayana you ask about two girdles he replied Arashi said as for a piece of a garment if it has fringes it is permitted if not it is forbidden nor with a catla what is a catla a trinket holder nizamum that is earrings nor with a finger ring that has no signet this implies that if it has a signet she is liable hence it proves that it is not an ornament but the following contradicts this women's ornaments are unclean and these are women's ornaments, necklaces, earrings, and finger rings, and a finger ring, whether it has a signet or has no signet, and nose ring set our zero. There is no difficulty one agrees with our Nehemiah, the other with the rabbis, for it was taught if it the ring is of metal and its signet is of coral, it is unclean. If it is of coral, while the signet is of metal, it is clean, but our Nehemiah declares it unclean, for our Nehemiah maintained in the case of a ring, follow its signet in the case of a yoke. Go by its carp ends, Talmud, Mosh of Bath in the case of a rat, go after its nails in the case of a ladder, go after its rungs in the case of a weighing machine, go after its chains, but the sages maintain everything depends on the support. Rabbi said it is taught disjunctively if it has a signet, it is a man's ornament, if it has no signet, it is a woman's ornament. Our B. Isaac answered, Do you oppose uncleanness to the Sabbath in respect to uncleanness? The divine law said utensils fit. For work and this a signet ring is a utensil, but the Sabbath interdiction was imposed by the divine law on account of the burden. If it has no signet, it is an ornament. If it has a signet, it is a burden. Nor with a needle which is unpierced, what is it fit for? Said our Joseph, since a woman tidies her hair with it, it is therefore ornamental. Said Abay objected, let it be as a garter which is clean and hence permitted. But our Ada of Narish interpreted it before our Joseph, since a woman parts her hair with it, it is ornamental. What is it fit for? On the Sabbath, said Rabbi, it has a golden plaque at the end thereof. On weekdays, she parts her hair there with while on the Sabbath, she lets it lie against her for admission. A man may not go out with a nail studded sandal, nor with a single sandal if he has no wound on his foot, nor with tefillin, nor with an amulet if it is not from an expert, nor with a coat of male shirion, nor with a cast cast, nor with greaves may have a Goes out, he does not incur sin offering tomorrow. A nail studded sandal. What is the reason? Said Samuel, it was at the end of the period of persecution, and they, some fugitives, were hiding in a cave. They proclaimed, He who would enter, let him enter, but he who would go out, let him not go out. Now the sandal of one of them became reversed, so that they thought that one of them had gone out and been seen by the enemies who would now fall upon them. Thereupon they pressed against each other, and they killed of each other more than their enemies slew of them. Or Ali Eliezer said they were stationed in a cave when they heard a sound proceeding from above the cave, thinking that the enemy was coming upon them. They pressed against each other and slew amongst themselves more than the enemy had slain of them. Rami B. Ezekiel said they were stationed in a synagogue when they heard a sound from behind the synagogue, thinking that the enemy was coming upon them. They pressed against each other and Slew amongst themselves more than the enemy had slain of them in that hour it was enacted a man must not go out with a nail studded sandal if so it should be forbidden on weekdays too the incident happened on the Sabbath then let it be permitted on festivals why did we learn Talmud, Mosh of Bath be but one may not send a nail studded sandal or an unsewn shoe on festivals what is the reason of the Sabbath because there is a gathering of people so on festivals too there is a gathering but there is a gathering on a public fast day let it be forbidden then too the incident happened on a day of assembly when there is an interdict against work but here it is a day of assembly when it is permitted to work and even according to our Hanan of Akiba who maintained they enacted a prohibition only in respect of the Jordan and a ship just as the incident that occurred that applies only to the Jordan which differs from other riv
Likewise, our Jose B. Arhanina said, if they are arranged exact shape, it is permitted. Arshis hate said, if the whole of it, the soul is covered with nails underneath, so that the ground should not wear it away, it is permitted. It was taught in accordance with Arshis hate. A man may not go out wearing a nail studded sandal, nor may he stroll in it from house to house and even from bed to bed, but it may be handled in order to cover a utensil or support the legs of a bed therewith. But R. L. A. Z. R. B. R. Simeon forbids this if most of its nails are fallen out before or five are left. It is permitted. While Rabbi permits it up to seven, if one covers it with leather underneath and drives nails into it on top, it is permitted. If one arranges them the nails exact fashion or flattens them out or points them or covers the whole of it with nails so that the ground should not wear it out, it is permitted. Now this is self-contradictory. You say if most of the nails are fallen out, implying even if. Many are left, it may be worn, and it is taught only four or five, but not more said. Arshis hate there is no difficulty in the one case, they are scooped out, in the other, they are pulled out. If four or five are left, it is permitted, seeing that it is permitted with five, need four be stated, said Arhis. It means four in a small sandal and five in a large sandal, while Rabbi permits it up to seven, but it was taught Rabbi permits it up to thirteen. An inclining sandal is different now that you have arrived at this distinction on our Yohanan's view, too. There is no difficulty, an inclining sandal is different. Our Mahan, other state, our Ahad, Boibi Mahan, and our Mahan's name said the Halachad is not as our Eliezer, son of our Simeon, but that is obvious where one disagrees with many. The Halachad is as a majority, you might argue our Eliezer, son of our Simeon's view is logical here, hence we are informed that we do not follow him, our Haya said, but that El would be dubbed the Babylonian who. Permits forbidden things I would permit more and how many in Pumadiva they say 24 in Surah 22 are Naman B. Isaac said and your sign to remember this is by the time he or high traveled from Pumadiva to Surah two nails were missing from his sandals nor with a single sandal if he has no wound or bruise on his foot Talmud, Mosh of hence if he has a wound on his foot he may go out with which of them does he go out Arhuna said with that worn on the foot which has a wound this proves that he holds that the purpose of the sandal is to save him pain high Rab said with that worn where there is no wound this proves that he holds that it is employed as a luxury while this foot that has a wound its wound is evidence for it now Aryohanan who holds as Arhuna for Aryohanan said to Arshman B. Abba give me my sandals when he gave him the right one here Yohanan observed you treat it as though it had a wound no perhaps he agrees with Hi and he meant thus you treat the left foot as through it had a wound now our Yohanan here follows his general view for our Yohanan said like Tefillin so our shoes just as Tefillin are done on the left hand so our shoes put on the left foot first an objection is raised when one puts on his shoes he must put on the right first and then the left said our Joseph now that it was taught us while our Yohanan said the reverse he who acts in either way acts well said Abbe to him but perhaps our Yohanan did not hear this very but if he had heard it he would have retracted or perhaps he heard it and held that the Halachad is not as that mission our Naman B. Isaac said a God-fearing person satisfies both views and who is that Mar the son of Rabbanah what did he do he put on the right foot sandal but did not tie it then he put on the left tied it and then tied the right sandal our Ashi said I saw that our Kahana was not particular our Rabbis taught when one puts on his shoes he must put on the right first and then the left when he removes them he must remove the left first and then the right when one washes he must first wash the right hand foot and then the left when one anoints himself with oil he must anoint the right and then the left but one who desires to anoint his whole body must anoint his head first because it is the king of all the limbs nor with tefillin our saffir said do not think that this is only according to the view that the sabbath is not a time for tefillin but even on the view that the sabbath is a time for tefillin one must not go out with them lest he come to carry them four cubits in the street others learn this in reference to the last clause yet if he goes out he does not incur a sin offering said our saffir do not think that this is only according to the view that the sabbath is a time for tefillin but even on the view that the sabbath is not a time for tefillin he is nevertheless not liable to a sin offering what is it Reason he treats it as a garment nor with an amulet if it is not from an expert our papa said do not think that both the man issuing it and the amulet must be approved but as long as the man is approved even if the amulet is not approved this may be proved too for it is stated nor with an amulet if it is not from an expert but it is not stated if it is not approved this proves it our rabbis taught what is an approved amulet one that has healed once a second time and a third time whether it is an amulet in writing or an amulet of roots whether it is for an invalid whose life is endangered or for an invalid whose life is not endangered it is permitted not only for a person who has already had an epileptic fit but even merely to ward it off and one may tie and untie it even in the street providing that he does not secure a talmud mosh of bath be with a ring or a bracelet and go out there with into the street for appearances sake but it was taught what is an approved amulet one that has healed three men simultaneously there is no difficulty the one is to approve the man the other is to approve the amulet our papa said it is obvious to me that if three amulets are successful for three people each being efficacious three times both the practitioner and the amulets are henceforth approved if three amulets are successful for three people each being efficacious once the practitioner is henceforth approved but not the amulets if one amulet is efficacious for three men the amulet is approved but not the practitioner but our papa propounded what if three amulets are efficacious for one person the amulets are certainly not rendered approved but does the practitioner become approved or not do we say surely he has healed him or perhaps it is this man's fate to be susceptible to writings the question stands over the scholars propounded have amulet sanctity or not in respect of what law shall we say in respect of saving them from a fire then come and your benedictions and amulets, though they contain the divine letters and many passages from the Torah, may not be saved from a fire, but are burnt where they are again. If in respect to hiding, come and here. If the divine name was written on the handles of utensils or on the legs of a bed, it must be cut out and hidden. Rather, the problem is what about entering a privy with them? Have they sanctity and it is forbidden, or perhaps they have no sanctity and it is permitted? Come and here, nor with an amulet. If it is not from an expert, this implies that if it is from an expert, one may go out with it. Now, if you say that amulets possess sanctity, it may happen that one needs a privy and so come to carry it. Four cubits in the street. The reference here is to an amulet of roots, but it was taught both a written amulet and an amulet of roots. The reference here is to an invalid whose life is endangered, but it was taught both an invalid whose life is endangered and one whose life is not. Endangered rather this is the reply since it heals even when he holds it in his hand it is well Talmud, Mosh of Batha but it was taught our Ashai said providing one does not hold it in his hand and carry it four cubits in the street but the reference here is to an amulet that is covered with leather but tefillin are leather covered yet it was taught when one enters a privy he must remove his tefillin at a distance of four cubits and then enter there it is on account of the letter shin. For Abbe said the shin of tefillin is a halachai of Moses at Sinai Abbe also said the Daleth of tefillin is a halachai of Moses at Sinai Abbe also said the yacht of tefillin is a halachai of Moses at Sinai nor with a shirion nor with a kasdan nor with megafayim shirion is a coat of male kasdan Rab said it is a polished metal helmet megafayim Rab said these are greaves mission a woman may not go out with a needle that is pierced nor with a ring bearing a signet nor with a cochlear nor with a Kobileth nor with a balsam file and if she does go out she is liable to a sin offering this is our mayor's view but the sages rule that she is not culpable in the case of a kobileth and a balsam file Gamar Ola said and it is the reverse in the case of a man thus we see that Ola holds that whatever is fit for a man is not fit for a woman and whatever is fit for a woman is not fit for a man our Joseph objected shepherds may go out on the Sabbath with sackcloths and not only of shepherds did they the sages say thus but of all men but that it is the practice of shepherds to go out with sacks rather said our Joseph Ola holds that women are a separate independent people have they put an objection to him if one finds tefillin he must bring them in peer by peer this applies to both a man and a woman now if you say that women are a separate people surely it is a positive command limited in time and from all such women are exempt there are mayor holds that night is a time for tefillin and the Sabbath too is a time for Tefillin, thus it is a positive precept not limited by
Cupid's in the street, but it was taught our Eliza declares her non culpable on account of a cobillet and a flask of spike nard oil. There is no difficulty. The one ruling is in reference to our mayor, the other in reference to the rabbis. Thus, when referring to our mayor who maintained that she is liable to a sin offering, he or Eliza said to him that she is not culpable when treating of the rabbis who maintained that there is no culpability, yet it is forbidden. He ruled that it is permitted at the outset Talmud, Mosh of Bath B. And what is this reference to our mayor? As it was taught, a woman may not go out with a key in her hand, and if she does, she incurs a sin offering. This is our mayor's view. Our Eliza holds her non culpable in the case of a cobillet and a flask of spike nard oil. Who mentioned a cobillet? There is a lacuna, and it was thus taught, and she may likewise not go out with a cobillet or a flask of spike nard oil. And if she does, she incurs a sin offering. This is our mayor's view. Our Eliza holds her non culpable in the case of a cobillet and a flask of spike nard oil. When is that said when they contain perfume? But if they do not contain perfume, she is culpable. Our Abbe Ahabah said this implies that if one carries out less than the statutory quantity of food in a utensil, he is culpable. For when it the flask does not contain perfume, it is analogous to less than the statutory quantity of food carried out in a utensil, and yet it is taught that she is culpable. Our Ashi said, In general, I may hold that there is no liability, but here it is different because there is nothing concrete at all, and anoint themselves with the chief ointments. Rab Judah said in Samuel's name, this refers to spike nard oil. Our Joseph objected, Our Judah be Baba forbade spike nard oil too, but the sages did not agree with him. Now, if you say that the prophet's objection is on account of its being a luxury, why did they not agree with him? Said Abbe to him, and on your view, when it is written that. Drink in bowls of Mizrak wine, which RMI and RC1 interpreted it as meaning Kanishkanim, while the other said it means that they threw Mizrak in their goblets to each other. Is that too forbidden? Surely Rabbi son of Arhuna visited the house of the Reshalifah who drank from a Kanishkanim, yet he said nothing to him, but whatever provides both enjoyment and rejoicings, the rabbis forbade, but that which is a luxury but not associated with rejoicing, the rabbis did not forbid that. Lie upon beds of ivory and stretch themselves, Sirahim upon their couches, our Jose son of Arhana said this refers to people who urinate before their beds naked, are about derided this. If so, is that why it is written, therefore shall they now go captive with the first that go captive, because they urinate before their beds naked, they shall go captive with the first that go captive, rather said are about this refers to people who eat and drink together, join their couches, exchange their wives and make. Their couches foul maze right and with semen that is not theirs are about said others say in a very that it was taught three things bring man to poverty is urinating in front of one's bed naked treating the washing of the hands with disrespect and being cursed by one's wife in his presence urinating in front of one's bed naked Rabbah said this was said only when his face is turned to the bed but if it is turned in the opposite direction we have not against it and even when his face is turned to the bed this was said only when it is onto the ground but if it is into a vessel we have not against it and the treating of the washing of the hands with disrespect Rabbah said this was said only when one does not wash his hands at all but if he washes them inadequately we have not against it but this is not so for our said I washed with full handfuls of water and was granted full handfuls of prosperity and being cursed by one's wife in his presence said Rabbah that is when she curses. Him on account of her adornments, but that is only when he has the means, but does not provide them. Rabbi son of Ari lectured what is meant by moreover. The Lord said, because the daughters of Zion are haughty, that means that they walk with haughty bearing and walk without stretch. Next they walk heel by toe and want to mess eyes. They filled their eyes with stibium and beckoned walking and mincing. They walked a tall woman by the side of a short one and making a tinkling tea. has not. With their feet are Isaac of the school of Ari. I said this teaches that they placed myrrh and balsam in their shoes and walked through the marketplaces of Jerusalem and on coming near to the young men of Israel, they kicked their feet and spurted it on them, thus instilling them with passionate desire like with serpents poison. And what is their punishment? As Rabbi Biola lectured, and it shall come to pass that instead of sweet spices, bosom there shall be rottenness, the place where they. Perfume themselves with bass moth shall be decaying sores, and instead of a girdle, a rope nape, the place where they were girded with a girdle shall become full of bruises, nakafim, and instead of well set hair baldness, the place where they adorned themselves shall be filled with bald patches, and instead of a stomach or pathogen, a girding of sackcloth, the openings that lead to sensual joy shall be for a girding of sackcloth, branding key, instead of beauty, said Rabbi, thus men say ulcers. Instead of beauty, therefore, the Lord will smite with a scab, Wesapah, the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, our Jose, son of our Hannah, said this teaches that leprosy broke out in them, here is written Wesapah, whilst elsewhere it is written, this is the law for all manner of plagues of leprosy, and for arising, and for a scab, say and the Lord will lay very their secret parts, Rab, and Samuel one maintained this means that they were poured out like a cruise while the other. Said their openings became like a forest. Rab Judah said in Rab's name, the men of Jerusalem were vulgar. One would say to his neighbor, On what did you dine today? On well needed bread or on bread that is not well needed? On white wine or Talmud? Mosh of Bath on dark eye, mustard colored wine on a broad couch or on a narrow couch with a good companion or with a poor companion are his dog observed. And all these are in reference to immorality. Rehoboth said in Rab Judah's name, the fuel logs of Jerusalem were of the cinnamon tree and when lit their fragrance pervaded the whole of Eretz Israel. But when Jerusalem was destroyed, they were hidden only as much as a barley grain being left, which is to be found in the queen's collections of rarities. Mishnah, a man must not go out with a sword, bow shield, lance, Allah, or spear. And if he does go out, he incurs a sin offering. Our Eliza said they are ornaments for him, but the sages maintain they are merely shameful for it is said, and they shall. Beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. Any band bureth clean, and one may go out with it on the Sabbath. Ankle chains kabbalim are unclean, and one may not go out with them on the Sabbath. Tomorrow, what is within Allah? Lance our Eliza said they are ornaments for him. It was taught, said they the sages to our Eliza, since they are ornaments for him, why should they cease in the days of the Messiah? Because they will not be required. He answered, as it is said, nation shall not lift up sword against nation, yet let them exist merely as ornaments, said Abbe. It may be compared to a candle at noon. Now, this disagrees with Samuel, for Samuel said this world differs from the messianic era only in respect to servitude of the exiled, for it is said, for the poor shall never cease out of the land that supports our high B. Abba, who said, all the prophets prophesied only for the messianic. Age, but as for the world to come, the eye hath not seen, O Lord, beside thee, what he hath prepared for him that wait for him. Some there are who state, said they, the sages to our Eliza, since they are ornaments for him, why should they cease in the days of the Messiah? In the days of the Messiah, too, they shall not cease. He answered, This is Samuel's view, and it disagrees with our high B. Abbas Abbe asked Ardimi, other state are we, others against state are Joseph, ask Ardimi, and other state are we, whilst other state Abbe asked our Joseph, what is our Eliza's reason for maintaining that they are ornaments for him, because it is written, Gird thy sword upon thy thigh, O mighty one, thy glory, and thy majesty, Arkahana objected to Marsan of Arhuna, but this refers to the words of the Torah, a verse cannot depart from its plain meaning. He replied, Arkahana said, By the time I was eighteen years old, I had studied the whole shas, yet I did not know that a verse cannot depart from its plain. Meaning until today, what does he inform us that a man should study and subsequently understand? Nemonic Zerath, our Jeremiah said in our Elzer's name, when two scholars sharpen each other in Halacha, the Holy One, blessed be he gives them success for it is said, and in thy majesty, W. A. Rekha, be successful, read not W. A. Rekha, but W. A. Rekha, thy sharpening, moreover, they ascend to greatness, as it is said, right on prosperously successfully, one might think that this is so, even if it is not for its own sake, therefore it is taught in behalf of truth, I might think that this is so, even if he becomes conceited, therefore it is taught in meekness of righteousness, but if they do thus, they are privileged to acquire the Torah which was given by the right hand, as it is said, and thy right hand shall teach the
Scholars pay heed to each other in Halacha, the Holy One, blessed be he listens to their voice as it is said, Thou that dwellest in the gardens, the companions hearken to thy voice, cause me to hear it. But if they do not do thus, they cause the Shechanah to depart from Israel as it is said, Flee my beloved, and be thou like, etc. Our Abba said in the name of our Simeon, be like, when two disciples form an assembly in Halacha, the Holy One, blessed be he loves them as it is said, and his banner over me was love. Said Rabbah, providing they know the features of a subject, providing also that there is no greater scholar in the town from whom to learn. Our Abba also said in the name of our Simeon, be like, he who lends money is greater than he who performs charity, and he who forms a partnership is greater than all. Our Abba also said in the name of our Simeon, be like, even if a scholar is vengeful and bears malice like a serpent, gird him on thy loins, whereas even if an empire as his pious do not dwell in his vicinity, our Kahana said in the name of our Simeon, be like, other state, our said in the name of our Simeon, be like, other state, our Abba said in the name of our Simeon, be like, he who breeds a wild dog in his house keeps loving kindness away from his house, as it is said to him that is ready to faint. Lamos Talmud, Mosh Bath, be kindness should be shoot from his friend, and in Greek a dog is called Lamos Arnam, and be Isaac said he also casts off the fear of heaven from himself, as it is said, and he. Forsake the fear of the Almighty. A certain woman entered the house to bake the dog, barked at her, whereupon her child moved from its place. Said the householder to her, Fear not his fangs and claws have been extracted. Take your favors and throw them on the thorns. She retorted, The child has already moved. Arhuna said, What is meant by the verse? Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth, and walk in the ways of thine heart and in the sight of thine eyes. But know thou that for all these things God will bring thee into judgment. Thus far are the words of evil desire, thereafter are the words of good desire. Rushlakish said, Thus far the reference is to study, thereafter to good deeds. A is clean. Rab Judah said, A is a bracelet. Our Joseph objected, A is clean, and one may go out with it on the Sabbath, but a bracelet is liable to become unclean. He meant this, A stands in the place of a bracelet. Rabin and Arhuna were sitting. Before our Jeremiah and our Jeremiah was dozing, now Rabin sat and said, Abirath is on one leg, whilst Kabalim ankle chain is on two, said Arhuna to him, both are on two, but a chain is placed between them, and they become Kabalim anklets, does then the chain turn it into a utensil, and should you answer this is in accordance with our Samuel bin Amani, for our Samuel bin Amani said in our Jonathan's name, how do we know that a metal object which causes sound is unclean, because it is said everything Debar. That may abide the fire, ye shall make go through the fire, even speech to Barai, sound is implied, as for there it is well, if the utensil is needed for sound, and it performs an action, but here what action does it perform here too, it performs an action for Rabbi Barhanna said in our Yohanan's name, there was a certain family in Jerusalem that had large steps whereby their virginity was destroyed, so they made them like suspenders and placed a chain between them that their steps should not be. Large and then their virginity was not destroyed. Our Jeremiah woke at that and exclaimed to them, Well spoken, and thus did our Yohanan say to when our Dimi came, he said in the name of our Yohanan, How do we know that woven material of whatever size is liable to become unclean from the Ziz? Said Abbe to him, Was then the Ziz woven, but it was taught the Ziz was a kind of golden plate, two finger breadths broad, and it stretched round the forehead from ear to ear, and upon it was written in two lines. Yahi above and holy lane below, but our Eliezer son of our Jose said, I saw it in the city of Rome, and holy unto the Lord was written in one line when our Dimi went up to Nehardia, he sent word the things that I told you were erroneous, but in truth it was thus said on our Yohanan's authority, How do we know that an ornament of whatever size is liable to become unclean from the head plate, and how do we know that woven material of whatever size is unclean from the phrase or rhyme and our rabbis taught? Woven stuff of whatever size is unclean and an ornament of whatever size is unclean an object partly woven and partly an ornament of whatever size is unclean a sack goes beyond a garment in that it is unclean as woven material Rabbi said woven stuff of whatever size is unclean this is deduced from orament an ornament of whatever size is unclean this is learned from a headplate an object partly woven and partly an ornament of whatever size is unclean this is deduced from every serviceable utensil said one of the rabbis to Rabbi but that is written in reference to Midian we learn Talmud Mosh of the meaning of utensil here from the employment of utensil there answered he a sack goes beyond a garment in that it is unclean as woven material is then a garment not woven material this is its meaning a sack goes beyond a garment for though it is not of woven material yet it is unclean for what is it fit said are you a poor man plates three threads of goats. Hair and suspends it from his daughter's neck. Our rabbis taught, and upon whatsoever any of them doth fall, it shall be unclean, whether it be any vessel of wood or sack. I know it only of a sack. How do we know to include a horse cover and a saddle band? Therefore it is said, or sack. I might think that I can include ropes and cords. Therefore sack is stated just as a sack is spun and woven. So must everything be spun and woven. Now concerning the dead, it is stated, and all that is made of skin. And all work of goats here ye shall purify yourselves. This is to include a horse cover and a saddle band. I might think that I can include ropes and cords, but it the reverse is logical. The divine law teaches defilement by a dead reptile, and it teaches defilement by the dead, just as when it teaches defilement by a reptile, it declares unclean only that which is spun and woven. So when it teaches defilement by the dead, it declares unclean only that which is spun and woven. How so if it is? Lenient in respect to defilement through a reptile which is lighter shall we be lenient in respect to defilement by the dead which is graver therefore rhyme and skin is stated twice to provide a gazerisha while thus rhyme and skin are mentioned in connection with reptiles and also in connection with the dead just as the rhyme and skin which are mentioned in connection with reptiles its scripture declares unclean only that which is spun and woven so the rhyme and skin which are stated in connection with the dead it declares unclean only that which is spun and woven and just as rhyme and skin which are stated in connection with the dead anything made of goat's hair is unclean so rhyme and skin which are stated in connection with reptiles anything made of goat's hair is unclean now I know it only of that which comes from goats how do I know to include what is produced from the tail of a horse or a cow therefore it is stated or sack but you have utilized it in respect of a horse. Cover and saddle bands that was only before the Gazirisha was a dis, but now that we have the Gazirisha it SC the or is superfluous, and I know this only in the case of a reptile. How do we know it in respect to defilement by the dead? But it is logical scripture declares uncleanness through the dead and also declares uncleanness through reptiles, just as when it declares uncleanness through the dead, it treats that which is produced from the tail of a horse or cow as that which is made of goat's hair. So when it declares uncleanness through the dead, it treats that which is produced from the tail of a horse or a cow as that which is made of goat's hair. How so if its scripture includes this in defilement until evening, which is extensive, shall we include it in seven days defilement, which is limited, therefore rhyme and skin are stated twice to provide a Gazirisha while rhyme and skin are stated in connection with reptiles, and rhyme and skin are stated also in Connection with the dead, just as rhyme and skin, which are stated in connection with reptiles, that which comes from the tail of a horse or cow is treated as that which is made of goat's hair. So rhyme and skin, which are stated in connection with the dead, that which is produced from the tail of a horse or cow is treated as that which is made of goat's hair, and this must be redundant. For if it is not redundant, one can refute the deduction as for a reptile that is because it defiles by the size of a lentil. In truth, it is redundant. For consider a reptile is likened to semen, for it is written, a man whose seed goeth from him in proximity to which it is written, or whosoever touch any creeping thing, while in respect to semen it is written, and every garment and every skin whereon is the seed of copulation. Then what is the purpose of rhyme and skin written by the divine law in connection with reptiles? Infer from this that its purpose is to leave it redundant, yet it is still redundant. Only on one side this is well on the view that where it is redundant on one side we can learn identity of law and cannot refute the deduction but on the view that we can learn but also refute what can be said that stated in connection with the dead is also redundant for consider the dead is likened to semen for it is written and whoso touch it
with frontlets and with sarbiton that are fastened to her she may go out with a hairnet cobble and with a wig into a courtyard with wadding in her ear with wadding in her sandals and with the cloth prepared for her menstruation with a peppercorn with a globule of salt and anything that is placed in her mouth providing that she does not put it in her mouth in the first place on the sabbath and if it fails out she may not put it back as for an artificial tooth or a gold tooth rabbi permits but the sages forbid it tomorrow and it is necessary to state all the cases for if we were told about her own hair that might be because it is not ugly but as for her companions which is unbecoming I might say that it is not permitted while if we were informed about her companions that might be because she is of her own kind but in animals that is not of her own kind I might say that it is not permitted thus they are necessary it was taught providing that a young woman does not go out with an old woman's hair or an old woman with a young woman's as for an old woman not going out with a young woman's hair that is well because it is an improvement for her but that a young woman may not go out with an old woman's hair why stated seeing that it is unsuitable for her because he teaches of an old woman's going out with a young woman's hair he also teaches of a young woman's going out with an old woman's hair with a hairnet and a wig into a courtyard rab said whatever the sages forbade to go out there with into the street one may not go out there with into a courtyard except a hairnet and a wig our anani and said on the authority of our ishmael son of our jose it is all like a hairnet we learned with a hairnet and a wig into a courtyard as for rabbit as well but according to our anani and it is a difficulty on whose authority does our anani and say this on that of our ishmael son of our jose our ishmael son of our jose is a tana and can disagree now according to Rab, why do these different sedula they are permitted lest she become repulsive to her husband as it was taught and she that is sick shall be in her impurity the early sages ruled that means that she must not rouge nor paint nor adorn herself in dyed garments until our akiba came and taught if so you make her repulsive to her husband with the result that he will divorce her but what then is taught by and she that is sick shall be in her impurity she shall remain in her impurity until she enters into water Rab Judah said in Rab's name wherever the sages forbade for appearance's sake it is forbidden even in one's innermost chambers we learned nor with a bell even if it is plugged and it was elsewhere taught one may plug the bell around its the animal's neck and saunter with it in the courtyard it is a controversy of tanaim for it was taught Talmud, Mosh of Batha, he may spread them out in the sun but not in the sight of people are Eliezer and are Simeon forbid it and with the wadding in her ear Rami B. Ezekiel learned providing it is tied to her ear and with the wadding in her sandals Rami B. Ezekiel learned providing it is tied to her sandal and with the cloth she prepared for her menstruation Rami B. Ezekiel thought to say providing it is fastened between her thighs said Rabba even if it is not tied to her since it is repulsive she will not come to carry it or Jeremiah asked our Abba what if she made a handle for it it is permitted replied he. It was stated likewise our Naman B. Ashai said in our Yohanan's name even if she made a handle for it it is permitted our Yohanan used to go out with them to the Beth Hamid Rash but his companions disagreed with him or Janay would go out with it into a Carmelite but all his contemporaries disagreed with him but Rami B. Ezekiel learned providing it is tied to her ear there is no difficulty in the one case it is firmly placed in the other it was not with a peppercorn and with a globule of salt eh? Peppercorn is for counteracting the evil breath of the mouth. A globule of salt is for the gum, and with anything that she places in her mouth, as sea ginger or cinnamon, an artificial tooth or a gold tooth, Rabbi permits. But the sages forbid it. Our Zara said they taught this only of a gold tooth, but as for a silver one, all agree that it is permitted. Abay said, Rabbi Arlizer and Arsimian B. Eliezer all hold that whatever detracts from a person's appearance, one will not come to display it. Rabbi has stated Arlizer, for it was taught Arlizer declares her non culpable on account of a kobilet and a flask of spikenard oil. Arsimian B. Eliezer, for it was taught Arsimian B. Eliezer stated a general rule whatever is worn beneath the net, one may go out there with whatever is worn above the net, one may not go out with it. Misha, she may go forth with the cellar, Adazanai, Callus, young girls may go out with threads, and even with chips in their ears, Arabian women may go forth veiled. And median women may go forth with their cloaks thrown over their shoulders. Indeed, all people may do likewise, but that the sages spoke of normal usage. A woman may weight her cloak with a stone nut or coin, providing that she does not attach the weight in the first place on the Sabbath. Tomorrow, what is Zainai the growth caused by the soil? And why particularly a cellar shall we say that anything hard is beneficial thereto? Then let a shard be prepared for it again if it is on account of the corrosion. Let a metal foil be used, but if it is on account of the figure, let him use any circular plates. And obey this proves that all these things are beneficial for it. Young girls may go out with threads. Samuel's father did not permit his daughters to go out with threads nor to sleep together, and he made mikwayot for them in the days of Nisan and had mats placed in the days of Tishri. He did not permit them to go out with threads, but we learned young girls may go out with threads, the daughters of Samuel's father had colored ones he did not permit them to sleep together shall we say that the supports are who not for are who not said women that commit lewdness with one another are unfit for the priesthood, Talmud, Mosh of Bath be Talmud, Mosh of Bath be no it was in order that they should not become accustomed to a foreign body and he made a equate for them in the days of Nis and the supports rap for rap said rain in the West Palestine is strongly testified to by the Euphrates and he Samuel's father feared that the rainwater might exceed the running water now he differs from Samuel who said a river increases in volume from its beds but this conflicts with another statement of his for Samuel said no water purifies when flowing save the Euphrates in the days of Tishri alone a woman may wait her cloak with a stone etc but you say in the first clause that she may wait it said Abay the second clause refers to a coin Abay asked may a woman evade the Sabbath prohibition by Waiting her cloak with a nut in order to carry it out to her infant child on the Sabbath. This is a problem on the view of both him who maintains that an artifice may be used and him who holds that an artifice may not be used. It is a problem on the view that all artifice may be used in the case of a conflagration that is only there because if you do not permit it to him, he will come to extinguish it. But here, if you do not permit it, one will not come to carry it. See the nut out, or perhaps even on the view that all artifice may not be used there, that is a normal way of carrying clothes out. But here, this is not a usual way of carrying it, and therefore I might say that it is well. The question stands over mission. A stump like a person may go forth with his wooden stump. This is our mayor's view. Talmud, Mosh of Bath, while our Jose forbids it, and if it has a receptacle for pads, it is unclean. It supports are unclean through Meldris, and one may go out there with on the Sabbath and enter. The temple court whilst wearing them is stool and supports are unclean as madras and one may not go out with them on the Sabbath and one may not enter the temple court with them an artificial arm look at Minayas clean but one may not go out there with them our Rabbah asked our Naman how do we learn this I do not know replied he what is the law I do not know was his answer it was stated Samuel said a stump legged person may not etc and our said likewise a stump legged person may not etc are Joseph observed since Samuel said a stump legged person may not etc and our also said a stump legged person may not etc then we too should learn a stump legged person may not rabbi Bishi did they not hear what our and be Rabbah recited to Hayabi Rab before Rab in the little room of Rab's academy a stump legged person may not go out with his wooden stump this is our mayor's view but our Jose permits it whereupon Rab signaled to them that it was the reverse our Naman B Isaac observed and your token is Samek Samek now Samuel too retracted for we learned if she performs Haliza with a shoe that is not his with a wooden shoe or with a left-footed shoe placed on the right foot the Haliza is valid now we observed which tanner rules us said Samuel our mayor for we learned a stump-legged person may go out with his wooden stump this is our mayor's view while our Jose forbids IT now are who not too retracted for it was taught a lime burner's shoe is unclean as Madras a woman may perform Haliza there with and one may not go out with it on the Sabbath this is our Akiba's view but the sages did not agree with him but it was taught they agree with him said our who not who agreed with him our mayor and who did not agree with him our Jose our Joseph said who did not agree with him our Yohanan Binuri for we learned a hive of straw and a tube of canes our Akiba declares it unclean while our Yohanan Binuri declares it clean
Mother told me three arrest illness, five curate, seven are efficacious even against witchcraft. Our Ahabi Jacob observed, providing that neither the sun nor the moon see it, and that it does not see rain, nor hear the sound of iron, or the cry of a fowl, or the sound of steps are nominee. Isaac said the PU has fallen into a pit. Why then, particularly boys, even girls too, may go out there with NY, particularly children, even adults too. But then what is meant by Kesharim is Aben Bihuna said. In the name of it, Habibi Guria, if a son yearns for his father, the father takes a strap from his right shoe and ties it to his left hand. Arnaman B. Isaac said, and your token is phylacteries, but if the reverse there is danger, Abin Bihuna said, in the name of our Habibi Guria, the placing of a hot cup upon the navel on Sabbath is permitted. Abin Bihuna also said, in the name of our Habibi Guria, one may rub in oil and salt on the Sabbath, like Arhuna at Rab's college and Rab at Arhai's and Arhai. At Rabbis, when they felt the effect of the wine, they would bring oil and salt and rub into the palms of their hands and the instep of their feet and say, just as this oil is becoming clear, so let so and so's wine become clear. And if this was not possible, they would bring the sealing clay of a wine vessel and soak it in water and say, just as this clay becomes clear, so let so and so's wine become clear. Abin Bihuna also said, in the name of our Habibi Guria, one may reset laryngeal muscle on. The Sabbath Abin Bihuna also said in the name of our Habibi Guria to swaddle a babe on the Sabbath is in order our Papa recited two dicta about children while Arzibid recited one dictum about a child our Papa recited the two dicta about children and both in the name of Abin Bihuna while Arzibid recited a dictum about a child in his name for the first he recited in the name of Abin Bihuna but this latter one he recited in the name of Rabbi Barhana for Rabbi Barhana said to swaddle a babe on the Sabbath is in order Abbe said mother told me all incantations which are repeated several times must contain the name of the patient's mother and all knots must be on the left hand Abbe also said mother told me of all incantations the number of times they are to be repeated is as stated and where the number is not stated it is 41 times our rabbis taught one may go out with a preserving stone on the Sabbath on the authority of our mayor it was said even with the Counterweight of a preserving stone, and not only when one has miscarried, but even for fear lest she miscarry, and not only when she is already pregnant, but even lest she become pregnant and miscarry. Our Yamar B. Shalmiya said on Abay's authority, provided that it was found to be its natural counterweight. Abay asked, What about the counterweight of the counterweight? The question stands over. Abay also said, Mother told me for a daily fever, one must take a white zoos, go to a salt deposit, take its weight in salt, and tie it up in the nape of the neck with a white twisted cord. But if this is not possible, let one sit at the crossroads, and when he sees a large ant carrying something, let him take and throw it into a brass tube, and close it with lead, and seal it with sixty seals. Let him shake it, lift it up, and say to it, Thy burden be upon me, and my burden be upon thee, said Ara Hassan of Arhuna to Arashi, but perhaps another man had previously found it and cast his illness upon it, rather. Let him say to it, My burden and thy burden be upon thee, but if this is impossible, let him take a new pitcher, go to the river, and say to it, O river, O river, lend me a pitcher of water for a journey that had chanced to me. Let him then turn it seven times about his head, throw it behind his back, and say to it, O river, O river, take back the water thou gavest me for the journey that chanced to me, came in its day, and departed in its day. Arhuna said, Talmud, Mosh of Bathay is a remedy for a tertian. Fever one should procure seven prickles from seven palm trees, seven chips from seven beams, seven picks from seven bridges, seven heaps of ashes from seven ovens, seven mounds of earth from under seven door sockets, seven specimens of pitch from seven ships, seven handfuls of cumin, and seven hairs from the beard of an old dog, and tie them in the nape of the neck with a white twisted thread. Are you hand and set for an inflammatory fever? Let one take an all iron knife, go whither thorn hedges are to be. Found and tie a white twisted thread thereto on the first day he must slightly notch it and say and the angel of the Lord appeared unto him etc. On the following day he again makes a small notch and says and Moses said I will turn aside now and see etc. The next day he makes another small notch and says and when the Lord saw that he turned aside sar to see Araha son of Rabbah said to Arashi then let him say draw not nigh hither rather on the first day he should say and the angel of the Lord appeared unto him etc. And Moses said I will etc. The next day he says and when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see on the third and he said draw not nigh and when he has recited his verses he pulls it down as see the bush and says thus O thorn O thorn not because thou art higher than all other trees did the Holy One bless be he cause his chechen not to rest upon thee but because thou art lower than all other trees did he cause his chechen not to rest upon thee and even as thou sawest the fire. Kindled for Hananiah missile and Ezra and didst flee from before them so look upon the fire i.e. fever of so and so and flee from him for an abscess one should say thus let it indeed be cut down let it indeed be healed let it indeed be overthrown Charlie and Marli are those angels who were sent from the land of Sodom to heal boils and aches bizak 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 Alliance did we find the demon Barsha Rika Panda with a bed of leeks I hurled him down and with the jawbone of an ass I smote him and royal children may go out with bells who is the authority for this ruling said Arashai it is our Simeon who maintained all Israel our royal children Rabbah said it means that it is woven sewn into his garment thus it agrees with all Mishnah one may go out with a hargal's egg a fox's tooth and a nail from the gallows of an impaled convict as a prophylactic. This is our mayor's view but the sages forbid this even on weekdays on account of the ways of the Amorite tomorrow one may go out with a hargal's egg which is carried for your and with a fox's tooth which is worn on account of sleep a living fox is for one who sleeps too much a dead fox is for him who cannot sleep and a nail from the gallows of an impaled convict it is applied to an inflammation as a prophylactic this is our mayor's view Abay and Rabbah both maintain whatever is used as a Remedy is not forbidden on account of the ways of the Amorite, and if it is not an obvious remedy, is it forbidden on account of the ways of the Amorite? But surely it was taught if a tree casts its fruit, one paints it with sea and loads it with stones. Now, as for loading it with stones, that is in order to lessen its strength. But when he paints it with sea what remedy does he effect? That is in order that people may see and pray for it, even as it was taught, and he the leper shall cry. Unclean, unclean, he must make his grief publicly known so that the public may pray for him. Robin observed, in accordance with whom do we suspend a cluster of dates on a sterile day tree? In accordance with this, Tana A. Tana recited the chapter of Amorite practices before our high B. Abin said he to him, All these are forbidden as Amorite practices. Save the following, if one has a bone in his throat, he may bring of that kind, place it on his head, and say, Thus one by one, go down, swallow, go down one. By one this is not considered the ways of the Amorite for a fishbone he should say thus thou art stuck in like a pin thou art locked up as within a cuirass go down go down Talmud, Mosh of Bath be he who says be lucky my luck Gad to die entire not by day or night is guilty of Amorite practices our Judah said Gad is none other but an idolatrous term for it is said yet that prepare a table for Gad if husband and wife exchange their names they are guilty of Amorite practices to say be strong oh. Yet barrels is forbidden as the ways of the Amorite our Judah said Dan barrel is none other but the designation of an idol for it is said that, that swear by the sin of Samaria and say as the God Dan liveth he who says to a raven scream and to a she raven screech and return me thy tough for my good is guilty of Amorite practices he who says kill this cock because it crowed in the evening or this fowl because it crowed like a cock is guilty of Amorite practices he who says I will drink and Leave over I will drink and leave over is guilty of the ways of the Amor
Sabbath and performs many labors on many Sabbaths incurs one sin offering only he who knows the fundamental law of the Sabbath and performs many labors on many Sabbaths incurs a sin offering on account of each Sabbath he who knows that it is the Sabbath and performs many labors on many Sabbaths is liable for every Talmud, Moshe the primary labor he who performs many labors belonging to the same category of work is liable to one sin offering only tomorrow why does he the Tanis day? Great principle shall we say that because he wishes to teach another principle he therefore states here a great principle and in respect to Shabbat too because he wishes to teach another principle he states this is a great principle but what of tithes though another principle is taught he nevertheless does not teach elsewhere a great principle said our Jose B. Abin is for the Sabbath and Shabbat since they possess both primaries and derivatives he teaches great but in respect to tithes. Since there are no primaries and derivatives he does not teach great then according to Barkapra who did learn a great principle in respect to tithes what primaries and what derivatives are there but surely this must be the reason the penal scope of the Sabbath is greater than that of Shabbat for whereas the restriction of the Sabbath is found in respect of both detached and growing produce the prohibitions of Shabbat do not operate in respect of detached but only in respect of Growing produce again the penal scope of the seventh year is greater than that of tithes for whereas the law of Shabbat applies to both human food and animal fodder the law of tithes operates in the case of human food but not of animal fodder and according to Barkapra who learned a great principle in connection with tithes the penal scope of tithes is greater than that of P.E. offer whereas the law of tithes operates in fix and vegetables too P.E.A. does not operate in fix and vegetables for we learned a general principle was stated in respect to P.E.A. whatever is a foodstuff is guarded grows from the earth is all gathered simultaneously and is collected for storage is liable to P.E.A. foodstuff excludes the aftergrowth of wood and matter is guarded excludes hacker grows from the earth excludes mushrooms and truffles is all gathered simultaneously excludes a fig tree and is taken in to be stored excludes vegetables whereas in respect to tithes we learned a general Principle was stated in respect to tithes whatever is a foodstuff is guarded and grows from the earth is subject to tithes but we did not learn is gathered simultaneously and is collected for storage Rab and Samuel both maintain our mission treats of a child who was taken captive among Gentiles or a proselyte who became converted in the midst of Gentiles but if one knew and subsequently forgot he is liable to a sin offering for every Sabbath we learned he who forgets the essential law of it. Sabbath surely that implies that he knew it originally know what is meant by he who forgets the essential law of the Sabbath that the very existence of the Sabbath was unknown to him but what if he knew and subsequently forgot he is liable for every Sabbath and instead of teaching he who knows the essential law of the Sabbath and performs many labors on many Sabbaths incurs a sin offering on account of each Sabbath let him teach he who knew and subsequently forgot and how much more so this. One what is meant by he who knows the essential law of the Sabbath that he who knew the essential law of the Sabbath and forgot it Talmud, Mosh should bath be what if he did not forget it he is liable for each labor then instead of teaching he who knows that it is the Sabbath and performs many labors on many Sabbaths is liable for every labor let him teach he who knows the essential law of the Sabbath and how much more so this case rather our mission refers to one who knew but subsequently forgot and Rab and Samuel's ruling too is similar to the case of one who knew but subsequently forgot and it was thus stated Rab and Samuel both maintain even a child who was taken captive among Gentiles or a proselyte who became converted in the midst of Gentiles is as one who knew but subsequently forgot and so he is liable but our Yohanan and Reshlakish maintain only one who knew but subsequently forgot is liable but a child who was taken captive among Gentiles or a proselyte who became Converted in the midst of Gentiles is not culpable and objection is raised a great principle is stated in respect to Sabbath he who forgets the essential law of Sabbath and performs many labors on many Sabbaths incurs one sin offering only e.g. if a child is taken captive among Gentiles or a proselyte is converted in the midst of Gentiles and performs many labors on many Sabbaths he is liable to one sin offering only and he is liable to one sin offering on account of blood one on account of Halab and one on account of idolatry but Monobaz exempts him and thus did Monobaz argue before our Akiva since a willful transgressor is designated a sinner and an unwitting transgressor too is designated a sinner then just as willful transgression implied that he had knowledge so when unwittingly transgressing he must have had the knowledge said our Akiva to him behold I will add to your words if so just as willful transgression involves that he shall have had knowledge at the time of his deed so. In unwitting transgression he must have had knowledge at the time of his deed even so he replied and all the more so since you have added this argument as you define it such is not designated unwitting but willful transgression he retorted now after all it is stated e.g. if a child etc. as for Rab and Samuel it is well but according to our Yohanan and Reshlakish it presents a difficulty our Yohanan and Reshlakish can answer you is there not Monobaz who declares him non culpable we rule as Monobaz what is Monobaz's reason because it is written ye shall have one law for him that doth unwittingly and in proximity thereto it is written and the soul that doth with a high hand hence unwitting is assimilated to willful transgression just as willful transgression involves that he shall have had knowledge so unwitting transgression implies that he shall have had knowledge and the rabbis how do they employ this verse ye shall have one law etc. they employ it even as our Joshua be. Levi taught his son ye shall have one law for him that doth unwittingly and it is written Talmud, Moshe Bathay and when ye shall hear and not observe all these commandments and it is written and the soul that doth with a high hand that soul shall be cut off thus they are all assimilated to idolatry just as there it is something for the willful transgression of which Kareth is incurred and for the unwitting transgression a sin offering is incurred so for everything the willful transgression of which involves Kareth its unwitting transgression involves a sin offering but according to Monobus wherein lies his non-willfulness e.g. if he was ignorant in respect of the sacrifice but the rabbis hold that ignorance in respect of the sacrifice does not constitute ignorance now according to the rabbis in respect to what is ignorance required are Yohanan said as long as one errs in respect to Kareth even if he willfully sins in respect of the negative command while Resh Lakish. Maintained he must offend unwittingly in respect of the negative injunction and Karath Rabbah said what is our Simeon be lakish reason scripture saith and if any one of the common people sin unwittingly in doing any of the things which the Lord hath commanded not to be done and be guilty hence he must hear both as to the negative injunction and its attendant Karath and our Yohanan how does he employ this verse by our Simeon be lakish he utilizes it for what was taught and if any one of it common people this excludes a member our Simeon be Eliezer said on the authority of our Simeon sin unwittingly in doing any of the things which the Lord hath commanded not to be done and be guilty he who would refrain on account of his knowledge brings a sacrifice for his unwitting offense but he who would not refrain on account of his knowledge cannot bring a sacrifice for his unwitting offense we learned the primary forms of labor are forty less one now we pondered thereon why state the number and our Yohanan replied to teach that if one performs all of them in a single state of unawareness he is liable to a sin offering for each now how is this possible surely only where he is aware of the Sabbath but unconscious of the forbidden nature of his labors as for our Yohanan who maintained that since he is ignorant in respect of Karath though fully aware of the negative injunction his offense is unwitting it as well it is conceivably g where he knew that labor is forbidden on the Sabbath by a negative injunction but according to our Simeon Belakish who maintained that he must be unaware of the negative injunction and of Karath wherein did he know of the Sabbath he knew of the law of boundaries this being in accordance with our Akiva who is the authority for the following which was taught by the rabbis if one is unaware of both he is the erring sinner mentioned in the Torah if one willfully transgresses in respect of both he is the presumptuous offender mentioned in the Torah if one is unaware of the Sabbath but conscious of the forbidden character of his labors or the reverse or if he declares I knew that this labor is forbidden but not whether it entails a sacrifice or not he is culpable with whom does this agree with Monobaz Abbe said all agree in respect to an oath of utterance that a sacrifice is not incurred on account thereof unless one is unaware of its interdict all agree who is that our Yohanan but that is obvious when did our Yohanan say. Otherwise where there is a penalty of Karath but here in the case of an oath of utterance
My argue death stands in the place of Karath and therefore if one is ignorant of this penalty of death he is culpable hence he informs us otherwise Rabba said death stands in the place of Karath and the fifth stands in the place of a sacrifice Arhuna said if one is traveling on a road or in the wilderness and does not know when it is the Sabbath he must count six days and observe one Hayabi Rab said he must observe one and count six weekdays wherein do they differ one master holds that it is as the world's creation the other master holds that it is like the case of Adam an objection is raised if one is traveling on a road and does not know when it is the Sabbath he must observe one day for six surely that means that he counts six days and observes one no he keeps one day and counts six if so instead of he must observe one day for six he should state he must observe one day and count six moreover it was taught if one is traveling on a road or in the wilderness and does not know when it is the Sabbath he must count six and observe one day this refutation of Hayabi Rab is indeed a refutation Rabba said every day he does sufficient for his requirements only except on that day and on that day he is to die he prepared double his requirements on the previous day but perhaps the previous day was the Sabbath but every day he does sufficient for his requirements and even on that day then wherein may that day be recognized by Kiddush and Habdallah Rabba said if he recognizes the relationship to the day of his departure he may do work the whole of that day but that is obvious you might say since he did not set out on the Sabbath he did not set out on the eve of the Sabbath either hence this man even if he set out on Thursday it shall be permitted him to do work on two days hence he informs us that sometimes one may come across a company and chance to set out on the Friday he who knows the essential law of the Sabbath how do we know it said Arnaman. In the name of Rabbi Abba, two texts are written wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath and it is written and ye shall keep my Sabbath. How is this to be explained? Wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath implies one observance for many Sabbaths whereas and ye shall keep my Sabbath implies one observance for each separate Sabbath. Arnam and B. Isaac demurred on the contrary the logic is the reverse wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath. Implies one observance for each separate Sabbath whereas and ye shall keep my Sabbath implies one observance for many Sabbaths. He who knows that it is the Sabbath Talmud, Moshad Batha wherein does the first clause differ from the second said our Sapphire here he would refrain on account of the knowledge that it is the Sabbath whilst there he would refrain through the knowledge of the forbidden labor. Said Arnam and to him does one refrain from action on the Sabbath for any other. Reason save that the labors are forbidden and does one refrain from labors for aught save because of the Sabbath but said Arnaman for what does the divine law impose a sacrifice for ignorance there there is one fact of ignorance here there are many facts of ignorance he is liable for every separate labor whence do we know the division of labor said Samuel scripture saith everyone that profaneth it shall surely be put to death the Torah decreed many deaths for one desecration but this refers to willful desecration seeing that it is irrelevant in connection with willful transgression for it is written whosoever doth any work therein shall be put to death apply it to an unwitting offender then what is meant by shall be put to death he shall be immersed in money but let the division of labors be deduced whence our Nathan derives it for it was taught our Nathan said ye shall kindle no fire throughout your habitations on the Sabbath day why is this stated because it is said and Moses assembled all the congregation of the children of Israel and said unto them, These are the words which the Lord hath commanded, Six days shall work be done, words to bear him, the words hadabarim, these are the words, this indicates the thirty nine labors taught to Moses at Sinai. I might think that if one performs all of them in a single state of unawareness, he incurs only one sin offering, therefore it is stated from plowing and from harvesting, thou shalt rest, yet I might still argue for plowing and for harvesting, one incurs two sacrifices, but for all others together there is but a single liability, therefore it is stated, Ye shall kindle no fire. Now kindling is included in the general law, why is it singled out that analogy therewith may be drawn teaching, just as kindling is a principal labor and it entails a separate liability, so for every principal labor a separate liability is incurred. Samuel holds as our Jose who maintained kindling is singled out to teach. That it is merely the object of a negative precept, for it was taught kindling is singled out to teach that it is merely the object of a negative precept. This is our Jose's view. Our Nathan said it is particularly specified to indicate division. Now let division of labors be derived whence it is learned by our Jose, for it was taught our Jose said, if a soul shall sin through ignorance against any one of the commandments of the Lord concerning things which ought not to be done and shall do of one of them, sometimes one sacrifice is incurred for all of them, whilst at others one is liable for each separately said our Jose, son of our Hannah. What is our Jose's reason of one of them teaches that liability is incurred for one complete act, for one which is but part of one for performing labors forbidden in themselves, i.e. them and for labors whose prohibition is derived from others, i.e. of them further one transgression may involve liability for a number of sacrifices, i.e. one equals them while. Many offenses may involve but one sacrifice, i.e. them equals one, thus one complete act, the writing of Simeon, one which is but part of one Talmud, Moshe Bath be the writing of Shem as part of Simeon labors forbidden in themselves, i.e. them the primary labors, labors whose prohibition is derived from others, i.e. of them derivatives, one transgression may involve liability for a number of sacrifices, i.e. one equals them awareness of the Sabbath coupled with unawareness of the forbidden nature of his labors, many offenses may involve but one sacrifice, i.e. them equals one unawareness of the Sabbath coupled with awareness of the forbidden nature of his labors, Samuel does not accept the interpretation that one transgression may involve liability for a number of sacrifices, while many offenses may involve but one sacrifice, Rabbah asked Arnaman, what if one forgot both said he surely he is unaware of the Sabbath, hence he incurs only one sacrifice, on the contrary he has. Forgotten the labors hence he is liable for each but said Arashi we see if he would desist from these labors on account of the Sabbath his unawareness is of the Sabbath and he incurs only one sacrifice while if he would desist on account of the labors his unawareness is chiefly of the labors and he is liable for each said Rabbanah to Arashi would he then desist on account of the Sabbath save because of the forbidden nature of his labors and would he desist on account of the forbidden nature of his labors save because of the Sabbath hence there is no difference we learned the primary labors are forty less one now we pondered thereon why state the number and our Yohanan answered it is to teach that if one performs all of them in one state of unawareness he is liable for each separately now it is well if you say that if one is unaware of both he is liable for each separately then it is correct but if you maintain that this is mainly an unawareness of the Sabbath and Entails only one sacrifice, then how is this possible? Presumably by awareness of the Sabbath and ignorance of the forbidden labors. Now that is well if he agrees with our Yohanan who ruled as long as one is unaware of Karath, even if he deliberately offends in respect of the negative command, then it is conceivable where he knows that the Sabbath is the object of a negative injunction. But if he agrees with our Simeon Belakish who maintained he must offend unwittingly in respect of both it. Negative injunction and Karath, then wherein does he know that it is the Sabbath? He knew of boundaries, this being in accordance with our Akiva said, if one reaped and ground corn of the size of a dry fig in unawareness of the Sabbath, but awareness in respect of the labors, and then he again reaped and ground corn of the size of a dry fig in awareness of the Sabbath, but unawareness in respect of the labors, and then he was apprised of the reaping and slash or grinding performed in. Unawareness of the Sabbath but awareness of the labors then he was apprised of the reaping and slash or grinding performed in awareness of the Sabbath but unawareness in respect of the labors Talmud, Moshad Bath and atonement for the first reaping involves atonement for the second reaping and atonement for the first grinding involves atonement for the second grinding but if he was first apprised of his reaping performed in awareness of the Sabbath but unawareness in respect of labors then atonement for the second reaping involves atonement for the first reaping and its accompanying grinding but the corresponding second grinding remains in its place have a maintained atonement for the first grinding involves atonement for the second grinding to the designation of grinding is the same now does then Rabbah hold the theory of involvement but it was stated if one eats two olive sized pieces of hellab in one state of unawareness is apprised of one of them and then eats another olive-sized piece while still unaware of the second. Rabbi said, if he offers a sacrifice for the first, the first and second are expiated, but the third is not. If he brings a sacrifice for the third,
one kind but in the following one kind is more stringent than many kinds is if one eats half the size of an olive and then eats half the size of an olive of the same kind of commodity he is culpable of two different commodities he is not culpable now we question this of the same commodity he is culpable need this be stated and Rush Lakish said on the authority of Bartutani the reference here is to one e.g. who ate them from two terrains this being according to our Joshua who ruled terrains. Divide you might say that our Joshua rules thus whether it leads to leniency or to stringency hence we are informed that he did not rule thus leniently but only stringently thus here though distinct in respect of sin offerings yet they combine said he to him you learn this in reference to the first clause hence it presents a difficulty to you but we learn it in reference to the second clause and it presents no difficulty to us thus of two kinds of commodities he is not culpable need this. He said and Rush Lakish answered on the authority of Bartutani after all it means of the same kind of commodity yet why is it designated two kinds of commodities because he ate them out of two terrains disagreeing with our Joshua who maintained terrains divide and we are informed this that our Joshua ruled thus both leniently and stringently now since the second clause refers to one kind of commodity and two terrains Talmud, Mosh of Bath B it follows that the first clause treats of one kind of commodity and one terrain but if it is one kind of commodity and one terrain need it be stated said are who not the circumstances here dealt with are e.g. that he was aware in between this agreeing with Rabban Gamaliel who maintained knowledge of half the standard quantity is of no consequence it was stated if one eats two olive sized pieces of hell in one state of unawareness is apprised of the first and subsequently of the second are and maintains he is liable to two sin offerings. While Rush Lakish rules he is liable to one only are Yohan and maintains he is liable for the second deducing for his sin he shall bring a sacrifice while Rush Lakish rules he is not liable for the second interpreting of his sin and he shall be forgiven but according to Rush Lakish too surely it is written for his sin he shall bring that holds good after atonement but according to our Yohan and too surely it is written of his sin and he shall be forgiven that refers to one e.g. Who ate an olive and a half of Hella was apprised concerning the size of an olive and then ate again as much as half an olive in the unawareness of the second half. Now you might say let these combine therefore it informs us otherwise. Rubin asked Arashi do they disagree where it the eating of the second piece became known to him before setting apart a sacrifice for the first and they differ in this one master holds appraisements divide whilst the other master holds only separations of sacrifices divide but if he learned of the second piece after setting apart a sacrifice for the first Rush Lakish concedes to Aryohan and that he is liable to two or perhaps they disagree where it became known to him after the act of setting apart and they differ in this one master holds separations of sacrifices divide while the other master holds only acts of atonement divide but if he learned of the second piece before setting apart a sacrifice for the first Aryohan and concedes to Rush Lakish that he is liable only to one sacrifice or perhaps they differ in both cases said he to him it is logical that they differ in both cases for should you think that they differ before the setting apart of a sacrifice whereas after setting apart Rush Lakish concedes to Aryohan and that he is liable to two sacrifices then instead of interpreting the verse as referring to after atonement let him interpret it as referring to after setting apart whilst if they differ after setting apart Whereas before separation are Yohanan agrees with Rush Lakish that he is liable only to one sacrifice instead of interpreting the verse as referring to one who ate as much as an olive and a half let him relate it to a price of the second before setting apart but perhaps that itself is in doubt and it is hypothetically stated thus if you assume that they differ before setting apart how can are Yohanan interpret the verse as referring to one who ate the quantity of an olive and a half? And if you assume that they differ after separation how can Rush Lakish interpret the verse as referring to after atonement Ullah said on the view that a certain guilt offering does not require previous knowledge Talmud, Mosh of Bath if one cohabits five times with a betrothed bond mate he is liable to one guilt offering only Arhamnan objected if so if one cohabits sets aside a sacrifice and states wait for me until I cohabit again is he then liable to only one set he to him you speak of? An act after separation of the sacrifice in such a case I did not state my ruling when Ardimi came he said on the view that a certain guilt offering requires previous knowledge if one cohabits five times with a betrothed maiden he is liable for each act said Abbe to him but in the case of a sin offering definite knowledge is required beforehand yet Aryohanan and Rush Lakish differ therein he remained silent said he to him perhaps you refer to an act after separation of the sacrifice. And as Arhamna even so he replied when Rabin came he said all agree about a betrothed bond made in one respect and Ali agree about a betrothed bond made in another respect and there is disagreement about a betrothed bond made in a third respect thus all agree in the case of coition with a betrothed bond made that one is liable only to one sacrifice as well all agree in the case of coition with a betrothed bond made that one is liable for each as Arhamna and there is disagreement. About a betrothed bond made on the view that a certain guilt offering requires previous knowledge there is disagreement between our Yohanan and Rush Lakish it was stated Talmud, Mosh of Bath B if one intended to lift up something detached but cut off something attached to the soil he is not culpable if he intended to cut something detached but cut something attached instead Robber ruled he is not culpable Abbe maintained he is culpable Robber ruled he is not culpable since he had no intention of a prohibited cutting Abbe maintained he is culpable since he had the intention of cutting in general Robber said how do I know it because it was taught in one respect the Sabbath is more stringent than other precepts in another respect other precepts are more stringent than the Sabbath the Sabbath is more stringent than other precepts in that if one performs two labors in one state of unawareness he is culpable on account of each separately this is not so in the case of other precepts. Other precepts are more stringent than the Sabbath for in their case if an injunction is unwittingly and unintentionally violated atonement must be made this is not so with respect to the Sabbath the master said the Sabbath is more stringent than other precepts in that if one performs two labors in one state of unawareness he is culpable on account of each separately this is not so in the case of other precepts how is this meant shall we say that he performed reaping and grinding then an analogous violation of other precepts would be the partaking of hellab and blood then in both cases two penalties are incurred but how is it possible in the case of other precepts that only one liability is incurred if one ate hellab twice then by analogy with respect to the Sabbath it means that he performed reaping twice then in each case only one liability is incurred after all it means that he performed reaping and grinding and what is meant by this is not so in the case of other Precepts this refers to idolatry and is in accordance with RMI who said if one sacrifice burnt incense and made libations to an idol in one state of unawareness he is only liable to one sacrifice how have you explained it as referring to idolatry then consider the second clause other precepts are more stringent than the Sabbath for in their case if an injunction is unwittingly and unintentionally violated atonement must be made this is not so with respect to the Sabbath now how is an unwitting and unintentional transgression of idolatry possible shall we say that one thought it as an idolatry trying to be a synagogue and bowed down to it then his heart was to heaven but if he saw a royal statue and bowed down to it what are the circumstances if he accepted it as a god he is a willful sinner while if he did not accept it as a god he has not committed idolatry at all hence it must mean that he worshipped it idolatrously through love or fear now this agrees with Abbas. View that a penalty is incurred but on Rabba's view that there is no culpability what can you say rather it must refer to one who thinks that it's sc idolatry is permitted then this is not so in the case of the Sabbath means that there is no liability at all yet when Rabba questioned our nominate was only whether one is liable to one sacrifice or to two but certainly not to exempt him completely Talmud, Mosh of Bath is surely then the first clause dealing with the greater severity of the Sabbath refers to idolatry whilst the second treats of other precepts and how is unwitting and unintentional transgression possible when one thought that it held up was permitted fat and aided while this is not so with respect to the Sabbath is that he is not culpable for it by analogy one intended cutting something detached but cut something attached instead he is not culpable but Abbe maintains how is an unwitting and unintentional offense meant when one thinks that it held up is Spittle and swallows it while which is not so in the case of the Sabbath where he is exempt for it by analogy one intends lifting something detached but cuts something attached to the soil he is not culpable but if he intends to c
Necessary we learned the primary labors are 40 less 1 now we question this why state the number and are Yohanan answered to teach that if one performs all of them in one state of unawareness he is liable to a sacrifice on account of each separately now as for Abbe who ruled that in such a case one is liable this is well for this is conceivable where one knows the interdict of the Sabbath and the interdicts of labors but errs in respect of the standards but according to Rabbi who maintained that one is not culpable for this how is this conceivable presumably only where he was conscious of the Sabbath but unaware of the forbidden character of his labors now that is well if he agrees with our Yohanan who ruled since he was ignorant of Karath even if he was conscious of the negative injunction he is liable then it is possible where he knew that his labors are prohibited on Sabbath by a negative injunction but if he holds with our Simeon be who maintained he must offend unwittingly in respect of both the negative injunction and karat then wherein did he know of the Sabbath he knew it by the law of boundaries this being in accordance with our Akiba mission the primary labors are forty less one bisowing plowing reaping binding sheep threshing winnowing selecting grinding sifting kneading baking shearing wool bleaching hackling dying spinning stretching the threads of making of two meshes weaving two threads dividing two threads tying knotting and untying sewing two stitches tearing in order to sew two stitches capturing a deer slaughtering or flaying or salting it curing its hide scraping it of its hair cutting it up writing two letters erasing in order to write two letters over the erasure building pulling down extinguishing kindling striking with a hammer and carrying out from one domain to another these are the forty primary labors less one Talmud Mosh of Bath Bigamaro why state the number set are Yohanan Teach that if one performs them all in one state of unawareness, he is liable on account of each separately sewing and plowing. Let us see plowing is done first, then let him attend a state plowing first, and then sewing the tanda trees of Palestine where they first sow, and then plow attend a tot sewing, pruning, planting, bending, and grafting are all one labor. What does this inform us? This that if one performs many labors of the same nature, he is liable only to one sacrifice. R. Abba said in the name of our high B. Ashi in RMI's name, he who prunes is culpable on account of planting, while he who plants bends the vine or grafts is culpable on account of sewing, on account of sewing only, but not on account of planting. Say on account of planting to Arkahana said if one prunes and needs a wood too, he is liable to two penalties, one on account of reaping, and one on account of planting. Our Joseph said he who cuts hay is liable to two penalties, one on account of Reaping and the other on account of planting a base he who trims beets in the ground is liable to two penalties one on account of reaping and one on account of planting plowing a tanda tot plowing digging and trenching are al one form of work Arshis hate said if one has a mound of earth and removes it in the house he is liable on the score of building if in the field he is liable on the score of plowing Rabba said if one has a depression and fills it up if in the house he is liable on account of building if in the field he is liable on account of plowing Rabba said if one digs a pit on the Sabbath needing only the earth thereof he is not culpable on its account and even according to our Judah who ruled one is liable on account of a labor which is not required on its own account that is only when he effects an improvement but this man causes damage reaping a tanda tot reaping vintage and gathering dates collecting olives and gathering figs are all one form of labor our papa said he who throws a clod of earth at a palm tree and dislodges dates is liable to two penalties one on account of detaching and one on account of stripping our ashi said this is not the mode of detaching nor is it the mode of stripping binding sheaves robber said he who collects salt out of a salina is liable on the score of binding sheaves abbe said binding sheaves applies only to products of the soil threshing it was taught threshing beating flax in their stocks and beating cotton are all the same form of work winnowing selecting grinding and sifting but winnowing selecting and sifting are identical abbe and robber both said whatever was performed in connection with the erection of the tabernacle talmud mosh of bath even if there are labor similar there too is counted separately then let him also enumerate pounding wheat said abbe because a poor man eats his bread without pounding robber said this agrees with rabbi who said the primary Labors are 40 less 1 but if pounding were enumerated there would be 40 then let one of these be omitted and pounding be inserted hence it is clear that it must be explained as Abbe does our rabbis taught if various kinds of food lie before one he may select and eat select and put aside but he must not select and if he does he incurs a sin offering what does this mean said Ula this is its meaning he may select to eat on the same day and he may select and put aside for the same day but he must not select for use on the morrow and if he does he incurs a sin offering Arhista demurred is it then permitted to bake for use on the same day or is it permitted to cook for the same day rather said Arhista he may select and eat less than the standard quantity and he may select and put aside less than the standard quantity but he must not select as much as the standard quantity and if he does he incurs a sin offering our Joseph demurred is it then permitted to bake less than the standard quantity rather said our Joseph he may select by hand and eat or select by hand and put aside but he may not select with a reed basket or a dish and if he does he is not culpable nevertheless it is forbidden he may not select with a seed or a basket seed and if he does he incurs a sin offering our ham not a than a reed basket and a dish mentioned rather said our ham not he may select any taking the eatable from the non-eatable and he may select and put aside taking the eatable from the non-eatable but he must not select the non-eatable out of the eatable and if he does he incurs a sin offering of a demur is it then taught the eatable from the non-eatable rather said Abbe he may select and eat immediately and he may select and put aside for immediate use but he may not select for later consumption on the same day and if he does it is regarded as though he were selecting for making a store and he incurs a sin offering the rabbis reported this to Rabbi said he to them Namani has said well if two kinds of food lie before a person and he selects and eats or selects and puts aside our ashi learned he is not culpable our Jeremiah of Dipti learned he is culpable our ashi learned he is not culpable but it was taught he is culpable there is no difficulty the one treats of a reed basket and a plate the other refers to a sieve and a basket sieve when our Dimi came he related it was our BB Sabbath and our MI and our C chance to be there he cast a basket of fruit before them and I do not know whether it was because he held that it is forbidden to pick out the eatable from the non-eatable or whether he wished to be generous Hezekiah said one who picks lupins after boiling out of their husks is culpable shall we say that Hezekiah holds that it is forbidden to select the eatable from the non-eatable no lupins are different Talmud Mosh of Bath be because they are boiled seven times and if one does not remove it the edible portion it Goes rancid hence it is like picking the non-edible out of the edible grinding our papa said he who cuts up beets very fine is liable on account of grinding our manasseh said he who cuts chips for fuel is liable on account of grinding said our ashi if he is particular about their size he is liable on account of cutting kneading and baking our papa said our tana omits the boiling of ingredients for dyes which took place in connection with the tabernacle and treats of baking our tana takes the order of making bread our son of our said he who throws a tent peg into a stove is liable on account of cooking but that is obvious you might say his intention is to strengthen harden the article therefore we are informed that it first softens and then hardens rabbi son of our huna said he who boils pitch is liable on account of cooking but that is obvious you might argue since it hardens again I might say that he is not liable hence he informs us otherwise rabbi said he who Makes an earthenware barrel is culpable on account of seven sin offerings. He who makes an oven is liable on account of eight sin offerings. Abbe said he who makes a wicker work is liable to eleven sin offerings. And if he sows round the mouth thereof, he is liable to thirteen sin offerings. Shearing wool and bleaching. Rabbi Barhana said in our Yohanan's name, he who spins wool from off the animals back on the Sabbath incurs three sin offerings. One on account of shearing, another on account of hackling, and the third on account of spinning. Our Kahana said neither shearing, hackling, nor spinning is done in this manner. But is it not so? Surely it was taught in the name of our Nehemiah. It was washed direct on the goats and spun on the goats, which proves that spinning direct from the animal is designated. Spinning superior skill is different. Our rabbis taught he who plucks the wing of a bird, trims it the feather, and plucks it the down is liable to three sin offerings. Said our Simeon. Belakish for plucking the wing one is liable on account of shearing for trimming the feather he is liable on the score of cutting and for plucking the down he is liable under the head of smoothing tying and untying where was there tying in the tabernacle said Rabba the tent pigs
Conversation with him as to Majaudism Rab and Samuel differ thereon one maintains that it is sorcery the other blasphemy it may be proved that it is Rab who maintains that it is blasphemy for Arzitra Betopia said in Rab's name he who learns a single thing from a Magian is worthy of death now should you think that it is a sorcerer surely it is written thou shalt not learn to do after the abomination of those nations implying but you may learn in order to understand and instruct this. Proves it are Simeon Bipas he said in the name of our Joshua be Levi on the authority of Barkhapur he who knows how to calculate the cycles and planetary courses but does not of him scripture saith but they regard not the work of the Lord neither have they considered the operation of his hands are Samuel be Naman he said in our Yohanan's name how do we know that it is one's duty to calculate the cycles and planetary courses because it is written for this is your wisdom and understanding in the sight of the people's what wisdom and understanding is in the sight of the people say that it is the science of cycles and planets capturing a deer etc. Our rabbis taught he who captures a purple fish and crushes it is liable to one sin offering Arjuna said he is liable to two for Arjuna maintained crushing comes under the head of threshing said they to him crushing does not come under the head of threshing Rabba observed what is the rabbis reason they hold that threshing is applicable only to produce from the soil but let him be culpable too on the score of taking life said our Yohan and this means that he crushed it when already dead Rabba said you may even explain that he crushed it whilst alive in respect to the taking of life he is but incidentally occupied but Abbe and Rabba both maintain our Simeon admits in a case of cut off his head but let him not die here it is different because he is more pleased that it should be alive so that the die should be clearer and slaughtering ITS for him. Who slaughters on what score is he culpable? Rab said on the score of dying, while Samuel said on the score of taking life. Talmud, Mosh should bath be on the score of dying, but not on the score of taking life. Say on the score of dying. Two Rab said as to the stigma of mine, I will make an observation thereon, so that later generations should not come and deride me. Wherein is one pleased with the dying, one is pleased that the throat should be stained with blood, so that people may see it and come. And by from him salting and curing it, but salting and tanning are identical. Are Yohanan and Reshlakish both said omit one of these and insert the tracing of lines. Rab son of Arhuna said he who salts meat is liable on account of tanning. Dressing Rab said curing does not apply to foodstuffs. Are Ashi observed and even Rab son of Arhuna ruled thus only when he requires it for a journey, but when he needs it for his house, one does not turn his food into wood scraping and cutting it up. Araha. Behanada said he who rubs smooth skins between columns on the Sabbath is liable on the score of scraping our high B. Abba said RMI told me three things in the name of our Joshua B. Levi. He who planes the tops of beams on the Sabbath is culpable on account of cutting. He who spreads a poultice evenly over a sore on the Sabbath is culpable on the grounds of scraping. And he who chisels around a stone on the Sabbath is liable on the score of striking with the hammer. Our Simeon B. Business said in the name of our Simeon B. He who describes a figure on a utensil and he who blows in glassware is liable on the score of striking with the hammer. Rab Judah said he who removes threads from garments on the Sabbath is liable on the score of striking with the hammer. But that is only when he objects to them writing two letters. Our rabbis taught if one writes one large letter in the place of which there is room for writing two, he is not culpable if he erases one large letter and there is room in it. Place for writing to he is culpable said Armenaham son of our Jose and this is the greater stringency of erasing over writing building pulling down extinguishing kindling and striking with a hammer Rabba and Arzera both say whatever comprises the finishing of the work imposes liability on the score of striking with a hammer these are the primary labors these is to reject our Eliezer's view who imposes liability on account of a derivative labor when performed concurrently with the primary labor. Less one this is to reject our Judah's view for it was taught our Judah adds the closing up of the web and the beating of the wolf said they to him closing up of the web is included in stretching the threads and beating the wolf is included in weaving Mishnah they also stated another general principle whatever is fit to put away and such is generally put away and one carries it out on the Sabbath he is liable to a sin offering on its account but whatever is not fit to put away and such is not. Generally put away and one carries it out on the Sabbath only he that put it away is liable tomorrow whatever is fit to put away what does this exclude our Papa said it excludes the blood of menstruation Mara Ba said it excludes the wood of an Asherah he who says the blood of menstruation certainly excludes the wood of an Asherah but he who says the wood of an Asherah the blood of menstruation however is put away for a cat but the other argues since she would sicken one would not put it away. For that purpose our Jose Bihanana said this does not agree with our Simeon for if it were as our Simeon surely he maintained all these standards were stated only in respect of those who put away and that which is not fit to put away Talmud. Mosh of Bathar Eliezer said this does not agree with our Simeon B. Eliezer for it was taught our Simeon B. Eliezer stated a general rule that which is not fit to put away and such is not generally put away yet it did become fit to a certain person and he did put. It away that another came and carried it out the latter is rendered liable through the former's intention mission he who carries out a cow's mouthful of straw a camel's mouthful of pea stalks easy a lamb's mouthful of ears of corn a goat's mouthful of herbs moist garlic or onion leaves to the size of a dried fig or a goat's mouthful of dry leaves is culpable and they do not combine with each other because they are not alike in their standards tomorrow what is easy a said rab judah the stalks of certain kinds of peas when Ardimi came he stated if one carries out a cow's mouthful of straw for a camel our Yohanan maintained he is culpable our Simeon Belikish said he is not culpable in the evening our Yohanan ruled thus but in the morning he retracted our Joseph observed he did well to retract since it is not sufficient for a camel said Abbe to him on the contrary logic supports his original view since it is sufficient for a cow but when Rabin came he said if one carries out a cow's Mouthful of straw for a camel all agree that he is culpable where do they differ if one carries out a cow's mouthful of pea stalks for a cow and the reverse was stated are Yohanan maintained he is not culpable Rush Lakish maintained he is culpable are Yohanan maintained he is not culpable eating through pressing need is not designated eating Rush Lakish maintained he is culpable eating through pressing need is designated eating a lamb's mouthful of ears of corn but it was taught as much as a dry fig both standards are identical moist garlic or onion leaves to the size of a dry fig or a goat's mouthful of dry leaves and they do not combine with each other because they are not alike in their standards are Jose B. Hanna said they do not combine for the more stringent but they do combine for the more lenient standard yet can anything combine when their standards are not alike but surely we learned a garment three hand breadth square sack four square high five square and read Matting six square are susceptible to uncleanness as Midras now it was taught there on a garment sacking a height and matting combine with each other and our Simeon observed what is the reason because they are liable to the uncleanness of sitting thus the reason is that they are liable to the uncleanness of sitting but whatever is not liable to the uncleanness of sitting is not so said Rabbi Talmud, Mosh of Bath be here too they are fit for patterns Mishnah he who carries out human foodstuffs too. The size of a dry fig is liable and they combine with each other because they are equal in their standards except their shells kernels stalks husks and coarse bran are Judah said excluding the shells of lentils because they are boiled together with them tomorrow now do not husks and coarse bran combine with the grain or flour but we learned just over five quarters of flour are liable to hell including that itself see the flour the husks and the bran said Abbe that is because of poor man. Eats his bread baked of unsifted dough. Our Judah said, excluding the shells of lentils, because they are boiled together with them only lentils, but not beans. But it was taught. Our Judah said, excluding the shells of beans and lentils, there is no difficulty. The one refers to new beans, the other to old. Why not old? One said, our body, because they look like flies in the dish. C H A P T E R V I I Mishnah. He who carries out raw wine, the standard is that it be enough for the mixing of a cup milk, as much as is quaffed at a time. Honey sufficient to place on a scab oil, as much as is required to rub in a small and water enough for rubbing calorium and all other liquids. The standard is A R E B I and always water. A R E B I. Our Simeon said, the standard for all these is A R E B I. All these measures having been stated only in respect of those who put them away. Gemara tanda taught enough for the m
Judah, for it was taught our Judah said six things were stated as being of the lenient rulings of Beth Shammai and the stricter rulings of Beth Hillel. The blood of Anibal of Beth Shammai declared it clean while Beth Hillel ruled it unclean. Said our Jose, son of our Judah, even when Beth Hillel declared it unclean, they did so only in respect of a rebuke of blood in measure since it can congeal to the size of an olive. Said Abbe, perhaps that is not so. Our Nathan states that it has a congealed piece. The size of an olive requires a rebuke of liquid only here in the case of wine which is thin, but in the case of blood which is thick, the size of an olive when congealed does not require a rebuke in liquid form. Alternatively, our Jose B. Our Judah states that for the size of an olive when congealed, a rebuke in liquid form is sufficient only there in the case of blood which is thick, but as for wine which is thin, the size of an olive represents more than a rebuke so that if one carries. Out even less than the size of an olive, he is liable milk as much as is quaffed at a time. The scholars asked as much as Jemia or Jemia are nominee. Isaac cited, Give me to drink, Hagmaini. I pray thee a little water of that pitcher. The scholars asked, Talmud, Moshe, Bath, be garden, or garden, Rabbi, Ola cited, and an abatement shall be made. We nigra from thy estimation. The scholars asked, Omimith or Omimith, or Isaac, be had by me cited. The cedars in the garden of God could not obscure him. The scholars asked, Did we learn Miamzin or Miamzin or Hibi Abba cited, and shut his eyes from looking upon evil. Our rabbis taught, When one carries out cow's milk, the standard is as much as one quaffs at a time. Woman's milk or the white of an egg, as much as is required for putting in an embrocation calorium, as much as is dissolved in water. Our Ashi asked, Does that mean as much as is required for dissolving, or as much as is required for holding and dissolving? The question stands. Over honey sufficient to place on a scar a tan taught as much as is required for putting on the opening of a scab or as she asked on a scab does that mean on the whole opening of the scab or perhaps it means on the top of the scab thus excluding sufficient for going all round this or which is not required the question stands over Rab Judah said in Rab's name of all that the Holy One blessed be he created in his world he did not create a single thing without purpose thus he created it. Snail as a remedy for a scab the fly as an antidote to the hornet s sting the mosquito crushed for a serpent s by a serpent as a remedy for an eruption and a crushed spider as a remedy for a scorpion s by a serpent as a remedy for an eruption what is the treatment one black and one white serpent are brought oil to a pulp and rubbed in our rabbis taught there are five instances of fear cast by the weak over the strong the fear of the mafia over the lion the fear of it. Mosquito upon the elephant, the fear of the spider upon the scorpion, the fear of the swallow upon the eagle, the fear of the killbith over the Leviathan. Rab Judah said in Rab's name, What verse alludes to these that strengthen at the despoiled? I.e., weak over the strong Arzara met Rab Judah standing by the door of his father in law's house and saw that he was in a cheerful mood. And if he would ask him all the secrets of the universe, he would disclose them to him. He accordingly asked him, Why do goats march at the head of the flock? And then sheep said he to him, It is as the world's creation, darkness preceding, and then light. Why are the latter covered while the former are uncovered? Those with whose material we cover ourselves are themselves covered, whilst those wherewith we do not cover ourselves are uncovered. Why is a camel's tail short because it eats thorns? Why is an ox's tail long because it grazes in meadows and must be off the nets with its tail? Why is the proboscis? Of a locust soft flexible because it dwells among willows and if it were hard non flexible it the proboscis would be dislocated and if the locust would go blind for Samuel said if one wishes to blind a locust let him extract its proboscis why is a fowl's lower eyelid bent upwards because it dwells among the raptors and if dust entered its eyes it would go blind the word dash entrance implies Derek Sham there is a way darkest ears ladder Derek gag away to the roof. Math a relish moth ethical to when will this end Betha house implies but we have come and sit there and be kept a small house be act the confined narrow house cuff an inverted vessel a low seat cough we have inverted and sit down Libni bricks live in bany unto children's children he's a prickly shrubbery hedge he's eyes a barrier husband pitcher is so called because Jose bit draws water from the river he's a small jug because I like the shoddy the myrtle branch. She taught the folly meshik la wash basin mashik la washing everybody mishkil the wash basin mashik la the washing brides a sith a mortar hasir thomasin kukana club used as a pestle bow we cannot come and I will strike it love ushal pergarment love ushal no shame jelamak cloak is so called because one looks in it like a shapeless mask olem vileta along willing cloak implies call with it roll it up and sit down kuri bed is so called because it leads to procreation parent we are being brzinka leaping well bores a naki this well is empty sutra turban sad adonai liria the secret of the lord is revealed to those that fear him apad no palace if it hot in at the door is judgment our rabbis taught three wax stronger as they grow older is a fish a serpent and a swine oil as much as is required to rub in a small limb the school of our jane said oil as much as is required to rub in a small limb of an infant one day old an objection is Raise oil as much as is required to rub in a small limb and a limb of a day old infant. Surely this means a small limb of an adult and a large limb of a day old infant. The school of Arjani can reply no, this is its meaning. Oil as much as is required to rub in a small limb of a day old infant. Shall we say that this is dependent on tanning oil as much as is required to rub in a small limb and a limb of a day old infant? This is the view of Arsimian B. Eliezer. Our Nathan said as much as is required to rub in a small limb. Now surely they differ in this Arsimian B. Eliezer holding a small limb of an infant while our Nathan holds a small limb of an adult or a large limb of an infant, but a small limb of a day old infant does not impose liability. No, all agree that the small limb of a day old infant is not sufficient. Talmud, Moshe Bath Arjani's dictum being incorrect, but here they differ in this Arsimian B. Eliezer holds an adult small limb and a day old infant's large limb. Are identical in size while our Nathan holds only an adult small limb creates culpability but not the large limb of a day old infant. What is our decision thereon? Come and here for it was taught. Our Simeon B. Eliezer said oil as much as is required to rub in a small limb of a day old infant water enough for rubbing calorium. Abbe said consider whatever has a common use and an uncommon use. The rabbis followed the common use even in the direction of leniency where it has two common uses. The rabbis followed the common use which leads to stringency. Thus in the case of wine the drinking thereof is common whilst its employment as a remedy is uncommon. Hence the rabbis followed its drinking use in the direction of leniency. In the case of milk the drinking thereof is common whilst its employment as a remedy is uncommon. Hence the rabbis followed its drinking use in the direction of leniency. As for honey both the eating thereof and its use as a remedy are common. So the rabbis. Followed its use as a remedy in the direction of stringency, but in the case of water, consider its drinking is common, whereas its use for healing is uncommon. Why then did the rabbis follow its use for healing in the direction of stringency? Said Abbe, they learned this with reference to Galilee. Rabbi said, you may even say that this refers to other places, thus agreeing with Samuel. For Samuel said, all liquids heal sickness, but dim the eyesight, save water which heals without dimming at all. Other liquids, A R E B I, if our rabbis taught us for blood and all other kinds of liquids, the standard is a rebuke. Our Simeon B. Eliezer said, blood as much as is required for painting one eye, because a cataract of the eye is painted with blood, and which blood is that the blood of a wild fowl? Our Simeon B. Gamaliel said, blood as much as is required for painting one eye, because a white spot in the eye is painted with blood, and with what is that with the blood of bats and your token is within. For within without for without now this applies only to him who carries it out but if one puts it away no matter how little he is liable our Simeon said this applies only to one who puts it away but he who carries it out is culpable only when there is a rebuke and the sages agree with our Simeon that if one carries out waste water into the street the standard thereof is a rebuke the master said now this applies only to him who carries it out but if one puts it away no matter how little he is liable and he who puts it away does he not carry it out said Abbe the reference here is to an apprentice to whom his master said go and clear me a place for a meal now if he goes and clears out into the street something that is valued by all he is guilty on its account something that is not valued by all if his master had put it away he is guilty on its account if not he is not gu
Cord to let one be culpable on account of as much as is required to make a hanger for a seat or a basket. CF since it chafes the utensil, people do not make it. Thus, our rabbis taught as for palm leaves, the standard is as much as is required for making a handle for a basket. An Egyptian basket as for bast. Others say as much as is required for putting on the opening of a small funnel for straining wine fat. As much as is required for greasing under a small cake. And what size is that is large? As a cellar, but it was taught as large as a dry fig. Both are the same standard. Soft racks as much as is required for making a small ball. Anti, what size is that is large as a nut paper? Large enough to write a tax collector's receipt on it. It was taught how much is a tax collector's receipt? Two letters. But the following contradicts this. If one carries out smooth blank paper, if large enough for writing two letters, thereon he is culpable. If not, he is not culpable. Said our she's hate what is. Meant by two letters, two letters of a tax collector's receipt. Rabbi said it means two letters of ours together with a margin for holding, which is the equivalent of a tax collector's receipt. An objection is raised if one carries out a raised paper or a receipt note if its blank portion is large enough for two letters to be written thereon, or if the hole is sufficient for wrapping around the mouth of a small file of spikenard oil, he is culpable. But if not, he is not culpable. As for our she's hate, who explained what is meant by two letters, two letters of a tax collector's receipt, it is well. But according to Rabbi, who said that it means two letters of ours together with a margin for holding, which is the equivalent of a tax collector's receipt, surely here no margin for holding is required. This is a difficulty. Our rabbis taught if one carries out a tax collector's receipt before having shown it to the collector, he is culpable. After having shown it to the collector, he is not culpable. Arjuna. Said even after showing it to the collector, he is culpable because he still needs it. Wherein do they differ? Abbe said they differ in respect to collectors. Runners Rabbah said they differ in respect to the higher and the lesser collectors. Arashi said they even differ in respect of one tax collector because he needs it. The document for showing to the second so that he can say to him, See, I am a man exempted by the collector. Our rabbis taught if one carries out a note of debt if before it has been settled, he is culpable. If after it has been settled, he is not culpable. Arjuna said even after settlement, he is culpable because he needs it. Wherein do they differ? Our Joseph said they differ as to whether it is forbidden to keep a settled note. The rabbis maintain it is forbidden to keep a settled note. While Arjuna holds one may keep a settled note. Abbe said all hold that a settled note may not be kept, but here they differ as to whether a note requires confirmation even when he did. Debtor admits that it was validly written. The first tana holds even when the debtor admits that a note was validly written. It must be confirmed. Arjuta holds when the debtor admits that a note was validly written. It need not be confirmed. And what is the meaning of it before it has been settled? And if after it has been settled, Talmud, Mashabbat, if the debtor pleads that it has been settled or not settled, respectively, Rabbi said all agree that even when the debtor admits that a note was validly written, it must still be confirmed. But here they differ as to whether we write acquittance. The first tana holds we write acquittance while Arjuta holds acquittance is not written. Arashi said Arjuta's reason is because he the debtor needs it to show to a second creditor as he can say to him, See, I am a man who repays skin for making an amulet. Rabbi asked Arnaman if one carries out skin, what is the standard to involve a penalty? Even as we learned, he replied skin. For making an amulet, if one dresses it, what is the standard? There is no difference. He replied, When it needs dressing, what is the standard? There is no difference. Replied he, And whence do you say thus? As we learned, if one bleaches wool, hatchels, dies, or spins it, the standard is a full double span. And if one weaves two threads together, the standard is a full span. This shows that since it stands to be spun, the standard is as though it were spun. So here too, since it, the skin stands to be dressed, its standard is as though it were already dressed. And if it is not to be dressed at all, what is the standard? There is no difference, said he to him. But is there no difference between dressed and undressed? Hi, he raised an objection to him. If one carries out dissolved dyes, the standard is as much as is required for dyeing a sample of wool, whereas of them dissolved dyes we learned in the case of nutshells, pomegranate shells, wood, and matter, the standard is as much as is required. For dyeing the small piece of cloth at the opening top of a net, where surely it was stated thereon, Arnaman observed in Rabbi Abba's name that is because one does not trouble to steep dyes merely for dyeing a sample of wool. Yet one of the seeds of a vegetable garden whereof before they are sown, we learned if one carries out garden seeds, the standard is less than the size of a dry fig. Arjuta be but there are rule five. Yet after they are sown, we learned as for manure or thin sand. Standard is as much as is required for fertilizing a cabbage stalk. This is our Akiba's view, but the sages maintain for fertilizing one leaf plant. Surely it was stated thereon. Our Papa said in the one case it refers to where it is sown, in the other where it is not sown, because one does not trouble to carry out a single seed for sowing. Yet what of clay whereof before it is needed, it was taught the sages agree with our Simeon that if one carries out waste water into the street, the standard is a. Rebuth and we debated thereon for what is waste water fit and our Jeremiah said for kneading clay therewith and yet after it is mixed it was taught as for clay the standard is as much as is required for making a hole of a smelting pot there too it is as we stated because no man troubles to knead clay only for making a hole of a smelting pot come and here for our high BM I said on Allah's authority there are three kinds of high mazahipa and dipter mazahis as its name implies neither salted nor treated with flour or gallnut and what is its standard our Samuel B. Rab Judah recited as much as is required for wrapping a small weight therein and how much is that said of a quarter of a pumatai and quarter hippa is a skin that is salted but not treated with flour and gallnut and what is its standard even as we learned skin as much as is required for making an amulet dipter is skin that has been dressed with salt and flour but not treated with gallnut and what is its Standard as much as is required for writing a divorce now incidentally it is stated as much as is required for wrapping a weight therein which have a explained as meaning a quarter of a pumatai and quarter there it treats of a steaming hide but we learned a garment three hand breadth square is susceptible to madras sacking four square hide five square and read matting six square are susceptible to the uncleanness of both madras and the dead now it was taught thereon as for a garment. Sacking and hide as their standard is for uncleanness so it is for carrying out that refers to a leather spread Talmud, Mosh of Bath B parchment as much as is required for writing the shortest passage etc. But the following contradicts this parchment Kalaf and Tuxistos as much as is required for the writing of a mezuzah what is meant by mezuzah a parchment slip of the tefillin are then tefillin designated mezuzah yes and it was taught likewise tefillin straps went together with it. Tefillin defile the hands when apart they do not defile the hands. Our Simeon B. Judah said on the authority of Our Simeon, he who touches the strap is clean unless he touches the capsule of the Tefillin. Our Zakai said in his name he is clean unless he touches the mezuzah itself. But since the second clause teaches parchment as much as is required for writing the shortest passage of the Tefillin, which is here, O Israel, it follows that the first clause refers to the mezuzah itself. This is its meaning. Parchment and Tuxistos, what are their standards? Tuxistos, as much as is required for writing a mezuzah parchment for writing the shortest passage of the Tefillin, which is here, O Israel, Rab said Tuxistos is as parchment just as Tefillin may be written upon parchment, so may they be written upon Tuxistos. We learn parchment for writing there on the shortest passage of the Tefillin, which is here, O Israel, thus only parchment but not Tuxistos, that is for the most preferable observance of it. Precept come and here it is a halacha of Moses from Sinai that Tefillin should be written upon parchment and a mezuzah upon Tuxistos parchment is the skin on the side of the flesh and Tuxistos is that on the side of the hair that is for the most preferable observance of the precept but it was taught if one does otherwise it is unfit that refers to the mezuzah but it was taught if one does otherwise in either it is unfit both refer to mezuzah one meaning that he wrote it on parchment kalaf facing the hair the other on Tuxistos facing the flesh an alternative answer is the ruling if one does otherwise in either it is unfit is dependent on tanaim for it was taught if one does otherwise it is unfit our Aha declares it fit on the authority of our Ahi Bihan and other state on the authority of our Jacob B. Arhan and our Papa said Rab's ruling is as the teaching of the school of Manasseh for the school of Manasseh taught if one writes it on paper or on a cloth
Writing two letters and writes them whilst walking he is culpable the writing is tantamount to depositing Rabbah also said if one carries out ink sufficient for writing one letter only and writes it down and then again carries out sufficient for one letter and writes it down he is not culpable what is the reason by the time he carries out the second the standard of the first is defective Rabbah also said if one carries out half a dry fig and deposits it and then carries out another half of a dry fig and deposits it the first is regarded as though caught by a dog or burnt and he is not culpable but why so surely it is lying there he means this but if one anticipates and takes up the first before the depositing of the second the first is regarded as though caught up by a dog or burnt and he is not culpable Rabbah also said if one carries out half of a dry fig and deposits it and then carries out another half of a dry fig over the same route as the first he is liable but why Surely it does not rest in the street e.g. if he carries it within three handbreadths but Rabbah said an article brought within three handbreadths must according to the rabbis be deposited upon something of small size at least there is no difficulty the latter references to throwing the former is to carrying our rabbis taught if one carries out half a dry fig and then carries out another half of a dry fig in one state of unawareness he is culpable in two states of unawareness he is not culpable our Jose said in one state of unawareness and into the same ground he is culpable into two different grounds he is not culpable Rabbah said providing that there lies between them a domain involving liability to a sin offering but a Carmelith does not affect a separation Abbe said even a Carmelith separates them but not a board but Rabbah maintained even a board separates them now Rabbah is consistent with his ruling elsewhere for Rabbah said the law of domains in respect to the Sabbath is the same as domains in respect to divorces. Stibium for painting one eye, but one eye alone is not painted. Said Arhuna, because modest women paint only one eye. An objection is raised as for stibium if carried out for medicinal use. The standard is as much as is required for painting one eye. If for adornment, the standard is two eyes. Hillel, son of our Samuel B. Namani, explained that that was taught in reference to small towners paste for putting on the top of a lime board. A tanda taught as much as is required for putting on the top of a lime board of a hunter's rod wax for putting over a small hole. It was taught as much as is required for putting over a small wine hole clay for making a hole in a gold refiner's pot, etc. Shall we say that our Judah standard is larger? But we know the rabbi's standard to be larger. For we learned our Judah said as much as is required for taking the measure of a child's shoe. Say as much as is required for plastering the splits in it. Tripod leg of a small stove Talmud, Mosh of Bath B or Rabbis taught if one carries out here the standard is as much as is required for the kneading of clay if one carries out clay the standard is for making a hole in a gold refiner's pot lime to smear the smallest of girls a tanda taught as much as is required to smear the little finger of girls Rab Judah said in Rab's name when maidens of Israel attain puberty before the proper age poor maidens plaster it the unwanted hair with lime. Rich maidens plaster it with fine flour whilst royal princesses plaster it with oil of myrrh as it is said six months with oil of myrrh what is oil of myrrh Arhuna Bihai said Sakath or Jeremiah B Abba said oil of olives less than a third grown it was taught our Judah said and Pachanon is oil of olives less than a third grown and why does one anoint herself therewith because it removes the hair and smooths the skin Rabbi had a daughter he treated her limb by limb with a depilatory and took 400 Zeus for her now a certain heathen lived in the vicinity he too had a daughter and he plastered her whole body all at once whereupon she died rbb has killed my daughter he exclaimed our observed as for rbb who drank strong liquor his daughter required pasting over but as for us who do not drink strong liquor our daughters do not require such treatment our judah said enough to plaster a kilkel what is kilkel and what is and said the upper temple and the lower temple shall we say that our judah standard is larger but we know the standard of the rabbis to be larger it is smaller than the rabbis but larger than our nehemiah's an objection is raised rabbi said i approve our judah's view in respect of loosely dissolved lime and our nehemiah's view in respect of chalky lime but if you maintain that they mean the upper temple and the lower temple surely both require loose lime rather said our isaac the school of rmi recited and in the mission arcana the murder does one destroy break up his wealth rather said Arkahana it means the teeth like marks of a vessel even as we learned the hand measure had teeth like marks to indicate so far must it be filled with wine for a bullock so far for a ram so far for a sheep alternatively what is Antifa the lock on the forehead even as a certain Galilean chanced to visit Babylon and was requested to lecture on the chariot passage said he to them I will lecture to you as our Nehemiah lectured to his companions thereupon a wasp came out of the wall and stung him on the end of it and he died said that this befell him through his own fault mission if one carries out earth a kind of clay the standard is as much as is required for a seal on packing bags this is our Akiva's view but the sages say as much as is required for the seal on letters for manure or thin sand the standard is as much as is required for fertilizing a cabbage stalk this is our Akiva's view but the sages Maintain for fertilizing one leek plant thick sand as much as is required for putting on a full plaster trowel a reed as much as is required for making a pen but if it is thick or crushed the standard is as much as is required for boiling the lightest of eggs beaten up and placed in a stew pot tomorrow on a full plaster trowel a tanda taught as much as is required for putting on the top of a plasterer's trowel which tanda holds that sand improves plaster said arhis our judah for it was taught one must not plaster his house with lime unless he mixed it with straw or sand our judah said straw is permitted but sand is forbidden because it becomes cement rabbi said you may say that it agrees even the rabbis the spoiling thereof makes it fit a reed as much as is required for making a pen it was taught a pen which reaches one's finger joints are ashy ask the upper joint or the lower the question stands over but if it is thick etc a tanda taught eaten up with oil and placed in a stew pot mar. Son of Robin said to his son, Have you heard what a light egg is? He replied, An egg of a turtle dove. What is the reason? Because it is small. Then say the egg of a zipparta. He was silent. Have you then heard anything on this? He asked him, Said he to him, Thus did our sheets hate say it is a fowl's egg. And why is it called a light egg? The sages estimated you have no egg quicker lighter to boil than a fowl's egg. And wherefore he asked, Are all the food dash standards of the Sabbath the size of a dry fig? Whereas here it is an egg, said he to him, Thus did our nomin say it means as much as is required to boil the size of a dry fig of a light egg. Talmud, Mosh of Bath, Amisha, if one carries out bone, the standard is as much as is required for making a spoon. Our Judah maintained for making thereof a half glass large enough for scraping the top of the whirl of a spindle, a chip or a stone large enough to throw at a bird. Our Eliezer B. Jacob said, Large enough to throw at an animal tomorrow, shall we? Say that our Judah standard is larger, but we know the standard of the rabbis to be larger. Said it means the words of a lock. Our rabbis taught the words of a lock are clean, but when one fits them into the lock, they are liable to become unclean. But if it the lock is of a revolving door, even when it is fixed on the door and nailed on with nails, they the words are clean because whatever is joined to the soil is as the soil glass large enough for scraping, etc. A tanda taught glass large enough to break across two threads simultaneously, a chip or a stone large enough to throw at a bird. Our Eliezer, etc. Our Jacob said in our Yohanan's name, providing that it can feel it and what size is that it was taught. Our Eliezer, B. Jacob said, ten zoos in weight zone and entered the Beth Hamidrash and said to them, the students, my masters, what is the standard of the stones of a privy? Said they to him, one the size of an olive, a second the size of a nut, and a third the size of an egg shell. One take them in a gold balance he objected thereupon they voted and decided a handful it was taught our Jose said one the size of an olive another the size of a nut and a third the size of an egg our Simeon B. Jose said on his father's authority a handful our rabbis taught one may carry three smoothly rounded stones into a privy and what is their size our Meir said as large as a nut our Judah maintained as large as an egg Raphram B. Pop observed in Arhista's name even as they differ here. So do they differ in respect to an etric but there it is a mission whereas here it is only a very the rather say just as they differ in respect to an etric so do they differ here Rab Judah said but not brittle stone pie is what is pie said our Zara Babylonian pebbles Rabbah said one may not use a chip on the Sabbath as a suppository in the same way as one uses it on weekdays Mars Itra
Maintain he may take only from an animal's trough how compare there one appoints a place for his meal but here does one appoint a place for a privy Arhuna said one may not obey the call of nature on a plot field on the Sabbath what is the reason shall we say because of treading down and the same holds good even on weekdays again if it is on account of the grass is surely Resh Lakish said one may cleanse himself with a pebble whereon grass has sprouted but if one detaches the grass Thereup on the Sabbath he incurs a sin offering rather the reason is lest he take a clot from an upper level and throw it below and he is then liable on account of Rabbah's dictum for Rabbah said if one has a depression and fills it up if in the house he is culpable on account of building if in the field he is culpable on account of plowing to revert to the main text Resh Lakish said one may cleanse himself with a pebble whereon grass has sprouted but if one detaches the grass Thereup on the Sabbath he incurs a sin offering our Pappy said from Resh Lakish you may infer that one may take up the Parpaza Arkahana demurred if they said that it is permitted in case of need shall they say thus where there is no need Abbe said as for Parpaza since it has come to hand we will state something about it if it is lying on the ground and one places it upon picks he is culpable on the score of detaching if it is lying on picks and one places it on the ground he is liable on it. Score of planting our Yohan and said one must not cleanse oneself with a shard on the Sabbath what is the reason shall we say on account of danger then on weekdays to let it be forbidden again if it is on account of witchcraft it may not be done even on weekdays to again if it is on account of the tearing out of hair but surely that is unintentional said our Nathan be Ashai to them since a great man has stated this dictum let us give a reason for it thus it is unnecessary to state that. It is forbidden on weekdays but on the Sabbath since it bears the rank of a utensil I might think that it is permitted therefore he informs us otherwise Robert recited it on account of the tearing out of hair and found Aryohanan to be self-contradictory thus did then Aryohanan say one must not cleanse oneself with a shard on the Sabbath which shows that what is unintentional is forbidden surely Aryohanan said the halachah is as every anonymous mission and we learned a Nazi right may cleanse his hair and part it but he must not comb it but it is clear that it is as our Nathan B. Ashai what is the reference to witchcraft Arhista and Rabbi son of Arhuna were traveling in a boat when a certain non-Jewish matron said to them seat me near you but they did not seat her thereupon she uttered something a charm and bound the boat they uttered something and freed it said she to them what shall I do to you Talmud, Moshe Batha seeing that you do not cleanse yourselves with a shard. Nor kill vermin on your garments and you do not pull out any vegetable from a bunch which the gardener has tied together. Arhuna said to his son Rabbi, Why are you not to be found before Arhista whose dikta are so keen? What should I go to him for answered he seeing that when I go to him he treats me to secular discourses thus he tells me when one enters a privy he must not sit down abruptly nor force himself over much because the rectum rests on three teeth like glands and these teeth. Like glands of the rectum might become dislocated and he his health is endangered he treats of health matters he exclaimed and you call them secular discourses all the more reason for going to him if a pebble and a shard lie before one Arhuna said he must cleanse himself with the pebble but not with the shard but Arhista ruled he must cleanse himself with the shard and not with the pebble an objection is raised if a pebble and a shard lie before one he must cleanse himself with the shard not. With the pebble this refutes Arhuna Rafram B. Papa interpreted it before Arhista on Arhuna's view as referring to the rims of utensils if a pebble and grass lie before one Arhista and Arham on a differ therein one maintains he must cleanse himself with the pebble but not with the grass whilst the other rule he must cleanse himself with the grass not with the pebble an objection is raised if one cleanses himself with INF lamable material his lower teeth will be torn away there is no difficulty the one refers to wet grass the other to dry grass if one has a call of nature but does not obey it Arhista and Rabbin one said he has an attack of offensive odor the other said he is infected by an offensive smell it was taught in accordance with the view that he is infected by an offensive smell for it was taught one who has a call of nature yet eats his light oven which is heated up on top of its ashes and that is the beginning of perspiration odor if one has a call of Nature but cannot obey it. Arhista said he should repeatedly stand up and sit down. Arhanan of Nihardia said let him move to different sides. Arhamana said let him work about that place with the pebble while the rabbis advise let him not think said Araha son of Rabbi to Arashi if he does not think of it he is all the more likely not to be moved let him not think of other things replied here Jeremiah of Dipti observed by myself saw a certain Arab repeatedly arise and sit down until he poured. Forth like a cruise our rabbis taught if one enters a house to partake of a complete meal he should first walk ten four cubit lengths others say four ten cubit lengths be moved then enter and take a seat mission if one carries out a shard the standard is as much as is needed for placing between one board and another this is our Judas view our mayor said large enough to scrape out the fire there with our Jose said large enough to contain Arebi our mayor observed though there is no proof. Of the matter yet there is a hint so that there shall not be found among the pieces thereof a shard to take fire from the heart said our Jose to him hence his proof of my view is or to take water with all out of the cistern tomorrow the scholars asked is our Meir's standard greater or our Jose's standard greater logically our Jose's standard is greater whereas the verse quoted indicates that our Meir's standard is greater for should you think that our Jose's standard is greater does he the prophet first curse in respect to a small vessel and then curse in respect to a large one said Abay our Mishnah two means to scrape out a fire from a large heart said our Jose to him hence his proof but our Jose says well to our Meir our Meir maintains that he proceeds to a climax not only will nothing that is of value to people be found therein but even that which is of no value to people shall not be found therein chapterix Mishnah our Akiba said once do we know that an idol defile but Carriage like an idol because it is said thou shalt cast the mess see the idols away as a menstruous thing thou shalt say unto it get thee hence just as an idol defiled by carriage so does an idol defiled by carriage tomorrow we learned elsewhere if one's house he joins an idol and it collapses he must not rebuild it what shall he do he must retrieve four cubits within his own ground and rebuild Talmud, Mosh of Bath B if it belongs to him and to the idol it is judged as half and half the stones. Timber and earth thereof defile like a dead creeping thing sure as for it is said thou shalt treat a creeping thing our Akiba said they defile like an idol because it is said thou shalt cast them away his rem as a menstruous thing just as an idol defiled by carriage so does an idol defiled by carriage Rab observed his rem mentioned in the verse means thou shalt alienate them from thee as our stranger thou shalt say unto it get thee hence but thou shalt not say unto it enter hither. Rabbi also observed as for carriage all agree that it defiles thereby since it is assimilated to Nineveh differ in respect to a stone that closes a cavity our Akiba holds it is like Nineveh just as Nineveh defile through a cavity closing stone so does an idol defile through a cavity closing stone while the rabbis maintain it is like a creeping thing sure is just as a sure is does not defile through a cavity closing stone so does an idol not defile through a cavity closing stone now. According to our Akiba in respect of which law is it likened to a sure is in respect of its service utensils and according to the rabbis in respect of which law is it likened to Nineveh in respect of carriage then let it be likened to Nineveh that indeed is so but the analogy with Nineveh teaches just as Nineveh is not a source of contamination through her separate limbs so is an idol not a source of contamination through its limbs then when our Hamabigiria asked does the law of an idol. Operate in respect of its limbs or not solve it for him from this that according to the rabbis it does not operate in respect of its limbs our Hamabigiri asked it on our Akiba's view but our Eliezer maintained in respect of a cavity closing stone all agree that it does not defile thereby since it is likened to a sure as they differ only in respect of carriage our Akiba holds it is like an just as an it defile through carriage so does an idol defile through carriage while the rabbis argue it is like a sure as just as a sure as does not defile through carriage so does an idol not defile through carriage now according to our Akiba in respect of what law is it likened to a sure as in respect of its service utensils and according to the rabbis in respect of what law is it likened to an it just as an it is not a source of contamination through her separate limbs so is an idol not a source of contamination through its limbs Talmud, Mosh of now according to our Akiba in Respect of what law is it likened to Nida only in
Woman to thee, but not their motion as say surely it was taught speak unto the children of Israel when any man hath an issue out of his flesh, etc. The children of Israel defile through Gonorrhoe, but heathens do not defile through Gonorrhoe, but they the rabbis decree concerning them that they rank as Zabin in all respects, but Rab answers the difficulty according to his view, thus a heathen man or woman they themselves their motion has say and their cavity closing stone all. Defile an idol it and its motion has say, but not its cavity closing stone. Our Akiba maintains an idol it has say and its cavity closing stone defile whilst our LA's are interpreted in accordance with his view, a heathen man or woman they themselves their motion has say and their cavity closing stone defile an idol it, but not its motion has say whilst our Akiba maintains an idol it and its motion defile are ashi objected thereto. If so, what is the meaning of they themselves rather said? Are ashi, this is the meaning in the case of a heathen man or woman, whether they move others or others move them, these others are unclean. If idol moves others, they are clean. If others move it, they are unclean as for its service utensils, whether they move others or others move them, these others are clean. Our Akiba maintained in the case of a heathen man or woman and an idol, whether they move others or others move them, these others are unclean as for its service utensils, whether they move. Others or others move them, they are clean in the case of an idol as for others moving it, that is well for it is possible, but how is it conceivable for it to move others? Said Rami son of Aryeva, even as we learned, if a zab is on one pan of the scales and foodstuffs or drinks are in the other pan and the zab outweighs them, they are unclean. Talmud, Mosh of Bath B, if they outweigh him, they are clean with whom does that which was taught agree as for all unclean things which move. Others, they the things moved are clean, save in the case of moving by a zab for which no analogy is found in the whole Torah. Shall we say that this is not according to our Akiva, for if according to our Akiva there is an idol to you, may even say that it agrees with our Akiva, he states zab and all that is like there to our Habibi asks, does the law of an idol operate in respect to its limbs or not now where an unskilled person can replace it, the limb and the idol, there is no question for it. Is as though already joined thereto when does the question arise if an unskilled person cannot replace it what then since an unskilled person cannot replace it it is as broken or perhaps it is actually not defective some there are who put the question in the reverse direction where an unskilled person cannot replace it there is no question for it is as broken when does the question is if an unskilled person can replace it what then since an unskilled person can replace it it is as though already joined thereto or perhaps now it is nevertheless disjoined and loose separate the question stands over our head by bm i ask what of an idol less than an olive in size are joseph demur to this in respect of what does he ask shall we say in respect of the interdict let it be no more than the flies eve of a bale for it was taught and they made bale beareth their god this refers to the fly god of bale it teaches that everyone made a likeness of his idol and Put it in his bag whenever he thought of it, he took it out of his bag and embraced and kissed it. But the question is in respect of uncleanness, what is the law since it is assimilated to sure and just as sure is defiled by the size of a lentil, so an idol to defile by the size of a lentil, or perhaps it is also likened to a corpse just as a corpse defiled by the size of an olive, so does an idol defile by the size of an olive set are we other state rabbi will come and here. For it was taught an idol less than an olive in size has no uncleanness at all for it is said, and he cast the powder thereof as sea of the idol upon the graves of the children of the people, just as a corpse defiled by the size of an olive, so does an idol defile by the size of an olive. Now according to the rabbis in respect of what law is it an idol likened to sure is that it does not defile by carriage to another that it is not a source of contamination through its separate limbs and to a corpse that it does not defile by the size of a lentil, why interpret it rather stringently in respect of what law does the divine law liken it to assure is that it defiles by the size of a lentil to another that it defiles through a cavity closing stone while the divine law assimilates it to a corpse teaching that it defiles under the law of covering the uncleanness of an idol is only by rabbinical law consequently where there are lenient and stringent analogies we draw a lenient analogy but do not draw a stringent analogy Mishnah how do we know that a ship is clean because it is said the way of a ship in the midst of the sea Gamar and now it is obvious that a ship is in the midst of the sea but we are informed this just as the sea is clean so is a ship clean it was taught Hannah and I said we learned it from a sack just as a sack can be carried both full and empty so must everything which is to be susceptible to defilement be possible to be carried both full and empty. Thus excluding a ship seeing that it cannot be carried full and empty wherein do they differ they differ in respect to an earthen ship he who quotes a ship in the midst of the sea holds that this too is in the midst of the sea but as for him who maintains that it must be like a sack only those vessels that are mentioned in conjunction with a sack if they can be carried full and empty are susceptible to uncleanness if not they are not susceptible but an earthen ship even if it cannot be carried full and empty is still susceptible to defilement alternatively they differ in respect to a boat of the Jordan he who quotes a ship in the midst of the sea holds that this too is a ship in the midst of the sea but as for him who requires that it be carried full and empty this too is carried full and empty for our Hanabi Akiva said why was it ruled that a Jordan boat is unclean because it is loaded on dry land and then lowered into the water Rab Judah said in Rab's name one should never abstain from attendance at the Beth Hamidrash even for a single hour for lo how many years was this mission learned in the Beth Hamidrash without its reason being revealed until our Hanabi Akiva came and elucidated it or Jonathan said one should never abstain from the Beth Hamidrash and from Torah even in the hour of death for it is said this is the Torah when a man dieth in a tent even in the hour of death one should be engaged in the study of the Torah Resh Lakish said that words of the Torah can endure only with him who sacrifices himself for it as it is said this is the Torah when a man dieth in a tent Rabbah said Talmud, Mosh of Bath and now according to Hanani carrying by means of oxen is regarded as carrying for we learned there are three wagons that which is built like a calf is liable to uncleanness as Midras that which is like a bed is liable to uncleanness through the defilement caused by a corpse that of stones is completely clean now are you Observe thereon, but if it has a receptacle for pomegranates, it is liable to uncleanness through the defilement of a corpse. There are three chests, a chest with an opening at the side is liable to uncleanness, as madras at the top is liable to uncleanness through the defilement of a corpse, but an extremely large one is completely clean. Our rabbis taught the madras of an earthen vessel is clean. Our Jose said a ship too. What does he mean? Said Arzi, but he means this the madras of an earthen vessel is clean, but contact there with renders it unclean while an earthen ship is unclean in accordance with Hanani. Our Jose ruled an earthen ship too is clean in agreement with our Tana. Our Papa demurred. If so, why say a ship too? Rather said our Papa, this is its meaning the madras of an earthen vessel is clean whilst contact there with defiles it, but in the case of a vessel of wood, both its madras and its touch are unclean while a boat of the Jordan is clean in agreement with our Tana. Our Jose said a Ship 2 is unclean in accordance with Hanani. Now, how do we know that the madras of an earthen vessel is clean? Said Hezekiah, because scripture saith, and whosoever touches his bed, this assimilates his bed to himself. The Zab, just as he can be cleansed in Amiquay, so can his bed be cleansed in Amiquay. The school of our Ishmael taught it shall be unto her as a bed of her impurity. No, this assimilates her bed to herself, just as she can be cleansed in Amiquay, so can her bed be cleansed in Amiquay. Thus, excluding earthen vessels which cannot be cleansed in Amiquay, are raised an objection. How do we know that a reed mat is susceptible to defilement through the dead Talmud? Mosh of Bath be this follows a fortiori. If small earthen pitchers which cannot be defiled by Zab can be defiled through the dead, then a mat which is defiled by Zab is surely defiled through the dead. But why so it may be asked, seeing that it cannot be cleansed in Amiquay, said our Hanani to him. There it is different since some of its kind of the same material are capable of being cleansed in Amiqua. The All-Merciful save us from this view. He exclaimed on the contrary. He retorted the All-Merciful save us from your view. And what is the reason? Two verses are written. I and whosoever touches his bed and to every bed whereon he that hath the issue shall be unclean. How are these to be reconciled if something of its kind can be cleansed in Amiqua even if that itself cannot be cleansed in Amiqua? It is susceptible to Madras but if nothing of its kind can be cleans
Landmarks did they hold said are Samuel bin Amani said in Aryuhanan's name even as it is written these are the sons of Seir the Horite the inhabitants of the earth are then the whole world inhabitants of heaven but it means that they were thoroughly versed in the cultivation of the earth for they used to say this complete measuring rod of land is fit for olives this complete measuring rod is fit for vines this complete measuring rod for figs and Horite Hori implies that they smelled merit in the earth and Hibite we said our Papa it teaches that they tasted the earth like a serpent Hui are Ahabi Jacob said Horite Hori implies that they become free Horan from the cares of their property RC said the internal area of the seedbed must be six handbreadths square apart from its borders it was taught likewise the internal area of the seedbed must be six handbreadths square how much must its borders be as we learned our Judah said its breadth must be the full breadth of the sole of the foot are zero others say our Hanabi Papa said what is our Judah's reason because it is written and watered it with thy foot just as the sole of the foot is a handbreadth so must the border too be a handbreadth Rab said we learned of a seedbed in a waste plot but there is a corner space the school of Rab answered in Rab's name it refers to one who fills up the corners yet let one sell on the outside and not fill up the inside Talmud, Mosh of Bath is a preventive measure lest he fill up the corners yet let it not be other than a triangular plot of vegetables did we not learn if a triangular plot of vegetables enters another field this is permitted because it is evidently the end of a field the permissibility of a triangular plot does not apply to a seedbed but Samuel maintained we learned of a seedbed in the midst of other seedbeds but they intermingle he inclines one strip in one direction and one strip in another direction Said they ask in the West Palestine what if a person draws one furrow across the whole Arshis hate maintained the intermingling comes and annuls the strips RC said the intermingling does not annul the strips Rubin raised an objection to Arashi if one plants two rows of cucumbers two rows of gourds and two rows of Egyptian beans they are permitted one row of cucumbers one row of gourds and one of Egyptian beans they are forbidden here it is different because there is entanglement R. Kahana said in Aryuhanan's name if one desires to fill his whole garden with vegetables he can divide it into bed S six handbreadths square describe in each a circle five handbreadths in diameter and fill its corners with whatever he pleases but there is a space between the beds said the school of Arjana he leaves the interspaces waste Arashi said if they the beds are sewn in the length he sews them the interspaces in the breadth and vice versa Rubin objected to Arashi Planting of one vegetable with another requires six handbreadths square and they are regarded Talmud, Mosh of Bath as a square board thus it is only permitted as a square board but otherwise it is forbidden there it desires to teach another leniency in respect thereof is to permit a triangular wedge that issues thence into another plot or field mission how do we know that if one a woman discharges semen on the third day she is unclean because it is said be ready against it. Third day how do we know that a circumcised child may be bathed even on the third day after circumcision which falls on the Sabbath because it is said and it came to pass on the third day when they were sore how do we know that a crimson colored strap is tied to the head of the goat that is sent to Azazel because it is said if your sins be as scarlet they shall be as white as snow how do we know that anointing is the same as drinking on the day of atonement though there is no proof of this yet there is a suggestion thereof for it is said and it came into his inward parts like water and like oil into his bones. Gemara the first clause does not agree with our Eliezer B. Ezrai whilst the second clause does agree with our Eliezer B. Ezrai for if the first clause were according to our Eliezer B. Ezrai we have heard from him that she is clean he who does not wish to explain a mission as reflecting the views of two Tanaim learns she is clean in the first clause and thus establishes the whole of it in accordance with our Eliezer B. Ezrai whilst he who does explain it as the opinions of two Tanaim holds that the first clause agrees with the rabbis while the second is according to our Eliezer B. Ezrai our rabbis taught if one a woman discharges semen on the third day she is clean this is the view of our Eliezer B. Ezrai our Ishmael said this interval sometimes comprises four periods sometimes five and sometimes six periods are actively maintained at the interval. For uncleanness is always up to five periods, and if part of the first period has gone, part of the sixth period is given her now. The rabbi stated this the following difficulty before our papa others say our papa said to Rabbi as for our Eliezer B. Ezra, it is well he holds with the rabbis who maintain abstention from intimacy was affected on Thursday. Again, our Ishmael holds with our Jose that abstention was affected on Wednesday, but with whom does our Akiba agree after all our Akiba holds as our Jose? But it is as our Adabi Akiba said Moses ascended early in the morning and descended early in the morning, he ascended early in the morning, for it is written, and Moses rose up early in the morning and went up unto Mount Sinai. He descended early in the morning, for it is written, Go get thee down, and thou shalt come up thou and Aaron with thee. This likens descent to the ascent, just as ascent was early in the morning, so was descent early in the morning. But why did he Moses have to tell them in? The morning surely Arhuna said the Israelites are holy and do not cohabit by day but Rabbah said if the house is in darkness it is permitted Rabbah also said other state our Papa a scholar may cause darkness with his garment and it is then permitted Talmud, Mosh of Bath B but they were Tebal Yom Abbey Rabin and Arhan Abbey Abin both say the Torah was given to Tebal Yom now Mir Marsat and reported this discussion said Rabbah to him do you say that it was given or that it was fitting that it should be given I mean that it was fitting he replied yet they should have bathed at twilight and received the Torah at twilight our Isaac quoted as an answer from the beginning I have not spoken in secret yet they could have bathed on the Sabbath morning and received the Torah on the Sabbath morning said our Isaac it was unfitting that some should go to receive the Torah whilst others went to Tebal our high son of our Abba said in our Yohanan's name these are the views of our Ishmael and our Akiba. But the sages maintain we require six full periods. Our Hista said this controversy is only where it the semen issues from the woman, but if it issues from a man, it is unclean as long as it is moist. Our she's hate objected, and every garment and every skin whereon is the seed of copulation shall be washed with water and be unclean until the even this excludes semen that is foul. Surely this refers even to that which issues from a man, no only to that which issues from a woman. Our papa asked what? Of an Israelite semen within a Kutian woman do we say because Israelites are anxious about the observance of precepts, their bodies are heated, but not so Gentiles who are not anxious about precepts, or perhaps as they eat creeping crawling things, their bodies too are heated. Now should you say as they eat creeping crawling things, their bodies are heated, what of semen within an animal do we say a woman who has a four uterus causes it to become foul, but not so an animal who has no four? Uterus, or perhaps there is no difference. The question stands over our rabbis taught on the sixth day of the month. Sivan were the ten commandments given to Israel. Our Jose maintained on the seventh thereof. Said Rabbi, all agree that they arrived in the wilderness of Sinai on the first of the month. For here it is written on this day they came into the wilderness of Sinai. Whilst elsewhere it is written this month shall be unto you the beginning of months, just as there the first of the month. So here too the first of the month is meant again. All agree that the Torah was given to Israel on the Sabbath. For here it is written, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Whilst elsewhere it is written, and Moses said unto the people, remember this day, just as there he spoke on that very day. So here too it was on that very day where they differ is on the fixing of the new moon. Our Jose holds that new moon was fixed on the first day of the week Sunday, and on that day he Moses said. Nothing to them on account of their exhaustion from the journey on Monday he said to them and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests Talmud, Mosh of Bath on Tuesday he informed them of the order to set boundaries and on Wednesday they separated themselves from their wives but the rabbis hold new moon was fixed on Monday and on that day he said nothing to them on account of their exhaustion from the journey on Tuesday he said to them and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests on Wednesday he informed them of the order to set boundaries and on Thursday they separated themselves and objection is raised and sanctify them today and tomorrow this is difficult in the view of our Jose our Jose can answer you Moses added one day of his own understanding for it was taught three things did Moses do of his own understanding and the Holy One blessed be he gave his approval he added one day of his own understanding he separated himself from his wife and he broke the tables he added one day of his own understanding what verse did he interp
Reshlakish interpreted this all strength to thee that thou breakest it come and hear and be ready against the third day this is a difficulty according to our Jose surely we have said that Moses added one day of his own understanding come and hear the third the third day of the month and the third day of the week this is a difficulty according to the rabbis the rabbis answer you with whom does this agree with our Jose in respect of what is the first the third mentioned in respect of that which was taught and Moses reported the words of the people unto the Lord and it is written and Moses told the words of the people unto the Lord now what did the Holy One blessed be he say unto Moses what did Moses say unto Israel what did Israel say to Moses and what did Moses report before the omnipotent this is the order of setting boundaries that is the view of our Jose son of our Judah rabbi said at first he explained the penalties for non-observance for it is written and Moses reported W.A. Yashay, which implies things which repel Meshabab in one's mind, but subsequently he explained its reward for it is said, and Moses told W.A. Yag, which means words which draw one's heart like a narrative of Gaddis. Some there are who maintain at first he explained the reward it confers for it is written, and Moses reported W.A. Yashay, which means words which appease Meshabab in one's mind, whilst subsequently he explained its penalties for it is written, and Moses told W.A. Yag, meaning words as hard unpleasant to man as worm would get and come and hear the sixth, the sixth day of the month, and the sixth day of the week. Friday, this is a difficulty according to the rabbis. This too agrees with our Jose in respect of what is the first, the sixth mentioned. Rabbis said Talmud, Moshe Bath B in respect of their encamping. Our Ahabi Jacob said in respect of their journey. Now they disagree about the precept of the Sabbath as communicated to them at Mara for it is. Written observe the Sabbath day as the Lord my God commanded thee whereon Rab Judah commented in Rab's name as he commanded thee at Mara one master holds they were commanded concerning the Sabbath in general but not concerning Tehum and whilst the other master holds they were commanded concerning Tehum and to come and hear as to the Nisan in which the Israelites departed from Egypt on the fourteenth day they slaughtered their Passover sacrifices on the fifteenth they went forth and in the evening the firstborns were smitten in the evening can you think so rather say the firstborns having been smitten the previous evening and that day was a Thursday now since the fifteenth of Nisan was on a Thursday the first of Eor was on the Sabbath and the first of Sivan was on a Sunday which is a difficulty according to the rabbis the rabbis answer you Eor in that year was indeed made full come and hear that they did not make it full as to the Nisan in which the Israelites departed from Egypt on the fourteenth they killed their Passover sacrifices on the fifteenth they went forth and in the evening the firstborns were smitten in the evening can you think so rather say the firstborns having been smitten since the previous evening and that day was a Thursday Nisan was a full month so that the first of Eor fell on the Sabbath Eor was defective so that the first of Sivan fell on a Sunday this is a difficulty according to the rabbis that agrees with our Jose our Papa. Observed come and hear and they took their journey from Elim and all the congregation of the children of Israel came unto the wilderness of sin on the fifteenth day of the second month now that day was the Sabbath for it is written and in the morning then ye shall see the glory of the Lord and it is written six days ye shall gather it now since the fifteenth of Eor was on the Sabbath the first of Sivan was on a Sunday which is a difficulty according to the rabbis the rabbis can answer you. Year of that year was made full. Our sea of Hazna said to our Ashi, Come and hear, and it came to pass in the first month of the second year, on the first day of the month, that the tabernacle was reared up. And with reference to this, it had it taught that they took ten crowns. It was the first of the creation, the first for the princes, the first for the priesthood, the first for public sacrifice, the first for the fall of fire from heaven, the first for the eating of sacred food, the first for the dwelling of the Shechinah in Israel, the first for the priestly blessing of Israel, the first for the interdict of the high places, and the first of months. Now, since the first of Nisan of that year was on a Sunday, that of the previous year must have been on a Wednesday, for it was taught others say between one Ezra and another, and between one New Year's day and another, there can be a difference of only four days, and in a leap year five days, hence the first of year must have fallen on it. Eve of the Sabbath Friday and the first of Sivan on the Sabbath, which is a difficulty according to both our Jose and the rabbis in our Jose's view, seven months were declared defective Talmud, Moshe Bath in that of the rabbis, eight months were declared defective come and here for it was taught in the Seder Olamis to the Nisan in which the Israelites departed from Egypt on the fourteenth, they slaughtered their Passover sacrifices on the fifteenth, they went out and that day was the Sabbath. Eve now since the first of Nisan was the Sabbath, Eve the first of Eor was on a Sunday and the first of Sivan on a Monday, this is a difficulty according to our Jose, our Jose answers you, this agrees with the rabbis come and here our Jose said on the second day Moses ascended and descended on the third, he ascended and descended on the fourth, he descended and ascended no more, but since he did not go up whence did he descend, rather say on the fourth, he ascended and descended on the fifth, he built. An altar and offered a sacrifice thereon, but on the sixth he had no time. Surely that was on account of the giving of the Torah. No, it was on account of the preparations for the Sabbath. A certain Galilean lectured before Arista, blessed be the merciful one who gave a threefold Torah to a threefold people through a thirdborn on the third day in the third month. With whom does this agree with the rabbis? And they stood under the mount. Our Abdimi Bihama Bihasa said, This teaches that the holy one blessed be he overturned the mountain upon them like an inverted cask and said to them, If ye accept the Torah, tis well. If not, there shall be your burial. Our Ahabi Jacob observed this furnishes a strong protest against the Torah, said Rabbi. Yet even so, they reaccepted it in the days of Ahaz, whereas for it is written, the Jews confirmed and took upon them, etc. I.e., they confirmed what they had accepted long before Hezekiah said what is meant by thou didst cause sentence to be heard from heaven. The earth feared and was tranquil. If it feared, why was it tranquil? And if it was tranquil, why did it fear? But at first it feared, yet subsequently it was tranquil. And why did it fear? Even in accordance with Reshlakish, for Reshlakish said, Why is it written? And there was evening, and there was morning. The sixth day. What is the purpose of the additional? That this teaches that the Holy One, blessed be He, stipulated with the works of creation and said thereto, If Israel accepts the Torah, ye shall exist. But if not, I will turn you back into emptiness and formlessness. Our similar lectured when the Israelites gave precedence to We will do over. We will hearken. Six hundred thousand ministering angels came and set two crowns upon each man of Israel. One as a reward for We will do, and the other as a reward for We will hearken. But as soon as Israel sent one million two hundred thousand destroying angels, descended and removed them as it is said, and the children of Israel stripped themselves of their Ornaments from Mount Horeb are Hamasun of Arhanan is said at Horeb they put them on and at Horeb they put them off at Horeb they put them on as we have stated at Horeb they put them off for it is written and the children of Israel stripped themselves etc. Our Yohanan observed and Moses was privileged and received them all for in proximity thereto it is stated and Moses took the tent Rush Lakish said yet the Holy One blessed be he will return them to us in the future for it is said and the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come with singing unto Zion and everlasting joy shall be upon their heads the joy from of old shall be upon their heads our Eliezer said when the Israelites gave proceedings to we will do over we will hearken a heavenly voice went forth and exclaimed to them who revealed to my children the secret which is employed by the ministering angels as it is written bless the Lord ye angels of his mighty in strength that fulfill his word that hearken unto the voice of his Word first they fulfill and then they hearken our Hamasun of our Hanan said what is meant by as the apple tree among the trees of the wood so is my beloved among the sons why were the Israelites compared to an apple tree to teach you just as the fruit of the apple tree precedes its leaves so did the Israelites give precedence to we will do over we will hearken there was a certain Sadducee who saw Rabba engrossed in his studies while the finger s of his hand were under his feet and he ground them down so that his fingers spurted blood your rash people he exclaimed who gave precedence to your mouth over your ears yes still persist in your rashness first yes should have listened if within your powers except if not yes should not have accepted said he to him we Talmud Moshe Bath be who walked in integrity of us it is written the integrity of the upright shall guide them but of others who walked in perversity it is written but the perverseness of the treacherous shall destroy them our Samuel be. Namani said in our Jonathan's name, What is meant by thou
Thereof it is a medicine of life to those who go to the left hand. Thereof it is a deadly poison. Another interpretation princely denotes that on every word which went forth from the mouth of the Holy One, blessed be he, two crowns were set. Our Joshua believe I said what is meant by my beloved is unto me as a bundle of mercy or harm that lieth betwixt my breasts. The congregation of Israel spake before the Holy One, blessed be he, sovereign of the universe, though my life be distressed, mizar and embittered memory, yet my love lieth betwixt my breasts. My beloved is unto me as a cluster eshkel of henna flowers cover in the vineyards of Carmen Gadai, to whom everything belongs. Shihakol shalosh shall make atonement, me kapper for me for the sin of the kid which I stored up karamti for myself. Where is it implied that this word karm connotes gathering? Said Marzitra the son of Arnam, and even as we learned the fuller school on which linen is heaped up, Carmen our Joshua believe I also. Said what is meant by his cheeks are as a bed of spices with every single word that went forth from the mouth of the Holy One, blessed be he, the whole world was filled with spices fragrance, but since it was filled from the first word, whither did the fragrance of the second word go, the Holy One, blessed be he, brought forth the wind from his store chambers and caused each to pass on in order as it is said, his lips are as lilies, Shashanim, dropping myrrh that passes on reed, not Shashanim, but Shashonim, our Joshua, believe I also said at every word which went forth from the mouth of the Holy One, blessed be he, the souls of Israel departed, for it is said, my soul went forth when he spake, but since their souls departed at the first word, how could they receive the second word? He brought down the dew with which he will resurrect the dead and revive them, as it is said, thou, O God, didst send a plentiful rain, thou didst confirm thine inheritance when it was weary, our Joshua, believe I also said at every Single word which went forth from the mouth of the Holy One, blessed be he, the Israelites retreated twelve mil, but the ministering angels led them back, Medadan, as it is said, the host of angels marched, they marched, Yedodin, Yedodin, read not Yedodin, but Yedadan, they lead, our Joshua, believe I also said, when Moses ascended on high, the ministering angels spake before the Holy One, blessed be he, sovereign of the universe, what business has one born of woman amongst us, he has come to receive the Torah. Answered he to them, said they to him, that secret treasure which has been hidden by thee for nine hundred and seventy four generations before the world was created, thou desirest to give to flesh and blood what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him, O Lord our God, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory, the Torah upon the heavens, returned them and answered, bade the Holy One, blessed be he, to Moses, sovereign of the universe, replied he, I Fear lest they consume me with the fiery breath of their mouths, hold on to the throne of glory, said he to him, and return them an answer as it is said, he make them to hold on to the face of his throne, and spread eth his cloud over him, whereon Arnam and observed this teaches that the Almighty should I spread perish the lustres of his Chechenai, and cast it as a protection over him, he then spake before him, sovereign of the universe, the Torah which thou givest me, what is written. Therein I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt, said he to them, the angels, did ye go down to Egypt, were ye enslaved to Pharaoh, why then should the Torah be yours again, what is written therein, thou shalt have none other gods, do ye dwell among peoples that engage in Talmud, Mosh of Bath, idol worship again, what is written therein, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, do ye then perform work that ye need to rest again, what is written therein, thou shalt not take. Tis of the name in vain is there any business massive dealings among you again what is written therein honor thy father and thy mother have ye fathers and mothers again what is written therein thou shalt not murder thou shalt not commit adultery thou shalt not steal is there jealousy among you is the evil tempter among you straightway they conceded right to the holy one blessed be he for it is said O Lord our Lord how excellent is thy name etc whereas who has set thy glory upon it heavens is not written immediately each one was moved to love him Moses and transmitted something to him for it is said thou hast ascended on high thou hast taken spoils the Torah thou hast received gifts on account of man as a recompense for their calling thee man Adam thou didst receive gifts the angel of death to confide his secret to him for it is said and he put on the incense and made atonement for the people and it is said and he stood between the dead and the living etc had he not told it to him once had he known it or Joshua believe I also said when Moses descended from before the Holy One blessed be he Satan came and asked him sovereign of the universe where is the Torah I have given it to the earth answered he to him he went to the earth and said to her where is the Torah God understandeth the way thereof etc she replied he went to the sea and it told him it is not with me he went to the deep and it said to him it is not in me for it is said the deep saith it is not in me and the sea saith it is not with me destruction and death say we have heard a rumor thereof with our ears he went back and declared before him sovereign of the universe I have searched throughout all the earth but have not found it go thee to the son of Amram answered he so he went to Moses and asked him where is the Torah which the Holy One blessed be he gave unto thee who am I then he retorted that the Holy One blessed be he should give me the Torah said the Holy One blessed be he too. Moses, Moses, art thou a liar, sovereign of the universe? He replied, Thou hast a stored up treasure in which thou takest delight. Every day shall I keep the benefit for myself, said the Holy One. Blessed be he to Moses, Moses, since thou hast humbly disparaged thyself, it shall be called by thy name, as it is said. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, our Joshua, believe I also said, when Moses ascended on high, he found the Holy One. Blessed be he, tying crowns on the letters of the Torah, said he to him, Moses, is there no greeting of peace in thy town? Shall a servant extend a greeting of peace to his master? Replied he, Yet thou shouldst have assisted me, said he immediately. He cried out to him, And now I pray thee, let the power of the Lord be great according as thou hast spoken, our Joshua, believe I also said, Why is it written? And when the people saw that Moses delayed Bashish to come down from the Mount Red, not Bashish delayed, but Beaushish, the sixth hour had come when Moses ascended on. I he said to Israel I will return at the end of forty days at the beginning of the sixth hour at the end of forty days Satan came and confounded the world said he to them where is your teacher Moses he has ascended on high they answered him the sixth hour has come said he to them but they disregarded him he is dead but they disregarded him thereupon he showed them a vision of his beer and this is what they said to Aaron for this Moses the man etc one of the rabbis asked Arkahana hast thou heard what the mountain of Sinai connotes the mountain whereon miracles Nissan were performed for Israel he replied then it should be called Mount Nissel but it means the mountain whereon a happy augury Simon took place for Israel then it should be called Mount Simon I said he to him why dost thou not frequent the academy of our Papa and Arhuna the son of our Joshua who make a study of Agata for Arhista and Rabbi the son of Arhuna both said what is the meaning of Mount Sinai the Mountain whereon there descended hostility sin toward idolaters, and thus our Jose son of our Hannah said it has five names the wilderness of sin, meaning that Israel were given commandments there, the wilderness of Kadesh, where the Israelites were sanctified, Kadash, the wilderness of Kadimoth, because of priority Kaduma was conferred there, the wilderness of Perin Talmud, Mosh of Bathby, because Israel was fruitful, Peru and multiplied there, and the wilderness of Sinai, because hostility toward idolaters descended thereon, whilst what was its real name, its name was Horeb. Now they disagree with Arabab, for Arabab said its name was Mount Sinai, and why was it called Mount Horeb? Because desolation who idolaters descended thereon, how do we know that a crimson colored strap is tied, etc., instead of Kashanim like scarlet threads, Kashanim like a scarlet thread is required, said our Isaac the Holy One, blessed be he said to Israel, even if your sins be like these years caught. Shanim which have continued in ordered fashion from the six days of the creation until now yet they shall be as white as no rubble lectured what is meant by go now and let us reason together shall say the Lord instead of go now come now is required instead of shall say the Lord saith the Lord is required in the time to come the Holy One blessed be he shall say unto Israel go now to your forefathers and they will reprove you and they shall say before him sovereign of the universe to whom shall we go to Abraham to whom thou didst say no of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger and they shall afflict them yet he did not entreat mercy for us to Isaac who blessed Esau and it shall come to pass when thou shalt have dominion and yet he did not entreat mercy for us to Jacob to whom thou didst say I will go down with thee into Egypt and yet he did not entreat mercy for
Nature's calls and there remain twelve and a half if thou wilt bear all tis well if not half be upon me and half upon thee and shouldst thou say they must all be upon me lo I offered myself up before thee as a sacrifice thereupon they shall commence and say for thou i.e. Isaac art our father then shall Isaac say to them instead of praising me praise the Holy One blessed be he and Isaac shall show them the Holy One blessed be he with their own eyes immediately they shall lift up their eyes. On high and exclaim thou O Lord art our father our redeemer from everlasting is thy name our high be abbasid in our Yohanan's name it was fitting for our father Jacob to go down into Egypt in iron chains but that his merit saved him for it is written I drew them with the cords of a man with bands of love and I was to them as they that take off the yoke on their jaws and I laid meat before them if one carries out with the standard for culpability is as much as is required for boiling a like egg seasoning spices as much as is required for seasoning a like egg and they combine with each other nuts pomegranate shells woad and matter the standard is as much as is required for dyeing the small piece of cloth at the opening top of a network here in natron like shimoli and earth and ashley as much as is required for washing the small piece of cloth at the opening top of a network arjuna said as much as is required for removing the stain tomorrow but we have already learned at once to read the standard is as much as is required for making a pen but if it is thick or crushed as much as is required for boiling the lightest of eggs beaten up and placed in a stew pot you might say that is only there because it is unfit for anything else but since wood is fit for the tooth of a key for no matter how little involved culpability is hence we are informed otherwise seasoning spices as much as is required for seasoning a like egg but the following Contradicts the spices of two or three designations belonging to the same species or three different species are forbidden and they combine with each other and Hezekiah observed Talmud, Mosh of they learned this of sweetening condiments since they are fit for sweetening a dish thus it is only because they are fit for sweetening a dish but otherwise it is not so here too in our mission they are fit for sweetening nuts pomegranate shells woad and matter the standard is as much as is required for dyeing the small piece of cloth etc but this contradicts it if one carries out dissolved dyes the standard is as much as is required for dyeing a sample color for wool set our in the name of Rabbi Abu'a that is because no man troubles to steep dyes in order to dye there with a sample color for wool urine and taught urine until 40 days natron it was taught Alexandrian natron but not natron of Antipatri's Libor Rab Judah said that is sand but it was Top Barth and sand rather what is Barth sulfur and objection is raised to these were added Halbazin and Len and Barth and Hall but if you maintain that it is sulfur is then sulfur subject to Shabbat surely it was taught this is the general rule whatever as a root is subject to Shabbat but that which has no root is not subject to Shabbat but what is Barth Ahila but it was taught in Barth and Ahila there are two kinds of Ahila Shemuel and Earth Rab Judah said that is pull out. Stick and Ashlik Samuel said I asked all seafarers and they told me that it is called Shanana it is found in the cavity wherein the pearl lies and it is scraped out with an iron nail mission if one carries out long pepper of whatever quantity iron of whatever quantity various kinds of perfume of whatever quantity various kinds of metal of whatever quantity pieces of the altar stones or the altar earth moth eaten scrolls or their moth eaten mantles of whatever quantity he is culpable. Because they are stored away in order to be hidden, our Judah said also he who carries out the service vessels of idols of whatever size I ask culpable for it is said, and there shall not cleave out of the cursed thing to thine hand tomorrow of what uses any small quantity of long pepper for dispelling the evil odor of one's mouth, of whatever quantity what is this good for for me from various kinds of perfume of whatever quantity our rabbis taught if one carries out a malodorous perfume the standard is however little good oil, however little crimson dye, however little and closed rose the standard is one various kinds of metal of whatever quantity what is it fit for it was taught our Simeon B. Eliezer said because one can make a small goat out of it our rabbis taught if one says behold I thou iron others rule he must not give less than a square cubit of sheet iron what is it fit for said our Joseph to ward off the raven some state others rule he must not give. Less than a raven barrier and how much is that said our Joseph a square cubit if he bows brass he must not give less than a silver ma's worth it was taught our Eliezer said he must not give less than a small brass hook what is it fit for said Abay the wicks were scraped out and the branches of the candelabrum were cleansed there with moth-eaten scrolls and moth-eaten mantles Rab Judah said the worm he cacked that attacks scrolls the worm hecac of silk the mytella of grapes the worm how figs and the worm have pomegranates are all dangerous a certain disciple was sitting before our Yohanan eating figs my master he exclaimed there are thorns in the figs the power worm has killed this person answered he mission if one carries out a peddler's basket though it contains many commodities he incurs only one sin offering for garden seeds the standard is less than the size of a dry fig our Judah be but there are rule five Talmud, Mosh of bath be Talmud, Mosh of bath be four. Cucumber seed the standard is two seed of gourds two seed of Egyptian beans two if one carries out a live clean locust whatever its size dead its standard is the size of a dry fig the bird of the vineyards whether live or dead whatever its size because it is stored away for a medicine our Judah said also he who carries out a live unclean locust whatever its size I ask culpable because it is put away for a child to play with tomorrow but this contradicts it manure or thin sand the standard is as much as is required for fertilizing a cabbage stalk this is our Akiva's view but the sages maintain for fertilizing one leaf plant said our papa in the one case it is sown and in the other it is not because one does not trouble to carry out a single seed for sowing cucumber seed our rabbis taught if one carries out kernels of dates if for planting the standard for culpability is two if for eating as much as fills the mouth of a swine and how much fills the mouth of a swine one if for fuel. As much as is required for boiling a light egg if for calculating two others say five our rabbis taught if one carries out two hairs of a horse's tall or a cow's tall he is culpable because these are laid aside for birds snares of the stiff bristles of a swine one involves liability of palm bands two of palm fillets one the bird of the vineyards whether live or dead whatever its size what is the bird of the vineyard said rab palia bariabe observed and it is found in a palm tree of only one covering and it is prepared as food for acquiring wisdom one eats half of its right side and half of its left places it the rest in a brass tube and seals it with sixty i.e. many seals and suspends it around his left arm and the token thereof is a wise man's heart is at his right hand but a fool's heart is at his left he acquires as much wisdom as he desires studies as much as he desires and then eats the other half for if he does not his learning will vanish our Judah said. Also he who carries out etc. But the first tana holds not so what is the reason lest he the child eat it if so a clean locust is the same for our kahana was standing before Rab and passing a shows in front of his mouth take it away said he to him that people should not say that you are eating it and thereby violating the injunction ye shall not make yourselves abominable rather the reason is lest it dies and he the child eat it but our Judah holds if it dies the child will indeed weep for it chapter x mission if one lays out aside for sowing for a sample or for a medicine and then carries it out on the Sabbath he is culpable whatever its size but all others are not culpable therefore save in accordance with its standard if he carries it back again he is liable only in accordance with its standard tomorrow why must he teach if one lays aside let him teach if one carries out for sowing for a sample or for a medicine he is culpable whatever its size said. Abbe we discuss here a case e.g. where one laid it aside and then forgot why he laid it aside and now he carries it out without specifying the purpose Talmud, Moshe Bathy you might say his intention has been cancelled hence we are informed that whenever one does anything he does it with his original purpose Rab Judah said in Samuel's name our mayor maintained that one is culpable even if he carries out a single grain of wheat for sowing but that is obvious for we learned whatever its size. You might say whatever its size is to exclude the standard of the quantity of a dry fig yet even so one is not guilty unless there is as much as an olive hence we are informed otherwise our Isaac son of Rab Judah demurred if so if one declares his intention of carrying out his whole house is he really not culpable unless he carries out his whole house there his intention is null this of that of all men but all others are not culpable therefore save in accordance with its standard are. Mishnah does not agree with our Simeon B. Eliezer for it was taught our Simeon B
culpable now when if one carries out as much as a dry fig for food and it shrivels up and he decides to keep it for sowing here it is certain that if he remains silent he would not be culpable on account of his original intention or perhaps we regard the present only hence he is culpable should you rule that we regard the present hence he is culpable when if one carries out as much as a dry fig for food and it shrivels and then swells up again does the principle of disqualification Operate with respect to the Sabbath or not the question stands over Rabba asked Arnaman what if one throws terima of the size of an olive into an unclean house in respect of what is the question if in respect of the Sabbath we require the size of a dry fig if in respect of defilement we require food as much as an egg after all it is in respect of the Sabbath the circumstances being e.g. that there is food less than an egg in quantity and this makes it up to an egg in quantity what then? Since it combines in respect of defilement he is also culpable in respect to the Sabbath or perhaps in all matters relating to the Sabbath we require the size of a dry fig said he to him we have learned it Abbasal said as for the two loaves of bread and the shoe bread their standard is the size of a dry fig but why so let us say since in respect of Talmud, Mosh of Bath B it's going out the standard is the size of an olive in respect of the Sabbath too it is the size of an olive how? Compare there immediately one takes it without the wall of the temple court it becomes unfit as that which has gone out whereas there is no culpability for the violation of the Sabbath until he carries it into public ground but here the Sabbath and defilement come simultaneously if he carries it back again he is liable only in accordance with its standard but that is obvious said Abbe what case do we discuss here each if he throws it onto a store but its place is distinctly recognizable you might argue since its place is recognizable it stands in its original condition he the Tana therefore teaches us that by throwing it onto a store he indeed nullifies admission if one carries out food and places it on the threshold whether he himself subsequently carries it out into the street or another does so he is not culpable because the whole act was not performed at once if one carries out a basket which is full of produce and places it on the outer threshold though most of the produce is without he is not culpable unless he carries out the whole basket tomorrow what is this threshold shall we say a threshold that is public ground house state then he is not culpable surely he has carried out from private into public ground again if it is a threshold that is private ground house state then whether he himself subsequently carries it out into the street or another does so he is not culpable surely he carries out from private into public ground rather the threshold is a Carmelite and he the Tana informs us this the reason that he is not culpable is because it rested in the Carmelite but if it did not rest in the Carmelite he would be liable our mission not agreeing with Benazay for it was taught if one carries an article from a shop to an open place by a colonnade he is liable but Benazay holds him not liable a basket which is full of produce Hezekiah said they learned this only of a basket full of cucumbers and gourds but if it is full of Mustard he is culpable this proves that the tie of the vessel is not regarded as a tie but our Yohan and maintained even if it is full of mustard he is not culpable which proves that he holds that the tie of the vessel is regarded as a tie our Zara observed our mission implies that it is neither as Hezekiah nor as our Yohan and it implies that it is not as Hezekiah for it states unless he carries out the whole basket thus only the whole basket but if all the produce is without he is not culpable which shows that he holds that the tie of the vessel is regarded as a tie it implies that it is not as our Yohan and for it states though most of the produce is without thus only most of the produce but if all the produce is without though the tie of the basket is within he is liable which shows that he holds that the tie of the vessel is not regarded as a tie but in that case there is a difficulty Hezekiah reconciles it in accordance with his view while our Yohan and reconciles it in accordance with his View as he reconciles it in accordance with his view unless he carries out the whole basket when is that in the case of a basket full of cucumbers and gourds but if it is full of mustard it is treated as though he carried out the whole basket and he is culpable while our Yohanan reconciles it according to his view though most of the produce is without and not only most of the produce but even if all the produce is without he is not culpable unless he carries out the whole basket and objection is raised if one carries out a spice peddler's basket and places it on the outer threshold though most of the kinds of the spices are without he is not culpable unless he carries out the whole basket now this was assumed to refer to grains of spices which is a difficulty according to Hezekiah Hezekiah answers you the reference here is to prickly shrubs or BBB Abbe raised an objection if one steals a purse on the Sabbath he is bound to make restitution since his liability for Theft arises before his desecrating of the Sabbath but if he drags it out of the house he is exempt since the interdict of theft and the interdict of the Sabbath come simultaneously but if you think that the tie of a vessel is regarded as a tie the interdict of theft precedes that of the Sabbath if he carries it out by way of its opening that indeed is so here we discuss the case where he carries it out by way of its bottom but there is the place of it seems Talmud, Mosh of Batha which he can rip open if he desires and extract the coins the reference is to a bar of metal but since it has straps he the thief can take it out of to its opening untie the straps and take out the bar whilst the straps still united to within it refers to one that has no straps alternatively it has straps but they are wound round about it the person Rabbah said likewise they learned this only of a basket full of cucumbers and gourds but if it is full of mustard he is culpable this proves that he holds that the tie of a vessel is not regarded as a tie of a rule even if it is full of mustard he is not culpable which proves that he holds that the tie of a vessel is regarded as a tie of a subsequently adopted Rabbah's view while Rabbah adopted Abbe's view now Abbe is self-contradictory and Rabbah likewise for it was taught if one carries out produce into the street Abbe said if in his hand he is culpable if in a vessel he is not culpable but Rabbah ruled if in his hand he is not culpable if in a vessel he is culpable reverse it if in his hand he is culpable but we learned if the master stretches his hand without and the poor man takes an object from it or places an article therein and he carries it inside both are exempt there it is above three handbreadths but here it is below three mission if one carries out an article whether with his right or with his left hand in his lap or on his shoulder he is culpable because thus was the carrying of the children of Kohat in a backhanded manner, e.g., with his foot in his mouth, with his elbow in his ear, in his hair, in his belt, with its opening downwards between his belt and his shirt, in the hem of his shirt, in his shoes or sandals, he is not culpable because he has not carried it out as people generally carry out. Gemara Eliezer said, if one carries out a burden above ten handbreadths from the street level, he is culpable for thus was the carrying of the children of Kohat. And how do we know that the carrying of the children of Kohat was thus because it is written by the tabernacle and by the altar round about the altar is likened to the tabernacle just as the tabernacle was ten cubits high, so was the altar ten cubits high. And how do we know this of the tabernacle itself because it is written ten cubits shall be the length of the board, and it is also said, and he spread the tent over the tabernacle whereon Rab commented Moses our teacher spread it, hence you may learn that the levites. Were ten cubits tall now it is well known that any burden that is carried on staves a third is above the porter's height and two thirds are below thus it is found that it was very much raised alternatively it is deduced from the ark for a master said the ark was nine handbreadths high and the mercy seed was one handbreadth hence we have ten and it is well known that any burden that is carried on staves a third is above and two thirds are below thus it is found that it was very much raised but deduce it from Moses perhaps Moses was different because a master said the Shechen arrests only on a wise man a strong man a wealthy man and a tall man rap said on our highest authority if one carries out a burden on his head on the Sabbath he is liable to a sin offering because the people of Husel do thus are then the people of Husel the world's majority rather if stated it was thus stated rap said on our highest authority if a Husalite carries out a burden on his head on the Sabbath he is Liable to a sin offering because his fellow citizens do thus, but let his practice be null by comparison with that of all men. Rather, if stated it was thus stated, if one carries out a burden on his head, he is not culpable. Talmud, Mosh of Bath B, and should you object, but the people of Husel do thus, their practice is null by comparison with that of all men. Mishnah, if one intends to carry out an object in front of him, but it works round behind him, he is not culpable behind him, but it works round before him, he is culpable. Yet in truth, it was said a woman who wraps herself round with an apron, whether the article is carried before or behind her, is culpable because it is natural for it to reverse itself. Our Judah said also those who receive
He intends to carry it behind him and it comes behind him. He is not culpable, said R. L. There is a contradiction. He who learned the one did not learn the other. R. Ashi observed, but what is the difficulty? Perhaps he leads to a climax. It is unnecessary to rule that if he intended to carry it behind him and it came behind him, he is culpable since his intention was fulfilled. But even if he intends to carry it behind him but it works around before him, it must be stated for you might think. That I will rule since his intention was unfulfilled, he is not culpable, therefore he informs us that he intended only a weak vigilance, whereas he succeeded in giving it a strong vigilance so that he is culpable. Shall we say that where he intends to carry it behind him and it comes behind him, there is a controversy of ten aim for it was taught if one intends carrying out an object in his belt with its opening above, but he carries it out in his belt with its opening below, or if one intends to carry out in his belt with its opening below, Arjuna rules that he is culpable, but the sages hold him not culpable, said Arjuna to them. Do you not admit that if one intends to carry out an object behind him and it comes behind him, he is culpable, whilst they said to him, Do you not admit that if one carries out an object as with the back of his hand or with his foot, he is not culpable, said Arjuna. I stated one argument and they stated one argument, I found no answer to there. Argument and they found no answer to mine. Now, since he says to them, Do you not admit, does it not surely follow that the rabbis hold that he is not culpable? Then, on your reasoning, when they say to him, Do you not admit, does it follow that Arjuna holds him culpable? But surely it was taught with the back of his hand or his foot, all agree that he is not culpable. Rather, conclude thus if one intends to carry out an object behind him and it comes behind him, all agree that he is culpable with it. Back of his hand or foot, all agree that he is not culpable. They differ when he carries it out in his belt with its opening below. One master likens it to intending to carry it out behind him and it comes behind him, while the other master likens it to carrying with the back of one's hand or foot. In truth, it was said a woman, etc. It was taught every statement of in truth, etc. Is the halachah Arjuna said also those who receive notes attended taught because clerks of the state do thus. Mission if one carries out a loaf into the street he is culpable if two carry it out they are not culpable if one could not carry it out and two carry it out they are culpable but our Simeon exempts them Gamara Rab Judah said in Rab's name others state Abbe said others again state it was taught in a very if each alone is able our mayor holds them culpable while our Judah and our Simeon hold them not culpable if each alone is unable our Judah and our mayor hold them culpable while our Simeon exempts them if one is able but the other is not all agree that he is culpable it was taught likewise if one carries out a loaf into the street he is culpable if two carry it out our mayor declares him culpable our Judah rules if one could not carry it out and both carry it out they are culpable otherwise they are not culpable while our Simeon exempts them once do we know this for our rabbis taught and if anyone sin in his doing etc only he who does the whole of it is culpable but not he who does part of it how so if two hold a pitchfork and sweet corn together or the shuttle and press or a quill and write or a cane and carry it out into the street I might think that they are culpable hence it is stated in his doing only he who does the whole of it but not he who does part of it Talmud, Mosh of if they hold a round cake of pressed figs and carry it out into the street or a beam and carry it out into the street Arjuna said if one cannot carry it out and both carry it out they are culpable if not they are not culpable our Simeon ruled even if one cannot carry it out and both carry it out they are not culpable for this reason it is stated in his doing to teach that if a single person does it he is liable whereas if two do it they are exempt wherein do they differ in this verse and if one person of the common people shall sin unwittingly in his doing etc our Simeon holds three limitations are written a person shall sin one shall sin in his Doing he shall sin one excludes the case where one person removes an article from one domain and another deposits it in the other domain. A second is to exclude the case of each being able separately to perform the action, and the third is to exclude where neither is able alone. Arjuna holds one excludes the case where one person removes and another deposits. The second is to exclude the case of each being able, and the third is to exclude the case of an individual who acts on the ruling of Bethin. But our Simeon is consistent with his view, for he maintains an individual who acts on the ruling of Bethin is liable. While our Mayor argues, is it then written a person shall sin one shall sin in his doing he shall sin only two limitations are written. One excludes the case where one removes and another deposits, and the other excludes the case of an individual who acts on the ruling of Bethin. The master said, if one is able, but the other is not, all agree that he is. Culpable which one is culpable said Arhista he who is able for it the one who is unable what does he do then said Arham none to him surely he helps him helping is no concrete act replied he Arzib said on Rabba's authority we learned likewise if he is Abba sitting on a bed and four cloths are under the feet of the bed they are unclean because it cannot stand on three but Arsimian declares it clean if he is riding on an animal and four cloths are under its feet they are clean because it can stand on three but why so surely each helps the other hence it must be because we maintain that helping is not a concrete act said Rabjuda of Discarda after all I may tell you that helping is a concrete act but here it is different because if the animal removes it the foot entirely from the ground but since it alternatively removes one foot and then another let it be as Azab who turns about did we not learn if Azab is lying on five benches or five hollow belts if along there Length they are unclean but if along their breadth they are clean but if he is sleeping and there is a doubt that he may have turned about upon them they are unclean hence it must surely be because we say helping is no concrete act our poppy said in Rabba's name we too learned thus Talmud, Mosh of Bath B. R. Jose said a horse defile through its forefeet and ass through its hind feet because a horse rests its weight on its forefeet while an ass rests its upon its hind feet but why so seeing that they the feet help each other to bear the animal's weight hence it must surely be because we say helping is no concrete act our Ashi said we too learned this our Eliezer said if one foot is on the utensil and the other on the pavement one foot on the stone and the other on the pavement we consider wherever if the utensil or the stone be removed he can stand on the other foot his service is valid if not his service is invalid yet why so seeing that they the feet help each other hence it must Surely be because we say helping is no concrete act Robin has said we too learnt this if he the priest catches the blood with his right hand while his left helps him his service is valid but why so seeing that they the hands help each other but it must surely be because we say helping is no concrete act this proves that the master said if each alone is able our mayor holds them culpable the scholars asked is the standard quantity required for each or perhaps one standard is sufficient for all our hista and our hamana differ therein one maintains the standard is required for each while the other rules one standard is sufficient for all our papa observed in Robin's name we too learnt thus if he is ab is sitting on a bed and four cloths are under the feet of the bed they are unclean because it cannot stand on three but why so let the standard of Gunnaroe be necessary for each hence it must surely be because we say one standard suffices for all our nomin B. Isaac said we too. Learn thus if a deer enters a house and one person locks it before him he is culpable if two lock it they are exempt if one could not lock it and both lock it they are culpable but why so let the standard of trapping be necessary for each hence it must surely be because we say one standard suffices for all Robin has said we too learn thus if partners steal an ox or a sheep and slaughter it they are liable but why so let the standard of slaughtering be necessary for each hence it must surely be because we say one standard suffices for all and Arashi also said we too learn thus if two carry out a weaver's cane quill they are culpable but why so let the standard of carrying out be necessary for each hence it must surely be because we say one standard suffices for all said Ara Hassan of Rabba to Arashi perhaps that is where it contains sufficient fuel to boil a light egg for each if so he the Tana should inform us about a cane in general why particularly a weaver's Yet perhaps it is large enough for each to weave a cloth there with hence nothing can be inferred from this. Atana recited before our nomin if two carry out a weaver's cane they are not culpable but our Simeon declares them culpable whither does this tent rather say they are culpable while our Simeon exempts the mission if one carries out less than the standard quantity of food in a utensil he is not culpable even in respect of the utensil because the utensil is subsidiary thereto if one carries out a living person in a bed he is not culpable even in respect of the bed because the bed is subsidiary to him a corpse in a bed he is culpable and likewise if one carries out the size of an olive of a corpse the
A sacrifice our Nathan said for killed ones he is liable but for live ones he is exempt because a living creature carries itself said Rabbi you may even say that it agrees with the rabbis the rabbis differ from our Nathan only in respect of an animal beast and bird which stiffen themselves but as for a living person who carries himself even the rabbis agree are at a being of observed to Rabbi but as to what we learned Ben-Bathira permits it in the case of a horse and it was taught Ben-Bathira permits it in the case of a horse because it is employed for work which does not entail liability to a sin offering and our Yohan and observed Ben-Bathira and our Nathan said the same thing now if you say that the rabbis disagree with our Nathan only in respect of an animal beast or bird because they stiffen themselves why particularly Ben-Bathira and our Nathan surely you have said that even the rabbis agree when our Yohan and said thus it was in respect of a horse that is set apart for carrying. Birds, but are there horses set apart for birds? Yes, there are the falconers. Horses are Yohanan said, yet our Nathan agrees in the case of a tied living being. Our Adabi Mahana said to Abbe, but these Persians are like bound men. Yet our Yohanan said, Benbathir and our Nathan said the same thing there. They suffer from haughtiness for a certain officer with whom the king was angry ran three parts hangs on foot. A corpse in a bed, he is culpable, and likewise, if one carries out the size of an olive oil. Corpse, etc. Rabbi Barhana said in our Yohanan's name, and our Joseph said in the name of Resh Lakish, our Simeon declared exempt Talmud, Mosh of Bath be even him who carries out a corpse for burial. Rabbi observed, yet our Simeon admits in the case of one who carries out a spade for digging there with or the scroll of the Torah to read it that he is culpable. That is obvious for if this too should be regarded as a labor unrequired per how would a labor necessary per be conceivably according to our Simeon you might say it must be carried out both for his requirements and for its own purpose e.g. a spade in order to make it into a metal plate and for digging a scroll of the law for correcting and reading therefore he informs us that it is not so a dead body was lying in Derekra which Arnam and B. Isaac allowed to be carried out into a Carmelite said Arnam and the brother of Marsan of Rabbanah to Arnam and B. Isaac on whose authority are Simeon's but perhaps our Simeon merely exempts such from liability to a sin offering yet there is a rabbinical interdict by God said he to him you yourself may bring it in for this is permitted even according to our Judah did I then say that it may be carried out into the street I merely said into a Carmelite the dignity of human beings is a great thing for it supersedes even a negative injunction of the Torah we learned elsewhere if one plucks out the symptoms of uncleanness or burns out the raw flesh he transgresses a negative injunction. It was stated if he plucks out one of two hairs he is culpable one of three are and maintained he is culpable Arshis hate said he is not culpable Arnam and maintained he is culpable his action is effective in so far that if another is removed the uncleanness departs Arshis hate said he is not culpable now at all events the uncleanness is present Arshis hate observed whence do I know it because we learned and likewise if one carries out the size of an olive of a corpse the size of an olive of a nibble he is culpable this implies for half the size of an olive he is exempt but it was taught for half the size of an olive he is culpable surely then where it was taught that he is culpable it means that he carries out half the size of an olive from a piece as large as an olive while where we learned by implication that he is exempt it means that he carries out half the size of an olive from an olive and a half but Arnam and maintains in both these cases he is culpable but as to what we learned that he is exempt that is where he carries out half the size of an olive of a large corpse mission if one pierces his nails with each other or with his teeth likewise if one plucks his hair likewise his mustache likewise his beard and likewise if a woman plates her hair likewise if she paints her eyelids likewise if she rouges her face our Eliezer declares them culpable while the rabbis forbid these actions as a Shabbat Gemara our Eliezer said they differ only where it is done by hand but if with an implement all agree that he is culpable that is obvious for we learned with each other you might say the rabbis hold him exempt even if he does it with an implement while as to what is stated with each other that is to teach you the extent of our Eliezer's ruling hence he informs us otherwise our Eliezer also said they differ only where one does it for himself but if he does it for his neighbor all agree that he is not culpable that is obvious for we learned his nails. You might say our Eliezer holds him culpable even if he does it for his neighbor. While as to what is stated, his nails that is to teach you the extent of the rabbi's ruling. Hence he informs us otherwise. Likewise, his hair, etc. It was taught if one plucks out a full scissors edge of hair, he is culpable. And how much is a full scissors edge? Said Rab Judah, two hairs. But it was taught. But in respect of baldness, the standard is to say. And likewise, in respect of baldness, the standard is to. It was taught. Likewise, if one plucks out a full scissors edge of hair on the Sabbath, he is culpable. And how much is a full scissors edge? To our Eliezer said one. But the sages agree with our Eliezer in the case of one who picks out white hairs from black ones that he is culpable even for one. And this is interdicted even on weekdays. For it is said neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. It was taught. Our Simeon B. Eliezer said as for a nail, the greater part of which is severed and shreds of skin the largest portions of which are severed from the body by hand it is permitted wholly to remove them if one severs them with a utensil he is liable to a sin offering is there anything which if done with a utensil renders one liable to a sin offering yet is permitted by hand at the very outset this is its meaning if the greater portions thereof are severed by hand it is permitted to remove them wholly if done with a utensil one is not culpable yet it is prohibited if the greater portions thereof are not severed if wholly removed by hand one is not culpable yet it is prohibited with a utensil one is liable to a sin offering rab judah said the halachagas as our simeon b eliezer said rabbi barhan in our yohanan's name providing they are severed towards the top so that they paint him likewise if a woman plates etc she who plates paints or rouges on what score is she culpable or said in the name of our jose son of barhan she who Plates on the score of weaving, she who paints on the score of writing, she who rouges on account of spinning, said the rabbis before our Abawar, then weaving, writing, and spinning done in this way, rather said our Abawar, Jose, son of Arhanna's statement was explained to me, thus Talmud, Mosh of Bath, she who paints is culpable on the score of dying, she who plates and rouges on the score of building, is this then the manner of building, even so as our Simeon Bimanesia expounded, and the Lord God built the rib into a woman, this teaches that the Holy One blessed be, he plated Eve's hair and brought her to Adam, for in the sea towns plating is called building, it was taught our Simeon B. Eliezer said, if a woman plates hair, paints the eyes, or rouges the face, if she does this to herself, she is not culpable, if to her companion she is culpable, and thus did our Simeon B. Eliezer say on our Eliezer's authority, a woman must not apply paint to her face because she dies, our rabbis. Taught one who milk sets milk for curdling and makes cheese the standard is the size of a dry fig if one sweeps the floor lays the dust by sprinkling water and removes loaves of honey if he does this unwittingly on the Sabbath he is liable to a sign offering if he does it deliberately on a festival he is flagellated with forty lashes this is our Eliezer's view but the sages say in both cases it is forbidden only as a Shabbat Arnam and Begiria visited Nihardia he was asked if one milks on what score is he culpable on the score of milking he replied if one sets milk or what score is he culpable on the score of setting milk he replied if one makes cheese on what score is he liable on account of making cheese he replied your teacher must have been a reed cutter in the marsh they jeered at him so he went and asked in the Beth Hamid Rash said to him he who milks is liable on account of unloading he who sets milk is liable on account of selecting he who makes cheese is liable on account of building if one sweeps lays the dust and removes loaves of honey if he does this unwittingly on the Sabbath he is liable to a sin offering if he does it deliberately on a festival he is flagellated with forty lashes this is our Eliezer's view our Eliezer observed what is our Eliezer's reason because it is written and he dipped if in the forest of honey now what is the connection between the forest and honey but it is to teach you just as a forest he who detaches off from it on the Sabbath is liable to a sin offering so our loaves of honey he who removes honey therefom is liable to a sin offering a mimar permitted sprinkling the floors in Mahosa he argued what is the reason that the rabbi said that it is forbidden it is lest one come to level up depressions in the earth and floor here there are no depressions rabbi Tosfa found rabbi is suffering discomfort on account of the heat other
Occasion he found him sitting and teaching yet our Simeon admits that if it is perforated to the extent of making it clean there is culpability said he to him seeing that I ask you about a root that is over against the perforation and you gave me no reply can there be a doubt concerning a pot that is perforated to the extent of making it clean I've observed if the stictum of R0 was stated it was stated thus yet our Simeon agrees that if it is perforated below the capacity of A. Root if there is culpability Rabba said there are five principles in the case of an earthen utensil I if it has a perforation sufficient only for a liquid to run out it is clean and that it cannot be defiled when already a mutilated vessel yet it is still a utensil in respect of sanctifying the water of lustration therein too if it has a perforation sufficient for a liquid to run in it is clean in respect of sanctifying the water of lustration therein yet it is still a utensil to render. Its plants fit to become unclean. Three, if it has a perforation as large as a small root, it is clean in respect of making its plants fit to become defiled. Yet it is still a utensil in that it can hold olives. Four, if it has a perforation large enough to allow olives to fall out, it is clean in that it cannot hold olives. Yet it is still a utensil to contain pomegranates. B, if tea has a perforation large enough to allow pomegranates to fall through, it is clean in respect of all things. But if it is closed with an airtight lid, it ranks as a utensil unless the greater portion thereof is broken. RC said, I have heard that the standard of an earthen vessel is a hole large enough to allow a pomegranate to fall out. Said Robert to him, perhaps you heard this only of a vessel closed with a tight fitting lid, but it was Robert himself who said, if it is closed with a tight fitting lid, it ranks as a utensil unless the greater portion thereof is broken. There is no difficulty. Talmud, Moss. Shabbatha the one refers to large ones the other two small ones R.C. said that the Tanaim learned as for an earthen vessel its standard is a hole large enough to admit a liquid while one merely sufficient to allow a liquid to run out was mentioned only in connection with a mutilated vessel what is the reason said Marzitra son of Arnaman because people do not say let us bring one fragment for another Allah said two Amram in Palestine differ on this matter is Arhose son of Arabin. And Arhose son of Zab the one maintains the standard is a hole large enough to allow a pomegranate to fall out while the other rules as large as a small root and your sign is whether one increases or whether one diminishes our Hina Bikahana said in our Eliza's name as for an earthen vessel its standard is a hole large enough to allow olives to fall out and Markashi son of Rabbah completes the statement in our Eliza's name and then they rank as vessels of dungstone or clay which do not Contract uncleanness either by biblical or by rabbinical law but in respect to the law of a tight fitting lid it ranks as a vessel unless the greater portion thereof is broken through. C-H-A-P-T-E-R-X I mission if one throws an article from private into public ground or from public into private ground he is culpable from one private domain to another and public ground lies between our Akiva holds him liable but the sages declare him exempt how so if there are two balconies facing each other in the street he who reaches over or throws an article from one to the other is not culpable if both are on the same story he who reaches over is culpable while he who throws is not. For thus was the service of the Levites two wagons stood behind each other in public ground and they reached over the boards from one to another but did not throw Talmud, Moshe, Bath, Begamara consider throwing is a derivative of carrying out where is carrying out itself written said are Yohan and scripture said and Moses gave commandment and they caused the proclamation to pass throughout the camp etc. Now where was Moses stationed in the camp of the Levites which was public ground and he said to the Israelites do not carry out and fetch from your private dwellings into public ground but how do you know that this was on the Sabbath perhaps this happened during the week the reason being that the material was completely adequate as it is written for the stuff they had was sufficient etc. The meaning of passing through is learned from its employment in connection with the day of atonement here it is written and they caused the proclamation to pass throughout the camp whilst there. It is written, and shalt thou cause a loud trumpet to pass through as see the land, just as there the references to the day of the interdict. So here too the day of the interdict is meant. We have thus found an interdict for carrying out once do we know that carrying in is forbidden, that is common sense. Consider it is transference from one domain to another. What does it matter whether one carries out or carries in? Nevertheless, carrying out is a primary labor, whereas carrying in is a derivative. Yet let us consider one is culpable for both. Why is one designated a principal and the other a derivative labor? The practical difference is that if one performs two principal or two derivative labors together, he is liable to two sacrifices, whereas if he performs a principal labor and its derivative, he is liable only to one. But according to our Eliezer who imposes liability for a derivative when performed conjointly with the principal, why is one called a principal and the other derivative that which was of account in the tabernacle is designated a principle whereas that which was not of account in the tabernacle is designated a derivative alternatively that which is written is designated a principle whereas that which is not written is designated a derivative again as to what we learned if one throws an article four cubits onto a wall above ten handbreadths it is as though he throws it into the air if below ten it is as though he throws it onto the ground and he who throws an article four cubits along the ground is culpable how do we know that he who throws an article four cubits in the street is culpable said Arjosai because the curtain weavers threw their needles to each other of what use are needles to weavers rather say because the sewers threw their needles to each other but perhaps they sat close together then they would reach each other with their needles yet perhaps they sat within four cubits of each other rather Said Arhista because the curtain weavers threw the clue into the curtain but the other worker still has the distaff in his hand he refers to the last manipulation but it passed through a place of non-liability rather say because the curtain weavers threw the clue to those who would borrow it from them yet perhaps they sat near each other then they would touch each other on making the border yet perhaps they sat in irregular lines moreover did they borrow from each other surely Ludatot. Every man from his work which they wrought he wrought of his own work stuff but not of his neighbors again how do we know that if one carries an article four cubits in the street he is culpable rather the whole law of transporting four cubits in the street is known by tradition Rab Judah said in Samuel's name the offense of the gatherer of sticks was that he carried them four cubits over public ground in the very that it was taught he cut them off our Ahabi Jacob said he tied them. Together in respect of what is the practical difference in respect of Rab's dictum for Rab said I found a secret scroll of the school of our high wherein it is written Isi Judah said there are 39 principal labors but one is liable only for one one and no more surely we learned the principal labors are 40 less one and we pondered thereon why state the number and are Yohanan answered to teach that if one performs all of them in one state of unawareness he is liable for each. Separately say for one of these he is not culpable now Rab Judah is certain that he who carries in the street is culpable the Beretha is certain that he who cuts off is culpable while our Ahabi Jacob is certain that lie who binds is culpable thus one master holds this at least is not in doubt while the other master holds that at least is not in doubt our rabbis taught the gatherer was Zelophehad and thus it is said and while the children of Israel were in the wilderness they found a man. Gathering sticks, etc. Whilst elsewhere it is said our father died in the wilderness, just as there's a is meant, so here too Zalofihad is meant. This is our Akiba's view, said Arjuna be to him, Akiba. In either case, you will have to give an account for your statement if you are right. The Torah shielded him while you reveal him, and if not, you cast a stigma upon a righteous man, Talmud, Moshe, Batha, but surely he learns a Gazurisha while he did not learn the Gazurisha while then of which sinners was he of those who presumed to go up to the top of the mountain. Similarly, you read, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against them, and he departed. This teaches that Aaron too became leprous. This is our Akiba's view, said Arjuna be to him, Akiba. In either case, you will have to give an account if you are right. The Torah shielded him while you disclose him, and if not, you cast a stigma upon a righteous man, but it is written against them that was merely with a rebuke. Was taught in accordance with the view that Aaron too became leprous, for it is written, and Aaron turned wai into Miriam, and behold, she was leprous, and it was taught that means that he became free but not from his leprosy. Rushlakish said, He who entertains a suspicion against innocent men is bodily afflicted, for it is written, and Moses said, But behold, they will not believe me, but it was known to the Holy One, blessed be he that Israel would believe, said he to him, They are believers. And the descendants of believers, whereas thou wilt ultimately disbelieve, they are believ
a cross but below ten all agree that he is culpable what is the reason an object caught up is as at rest said our joseph this question was asked by our Hista and our hamna is solved it for him from this if one removes an object from one private domain to another and it passes through the street itself our akiba declares him liable while the sages exempt him now since it states through the street itself it is obvious that they differ where it is below ten now in which case shall we say in the case of one who carries it across is he culpable only when it is below ten but not when it is above ten surely our Eliezer said if one carries out a burden above ten handbreadths from the street level he is culpable for thus was the carrying of the children of Kohat hence it must surely refer to throwing and one is culpable only when it is below ten but not when it is above ten this proves that they differ in whether an object caught up is as at rest this proves it now he or him differs from a Eliezer for our Eliezer said our Akiba declared him culpable even when it is above ten but as to what is stated through the street itself that is to teach you the extent of the rabbi's ruling now he or Eliezer differs from our Hilkiah Bitobi for our Hilkiah Bitobi said within three handbreadths from the ground all agree that he is culpable above ten all agree that he is not culpable between three and ten we come to the controversy of our Akiba and the rabbis it was taught likewise within three all agree that he is liable above ten it is prohibited only as a Shabbat and if they are both his own grounds it is permitted at the very outset between three and ten our Akiba ruled him culpable while the sages exempt him the master said and if they are both his own grounds it is permitted shall we say that this is a refutation of Rab for it was stated if there are two houses on the two opposite sides of a street Rabbi son of Arhuna said in Rab's name one may not throw an object from one to another while Samuel ruled it is permitted to throw from one to another but did we not establish that law is referring e.g. to the case where one house is higher and one is lower so that the object may fall into the street and he come to fetch it or his da ask our hamna other state our hamna ask our his da how do we know this principle which the rabbi stated is whatever is separated by less than three handbreadths is as joint said he to him because it is impossible for the street to be trimmed with the plane and shears if so the same should apply to three also moreover when we learned if one lets down walls from above to below if they are three handbreadths high above the ground if the sukkah is unfit hence if they are less than three it is fit what can be said there the reason is that it is a partition through which goats can enter that is well for below what can be said for above rather the fact is that whatever is separated by Less than three handbreadths is regarded as joint as a law received on tradition or rabbis taught if one throws an article from public to public ground and private ground lies between rabbi holds him liable but the sages exempt him rab and Samuel both assert rabbi impose liability only in the case of covered in private ground when we say that the house is as though it were full but not if it is uncovered our hand is set in rab Judah's name and Samuel's name rabbi held him liable to two sacrifices one on account of carrying out and another on account of carrying in now our hand is sat studying and this presented a difficulty to him Talmud, Moshe Bath B shall we say that rabbi holds one liable for a derivative when performed conjointly with its principle but surely it was taught rabbi said words to barim the words how to barim easily are the words this indicates the 39 labor stated to Moses at Sinai said our Joseph to him you learn it in reference to this end. So find rabbi self-contradictory we learn it in reference to our Judah's ruling and find no difficulty for it was taught if one throws an article from private to public ground and it traverses four cubits over the public ground our Judah holds him liable whereas the sages exempt him whereon rab Judah said in Samuel's name our Judah holds him liable to two sacrifices one on account of transporting from private ground and a second on account of carrying over public ground for if you think that he holds him liable to one only it follows that the rabbis exempt him completely but surely he has carried it out from private to public ground but how so perhaps I may tell you after all that our Judah holds him liable to one only and the rabbis exempt him completely yet as to the question how is that possible it is where e.g. he declared immediately on issuing into the street let it come to rest and they differ in this our Judah holds we say an object caught up in the air is as at rest and his intention is fulfilled while the rabbis hold we do not say an object caught up is as at rest and his intention is not fulfilled but for a derivative performed simultaneously with its principle our Judah does not impose liability you cannot think so for it was taught our Judah adds the closing up of the web and the evening of the wolf said they to him closing the web is included in stretching the threads and evening the wolf is included in weaving does that not mean that one performs both of them together which proves that our Judah imposed liability for a derivative performed simultaneously with its principle why so perhaps it really means that each was performed separately our Judah not imposing liability for a derivative performed simultaneously with its principle and they differ in this our Judah holds these are principal labors while the rabbis hold these are derivatives the proof of this assumption is that it is stated our Judah adds etc now it is well if you agree that they are principal labors on his view for then what does he add he adds principles but if you say that they are derivatives what does he add it was stated likewise rabbi and our joseph both maintain our judah imposed liability only for one sacrifice rabbi observed to our ashi but on our original assumption that our judah held him liable to two if he desires it to alight here he does not desire it to alight there and vice versa said he to him it means that he declared wherever it pleases let it come to rest it is obvious that if one intends throwing an object eight cubits but throws it for it is as though he wrote shem as part of eshemian but what if one intends throwing an object four cubits but throws it eight do we say surely he has carried it out or perhaps it has surely not alighted where he desired but is this not what rabbi observed to our ashi and he answered him it means that he said wherever it pleases let it come to rest and as to what you say it is the same as writing Shem as part of Eshemian how compare there without writing Shem Eshemian cannot be written but here without intentionally throwing it for cannot one throw it eight our rabbis taught if one throws an object from public to public ground and private ground lies between them if it traverses four cubits over public ground he is culpable Talmud, Mosh of less than four cubits he is not culpable what does this inform us this is what he informs us that similar domains combine and we do not say an object caught up in the air is as at rest our Samuel B. Judah said in our Abba's name and our Huna's name in the name of Rab if one carries an article four cubits in covered public ground he is liable because it is not like the banners of the wilderness but that is not so for the wagons surely were covered and yet Rab said in our high's name as for the wagons beneath them between them and at their sides it was public ground Rab referred to the interspaces consider what was the length of the wagons five cubits what was the breadth of the board a cubit and a half and how many rows could be placed three thus leaving half a cubit and when you divided among them the spaces they are as joined do you think that the boards lay on their width they were laid on their thickness yet even so what was the thickness of the board one cubit how many rows were then laid four thus leaving a cubit and when you divided among them the spaces they are as joined now on the view that the boards were one cubit thick at the bottom but tapered to a finger breadth it is well but on the view that just as they were a cubit thick at the bottom so at the top two what can be said said Arkahana they were arranged in class formation now where were they placed on the top of the wagon but the wagon itself was covered Talmud, Moshe Bath B said Samuel the bottom consisted of last our rabbis taught the boards were one cubit thick at the bottom but tapered to a finger breadth at the top where it is said they shall be entire tamam onto the top thereof whilst elsewhere it is said the waters ended tamu and were cut off this is our Judah's view our Nehemiah said just as their thickness at the bottom was a cubit so at the top was their thickness a cubit for it is said and in like manner they shall be entire but surely tamam is written that teaches that they were to come whole and not divided and the other two surely is written in like manner that teaches that they were not to erect them irregularly now on the view that just as they were a cubit thick at the bottom so were they at the top it is well thus it is written and from the hinder part of the tabernacle westward thou shalt make six boards and two boards shalt thou make for the corners of the tabernacle thus the breadth of these comes and fills in the thickness of those but on the view that they were a cubit thick at the bottom while they Tapered at the top to a finger breadth, one receded and the other protruded. They were plain mountain fashion, and the middle bar in the midst of the boards shall pass through from end to end. Tanned, taught it lay there by a miracle. Moreover, thou shalt make the tabernacle with ten curtains. The length of each curtain shall be eight and twenty cubits. Throw their length over the breadth of the tabernacle. How much was it? Twenty-eight cubits.
The tenth this was to cover the cubit of the sockets that is Arjuna's view. Our Nehemiah said it was to cover the cubit of the boards cast their breadth over the length of the tabernacle. How much was it? Forty-four cubits subtract thirty for the roof leaves. Fourteen subtract two for the doubling over as it is written. And thou shalt double over the sixth curtain in the forefront of the tent leaves. Twelve. Now according to Arjuna it is well thus it is written the half curtain that remaineth shall. Hang, but according to our Nehemiah, what is meant by the half curtain shall hang, it shall hang over its companions. The school of Arishmael taught what did the tabernacle resemble a woman who goes in the street and her skirts trail after her. Our rabbis taught the boards were cut out and the sockets were grouped. Talmud, Mosh of Bath, also the clasps in the loops looked like stars set in the sky. Our rabbis taught the lower curtains were made of blue wool, purple wool, crimson thread, and fine linen, whilst the upper ones were of goat's hair manufacture and greater wisdom skill is mentioned in connection with the upper than in connection with the lower. For whereas of the lower ones it is written, and all the women that were was hearted did spin with their hands in reference to the upper ones it is written, and all the women whose hearts stirred them up in wisdom spun the goats, and it was taught in our Nehemiah's name it was washed direct on the goats and spun on the goats if there are two balconies, etc. Rab set in our highest name as for the wagons beneath them between them and at their sides. It was public ground. Have they said between one wagon and another as its side there was a space of a full wagon length. And how much was a wagon length? Five cubits. Why was it this length necessary? Four and a half would have sufficed so that the boards should not press against each other. Rabba said the sides of the wagon equal the fit internal breadth of the wagon. And how much was the internal breadth of the wagon? Two cubits and a half. Why was this necessary? A cubit and a half would have sufficed in order that the boards should not jump about. Then as to what we have as an established fact that the path with the public ground must be sixteen cubits since we learned it from the tabernacle. Surely the public ground of the tabernacle was only fifteen. There was an additional cubit where a Levite stood so that if the board slipped he would support. The mission as for the bank of a cistern and a rock which are ten hand breadth high and four in breadth if one removes out from them or places out upon them is is culpable if less than this he is not culpable tomorrow why state the bank of a cistern and a rock let him the tennis state a cistern and a rock hence the supports are Yohanan who set a cistern together with the bank thereof combined to give a height of ten hand breadths it was taught likewise as for a cistern in public. Ground ten hand breadths deep and four broad square we may not draw water from it on the Sabbath Talmud, Mosh of Bath be unless a wall ten hand breadths high is made around it and one may not drink from it on the Sabbath unless he brings his head and the greater part of his body into it and a cistern and its bank combined to give a height of ten Armordicae ask Rabba what of a pillar in the street ten high and four broad and one throws an article and it alights upon it do we say surely. The removal is effected in transgression and the depositing is effected in transgression or perhaps since it comes from a place of non-liability it is not a culpable action said he to him as is treated in our Mishnah he then went and asked it of our Joseph said he to him as is treated in our Mishnah he went and asked it of Abbe said he to him as is treated in our Mishnah you all spit with each other's spittle cried he to them do you not hold thus they replied surely we learned if one removes ought from them or places ought upon them he is culpable but perhaps our Mishnah treats of a needle he suggested to them it is impossible even for a needle not to be slightly raised if the rock may have a projecting point or if the needle may lie in a cleft our Mishnah said our Yohan and propounded what of a wall in a street ten high but not four broad surrounding a carmelite and converting it thereby into private ground and one throws an article and it alights on. The top of it do we say since it is not forbrought it is a place of non-liability or perhaps since it converts it into private ground it is as though it were all filled up said well this may be solved before she or I if the wall serves as a partition for something else how much more so for itself this was stated to our high be as she said in Rab's name and thus said our Isaac and our Yohanan's name in the case of a wall in the street ten high and not forbrought surrounding a carmelite and converting it into private ground he who throws an article which alights thereon is culpable if it serves as a partition for something else how much more so for itself or Yohanan propounded what of a pit nine hand breadths deep and one removes one segment from it and makes it up to ten do we say the taking up of the object and the making of the partition come simultaneously hence he is culpable or is he not culpable now should you say since the partition was not ten originally he is not Liable what of a pit ten deep and one lays the segment therein and thus diminishes it as depth here the depositing of the article and the removal of the partition comes simultaneously is he culpable or not you may solve it for him by his own dictum for we learned if one throws an article four cubits onto a wall if above ten hand breadths it is as though he throws it into the air if below it is as though light throws it onto the ground and he who throws an article four cubits along it. Ground is culpable now we discussed this surely it does not stay there and our Yohanan answered this refers to a juicy cake of figs yet why so surely it diminishes the four cubits there he does not render it as not here he does render it as not Rabba propounded what if one throws a board and it alights upon poles what does he ask below where the depositing of the article and the constituting of the partition comes simultaneously but that is our Yohanan's problem when does Rabba ask e.g. If he throws a board with an article on top of it, what then do we say since they come simultaneously? It is like the depositing of the article and the making of a partition at the same time, or perhaps since it is impossible for it, the article not to be slightly raised and then alight, it is like the making of a partition and the subsequent depositing of an article. The question stands over Rabba said, I am certain water lying upon water that is its natural rest and nut upon water Talmud. Mosh of Batha that is not its natural rest, Rabba propounded. If a nut lies in a vessel and the vessel floats on water, what is the law? Do we regard the nut and behold it is at rest, or do we regard the vessel and behold it is not at rest? The question stands over in respect to oil floating upon wine. Are Yohan and Binuri and the rabbis differ for we learned if oil is floating upon wine and a tea bullion touches the oil, he disqualifies the oil only. Are Yohan and Binuri said both are attached to each. Other Abbe said if a pit in the street is ten deep and eight broad and one throws a mat into it he is culpable but if he divides it with the mat he is not culpable now according to Abbe who is certain that the mat annuls the partition a segment certainly annuls the partition but according to our Yohanan to whom a segment is a problem a mat certainly does not annul the partition Abbe also said if a pit in the street ten deep and four broad is full of water and one throws an object therein he is culpable but if it is full of produce and one throws an object therein he is not culpable what is the reason water does not annul the partition whereas produce does annul the partition it was taught likewise if one throws an object from the sea into a street or from a street into the sea he is not liable our Simeon said if there is in the place where he throws it a separate cavity ten deep and four broad he is liable mission if one throws an article four cubits onto a wall. Above ten hand breadths it is as though he throws it into the air if below it is as though it throws it onto the ground and he who throws an article four cubits along the ground is culpable tomorrow but it does not stay there said our Yohanan we learned of a juicy cake of figs Rab Judah said in Rab's name in the name of our high if one throws an article above ten hand breadths and it goes and alights in a cavity of any size we come to a controversy of our Meir and the rabbis according to our Meir who holds we imaginarily hollow out to complete it he is liable according to the rabbis who maintain we do not hollow out to complete it he is not liable it was taught likewise if one throws an article above ten and it goes and alights in a cavity of any size our Meir declares him culpable whereas the rabbis exempt him Rab Judah said in Rab's name if a sloping mound attains a height of ten hand breadths within a distance of four and one throws an object and it alights on top of it he is culpable it was taught likewise if an alley is level with within but becomes a slope towards the main street or is level with the main street but becomes a slope within that alley requires neither a lath nor a beam our hand of a beam Eliel said if a sloping mound attains a height of ten hand breadths within a distance of four and one throws an object and it alights on top of it he is culpable mission if one throws an object within four cubits but it rolls beyond four cubits. He is not culpable beyond four cubits but it rolls within four cubits he is culpable tomorrow but it did not rest beyond four cubits said our Yohan and providing it rests beyond four cubits on something whatever its size it was taught likewise if one thro
Twice that as well as it informs us this I traversing with difficulty is designated traversing to use with difficulty is not designated use but why state pool twice one refers to summer and the other to winter and both are necessary for if only one were stated I would say that is only in summer when it is the practice of people to walk there and to cool themselves but in winter it is not so and if we were informed this of winter I would say that because they are mustained they do not object but in summer it is not so Abe said they are necessary I might argue that is only where it the pool is not four cubits across but where it is four cubits across one goes around it Arashi said they are necessary I might argue that is only where it the pool is four across but where it is not four one steps over it now Arashi is consistent with his opinion for Arashi said if one throws an object and it alights on the junction of a landing bridge he is culpable since Many pass across admission if one throws an object from the sea to dry land or from dry land to the sea from the sea to a ship or from a ship to the sea or from one ship to another he is not culpable if ships are tied together one may carry from one to another if they are not tied together though lying close to each other one may not carry from one to another tomorrow it was stated as for a ship Arhuna said a projection whatever its size is stuck out over the side of the ship and water may then be drawn from the sea are his and Rabbi son of Arhuna both maintain one rigs up an enclosure for hand breadth square and draws water now Arhuna said a projection whatever its size is stuck out and water may then be drawn he holds that the Carmelite is measured from the sea dash bed so that the airspace is a place of non-liability hence logically not even a projection is required but it is placed there to serve as a distinguishing mark are his and Rabbi son of Arhuna both Maintain one rigs up an enclosure four square and draws water they hold that the Carmelite is measured from the surface of the water the water being a solid ground hence if a place of four square is not set up one transports the water from a Carmelite to private ground Arnam and said to Rabbi Abba but according to Arhuna who said a projection whatever its size is stuck out and water may then be drawn but sometimes these are not ten and so one carries from a Carmelite to private ground said he to him it is well known that a ship cannot travel in less than ten hand breadths of water but it has a projecting point said our Safra sounders preceded Arnam and B. Isaac said to our high B. Abin, but according to our Hista and Rabbi son of Arhuna who maintain one rigs up an enclosure four square and draws water how could he throw out his waste water and should you answer that he throws it likewise through that same enclosure it is surely repulsive to him he Throws it against the sides of the ship, but there is his force behind it. The sages did not prohibit one's force in connection with the Carmelite. And once do you say this because it was taught as for a ship one may not carry, e.g., water from it into the sea or from the sea into a Talmud. Moshe Bathe or Judah said, if it is ten hand breadths deep internally, but not ten high, one may transport from it into the sea, but not from the sea into it. Why not from the sea into it? Because we thus transport from a Carmelite into private ground and from it into the sea. One also transports from private ground to a Carmelite. Hence, it must surely mean on its edge, which proves that they do not forbid one's force in connection with the Carmelite. This proves it. Arhuna said, as for the canal boats of messing, we may carry in them only within a distance of four cubits, but we say this only if they lack a breadth of four hand breadths at less than three from the bottom edge. But if they have a breadth of four at less than three we have no objection or if they are filled with canes and bulrushes we have no objection our nom and demur to this but let us say stretch and bring the partitions down was it not taught our Jose son of our Judah said if one plants a rod in the street at the top of which is a basket and throws an article and it comes to rest upon it he is liable this proves that we say stretch and bring the partitions down so here too let us say stretch and bring the partition down our Joseph demur to this yet did they not hear what was said by Rab Judah in Rab's name which some trace to our high and it was taught thereon but the sages exempt him said Abbe to him and do you not hold us but it was taught if a pillar in the street is ten hand breadths high and four broad but its base is not four and this narrow portion is three in height and one throws an article and it alights upon it he is liable this proves that we say stretch and bring the Partitions down so here to stretch and bring the partition down hence Abe continues this is surely not an argument there it is partition through which goats can pass but here there are partitions through which goats cannot pass Araha son of Araha said to Arashi but in the case of a ship too there is a passing through a fish the passing through a fish is not designated passing through he replied and whence do you say this for our table ask Rab can a suspended partition make a ruin permissible for carrying therein and he answered him a suspended partition makes something permissible only Talmud Mosh of Bath be in water this being a leniency which the rabbis permitted in connection with water but why so surely there is a passing through a fish hence infer from this that the passing through a fish is not designated passing through if ships are tied together etc this is obvious said Rabba this is necessary only to permit carrying by a small boat lying between them said our Safra to him by Moses do you say right we learned one may carry from one to another rather said our Safra it is necessary only to teach that one may combine them and carry from one to another and as it was taught if ships are tied to each other one may combine them and carry from one to another if they are separated they become prohibited if they are rejoined whether in ignorance or willfully accidentally or erroneously they revert to their original permitted condition likewise if mats are spread i.e. hung up one may combine them and carry from one to another if they are rolled up they become prohibited if they are yes period whether in ignorance or willfully accidentally or erroneously they revert to their original permitted condition for every partition that is made on the Sabbath whether ignorantly or willfully is designated a partition but that is not so for did not our nom and say they learned this only in respect of throwing yet it is forbidden to carry their in our Naman's dictum was stated in reference to willful erection. Samuel said, even if they are tied by a cloak ribbon, how is that if it can hold them together? It is obvious if it cannot hold them together. Why does it suffice? In truth, it is one that can hold them together. But Samuel comes to discount his own dictum, for we learned if one ties it a ship with something that holds it still, it brings defilement to it. With something that does not hold it still, it does not bring defilement to it. Whereon Samuel observed, providing that it is fastened with iron chains, now it is only with respect to defilement where it is written one that it's slain with a sword. Teaching the sword is like the slain that that Samuel's dictum is so, but with respect to the Sabbath, since it can hold it still, even if it be with the ribbon of a cloak, it is sufficient. Talmud, Mosh of Bath, Amishnah, if one throws an article and recalls that it is the Sabbath after it leaves his hand and another catches. It or a dog catches it or it is burnt he is not liable if one throws an article in order to inflict a wound whether in man or in beast and he recalls that it is the Sabbath before the wound is inflicted he is not liable this is the general principle all who are liable to sin offerings are liable only if the beginning and the end of the forbidden action are unwitting if their beginning is unwitting while their end is willful if their beginning is willful while their end is unwitting they are not liable unless their beginning and end are unwitting tomorrow hence if it alighted he is liable but surely he did not remind himself and we learned all who are liable to sin offerings are liable only if the beginning and the end of the forbidden action are unwitting said Arkahana the last clause is applicable to a bolt and a cord you say a bolt and a cord but is not its tie in his hand it means e.g. that he intended to inflict a wound but this too we learned if one throws an article in order to inflict a wound whether in man or in beast and he recalls that it is the Sabbath before the wound is inflicted he is not liable rather said Rabbah it refers to one who carries but the statement this is the general principle is stated with reference to throwing rather said Rabbah two contingencies are taught thus if one throws an article and recalls that it is the Sabbath after it leaves his hand or even if he does not recall it but another catches it or a dog catches it or it is burnt he is not liable or as he said it the mission is defective and teaches this if one throws an article and recalls that it is the Sabbath after it leaves his hand and another catches it or a dog catches it or it is burnt he is not liable but if it alights he is liable that however is said only if he forgot again but if he did not forget again he is not liable because all who are liable to sin offerings are liable only if the beginning and the end of the forbidden action are Unwitting this is the general principle all who are liable to sin offerings etc. It was stated if the object travels two cubits unwittingly two cubits deliberately and two cubits unwittingly Rabbi ruled he the thrower is not liable Rabbi said he is liable Rabbi ruled he is not liable even according to our Gamaliel who maintained knowledge in
Day of Atonement Armagir said if in addition it is the Sabbath and he carries it out in his mouth he is liable said they to him that does not fall under this designation yet why so surely this is not the normal way of carrying out but what you must say is since he intends it this his design renders it his mouth the right place so here too since he intends it this his design renders it the mouth of the dog or of the furnace a place for depositing Talmud, Mosh of Bath B-C-H-A-P-T-E-R. XII mission if one builds how much must he build to be culpable he who builds however little and he who chisels and he who strikes with a hammer or with an ADZE and he who bores a hole however little is culpable this is the general principle whoever does work on the Sabbath and his work endures is culpable Arsimi and Bigamaliel said he too is culpable who beats with the sledgehammer on the anvil at the time of his work because he is as one who improves his work Gemara however little what is that fit for set our Jeremiah because a poor man digs a hole to hide his perutoth therein similarly in connection with the tabernacle such a labor was performed because those who sewed the curtain dug holes to put away their needles therein set a base since they would rust they would not do so rather say because a poor man makes the feet of a small stove to place a pot upon it similarly in connection with the tabernacle such a labor was performed because those who boiled the dyes for dying. The curtains when their materials the finished dyes were insufficient they made the feet of a small stove to place a small kettle upon it said our Ahabi Jacob there is no poverty in the place of wealth rather say because a householder who finds a hole in his dwelling closes it up similarly in connection with the tabernacle such a labor was performed because when a board was attacked by woodworms one dropped mold and lead into it and closed it Samuel said he who arranges a building stone is culpable and objection is raised if one places the stone and another the mortar he who places the mortar is culpable but according to your you consider the second clause our Jose said even if one lifts up the stone and sets it on the row of stones he is liable rather the fact is that there are three modes of building this in connection with the lower the middle and the upper rows the lower requires arranging in place and filling earth around it the middle requires order to whilst the top merely requires placing and he who chisels on what score is a chiseler culpable rap set on the score of building while Samuel said on the score of beating with a hammer if one makes a hole in a hand cook rap set he is culpable on account of building while Samuel said on account of beating with a hammer if one inserts a pin through the eyelet of a spade rap set he is liable on account of building while Samuel said on account of beating with a hammer now these are all Necessary for if we were informed of the first I would argue in that case rab rule so because such is a mode of building but if one makes a hole in a hand coop seeing that this is not a mode of building I would maintain that he agrees with Samuel and if we were informed of this latter one only here does rab rule thus because it is similar to a building since it is made for ventilation but as for inserting a pin through the eyelet of a spade which is not a mode of building I would say that he agrees with Samuel and if we were told of this latter one only here does Samuel rule thus but in the former two I would maintain that he agrees with Samuel hence they are necessary our Nathan B. Ash I asked are you Hanan on what grounds is a chiseler culpable he intimated to him with his hand on account of beating with a hammer but we learned he who chisels and he who beats with a hammer say he who chisels who beats with a hammer come and hear Talmud, Mosh of who bores a Hole however little is culpable as for rabbit as well it looks like boring a hole for a building but according to Samuel surely this is not a completion of work the meaning here is that he pierces it with an iron pick and leaves it therein so that that is the completion of its work this is the general principle what does this is the general principle at it adds a case of hollowing out a compass in a cab measure our Simeon B. Gamaliel said he too is culpable who beats with the sledgehammer on the anvil etc what does he do rabbi and our Joseph both say because he trains his hand the sons of Rehobo found this difficult if so if one sees a labor being performed on the Sabbath he really culpable but Abay and Rabbo both say because those who beat out the metal plates of the tabernacle did thus it was taught likewise our Simeon B. Gamaliel said also he who beats with the sledgehammer on the anvil at the time of his work is culpable because those who beat out the metal plates of the tabernacle did thus Mishnah he who bluffs however little he who weeds and he who trims trees and he who cuts off young shoots however little is culpable he who gathers timber if in order to effect an improvement the standard of culpability is however little if for fuel as much as is required for boiling a light egg if one collects grass if to effect an improvement the standard of culpability is however little if for an animal s fodder a kid's mouthful tomorrow what is it fit for it is fit for planting the seeds of a pumpkin similarly in respect to the tabernacle such a labor was performed because it is fit for one stock of vegetable dies he who weeds and he who trims trees and he who cuts off young shoots our rabbis taught he who plucks and dives and he who cuts green shoots if for human consumption the standard of culpability is the size of a dry fig is for animal food a kid's mouthful if for fuel as much as is required for boiling a light egg if in Order to improve the soil, however, little are not all in order to improve the soil. Rabbi and our Joseph both say that the sages learned this of an unclear field. Abe said, You may even say that they spoke of a field that is not uncleared, but in a case where he has no intention, but surely Abe and Rabbi both said, Our Simeon admits in a case of cut off his head, but let him not die. This holds good only when he works in his neighbor's field. Mishnah, he who writes two letters, whether with his right or with his left hand of the same designation, or of two designations, or in two pigments in any language is culpable. Said our Jose, they declared one culpable for writing two letters only because he makes a mark, because thus did they write on each board of the tabernacle to know which was its companion. Our Judah said, We find a short name forming part of a long name, Shem, as part of S. Haman, or S. He will know as part of Nagar, as part of Daniel Gad, as part of Gadiel Gemara, as for his being. Culpable on account of his right hand that is well since that is the usual way of writing but why on account of his left hand seeing that it is not the usual way of writing said our Jeremiah they learned this of a left handed person and let his left hand be as the right hand of all other people and so let him be liable on account of his left but not his right hand rather said Abbe they learned this of one who can use both hands our Jacob the son of Jacob's daughter said the author of this is our Jose who said they declared one culpable for writing two letters only because he makes a mark but since the second clause is our Jose as the first clause is not our Jose the whole is our Jose our Judah said we find etc then according to our Judah one is culpable only on account of two letters of two designations but not two letters of the same designation but surely it was taught if a soul shall sin unwittingly against any of the commandments of the Lord concerning things which ought not to be done and shall do of one of them. I might think that one must write the whole noun or weave a whole garment or make a whole seed before he is guilty. Hence, if one is stated if of one, I might think that even if one writes only one letter or weaves a single thread or makes only one mesh of a seed, he is culpable. Talmud, Mosh of Bath, be therefore one is stated. How is this to be reconciled? One is liable only if he writes a short noun as part of a long noun, Shem as part of S. Haman, or S. Hemuel, no, as part of Nagardan, as part of Daniel Gad, as part of Gadiel, Arjuda said, even if one writes two letters of the same designation, he is liable. E. G. S. Hashtay, Thrar Gag, Haset, Arjose, is he then guilty on account of writing? Surely he is guilty only on account of making a mark because marks were made on each of the boards of the tabernacle to know which was its companion. Therefore, if one draws one line across two boards or two lines on one board, he is culpable. Arsimian said, and Shall do one I might think that one must write the whole noun or weave a complete garment or make a whole seed before he is liable therefore it is written of one if of one I might think that even if one writes one letter only or weaves one thread only or makes one mesh only in a seed he is guilty therefore one is stated how is this to be reconciled one is liable only when he performs an action the like of which stands on its own our Jose said and shall do one and shall to them sometimes. One sacrifice is incurred for all of them and others one is liable for each separately now it is incidentally taught our Judah said even if one only writes two letters of the same designation he is liable there is no difficulty one is his own view the other is his teachers for it was taught our Judah said in our Gamaliel's name even if one only writes two letters of the same designation he is liable e gs hashtay thrar now our Simeon is he not identical with the first tana and should you Answer they differ in respect of the AA of Aetzerica the first tana holding for writing the AA of Aetzerica one is not liable while our Simeon holds since it is contained in charms in general he is culpable
The Sabbath coupled with awareness of the forbidden nature of his labors are Judah said we find a short name forming part of a long name Arthur and similar the MEM of Shem is closed whereas that of S. Haimon is open said Arthas Da this proves that if a closed MEM is written open it is valid and objection is raised you can't have them it must be Kathabatam a perfect writing thus one must not write the Aleph as an I and the I as an Aleph the Beth as a Kaf or the Kaf as a Beth the Gimel as a Sade or the Sade as a Gimel the Daleth as a Resh or the Resh as a Daleth the Hat as a Hate or the Hate as a Head of Ab as a Yod or the Yod as a Bab as a Yin as a Nun or the Nun as a Zayin the Tate as a P or the P as a Tate bent letters straight or straight letters bent the MEM as a Samak or the Samak as MEM closed letters open or open letters closed an open section parasha may not be written closed nor a closed section open if one writes it as a song or if one writes a song. As the general text or if one writes it without ink or if one writes the names in gold if the scrolls thus written must be hidden here his da holds with the following tana for it was taught our Judah be but there is said in reference to the second day we miss him and their drink offerings is stated in reference to the sixth unisei ha and the drink offerings thereof in reference to the seventh kamish Adam after the ordinance this gives mem yod mem main water once we have a biblical intimation of the water libation now since if an open letter is written closed it is valid a closed letter is the same as if a closed letter is written open it is fit but how compare if an open letter is written closed talmud mosh of bath it s sanctity is enhanced for our his da said the mem and the samak which were in the table stood there by a miracle but as for a closed letter which is written open it s sanctity is diminished for our jeremiah other state our high beaver Said the double form of man's epoch was declared by the watchman prophets, but is that reasonable? Surely, as is written, these are the commandments teaching that a prophet may henceforth, i.e., after Moses, make no innovations, rather, they were in existence, but it was not known which were to be used immediately, and which finally, and the watchman came and fixed the mode of their employment, but still, these are the commandments teaches that a prophet may henceforth make no innovations, rather, they had forgotten them, and they, the watchman reinstituted them, it was stated above Arhista, said the MEM and the Samak, which were in the table, stood there by a miracle. Arhista also said the writing of the tables could be read from within, and without e.g., never Apollo would be read, Bubanbir in the mountain as Rahab Sar, they departed, as war as the rabbis told our Joshua, believe by children have come to the Beth Hamid Rash, and said things the like of which was not said even in the days of. Joshua the son of Nundas Aleph Beth means learn wisdom Aleph by the Gimel Dalet show kindness to the poor Jamal Dalen why is the foot of the Gimel stretched toward the Dalet because it is fitting for the benevolent to run after seek out the poor and why is the roof of the Dalet stretched out toward the Gimel because he the poor must make himself available to him and why is the face of the Dalet turned away from the Gimel because he must give him help in secret lest he be ashamed of him he bob that is the name of the Holy One blessed be he say in hate the odd the sequence teaches and if thou doest thus the Holy One blessed be he will sustain and he be gracious hand unto thee show goodness meet up to thee give thee a heritage your and bind a crown gather on thee in the world to come the open MEM and the closed MEM denote open teaching Mamar and close esoteric teaching the bent nun and the straight nun the faithful name and if Bent humble will ultimately be the faithful straight and some and supports him act the poor anium another interpretation devise any monic simon in the Torah and thus acquire memorize it the bent p and the straight p intimate and open mouth pay a closed mouth a bent sade and a straight sade the righteous sade is bent in this world the righteous is straightened in the next world but that is identical with the faithful bent and the faithful straightened. The writ added humility to his humility hence we learn that the Torah was given under great submissiveness cuff stands for Kadash holy resh for rasha wicked why is the face of the cup averted from the resh the holy one blessed be he said I cannot look at the wicked and why is the crown of the cup turned toward the resh the holy one blessed be he said if he repents I will bind the crown on him like mine and why is the foot of the cup suspended to show that if he repents he can enter. And be brought into God's favor through this opening that supports Resh Lakish for Resh Lakish said what is meant by surely he scorneth the scorners but he giveth grace unto the lowly if one comes to defile himself he is given an opening if one comes to cleanse himself he is helped chin stands for Shekhar falsehood taf or emeth truth why are the letters of Shekhar close together whilst those of emeth are far apart falsehood is frequent truth is rare and why does falsehood stand on one foot whilst truth has a brick like foundation truth can stand falsehood cannot stand at bashi that rejects me at the tiu shall I desire at him bashi that delighteth not in me by low hashak shall my name as him rest upon him gar he has defiled his body gufo shall I have mercy or him upon him doc he has closed my doors dolphate shall I not cut off his horns carnoth as far as the exegesis for the wicked but the interpretation for the righteous is at bashi thou are ashamed to sin at Abash then guard Dokai Dwelger in heaven Dok has wrapped there will be a barrier Hazaza between thee and Rath AFZA has ten nor wilt thou tremble Mr. Aze before Satan Satan Yam Cole the Prince of Gehenna said to the Holy One Blessed be he sovereign of the universe to the CM let all cold be consigned but the Holy One Blessed be he replied the Hospital Jivani spare has them because they have spurned BAATU sensual pleasures Jiv Dok has they are contract Dakim they are true Kanim they are righteous Sadikim Halak thou hast lack no portion Halak in them Umars and Sheth the Gehenna cried out before him sovereign of the universe my lord Mari satiate me Zenai with the seat of Sheth but he retorted Albam thou hast not in them Gandas whither shall I lead them to the garden Gand of Myrtles Hadis Hawath the Gehenna cried out before the Holy One Blessed be he sovereign of the universe I am faint I've with Hunger to which he relies as hack these are the seeds are o of Isaac is act are you can wait are I have his whole companies kiddeth of heathens whom I will give thee Talmud, Mosh of Bath Bimish if one writes two letters in one state of unawareness he is culpable if one writes within chemical seek rocky most can't or with anything that leaves a mark on the angle of two walls or on the two leaves tables of a ledger and they the two letters are read together he is culpable. If one writes on his flesh he is culpable he who scratches a mark on his flesh our Eliza declares him liable to a sin offering but the sages exempt him if one writes with a fluid with fruit juice with road dust or with writer's powder or WLTH anything that cannot endure he is not culpable if one writes with the back of his hand with his foot with his mouth or with his elbow if one writes one letter near other writing or if one writes upon writing if one intends writing a hate but writes two. Zayin in one letter on the ground and another on a beam if one writes on two walls of the house or on two leaves of a ledger which are not to be read together he is not culpable if one writes one letter as an abbreviation or Joshua B but there holds him liable whilst the sages exempt him Gamar Dio Inc is die with the Sam chemical is Sam or Bimansi Pro Rabbi Barhanna said its name is Sikarda Kimbos is Kamakankan Tim Rabbi Barhanna said in Samuel's name the blacking used by shoemakers. Or with anything that leaves a mark what does this add it adds what was taught by Arhanna if he writes it a divorce with the fluid of terrier or gallnut juice it is valid Arhai taught if he writes it with dust with a black pigment or with coal it is valid he who scratches a mark on his flesh etc it was taught Arlizer said to the sages but did not bend it or bring forth witchcraft from Egypt by means of scratches in the form of charms upon his flesh he was a fool answered the end. Proof cannot be a dis from fools if one writes one letter near other writing who teaches the said rabbi son of Arhunah it does not agree with our Elazer for if it agreed with our Elazer surely he maintained for one thread added to open stuff he is culpable if one writes upon writing who teaches the said Arhist it does not agree with our Judah for it was taught if one had to write the divine name but erroneously intended to write Judah YHWDH but omitted the Dalet he can trace his read writing pen over it and sanctify it this is our Judah's view but the sages maintain the divine name thus written is not of the most preferable it was taught if one writes one letter and completes a book there with or weaves one thread and completes a garment there with he is culpable who is the authority said rabbi son of Arhunah it is our Elazer who maintained for one thread added to open stuff he is culpable Arashi said you may even say
Have I appointed thee for the nations distinguished way? Have I made thee among the nations faithful name? And have I made thee to the nations? Are you Hanan on his own authority? Quoted Anaki, I am the Lord thy God, etc. I am myself. Nafshi have written the script. Ketabayah of the rabbis interpreted sweet speech. Amira Hanima writing a gift. Ketabayah of others state Anaki interpreted reverse. His scripture was given to Manyang. But Ketabayah faithful are its words. Any man in Amri the school of our Nathan quoted because thy way is perverse. He art before me. She the Asphir Gera saw Ariatha and turned aside Nathan the school of our Ishmael. Taught Carmel fresh ears round the car and full male Araha be Jacob quoted and he cursed me with a curse that is grievous. Numbers at this is an abbreviation. He is an adulterer. No FMO by the murderer Rosia and adversaries are an abomination to our Nam and be Isaac quoted. What shall we? Speak or how shall we clear ourselves? Nistadak, we are honest, Nikonim, we are righteous, Sadiqin, we are pure, Tihoram, we are submissive, Dakim, we are holy, Kadashim, Mishnah. If one writes two letters in two states of unawareness, one in the morning and one in the evening, our Gamaliel holds him liable, whilst the sages exempt him, Gamar, wherein do they differ? Our Gamaliel holds awareness in respect of half the standard is of no account, whilst the rabbis hold awareness in respect of half the standard is of account, CHAPTERXII, Mishnah, our Elizer said, he who weaves three threads at the beginning or one thread added to woven stuff is culpable, but the sages maintain whether at the beginning or at the end the standard for culpable, Elias, two threads, he who makes two meshes attaching them either to the cross pieces in or to the slips, carrows, or in a window seat or basket is culpable, and he who sows two stitches and he who tears in order to sow two stitches, is likewise. Culpable Gemara when our Isaac came he recited two but we learned three there is no difficulty the one refers to thick threads the other two thin ones some explain it in one way others explain it the reverse some explain it in one way of thick threads three will not break but two will break of thin threads even two will not break others explain it the reverse of thin threads three are noticeable whereas two are not of thick threads even two are noticeable it was taught he who weaves three threads at the beginning or one thread added to woven stuff is culpable but the sages maintain whether at the beginning or at the end the standard is two threads and at the salvage two threads over the breadth of three meshes to what is this like to weaving a small belt two threads over the breadth of three meshes in size now he who weaves three threads at the beginning or one thread added to woven stuff is culpable this anonymous teaching is in agreement with our Eliza another Bury the taught he who weaves two threads added to the border of the web or to the hem is culpable. Our Eliza said even one and at the salvage two threads over the breadth of three meshes to what is this like to weaving a small bell two or three threads over the breadth of three meshes in size he who weaves two threads added to the border of the web or to the hem is culpable. This anonymous teaching is in agreement with the rabbis he who makes two meshes attaching them either to the cross. Pieces nearing what does to the nearing mean said of a two in a mesh and one in the cross piece or to the slips carrows what is carrow said rab the slips and he who sews two stitches but we have already learned it in the list of principal labors and he who sews two stitches because he wishes to teach the second clause and he who tears in order to sew two stitches he also teaches and he who sews etc but we learned about tearing two in the list of principal labors rather because he wishes to teach in a subsequent clause he who tears in his anger or for his debt he therefore teaches here he who sews two stitches and he who tears in order to sew two stitches how is that possible Talmud Moss should bath be if he made it the garment like a pocket mission he who tears in his anger or in mourning for his debt and all who effect damage are exempt but he who damages in order to repair his standard for culpability ISS for repairing the standard of bleaching will hashling. Dying or spinning it is a full double sit and he who weaves two threads together his standard is a full sit tomorrow but the following contradicts this he who rends his garment in his anger in his mourning or for his debt is guilty and though he desecrates the Sabbath he has fulfilled his duty of rending there is no difficulty the one refers to his debt the other to the dead in general but he artana states his debt after all it does refer to his debt but those for whom there is no duty. Of mourning now if he the dead was a sage he is indeed bound to rend his garments for it was taught if a sage dies all are his kinsmen all are his kinsmen can you think so rather say all are as his kinsmen i.e. all must rend their garments for him all must bear their shoulders for him and all partake of the mourner's meal for him in a public square this holds good only if he was not a sage but even if he was merely a worthy man one is indeed bound to rend his garments for it. Was taught why do a man's sons and daughters die in childhood so that he may weep and mourn for a worthy man so that he may weep is a pledge taken but because he did not weep and mourn for a worthy man for whoever weeps for a worthy man is forgiven all his iniquities on account of the honor which he showed him this holds good only if he was not a worthy man but if he stood there at the parting of the soul he is indeed bound for it was taught our Simeon B. Eliezer said he who stands by the dead at the parting of the soul is bound to rend his garments for what does this resemble a scroll of the law that is burnt this holds good only if he was not standing there at the moment of death now that is well in respect to his dead but the two statements concerning tearing in one's anger are contradictory these two cause no difficulty one agrees with our Judah the other with our Simeon one agrees with our Judah who maintained one is liable in respect of a labor which is not required for Se the other with our Simeon who maintained one is exempt in respect of a labor which is not required per Se but you know our Judah to rule thus in the case of one who repairs do you know him to rule thus in the case of one who causes damage said Arab in this man to effects an improvement because he appeases his wrath but is it permitted to effect this in such a manner surely it was taught our Simeon B. Eliezer said in the name of half of B. Agra in our Yohanan B. Nuri's name he who rents his garments in his anger he who breaks his vessels in his anger and he who scatters his money in his anger regard him as an idolater because such are the wiles of the tempter today he says to him do this tomorrow he tells him do that until he bids him go and serve idols and he goes and serves them Arab and observe what verse intimates this there shall be no strange god in thee neither shalt thou worship any strange god who is the strange god that resides in man himself say that is the tempter. This holds good only where he does it in order to instill fear in his household. Even as Rab Judah pulled the thrums of his garment, our Ahabi Jacob broke broken vessels. Our she's hate threw brine on his maid servant's head. Our Abba broke a lid. Our Simeon because he said in the name of our Joshua Belibai in Barkaper's name. If one sheds tears for a worthy man, the holy one blessed be he counts them and lays them up in his treasure house. For it is said, Thou countest my grievings, put thou my tear into thy bottle. Are they not in thy book? Rab Judah said in Rab's name, He who is slothful to lament a sage deserves to be buried alive because it is said, and they buried him in the border of his inheritance in Timnath Sarah, which is in the hill country of Ephraim on the north of the mountain of Gosh. This teaches that the mountain raged against them to slay them. Our Habi Abba said in our Yohanan's name, He who is slothful to lament a sage will not prolong his days. This being measure for measure, as it is said in. Measure when thou sendest her away, thou dost contend with her. Our high Abba objected to our Yohanan and Israel served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders who prolonged their days after Joshua. O Babylonian answered he, they prolonged their days but not years, if so that your days may be multiplied, and the days of your children does that mean days but not years. A blessing is different. Our high Abba also said in our Yohanan's name, when one of brothers dies, Talmud, Moss, Shabbat, all the other brothers should fear. When one of a company dies, the whole company should fear. Some say that this means where the eldest or chief dies, others say where the youngest dies, and all who effect damage are exempt. Our Abba recited before our Yohanan, all who cause damage are exempt except he who wounds and he who sets fire to a stack of corn. Said he to him, go and recite it outside wounding and setting fire is not a mission, and should you say that it is a mission of wounding? Refers to one who needs the blood for his dog and setting fire to one who needs the ashes, but we learned all who effect damage are exempt. Our mission is in accordance with our Judah, while the Beritha agrees with our Simeon. What is our Simeon's reason? Since a verse is required to permit circumcision on the Sabbath, it follows that for wounding elsewhere one is liable, and since the divine law forbade burning in respect of a priest's adulterous daughter, it follows that for kindling a fire in
are not contradictory. One refers to a covered vivarium, whereas the other refers to an uncovered vivarium. It might be asked, but a house is covered, yet both our Judah and the rabbis hold only if one hunts a bird into a turret is he culpable, but not if he hunts it into a house. Said Rabbi Arhu, now here we treat of a free bird, the reason being because it does not submit to domestication for the school of our Ishmael taught. Why is it called a free bird? Because it dwells in a house free just. As in the field, now that you have arrived at this answer, the rulings on beasts two are not contradictory. One refers to a large vivarium, the other to a small vivarium. What is a large vivarium and what is a small vivarium? Said Arashi, where one can run after and catch it with a single lunch, that is a small vivarium. Any other is a large vivarium. Alternatively, if the shadows of the walls fall upon each other, it is a small vivarium. Otherwise, it is a large vivarium. Alternatively, if there are not many recesses, it is a small vivarium. Otherwise, it is a large vivarium. Our Simeon Begamaliel said, etc. Our Joseph said in Rab Judah's name in Samuel's name, the Halachai is as our Simeon Begamaliel said, Abbe to him, you say the Halachai, etc. Hence it follows that they, the rabbis disagree, and what difference does that make? He replied, Shall one learn a tradition as it were merely a song? He retorted, Our rabbis taught, if one catches a deer that is blind or asleep, he is culpable, a deer that is lamb. Agent or sick he is exempt. Abay asked our Joseph what is the difference between them. The former try to escape, the latter do not try to escape, but it was taught if one catches a sick deer he is culpable. Said Arshis hate there is no difficulty. One refers to an animal sick with fever, the other to an animal sick through exhaustion. Our rabbis taught he who catches locusts and hornets or gnats on the Sabbath is culpable. That is the view of our mayor, but the sages rule if that species is hunted. One is liable if that species is not hunted, one is not liable. Another buried the taught he who catches locusts at the time of dew is not liable at the time of dry heat midday is liable. Eliezer Bimahabai said if they advance in thick swarms he is not culpable. The scholars asked, does Eliezer Bimahabai refer to the first clause or to the last come and here he who catches locusts at the time of dew is not liable at the time of dry heat is liable. Eliezer Bimahabai said even at the time of dry. Heat if they advance in thick swarms, he is not culpable. Mishnah if a deer enters a house and one person shuts the door before it, he is culpable. If two shut it, they are exempt. If one could not shut it and both shut it, they are culpable. Our Simeon declares them exempt. Gemara our Jeremiah B. Abba said in Samuel's name, if one catches a lion on the Sabbath, he is not culpable unless he entices it into its cage. Mishnah if one sits down in the doorway but does not fill it and a second sits down and fills it, the second is culpable. If the first sits down in the doorway and fills it and a second comes and sits down at his side, even if the first then rises and departs, the first is culpable while the second is exempt. What does this resemble? One who shuts his house to guard it and a deer is thereby found to be guarded there in Talmud. Mosh of Bathagamara our Abba said in our high B. Ashi's name in Rab's name, if a bird creeps under the skirts of one's garments, he may sit and guard it until. Evening Arnaman B. Isaac objected if the first sits down in the doorway and fills it and a second comes and sits down at his side even if the first then rises and departs the first is culpable while the second is exempt surely that means he is exempt yet it is forbidden no he is exempt find it is permitted reason to support this since the second clause teaches what does this resemble one who shuts his house to guard it and a deer is thereby found to be guarded therein it follows that it means he is exempt and it is permitted other state Arnaman B. Isaac said we too learn thus even if the first then rises and departs the first is culpable while the second is exempt surely that means he is exempt and it is permitted no he is exempt yet it is forbidden but since the second clause states what does this resemble one who shuts his house to guard it and a deer is thereby found to be guarded therein it follows that he is exempt and it is permitted this proves it Samuel said Everything taught as involving no liability on the Sabbath involves indeed no liability yet is forbidden save these three which involve no liability and are permitted this SC the capture of a deer is one and how do you know that he is exempt and it is permitted because the second clause teaches what does this resemble one who shuts his house to guard it and a deer is thereby found to be guarded there in a second is this if one manipulates an abscess on the Sabbath if in order to make an opening for it he is liable if in order to draw the matter out of it he is exempt and how do you know that he is exempt and it is permitted because we learned a small needle may be moved on the Sabbath for the purpose of extracting a thorn and the third if one catches a snake on the Sabbath if he is engaged there with SC and catching it so that it should not bite him he is exempt if for a remedy he is liable and how do you know that he is exempt and it is permitted because we learned a dish may be inverted over a lamp that the beams should not catch fire or over an infant's excrements or over a scorpion that it should not bite chaptexiv mission as for the eight reptiles shares in which are mentioned in the Torah he who catches or wounds them on the Sabbath is culpable but as for other abominations and creeping things he who wounds them is exempt he who catches them because he needs them he is liable if he does not need them he is exempt as for a beast or bird in one's private domain he who catches it is exempt he who wounds it is culpable Gemara since he the Tana teaches he who wounds them is culpable it follows that they have skin which Tana maintains the said Samuel it is our Yohan and Binuri for we learned our Yohan and Binuri said the eight reptiles have skins Rabbi son of Arhuna said in Rab's name you may even say that this agrees with the rabbis the rabbis disagree with our Yohan and Binuri only in respect of defilement because it is written and these are they which are unclean unto you, extending the law to teach that their skins are as their flesh, but in respect to the Sabbath, even the rabbis agree, but do they not differ in respect of the Sabbath? Surely it was taught he who catches one of the eight reptiles mentioned in the Torah, or he who wounds them is culpable. This is our Yohan and Binuri's view, but the sages maintain only those which the sages enumerated have skin Talmud, Mosh of Bath, Biwaran, it was asked on the contrary. Those which the sages enumerated have no skin, and Abbe said this is what he the Tana states, only those not enumerated by the sages have a skin distinct from the flesh, said Rabbah to him, but he states which the sages enumerated rather said Rabbah, this is the meaning of skin of those reptiles, only which the sages enumerated defile like the flesh, hence it follows that our Yohan and Binuri holds that even those which the sages did not enumerate defile in this way, but it is stated our Yohan and Binuri. Said the eight reptiles have skins and do not defile rather said our Adabima and reconcile it thus but the sages maintain in respect of defilement those which the sages enumerated have skins still however do they not differ in respect of the Sabbath but it was taught he who catches one of the eight reptiles mentioned in the Torah or he who wounds them is culpable is in the case of the reptiles which have skins and what is a wound that does not heal if the blood becomes clotted even if it does not issue our Yohanan Binuri said the eight reptiles have skins said our Ashi who is the first ten our Judah who maintains that touches the criterion for we learned our Judah said the halt is like the weasel but the rabbis who disagree with our Yohanan Binuri in respect of defilement agree with him in respect of the Sabbath if so instead of this is a view of our Yohanan Binuri this is a view of our Yohanan Binuri and his opponents is required learn this is a view of our Yohanan Binuri and his opponents Levi asked Rabbi how do we know that a wound is such as is permanent because it is written can the Ethiopian change his skin or the leopard his spots have our brotha what does have our brotha mean shall we say that it is covered with spots then instead of and a leopard have our brotha it should read a leopard go on all its colors rather it is parallel to Ethiopian just as the skin of an Ethiopian cannot turn so is a real wound one that does not turn i.e. heal but other abominations etc but if one kills him he is culpable which Tana holds us said our Jeremiah it is our Eliezer for it was taught our Eliezer said he who kills vermin on the Sabbath is as though he killed a camel on the Sabbath our Joseph demurred to this the rabbis disagree with our Eliezer only in respect to vermin which does not multiply and increase but as for other abominations and creeping things which multiply and increase they do not differ therein and both learn it from none but the rams are Eliezer holds it is as the rams just as there was the taking of life in the case of the rams so whatever constitutes the taking of life is a culpable offense while the rabbis argue it is as the rams just as rams multiply and increase so are all which multiply and increase of account said of a to him do not vermin
Libel are Jose B. Abin observed provided it is between the fins are as she said do not think literally dry but even if it forms slimy threads Rabbar Hamjuri said in Samuel's name if one inserts his hand in an animal's bowels and detaches an embryo that is inside her he is culpable what is the reason said Rabbar Hamjuri explained it to me did not Arshis hate say if one plucks cuscuta from shrubs and thorns he is culpable on account of uprooting something from the place of its growth so here too he is culpable on account of uprooting something as see the embryo from the place of its growth Abe said he who plucks Talmud, Mosh of bath of fungus from the handle of a pitcher is liable on account of uprooting something from the place of its growth Arashi objected if one detaches off from a perforated pot he is culpable if it is unperforated he is exempt there that is not its normal place for growing but here this is its normal place for growing an animal or a bird etc Arhuna said. Tefillin may be written upon the skin of a clean bird. Our Joseph demurred. What does he inform us that it has a skin? But we have already learned that he who wounds it, I ask culpable, said Abbe to him. He informs us much more. If we deduce from our mission, I might object since it is perforated all over. It may not be thus used. Hence he informs us, as they say in the West Palestine, any hole over which the ink can pass is not a hole. Our Zara objected, and he shall rent it by the wings thereof. This is to teach that the skin is fit. Now, if you think that it is a separate skin, how can scripture include it? Said Abbe to him, it is indeed a separate skin, but the divine law includes it. Other state, our Zara said, we too learned thus by the wings thereof. This is to include the skin. Now, if you say that it is a separate skin, it is well. Hence a verse is required for including it. But if you say that it is not skin, why is a verse required for including it? Said Abbe to him, in truth, I may tell you. That it is not a separate skin yet it is necessary I might argue since it is covered with splits holes it is repulsive hence we are informed otherwise Mar son of Robin asked Arnam and B Isaac may Tefillin be written upon the skin of a clean fish if Elijah will come and declare he replied what does if Elijah will come and declare mean shall we say whether it has a separate skin or not but we see that it has a skin moreover we learned the bones of a fish and its skin afford protection. In the tent wherein is a corpse rather he meant if Elijah comes and tells us whether its foul smell evaporates or not Samuel and Karna were sitting by the bank of the Nihar Malka and saw the water rising and becoming discolored said Samuel to Karna a great man is arriving from the west who suffers from stomach trouble and the water is rising to give him a welcome go and smell his bottle so he went and met Rabbi asked him how do we know that Tefillin may be written only on the skin of a clean edible animal because it is written that the law of the Lord may be in thy mouth meaning of that which is permitted in thy mouth he replied how do we know that blood is red he asked because it is said and the Moabites saw the water over against them as red as blood how do we know that circumcision must be performed in that particular place his orla is stated here and its orla is stated elsewhere just as there's something that produces fruit is meant so here too something that limb that produces fruit is meant perhaps it means the heart for it is written circumcised therefore the foreskin of your heart perhaps it means the ear for it is written behold their ear is uncircumcised we learn the complete word orlatho from the complete word orlatho but we do not learn the complete orlatho from orlatho which is incomplete what is your name he asked karna may it be his will that a horn karna shall sprout out from between his eyes he retorted subsequently Samuel took him into his house gave him barley bread and a fish pie to eat and strong liquor to drink but did not show him the privy that he might be his rab cursed saying he who causes me pain may no sons arise from him and thus it was this is a controversy of Tanaim how do we know that circumcision must be performed in that place Orlatho is stated here and Orlatho is stated elsewhere just as there's something that produces fruit is meant so here too something that produces fruit is meant that is our Josiah's view our Nathan said it is unnecessary surely it is said and the uncircumcised male who is not circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin that indicates the place where the male sex is differentiated from the female sex our rabbis taught tefillin can be written upon the skin of clean animals and upon the skin of clean beasts and upon the skin of their nibbleth or foot and they are tied round with their hair and sewn with their tendons and it is a halasha from Moses at Sinai the Tefillin are tied round with their hair and sewn with their tendons but we may not write them upon the skin of unclean animals or upon the skin of unclean beasts and the skin of their nibbleth enterfoot need not be stated nor may they be tied round with their hair or sewn with their tendons and this question a certain Boethusian asked our Joshua the great stealer how do we know that Tefillin may not be written upon the skin of an unclean animal because it is written that the law of thy Lord may be in thy mouth implying of that which is permitted in thy mouth if so they should not be written on the skin of nibbleth enterfoot said he to him I will give you a comparison what does this resemble two men who were condemned to death by the state one being executed by the king and the other by the executioner who stands higher surely he who was slain by the king if so let them be eaten the Torah saith ye shall not eat any nibbleth he retorted yet you say let them be eaten well spoken admitted he mission one may not prepare pickling brine on the Sabbath Talmud, Mosh of Bath be but one may prepare salt water and dip his bread into it or put it into a stew said our Jose but that is brine whether one prepares much or little rather this is the salt water that is permitted oil is first put into the water or into the salt tomorrow what does he the first Tana mean said Rab Judah in Samuel's name he means this one may not prepare a large quantity of salt water but one may prepare a small quantity of salt water said our Jose but that is brine whether one prepares much or little the scholars ask does our Jose mean to forbid both or to permit both said Rab Judah he means to permit both since it is not stated our Jose forbid said Rabbi to him but since the final clause states rather this is the salt water that is permitted it follows that our Jose means to forbid in the first clause rather said Rabbi he means to forbid and thus did our Johan say. He means to forbid it was taught likewise one may not prepare a large quantity of salt water for putting into preserved vegetables in a mutilated vessel but one may prepare a little salt water and eat his bread therewith or put it into a stew said our Jose is it just because this is in large quantity and this is in small that the one is forbidden and the other is permitted then it will be said much work is forbidden but a little work is permitted rather both are forbidden and this is the salt water that is permitted one puts oil and salt mixed into water or oil and water over salt but provided that water and salt are not mixed at the outset nemotic strong radish and citron are Judah B. Abba recited we may not prepare strong salt water what is strong salt water Rabbah and our Joseph B. Abba both say such that an egg floats in it and how much is that said Abba two parts of salt and one part of water for what is it made said Arabah from Marie's Judah B. Abba recited one may not Salt radish or an egg on the Sabbath are Hezekiah said in Abbe's name radish is forbidden but an egg is permitted Arnam and said originally I used to salt radish arguing I do indeed spoil it for Samuel said sharp radish is more beneficial but when I heard what Ola said when he came visit in the West Palestine they salt them slice by slice I no longer salt them but I certainly do drop them in salt Arjuna Behabal recited a citron radish and egg but for their outer shell would never leave the stomach when Ardimi came he said no man ever sank in the lake of Sodom Our Joseph observed Sodom was overturned and the statement about it is topsy turvy no man sank in it but a plank did said Abbe to him he states the more surprising thing it is unnecessary to mention a plank seeing that it does not sink in any water but not even a man who sinks in all other waters of the world ever sank in the lake of Sodom what difference does that make even as it once happened that Rabin was Walking behind our Jeremiah by the bank of the lake of Sodom and he asked him may one wash with this water on the Sabbath it is well he replied is it permissible to shut and open one's eyes I have not heard this he answered but I have heard something similar for our Zerah said at times in Armahenna's name and others in Marakba's name and both Armahenna and Marakba said it in the names of Samuel's father and Levi one said to put wine into one's eyes forbidden to put it on the eyes permitted whilst the other said to put tasteless saliva even on the eyes forbidden it may be proved that it was Samuel's father who ruled to put wine into one's eyes forbidden on the eyes permitted for Samuel said one may soak bread in wine and place it on his eye on the Sabbath now from whom did he hear this surely he heard it from his father but then on your reasoning when Samuel said to apply tasteless saliva even on the eyes forbidden from whom did he hear it shall we say that he he
Blindness the hand leads to deafness the hand causes a polypus and was taught our Nathan said it is a free agent and insists on remaining on the hands until one washes his hands three times our Yohan and sets to be and removes cures the princess stops the tears and promotes the growth of the eyelashes it was taught likewise our Jose sets to be and removes the princess stops the tears and promotes the growth of the eyelashes Mara also said in Samuel's name leaves have no healing properties our Joseph said coriander has no healing properties our she's hate said cuscuta has no healing properties our Joseph observed coriander is injurious even to me our she's hate observed Erica is beneficial even to me Mara Ba said in Samuel's name all kinds of cuscuta are permitted except Teresa Arista said to glare roast meat is permitted to make hashtag is forbidden Z-E-I-R-I's wife made it for high ashy but he did not eat it said she I have made this for your teacher Z-E-I-R-I and he ate yet do you not eat Zeiri follows his view for Zeiri said one may pour clear wine and clear water through a strainer on the Sabbath and he need have no fear this proves that since it can be drunk as it is he does nothing so here too since it can be eaten as it is he does nothing Mara also said if one knocks his hand or foot he may reduce the swelling with wine and need have no fear the scholars asked what about vinegar said our Hillel to Arashi when I attended Arkahana's academy they said not vinegar Rabbah observed but the people of Mahosa since they are delicate even wine heals them Rabbah visited Arashi he saw that an ass had trodden on his foot and he was sitting and reducing the swelling in vinegar said he to him do you not accept our Hillel's statement not vinegar a swelling on the back of the hand or on the foot is different he replied others state he saw him reducing the swelling in wine said he to him do you not agree with what Rabbah said the people of Mahosa since they are delicate even one heals them and you two are delicate a swelling on the hand or on the foot is different he replied for our Adabim Ahena said in Rab's name a blow on the hand or on the foot is like an internal wound and the Sabbath may be desecrated on its account our rabbis taught one may bathe in the water of Gerar in the water of Hamethan in the water of Essa and in the water of Tiberias but not in the great sea the Mediterranean or in the water of Steeping or in the lake of Sodom but this contradicts it one may bathe in the water of Tiberias and in the great sea but not in the water of Steeping or in the lake of Sodom thus the rulings on the great sea are contradictory said our Yohan and there is no difficulty one agrees with our Meir the other with our Judah for we learned all seas are like a for it is said and the gathering of Mikwe the waters called he sees this is our Meir's view our Judah said the great sea alone is like a Mikwe seas being stated only because it contains Many kinds of waters are Jose maintained all seas including the great sea purify when running but they are unfit for Zabim lepers and to be sanctified as the water of lustration Arnam and B. Isaac Demer Talmud, Mosh of Bath B. Say that they differ in respect to uncleanness and purity but do you know them to differ in respect of the Sabbath rather said Arnam and B. Isaac there is no difficulty in the one case he tarries there in the other he does not tarry there to what have you referred. The second bury where he does not tarry if he does not tarry it is permitted even in the water of steeping too for it was taught one may bathe in the waters of Tiberias and in the water of steeping and in the lake of Sodom even if he has scabs on his head when is that if he does not tarry there but if he tarries there it is forbidden rather reply thus the rulings on the great sea are not contradictory one refers to its wholesome water the other to its malodorous water the Rulings on the water of steeping too are not contradictory. In the one case he tarries, in the other he does not tarry. Mishnah: We may not eat Greek kids upon the Sabbath because it is not the food of healthy people, but we may eat yozer and drink a bubro. A man may eat any kind of food as a remedy and drink any liquid except water of palm trees and a potion of roots because they are a remedy for jaundice. But one may drink water of palm trees for his thirst and rub himself with oil of roots. Without medical purpose, Gemara: Our Joseph said, "Hits of his bread of Arhim." Greek kids of his bread of Arhenagola said, "Hits of his white marwa." Sageola visited our Samuel. Bijuda and they said, "White marwa." Before him said he to them, "That is the hits of prescribed in scripture." Our Pappy said, "It is shumshuk marjoram." Our Jeremiah of Dipti said, "Reason supports our Pappy for we learned the law of hits of requires three stalks each containing three calyxes and shumshuk is found to have that shape for." What is it eaten as a remedy for worms with what is it eaten with seven black dates by what is it the disease of worms caused through eating barley flour forty days old but one may eat yoezer what is yoezer pennyroyal for what is it eaten as a remedy for worms in the bowels with what is it eaten with seven white dates through what is it caused through eating raw meat and drinking water on an empty stomach through meat on an empty stomach or ox meat on an empty stomach through nuts on an empty stomach shoots of fenugreek on an empty stomach and drinking water after it but if not let him swallow white cress if not let him fast and bring fat meat and cast it on the coal suck out a thick piece and drink vinegar but others say not vinegar because it affects the liver if not let him procure the scrapings of a thorn bush which was scraped from top to bottom but not from below and upward lest the worms issue through his mouth and boil them in strong liquor at twilight on the morrow let him stop up his orifices and drink it and when he eases himself he must do so on the stripped parts of a palm tree and drink a bubroa what is a bubroa humphari epitorium what is humphari the lonely staff what is it prepared for as a remedy for one who drank uncovered water if not let him bring five roses and five glasses of strong liquor boil them together until they amount to an end pack and drink it the mother of our ahad babi am i prepared a potion of one rose and one glass of strong liquor for a certain man she boiled them up made him drink it lit the stove and swept it out placed bricks in it and it the poison of the snake issued like a green palm leaf we have said a quarter log of milk from a white goat arhunabi judah said let him obtain a sweet citron scoop it out fill it with honey set it on burning embers to boil and then eat it our hannah said one drinks urine 40 days old as a remedy of arsena for the sting of a wasp a quarter log for a Scorpion bite an eighth of a log for uncovered water a quarter is efficacious even against witchcraft our Yohan and said Eleodoron can get and Thoriac are efficacious against both uncovered water and witchcraft if one swallows a snake he should be made to eat cuscuta with salt and run three mils our Shimai B. Ashi saw a man swallow a snake thereupon he appeared to him in the guise of a horseman made him eat cuscuta with salt and run three mils before him and it issued from him in strips others. Say our Shimai B. Ashi swallowed a snake thereupon Elijah came appeared to him in the guise of a horseman made him eat cuscuta with salt and run three mils before him and it issued from him in strips if one is bitten by a snake he should procure an embryo of a white ass tear it open and be made to sit upon it providing however that it was not found to be tear for a certain Talmud, Mosh of Bath the officer of Pumadai who was bitten by a snake now there were thirteen white asses in Pumadai the were all torn open and found to be tear for there was another on the other side of Pumadatha but before they could go and bring it a lion devoured it thereupon Abbe observed to them perhaps he was bitten by a snake of the rabbis for which there is no cure as it is written and whoso break through a fence a serpent shall bite him indeed so rabbi answered they for when rab died our Isaac Bebus had decreed that none should bring myrtles and palm branches to a wedding feast to the sound of a tabla yet he went and brought myrtle and palm branches at a wedding to the sound of the tabla so a snake bit him and he died if a snake winds itself around a person let him go down into water put a basket over its head and force it the snake away from himself and when it goes onto it the basket he should throw it into the water ascent and make off if a man is sent by a snake if his companion is with him he should make him ride four cubits if not let him jump a ditch if not let him Cross a river and at night place his bed on four barrels and sleep under the stars and bring four cats and tie them to the four legs of the bed then he should fetch rubbish and throw it there so that when they hear a sound they the cats will devour it if a man is chased by one a snake he should flee into sandy places if a woman sees a snake and does not know whether it has turned its attention to her or not let her remove her garments and throw them in front of it if it winds itself around. Them its mind is upon her if not its mind is not upon her what can she do she should cohabit with her husband in front of it others say that will even strengthen its instincts rather she should take some of her hair and nails and throw them at it and say I am menstruous if a snake enters a woman let her spread her legs and place them on two barrels fat meat must be brought
mixed with beer is drunk and he the sufferer then becomes impotent for his abba. Third thereof mixed with wind is efficacious that she shall not become barren but if not let them procure three Talmud. Moss should bath be coppers of Persian onions boil them in wine make her drink it and say to her cease your discharge but if not she should be made to sit at crossroads hold a cup of wine in her hand and a man comes up from behind frightens her and exclaims cease your discharge but if not a handful of cum and a handful of saffron and a handful of fenugreek are brought and boiled in wine she is made to drink it and they say to her cease your discharge but if not let sixty pieces of sealing clay of a wine vessel be brought and let them smear her there with and say to her cease your discharge but if not let one take a fern boil it in wine smear her with it and say to her cease your discharge but if not let one take a thistle growing among Roman thorns burn it and gather it up in Linen rags in summer and in cotton rags in winter. If not, let one take seven holes and burn there in a young shoot of orla. Put a cup of wine into her hand and make her rise from one hole and seat her on the next. Make her rise from that and seat her on the following and so on. And at each one he should say to her, cease your discharge. But if not, let one take the flower of her from the lower half downwards and say to her, cease your discharge. If not, let him take an ostrich egg, burn it and wrap it. In linen rags in summer and in cotton rags in winter. If not, let him broach a barrel of wine specially for her sake. If not, let him fetch barley grain which is found in the dung of a white mule. If she holds it one day, at her discharge will cease. Or two days, if she holds it two days, it will cease for three days. But if she holds it three days, it will cease forever. For John is two thirds thereof with beer is drunk and he the sufferer then becomes impotent. But if not, let him take the head of. A salted shibuta boil it in beer and drink it if not let him take brine of locusts if brine of locusts is not available let him take brine of small birds carry it into the baths and rub himself there with it if there are no baths he should be placed between the stove and the wall or Yohanan said if one wishes to make him the sufferer from jaundice warm he should wrap him well in his sheet Arahavi Jacob suffered there with so Arkahana treated him thus and he recovered but if not let him take three copies out Persian dates three copies out dripping wax and three copies out purple aloes boil them in beer and drink it if not let him take a young ass then he the invalid shaves half his head draws blood from its forehead and applies it to his own head but he must take care of his eyes lest it the blood blind him if not let him take a buck's head which has lain in preserves vinegar boil it in beer and drink it if not let him take a speckled swine tear it open and apply it to his heart if not let him take poured leeks from the waist of the valley. A certain Arab suffered with it, said he to a gardener, Take my robe and give me some leeks from the waist of the valley. He gave them to him and he ate them and he requested, Lend me your robe and I will sleep in it. He cinched it, wrapped himself therein and slept as he became heated through and got up. It fell away from him bit by bit for jaundice, two thirds thereof with beer and he becomes impotent. But is this permitted? Surely it was taught. How do we know that the castration of a man is forbidden from the verse? Neither shall ye do thus in your land. This means ye shall not do thus to yourselves. The words of our Hannah that is only if he intends it so. But here it is automatic for our Yohanan said, If one wishes to castrate a cock, let him cut off its crest and it is automatically castrated. But our Ashi said there it suffers from conceit. Rather, the reference here is to one who is already a castrate, but our high Beaver. Said in our Yohanan's name Talmud, Moshe Bath all agree that if one prepares it a meal offering as leaven after another has prepared it as leaven he is culpable because it is said it shall not be baked leaven it shall not be made leaven if one castrates after another has castrated he is culpable for it is said that which hath its stones bruised or crushed or broken or cut away ye shall not offer unto the Lord neither shall ye do thus in your land now if one is guilty for cutting them away how much more so for breaking them but it is to teach that if one castrates after another he is culpable rather it refers to an old man but our Yohanan said it was those very remedies which restored me to my youth rather the reference here is to a woman but according to our Yohanan be who said concerning both man and woman it is said and God blessed them and God said unto them be fruitful and multiply what can be said the reference here is to an old woman or to a barren woman. Mishnah if one's teeth pain him he must not sip vinegar through them but may dip his bread in vinegar in the usual manner and if he is cured he is cured if one's loins pain him he must not rub them with wine or vinegar but he may anoint them with oil yet not rose oil royal children may anoint their wounds with rose oil since it is their practice to anoint themselves thus on weekdays our Simeon said all Israel are royal children Gemara Araha the long IERA have Papa pointed out a contradiction to Arabah we learned if one has toothache he must not sip vinegar on them shall we say that vinegar is beneficial to the teeth but it is written as vinegar to the teeth and as smoke to the eyes there is no difficulty the one refers to vinegar of fruit the other to acid alternatively both refer to acid one means where there is a wound the other where there is no wound if there is a wound it heals if there is no wound it loosens the teeth and the gums he must not sip vinegar through them but it was taught he must not sip and eject yet he may sip and swallow said Abbe when we learned our mission we too learned of sipping and ejecting Rabbah said you may even say that it refers to sipping and swallowing the one holds good before the dipping the other after the dipping but let us say since it is permitted before the dipping it is permitted after the dipping too for we know that Rabbah accepts this argument for Rabbah said there is nothing which is permitted on the Sabbath and forbidden on the day of atonement since it is permitted on the Sabbath it is permitted on the day of atonement too he retracted from the present statement how do you know that he retracted from this statement perhaps he retracted from the other you cannot think so for it was taught all who are obliged to perform table may do so in the normal way both on the ninth of and on the day of atonement if one's loins pain him etc our Abbe Zabda said in Rab's name the Halachad is as our Simeon shall we say that Rab holds with Arsimian, surely Arsimian, son of Arhai, said in Rab's name, the stopper of the brewing bat Talmud, Mosh of Bath B may not be forced into the bunghole on a festival there, even Arsimian agrees for Abbe and Rabba both maintain Arsimian agrees in the case of cut off his head but let him not die, but Arhai B Ashi said in Rab's name, the Halachad is as Arjuda, while Arhain and BM I said in Samuel's name, the Halachad is as Arsimian, further Arhai B Abin recited it without. Intermediary scholars Rab said the Halachad is as Arjuda, while Samuel ruled the Halachad is as Arsimian, rather said Rabbi and the line of the company is Arhai B Abin explained it, Rab said the Halachad is as Arsimian, but not on account of his view, what is meant by the Halachad is as Arsimian, but not on account of his view, shall we say the Halachad is as Arsimian, that it is permitted, but not through his reason for Arsimian holds that it heals, whereas Rab holds that it does not heal does. Then Rab hold that it does not heal, but surely since he the ten estates royal children may anoint their wounds with rose oil, it follows that all agree that it does heal, but the Halachad is as our Simeon that it is permitted, but not through his reason for whereas our Simeon holds that in spite of its being rare, it is permitted. Rab holds only if it is common, is it permitted, but not if it is rare, and in Rab's place rose oil was common. C-H-A-P-T-E-R-X-B mission. And now these are the knots which entail culpability, camel drivers, knots, and sailors, knots, and just as one is guilty for tying them, so is he guilty for untying them. Our Meir said any knot which one can untie with one hand entails no guilt. Gamara, what are camel drivers, knots, and sailors, knots? Shall we say the knot which is tied through the nose ring and the knot which is tied through the ship's ring, but these are non permanent knots, rather it means the knot of the nose ring itself and of the ship's ring itself. Our Meir said any. Not etc. Arahid by the brother of Maraha asked what of a slip not on our Meir's view is our Meir's reason because it can be untied with one hand and this too can be untied or perhaps our Meir's reason is that it is not well fastened whereas this is well fastened the question stands over Mishnah you have some knots which do not entail guilt like for camel drivers knots and sailors knots a woman may tie up the opening of her chemise the ribbons of her hairnet and of her girdle the laces of her shoes or sandals pitchers of wine and oil and the meat pot our Eliezer B. Jacob said one may tie a rope in front of an animal that it should not go out Gamara this is self contradictory you say you have some knots which do not entail guilt like for camel drivers knots and sailors knots thus there is indeed no guilt but there is a prohibition and he the Tana teaches a woman may
states that one is liable to a sin offering it refers to sandals of travelers tied by cobblers one is not liable yet it is forbidden refers to amateur knots tied by the wearers themselves it is permitted at the outset refers to sandals in which to go out as was the case with Rab Judah for Rab Judah brother of Arsala the pious had a pair of sandals at times he went out in them at others his child he went to Abay and asked him how is it in such a case one is liable to a sin offering for Tying them, he replied, I do not even understand why though one is not liable for this yet it is forbidden, and you tell me that one is liable to a sin offering. What is the reason? Because on weekdays too, he replied, at times I go out in them at others. The child in that case said he it is permitted at the outset. Our Jeremiah was walking behind our Abba in the Carmelith when the lace of his sandal snapped. What shall I do with it? inquired he take a moist reed that is fit for an animal's food and wind. It about it, he replied, Abba was standing in front of our Joseph when the lace of his sandal snapped. What shall I do with it? asked he let it be. He replied, Wherein does it differ from our Jeremiah's case? There it was not guarded here, it is guarded, but it is still a utensil, seeing that I could change it from the right foot to the left, said he to him, since our Yohanan explained the law and our Judah's view, it follows that the Halashah is as our Judah to what does this refer for it was taught if it. Two ears of the sandal or its two strappings are broken or if the entire soul is removed it is clean if one of its ears or strappings is broken or if the greater part of the soul is removed it is unclean Arjuna said if the inner one is broken it is unclean if the outer it is clean Baranul other state Rabbi Barhana said in Aryohanan's name just as a controversy in respect to uncleanness so is there a controversy in respect to the Sabbath but not in respect to Eliza now we discuss this to whose view does Aryohanan refer shall we say to that of the rabbis and he states since it is a utensil in respect to uncleanness it is also so in respect to the Sabbath but not in respect to Eliza where it is not a utensil surely we learned if she removes the left foot she from the right foot the Eliza is valid shall we on the other hand say that he refers to Arjuna's ruling and means since it is not a utensil in respect to defilement it is not a utensil in Respect to the Sabbath either, but that is not so in respect to Eliza where it is a utensil, it may be asked against this. Perhaps we rule if she removes the left foot she from the right foot, the Eliza is valid only where it is a utensil for its own function, but here it is not a utensil for its own function, seeing that Arjuna said if the outer is broken, it is clean, which proves that it is not a utensil in truth. Are Yohanan referred to Arjuna's view say and it is likewise so in respect to Eliza and he informs us this when do we say if she removes the left foot she from the right foot, the Eliza is valid only where Talmud, Mosh of Bath B it is a utensil for its own function, but here it is not a utensil for its own function. Now did Aryohanan say thus surely Aryohanan said the Halachag is as an anonymous mission and we learned if one of the ears of a sandal is broken and he repairs it if the sandal is unclean as Midras, if the second is broken too and he repairs it. It is clean in that it is not defiled as Midras, but it is unclean as that touched by Midras does not this mean that there is no difference whether it is the inner or the outer. No, it refers only to the inner. Then what if the outer is broken? Would it be clean if so instead of teaching if the second is broken too and he repairs it? It is clean in that it is not defiled as Midras, but it is unclean as that touched by Midras. Let him attend and draw a distinction in that very matter and teach when is that if the inner is broken, but if the outer is broken, it is clean. Said our Isaac B. Joseph, let our mission treat of a sandal which has four ears and four strappings so as not to overthrow the words of our Yohanan. When Rabin came, he said, Arhanan B. Abba said in Rab's name, the Halachah is as our Judah, while our Yohanan said, the Halachah is not as our Judah, but did our Yohanan say, thus surely since our Yohanan explained the law on the basis of our Judah's view, it follows that he agrees with our Judah, there is a controversy of Amram as to our Yohanan's opinion. We learned elsewhere as for all utensils belonging to private people, their standards are holes as large as pomegranates. Hezekiah asked, What if a utensil receives a hole large enough for an olive to fall through, and he the owner closes it, then it receives another hole large enough for an olive to fall through, and he closes it, and so on until it is made large enough for a pomegranate to fall through, said our Yohanan. To him you have taught us if one of the ears of a sandal is broken and he repairs it, if the sandal is unclean as Midras, if the second is broken and he repairs it, it is clean in that it is not defiled as Midras, but it is unclean as that touched by Midras. Now we ask you why is it different when the first is broken because the second is sound, but when the second too is broken, the first is already repaired, and you answered us, a new entity has arrived hither here too, a new entity has. Arrived hither thereupon he has exclaimed concerning him this one is not the son of man others say such a one is indeed the son of man Arzara said in Rabbi Bizamina's name if the earlier scholars were sons of angels we are sons of men and if the earlier scholars were sons of men we are like asses and not even like asses of Arhan and Abidosa and Arfinah as Bijahir but like other asses pitchers of wine or oil but that is obvious this is necessary only where they have two spouts you might say he the owner may completely disregard one therefore he the tana informs us that we do not fear this the meat pot but that is obvious this is necessary only where it has a screwed and stopper you might say he the owner may completely abandon it hence he informs us that we do not fear this our Eliza B Jacob said one may tie etc but that is obvious this is necessary only where there are two cords you might say Talmud Mosh of Batha, he the owner may completely disregard one hence he the tana informs us that we do not fear this our Joseph said in Rab Judah's name in Samuel's name the Halachah is as our Eliza B Jacob said Abay to him you say the Halachah etc hence it follows that they the rabbis disagree and what difference does that make he replied shall the accepted tradition be merely like a song he retorted Mishnah a bucket over a well may be tied with a fascia but not with a cord but our Judah permits it our Judah stated a general rule any not that is not permanent entails no culpability tomorrow what cord is meant shall we say an ordinary bucket cord how then state our Judah permits it surely it is a permanent not rather it refers to a weaver's rope shall we say that the rabbis hold we preventively forbid a weaver's cord on account of an ordinary one while our Judah holds we do not preventively forbid but the following contradicts it if the cord of a bucket is broken one must not tie it together but merely make a loop slip not. Whereas Arjuda maintains one may wind a hollow belt or a fascia around it providing that he does not tie it with a slip not thus Arjuda's views are self-contradictory and similarly the rabbis the rabbis views are not self-contradictory one rope may be mistaken for another whereas looping cannot be mistaken for knotting Arjuda's views are not self-contradictory there it is not because looping may be mistaken for knotting but because looping itself is a form of knotting are. Abba said in the name of our high Ashi in Rab's name a man may bring a cord from his house and tie it to a cow and its trough are along that is our Ahabi Papa refuted our Abba if a cord is attached to a trough one may tie it to his cow and if attached to a cow one may tie it to a trough provided however that he does not bring a cord from his house and tie it to the cow and the trough there the reference is to an ordinary cord here we treat of a weaver's cord Rab Judah said in. Samuel's name a weaver's implements may be handled on the Sabbath. Rab Judah was asked what of the upper beam and the lower beam, yes and no, and he was uncertain about it. It was stated Arnaman said in Samuel's name a weaver's implements may be handled on the Sabbath, even the upper beam and the lower beam, but not the vertical rollers. Rab asked Arnaman why are rollers different that it is not permitted, shall we say, because one makes holes, but the holes are made automatically, for we learned. If one stores turnips or radishes under a vine, provided some of their leaves are uncovered, he need have no fear on account of killing the seventh year or tithes, and they may be removed on the Sabbath in a field, one will not come to level fill up the holes, whereas here in the house one will come to level the holes. Are Yohanan asked Arjuda Bil for a weaver's implements, e.g. the upper beam and the lower beam may they be handled on the Sabbath, they may not be handled, answered he what is. The reason because they cannot be taken up move Mishnah one may fold up garments even four or five times and spread the sheets on the beds on the night of the Sabbath for use on the Sabbath but not on the Sabbath for use on the conclusion of the Sabbath or Ishmael said one may fold up garments and spread the sheets on the beds on the day of atonement for use on the Sabbath and the fats of the Sabbath may be offered burnt on the altar
Speech on weekdays speaking speech is forbidden but thought about mundane matters is permitted now as for all the rest they are intelligible but what is meant by that thy walking on the Sabbath shall not be like thy walking on weekdays as Arhunah said in Rav's name others state Arabah said in Arhunah's name if one is walking on the Sabbath and comes to a stream of water if he can put down his first foot before lifting the second it is permitted otherwise it is forbidden Rabbah demurred what? Shall he do shall he go round it then he increases the walking distance shall he cross it walking through his garments may be soaked in water and he is led to wringing them out rather in such a case since it is impossible otherwise it is permitted to jump across but what is meant is as Rabbi asked our Ishmael son of our Jose is it permitted to take great strides on the Sabbath who then permitted it on weekdays he replied for I maintain that a long stride takes away a five hundredth part of a man's eyesight and it is restored to him by the evening Kiddush Rabbi asked our Ishmael son of our Jose may one eat earth on the Sabbath who then permitted it on weekdays he replied for I maintain it is forbidden even on weekdays because it causes illness RMI said he who eats earth of Babylon is as though he ate the flesh of his ancestors some say it is as though he ate of abominations and creeping things because it is written and he dissolved every living thing etc Rashi said. Why is it Babylon called Shinar because all the dead of the deluge were shaken out deposited thither in Aru Lacham Aru Yohanan said why was it called Mizaladip because all the dead of the deluge were dumped there some say it is as though he ate of abominations and creeping things but these were certainly completely dissolved rather because they cause illness the rabbis forbade them for a certain man ate Garjishta and then ate Cress and the Cress sprouted up into his heart and he died wash thyself therefore and anoint thee and put the raiment upon thee R. Eliezer said this refers to the Sabbath garments give instructions to a wise man and he will be a wiser R. Eliezer said this alludes to Ruth the Moabites and Samuel of Ramaruth for whereas Naomi said to her wash thyself therefore and anoint thee and put thy raiment upon thee and get thee down to the threshing floor yet of her it is written and she went down unto the threshing floor and only subsequently and did. According to all that her mother-in-law bade her Samuel for whereas Eli said to him lie down and it shall be if he call thee that thou shalt say speak Lord for thy servant heareth yet of him it is written and the Lord came and stood and called as at other times Samuel Samuel then Samuel said speak for thy servant heareth but he did not say speak Lord and she went and came and gleaned in the field our Eliezer said she repeatedly went and came until she found decent men whom to accompany then said Boaz unto his servant that was set over he reapers whose damsel is this was it then Boaz's practice to inquire about damsel said our Eliezer he perceived the wise dealing in her behavior two ears of corn she gleaned three ears of corn she did not glean it was taught he perceived modest behavior in her the standing ears she gleaned standing the fallen she gleaned sitting and cleave here by my maidens was it then Boaz's practice to cleave to the women said our Eliezer as soon as he saw that and Orpah kissed her mother in law, but Ruth cleaved unto her. He said, It is permitted to cleave unto her. And at mealtime, Boaz said unto her, Come hither, said our Eliezer. He intimated to her, The royal house of David is destined to come forth from thee. The house whereof hither is written, as it is said. And David the king went in and sat before the Lord, and he said, Who am I, O Lord God? And what is my house that thou hast brought me hither? And dip thy morsel in vinegar. Our Eliezer said, Hence it may be deduced that vinegar is beneficial in hot weather. Our Samuel be He said, He intimated to her, Son is destined to come forth from thee, whose actions shall be as sharp as vinegar. And who was it, Manasseh? And she sat beside the reapers. Our Eliezer observed at the side of the reapers, but not in the midst of the reapers. He Boaz intimated to her that the kingdom of the house of David was destined to be divided. And he reached her parched corn, and she did eat, and was sufficed, and left thereof. Said our Eliezer, she ate in the days of David, she was sufficed in the days of Solomon, and she left over in the days of Hezekiah. Some there are who interpret she ate in the days of David and Solomon, and she was sufficed in the days of Hezekiah, and she left over in the days of Rabbi. For a master said, Rabbi's house steward was wealthier than King Shepherd in the very day it was taught, and she ate in this world, and she was sufficed in the days of the Messiah, and she left over in the future that is to come. And beneath his glory shall he kindle a burning like the burning of a fire. Our Yohanan said that which is beneath his glory shall be burnt, but glory is not literal. Our Yohanan is consistent with his opinion, for our Yohanan called his garments my honor. Our Eliezer said, and beneath his glory means literally instead of his glory. Our Samuel be Namani interpreted, and beneath his glory must be understood like the burning of the sons of Aaron, just as there the burning of the soul is meant while. The body remained intact, so here too the burning of the soul while the body remains intact. Our Ahabi Abba said in our Yohanan's name Talmud, Mosh of Batha, whence do we learn change of garments in the Torah because it is said, and he shall put off his garments and put on other garments, and the school of our Ishmael taught the Torah teaches you matters in the garments in which one cooked a dish for his master, one should not mix a cup of wine for his master. Our Habi Abba said in our Yohanan's name, it is a disgrace for a scholar to go out with patched shoes into the marketplace, but our Ahabi Hanan did go out, thus said our Aha son of Arnaman. The references to patches upon patches are Habi Abba also said in our Yohanan's name, any scholar upon whose garment a grease stain is found is worthy of death, for it is said, all they that hate me, Mazani, I love merit, death, read not Mazani, but Masai, that make me hated, I despise Rubin, I said this was stated about a thick patch yet. Do not differ one refers to the upper garment coat the other to a shirt our high Abba also said in our Yohanan's name what is meant by the verse like as my servant Isaiah hath walked naked and barefoot naked means in worn out garments barefoot in patched shoes we learned elsewhere a grease stain upon a saddle constitutes an interposition our Simeon B. Gamaliel said the inferior limit is as much as an Italian is our on garments if the stain is on one side it does not interpose if on both sides. It interposes our Judah said in our Ishmael's name even on one side it interposes our Simeon B. Lakish asked our Hannah in the case of a saddle can the stain be on one side or must it be on both sides I have not heard this he replied but have heard something similar for we learned our Jose said the garments of Ben I'm a stain even on one side interposes of uncultured persons only a stain on both sides interposes and surely a saddle does not stand higher than the garment of an ignoramus what? Our Ben I'm said, Our Yohanan, these are scholars who are engaged all their days in the upbuilding of the world. Our Yohanan also said, Who is the scholar to whom a lost article is returned on his recognition thereof? That scholar who is particular to turn his shirt. Our Yohanan also said, Who is the scholar that is appointed a leader of the community? He who, when asked a matter of Halachah in any place, can answer it even in the tractate Kala. Our Yohanan also said, Who is the scholar whose work it is the duty of his townspeople to perform? He who abandons his own interest and engages in religious affairs, yet that is only to provide his bread. Our Yohanan also said, Who is the scholar he who is asked a Halachah in any place and can state it in respect of what practical matter to appoint him? I eater of the community, if he is well versed only in one tractate, he can be appointed in his own town, if in the whole field of learning, he can be appointed as the head of an academy. Our Simeon B. Lakish said, this means the court robes Olarim that come from overseas shall we say that they are white but our Janay said to his sons my sons bury me neither in white shrouds nor in black shrouds white lest I do not merit and am like a bridegroom among mourners black in case I have merit and am like a mourner among bridegrooms but bury me in court garments Olarim that come from overseas this proves that they are colored there is no difficulty one refers to robes the other to shirts our Ishmael said. One may fold up etc our rabbis taught the burnt offering of the Sabbath on the Sabbath thereof this teaches concerning the fats of the Sabbath that they may be offered burnt on the day of atonement one might think those of the day of atonement can also be burnt on the Sabbath therefore it's stated on the Sabbath thereof this is our Ishmael's opinion our Akiba said the burnt offering of the Sabbath on the Sabbath thereof this teaches concerning the fats of the Sabbath that they can be offered. On a festival one might think on the day of atonement too therefore it is stated on the Sabbath thereof when you examine the matter according to our Ishmael's opinion vows and free will offerings may be sacrificed on a festival hence the verse is required in respect of the day of
Friday we sound the shofar but do not recite Havdalah if it falls at the termination of the Sabbath we recite Havdalah but do not sound the shofar but why so let it be sounded so that it may be known that killing animals for food is permitted immediately the Sabbath ends rather it is clear that it is as our Joseph answered our Zara said in Arhunda's name other state our Abba said in Arhunda's name if the day of atonement falls on the Sabbath the trimming of vegetables is forbidden Armada said it was taught likewise how do we know that if the day of atonement falls on the Sabbath the trimming of vegetables is forbidden because it is said Shabbat and it is a Shabbat now in respect of what is it stated shall we say in respect of labor surely it is written thou shalt not do any work hence it must surely refer to the trimming of vegetables this proves it I be Abba said in our Yohanan's name if the day of atonement falls on the Sabbath the trimming of vegetables is permitted Objection is raised how do we know that if the day of atonement falls on the Sabbath the trimming of vegetables is forbidden because Shabbat and is stated it is a Shabbat in respect of what shall we say in respect of labor surely it is written thou shalt not do any work hence it must surely refer to the trimming of vegetables no in truth it refers to actual work but it is stated to show that one violates an affirmative and a negative injunction on account thereof it was taught in accordance with our Yohanan if the day of atonement falls on the Sabbath Talmud Mas Shabbat the trimming of vegetables is permitted nuts may be cracked and pomegranates scraped from the time of Minha and onwards on account of one's vexation the household of Rab Judah trimmed cabbage Rabba's household scraped pumpkin seeing that they were doing this too early he said to them a letter has come from the West in our Yohanan's name to the elect that this is forbidden C-H-A-P-T-E-R-X-V-I. Mission all sacred writings may be saved from a fire whether we read them or not and even if they are written in any language they must be hidden and why do we not read certain of the sacred writings because of the neglect of the Beth Hamid Rashkumar it was stated if they are written in Targum or in any other language Arhuna said they must not be saved from a fire while our historical they may be saved from a fire on the view that it is permissible to read them all agree that they must be saved they differ only according to the view that they may not be read Arhuna says we may not save them since they may not be read Arhista says we must save them because of the disgrace to holy writings we learned all sacred writings may be saved from the fire whether we read them or not and even if they are written in any language surely whether we read them refers to the prophets whilst or not refers to the writings and even if they are written in any language though they may not be read Publicly yet he the Tana teaches that they may be saved which refutes Arhuna Arhuna can answer you is that logical consider the second clause they must be hidden seeing that they must be saved need hiding be mentioned but Arhuna explains it in accordance with his view while Arhista explains it according to his Arhuna explains it in accordance with his view whether we read them i.e. the prophets or not i.e. the writings that is only if they are written in the holy tongue Hebrew but if they are written in any other language we may not save them yet even so they must be hidden Arhista explains it according to his view whether we read them i.e. the prophets or not i.e. the writings even if they are written in any language we must still save them and this is what he states and even their wormeaten material must be hidden objection is raised if they are written in Targum or in any other language they may be saved from the fire this refutes Arhuna Arhuna answers you this tana holds they may be read come and hear if they are written in Egyptian Median, Trans, Euphrates, Aramaic, Elamitic, or Greek, though they may not be read, they may be saved from a fire. This refutes Arhuna Arhuna can answer you. It is a controversy of Tanaim, for it was taught if they are written in Targum or in any language, they may be saved from a fire. Our Jose said they may not be saved from a fire. Said Our Jose, it once happened that my father he left to visit Argamaliel Birbaya Tiberius and found him sitting at the table of Yohanan bin Azuf with the Targum of the Book of Job in his hand, which he was reading. Said he to him, I remember that Argamaliel, your grandfather, was standing on a high eminence on the Temple Mount when the Book of Job in the Targumic version was brought before him, whereupon he said to the builder, Bury it under the bricks, Argamaliel, two, two gave orders, and they hid it. Our Jose, son of Arjuna, said they overturned a tub of mortar upon it, said Rabbi. There are two objections to this. Firstly, how came mortar on the Temple Mount? Moreover, is it then permitted to destroy them with one's own hands? For they must be put in a neglected place to decay of their own accord. Which Tanaim differ on this question? Talmud, Mosh of Bath, B, shall we say the first Tana and Arhose? But perhaps they differ in this one. Master holds it is permitted to read them, while the other holds it is not permitted to read them. Rather, they are Arhose and the Tana who taught the law about the Egyptian script. Our rabbis taught benedictions and amulets, though they contain letters of the divine name and many passages of the Torah must not be rescued from a fire, but must be burnt where they lie. They together with their names. Hence, it was said they who write down benedictions are as though they burnt a Torah. It happened that one was once writing inside an Arishmael was informed thereof, and he went to question him about it as he was ascending the ladder. He the writer became aware of him, so he took a sheaf of benedictions and plunged them into a bowl of water. In these words, did our Ishmael speak to him? The punishment for the latter deed is greater than for the former. The Reshalif asked Rabbi son of Arhuna if they are written with paint, I see Kragamik or Kalkantham in Hebrew, may they be rescued from a fire or not. This is asked whether on the view that we may save or that we may not save. It is asked on the view that we may not save that. Maybe only if they are written in Targum or any other language, but here that they are written in Hebrew, we may rescue them, or perhaps even on the view that we may save them. That is only when they are written in ink, which is lasting, but here since it, the writing is not permanent, we may not rescue them, we may not save them. Answered he, but our Hamna recited, we may save them if it was taught, it was taught, replied he, where was it taught, said Arashi, even as it was taught, the only. Difference between the other books and the Megillah is that the books can be written in any language, whereas a Megillah must be written in Assyrian on a scroll and in ink. Arhuna Behel of Askar Namane scroll of the law in which 85 letters cannot be gathered, such as the section, and it came to pass when the ark set forward, etc. May it be saved from a fire or not set. He then asked about the section, and it came to pass, etc. Itself, if the section, and it came to pass, etc. is defective. Through a facing, I have no problem, for since it contains the divine name, even if it does not contain 85 letters, we must rescue it. My only problem is about a scroll of the lower, and this number cannot be gathered. What then we may not save it? He answered, he refuted him. If Targum is written as my crop, or my crop is written in Targum, or in Hebrew characters, they must be saved from a fire, and the Targum in Ezra, Daniel, and the Torah, the Pentateuch, go without saying now what is the Targum. In the Torah the words Yadar Sahadatha and though it does not contain 85 letters it must be saved that was taught in respect of completing the number the scholars asked these 85 letters must they be together or even scattered Arhuna said they must be together Arhista said even scattered an objection is raised if a scroll of the law is decayed if 85 letters can be gathered therein such as the section and it came to pass when the ark set forward etc we must save it if not we may not save it this refutes Arhuna Arhista expounded it on the basis of Arhuna's ruling as referring to words our rabbis taught and it came to pass when the ark set forward that Moses said etc for the section the Holy One blessed be he provided signs above and below to teach Talmud Mosh of that this is not its place rabbi said it is not on that account but because it ranks as a separate book with whom does the following dictum of our Samuel be Namani and R. Jonathan's name agrees she wisdom hath hewn out her seven pillars this refers to the seven books of the law with whom with Rabbi who is the Tana that disagrees with Rabbi it is Arsimian Begamaliel for it was taught Arsimian Begamaliel said the section is destined to be removed from here and written in its right place and why is it written here in order to provide a break between the first account of punishment and the second account of punishment what is the second account of punishment and the people were as murmurs etc the first account of punishment and they moved away from the mount of the Lord which Arhamabi Arhana expounded as meaning that they turned away from following the Lord and where is its rightful place in the chapter on the banners the scholars ask the blank spaces of a scroll of the law may we rescue them from fire or not come and here if a scroll of the law is decayed if 85 letters can be gathered therein such as it Section and it came to pass when the ark set forward we must save it if not we may not save it but why so conclude that it may be saved on account of its blank space that which is decayed is different come
themselves need their blank spaces be stated this is its meaning and the books of minim are like blank spaces it was stated in the text the blank spaces and the books of the minim we may not save them from a fire our jose said on weekdays one must cut out the divine names which they contain hide them and burn the rest our tarfan said may i bury my son if i would not burn them together with their divine names if they came to my hand for even if one pursued me to slay me or a snake pursued me to bite me i would enter a heathen temple for refuge but not the houses of these people for the latter know of god yet deny him whereas the former are ignorant and deny him and of them the writ set and behind the doors and the post has now set up thy memorial our ishmael said one can reason a minority in order to make peace between men and wife the torah decreed let my name written in sanctity be blotted out in water these who stir up jealousy enmity and wrath between israel and their father in heaven how much more so and of them david said do not i hate them o lord that hate thee and am i not grieved with those that rise up against thee i hate them with perfect hatred i count them mine enemies and just as we may not rescue them from a fire so may we not rescue them from a collapse of debris or from water or from anything that may destroy them our joseph behanin asked our for the books of you may we save them from a fire or not yes and no and he was Uncertain about the matter, Rab would not enter a Bubedin, and certainly not a Bubedin. Samuel would not enter a Bubedin. Yet he would enter a Bubedin. Rabba was asked, Why did you not attend at the Bubedin? A certain palm tree stands in the way. Replied he, And it is difficult for me to pass it. Then we will remove it. Its spot will present difficulties to me. Marbi Joseph said, I am one of them, and do not fear them. On one occasion he went there, and they wanted to harm him. Imishal Omar. Elizar's wife was our Gamaliel's sister. Now a certain philosopher lived in his vicinity, Talmud, Mosh of and he bore a reputation that he did not accept bribes. They wished to expose him, so she brought him a golden lamp, went before him, and said to him, I desire that a share be given me in my deceased father's estate. Divide ordered, he said, He or Gamaliel to him, it is decreed for us where there is a son, a daughter does not inherit. He replied, Since the day that you were exiled from your Land the law of Moses has been superseded, and another book given wherein it is written, a son and a daughter inherit equally. The next day, here Gamaliel brought him a Libyan asset. He to them, look at the end of the book wherein it is written, I came not to destroy the law of Moses, nor to add to the law of Moses, and it is written, therein a daughter does not inherit where there is a son. Said she to him, Let thy light shine forth like a lamp. Said our Gamaliel to him, and ask him, and knock the lamp. Over and why do we not read them, etc. Rab said, They learned this only for the time of the Beth Hamid Rash, but we may read them when it is not the time of the Beth Hamid Rash. But Samuel said, We may not read them on the Sabbath, even when it is not the time of the Beth Hamid Rash, but that is not so for Nehardia with Samuel's town, and in Nehardia they closed the prescribed lesson of the Pentateuch with a reading from the Hagiographer at Minha on the Sabbath, rather if stated it was thus stated. Rab said they learned this only in the place of the Beth Hamid Rash, but we may read them elsewhere than in the Beth Hamid Rash. While Samuel said whether in the place of the Beth Hamid Rash or elsewhere at the time of the Beth Hamid Rash, we may not read them when it is not the time of the Beth Hamid Rash. We may read them, and Samuel is consistent with his view. For in Nehardia they closed the prescribed lesson of the Pentateuch with a reading from the Hagiographer. Rashi said, In truth, it is as we first stated. Samuel ruling according to our Nehemiah, for it was taught though they the sages said holy writings may not be read yet they may be studied and lectures thereon may be given if one needs a verse he may bring a scroll and see it therein. Our Nehemiah said why did they rule holy writings may not be read so that people may say if holy writings may not be read how much more so secular documents mission one may save the sheath of a scroll together with the scroll and the container of. Tefillin together with the Tefillin even if it also contains money and whither may we rescue them into a closed alley band but there are ruled even into an open one Gemara our rabbis taught if the 14th of Nisan falls on the Sabbath the Passover sacrifice is flayed as far as the breast this is the view of our Ishmael son of our Yohanan be but the sages maintain we flay the whole of it as for our Ishmael son of our Yohanan be as well the reason being that the requirements for the sanctuary have been fulfilled but what is the reason of the rabbis said Rabbi Barhan in our Yohanan's name because scripture saith the Lord hath made everything for his own purpose but what is there here for his own purpose our Joseph said so that it should not putrefy Rabbi said so that divine sacrifices should not lie like a nibbler and do they differ they differ where it is lying on a gold table or if it is a day of the north wind now our Ishmael son of our Yohanan be how does he Dispose of this verse the Lord hath made everything for his own purpose that teaches that one must not draw out the emurim before the stripping of the skin what is the reason said Aruna son of our Nathan on account of the threads are his dog observed in Marakba's name what did his companions answer to our Ishmael son of our Yohanan be barakah they argued thus with him if the sheath of a scroll may be rescued together with the scroll shall we then not flay the Passover sacrifice of its skin how compare there it is mere handling whereas here it is work said Arashi they differ in two things viz in respect of both handling and labor and they argue thus with him if the sheath of a scroll may be saved together with the scroll shall we not handle the skin on account of the flesh Talmud Mosh of how compare there it the sheath had become as a stand to them which is permitted whereas here it the skin had become a stand to a thing that is forbidden rather they say thus to him if we may save the sheath of a scroll together with the scroll though it also contains money shall we not handle the skin on account of the flesh how compare there the sheath became a stand for something that is forbidden the money and something that is permitted the scroll whereas here the whole has become a stand for that which is forbidden rather they say thus to him if a sheath containing money may be brought from elsewhere to save a scroll of the law with it shall we not handle the skin in virtue of the flesh and how do we know that itself shall we say since one need not throw them the coins out when it contains them he may bring it the sheath too how compare there in the meanwhile the fire may alight upon the scroll but here let them be thrown out in the meantime rather said Marsan of Arashi in truth it is as we originally explained it and as to your objection there it is mere handling whereas here it is work that is answered e.g. that he does not require the skin but Abay and Rabba both say our Simeon agrees in a case of cut off its head but let it not die he removes it the skin in strips and whither may we rescue them etc. What is an open alley and what is a closed one are his das if it contains three walls and two stakes it is a closed alley three walls and one stake it is an open alley and both of them are based on our Eliezer's opinion for we learn to make an alley eligible Beth Shammai maintain it requires a stake and a beam Beth. Hillel say either a stake or a beam our Eliezer said two stakes said Rabba to him if there are three walls and one stake do you call it open moreover according to the rabbis let us save that there even footsteps and liquids rather said Rabba it is to be explained thus if it contains two walls and two stakes it is a closed alley two walls and one stake it is an open alley and both are based on the view of our Judah for it was taught even more than this did our Judah say if one owns two houses on the opposite sides of the street like in place a stake or a beam at each side and carry between them said they to him a street cannot be made fit for carrying by an Arab in this way said Abay to him but according to you too on the view of the rabbis let us save that there even footsteps and liquids Talmud, Mosh of Bath be rather said are ashy three walls and one stake that is a closed alley three walls without a stake that is an open alley and even according to our Eliezer who maintains that we require two stakes that is only in respect of footsteps and liquids but for a scroll of the law one stake is sufficient mission of food for three meals may be saved that which is fit for man for man that which is fit for animals for animals how so if a fire breaks out sabbath night food for three meals may be saved if in the morning food for two meals may be saved at the time of minha food for one meal our Jose said at all times we may save food for three meals Gamara consider he labors in that which is permissible then let us save more said Rabbi since a man is excited over his property if you permit him to save more he may come to extinguish the fire said Abay to him then as to what was taught if one's barrel of wine is broken on the top of his roof he may bring a vessel and place it underneath provided that he does not bring another vessel and catch the dripping liquid or another vessel and join it to the roof what preventive measure is required there here too it is a preventive measure lest he bring a utensil through the street to turn to the main text if one's
Bread if he saved coarse bread he may still save a fine flour bread and one may save on the day of atonement for the Sabbath but not on the Sabbath for the day of atonement and it goes without saying that one must not rescue food on the Sabbath for a festival or on a Sabbath for the following Sabbath our rabbis taught if one forgets a loaf in an oven and the day becomes holy upon him food for three meals may be saved and he may say to others come and save for yourselves and when he Removes the bread he must not remove it with a marte but with a knife but that is not so for the school of our Ishmael taught thou shalt not do any work the blowing of the shofar and the removal of bread from the oven are excluded as being an art not work as much as is possible to vary it we do so our Hizda said one should always make early preparations against the termination of the Sabbath for it is said and it shall come to pass on the sixth day that they shall prepare that which they bring in i.e. immediately our Abba said on the Sabbath it is one's duty to break bread over two loaves for it is written twice as much bread our Ashi said I saw that our Kahana held two loaves but broke bread over one observing they gathered is written our Zara broke enough bread for the whole meal said Rabbinah to our Ashi but that looks like greed since he does not do this every day he replied but only now the Sabbath it does not look like greed he replied RMI and RSC when they came across the bread of an Arab would commence their meal there with observing since one precept has been performed with it let another precept be performed with it how so if a fire breaks out etc our rabbis taught how many meals must one eat on the Sabbath three our Hidka said four our Yohanan observed both expound the same verse and Moses said eat that today for today is a Sabbath unto the Lord today ye shall not find it in the field our Hidka holds these three today's are reckoned apart from the evening. Whereas the rabbis hold they include that of the evening we learned if a fire breaks out Sabbath night Talmud, Mosh of Bath of food for three meals may be saved surely that is where one has not yet eaten no it is where he has already eaten if in the morning food for two meals may be saved surely that is where one has not yet eaten no where he has eaten at the time of Minha food for one meal surely that is where one has not eaten no where he has eaten but since the final section. States our Jose said at all times we may save food for three meals it follows that the first tana holds that three are required hence it is clear that our mission does not agree with our hista now as to what we learned he who has food for two meals must not accept relief from the tongue we food for fourteen meals must not accept from the cup who is the authority for this for it is neither the rabbis nor our hika if the rabbis there are fifteen meals if our hika there are sixteen in truth it is the rabbis for we say to him the recipient what you require to eat at the conclusion of the sabbath eat it on the sabbath shall we say then that it agrees only with the rabbis and not with our hika you may even say that it agrees with our hika we say to him what you require to eat on the eve of the sabbath before nightfall eat it on the sabbath and the whole day of sabbath eat friday we make him spend in fasting rather the author of this is our Akiba who said treat thy sabbath like a weekday rather than be dependent on men now as to what we learned a poor man traveling from place to place must be given not less than a loaf valued at a pundi and when four seahs cost one cell if he stays overnight he must be given the requirements for spending the night while if he spends the sabbath there he must be given food for three meals shall we say that this is according to the rabbis only not our hitka in truth it may agree with our hitka the circumstances being eg where he already has one meal with him so we say to him eat that which you have with you and when he departs shall he depart empty handed we provide him with a meal to accompany him what is meant by the requirements of spending the night set our papa a bed and a bolster our rabbis taught the plates in which one eats in the evening friday night may be washed for eating in them in the morning those which are used in the morning may be washed to eat in them at midday those used at midday are Washed to eat in the Minha, but from Minha and onwards they may no longer he washed but goblets drink dash ladles and flasks one may go on washing them all day because there is no fixed time for drinking our Simeon because he said in the name of our Joshua be Levi in Barkapur's name he who observes the practice of three meals on the Sabbath is saved from three evils the travails of the Messiah the retribution of Gehinnom and the wars of Gog and Magog the travails of the Messiah day is written. Here whilst there it is written behold I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and terrible day of the Lord comes the retribution of Gehinnom day is written here whilst there it is written that day is a day of wrath the wars of Gog and Magog day is written here whilst there it is written in that day when God shall come our Yohan and said in our Jose's name he who delights in the Sabbath is given an unbounded heritage for it is written then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord and I will. Make thee to ride upon the high places of the earth, and I will feed thee Talmud, Mosh of Bath be with the heritage of Jacob thy father, etc. Not like Abraham of whom it is written, Arise, walk through the land in the length of it, etc. Nor like Isaac of whom it is written, For unto thee and unto thy seed I will give all these lands, etc. But like Jacob of whom it is written, And thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. Arnaman be Isaac said he is saved from the servitude of the diaspora. Here it is written, And I will make thee to ride upon the high places of the earth, whilst there it is written, And thou shalt tread upon their high places. Rab Judah said in Rab's name, He who delights in the Sabbath is granted his heart's desires, for it is said, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Now I do not know what this delight refers to, but when it is said, And thou shalt call the Sabbath a delight, you must say that. It refers to the delight of the Sabbath wherewith does one show his delight therein Rab Judah son of our Samuel be shalath said in Rab's name with a dish of beets large fish and heads of garlic our high be ashi said in Rab's name even a trifle if it is prepared in honor of the Sabbath is delight what is it the trifle said our papa a pie of fish hash our high be abba said in our Yohanan's name he who observes the Sabbath according to its laws even if he practices idolatry like the generation of Enosh is forgiven for it is said blessed is Enosh that doth this that keepeth the Sabbath maholo from profaning it read not maholo but maholo he is forgiven Rab Judah said in Rab's name had Israel kept the first Sabbath no nation or tongue would have enjoyed dominion over them for it is said and it came to pass on the seventh day that there went out some of the people for together which is followed by then came Amalek our Yohanan said in the name of our Simeon Bohe if Israel were to keep Two Sabbaths according to the laws thereof they would be redeemed immediately for it is said thus saith the Lord of the eunuch that keep my Sabbaths which is followed by even them will I bring to my holy mountain etc. Our Jose said may my portion be of those who eat three meals on the Sabbath our Jose also said may my portion be of those who recite the entire hell every day but that is not so for a master said he who reads hell every day blasphemes and reproaches the divine name we refer to. The verses of song our Jose said may my portion be of those who pray with the red glow of the sun our high be Abba said in our Yohanan's name it is virtuous to pray with the red glow of the sun our Zara observed what verse intimates this they shall revere thee with I.e. at the time of the sunrise and before the moon shines throughout all generations observes our Jose also said may my lot be of those who die with bowel trouble for a master said the majority of the righteous die of trouble in it. Bowels our Jose also said may my portion be of those who die on the way to the performance of a religious duty our Jose also said may my lot be of those who welcome the Sabbath in Tiberias and who let it depart in Sephoris our Jose also said may my lot be of those who seat peoples in the Beth Hamidrash and not of those who order them to rise depart from the Beth Hamidrash our Jose also said may my lot be of those who collect charity but not of those who distribute charity our Jose also said may my lot be of those who are suspected whilst innocent our Papa said I was suspected of something of which I was free our Jose said I cohabited five times and planted five cedars in Israel who are there Ishmael son of our Jose our Eliezer son of our Jose our Halaf the son of our Jose our Adelo son of our Jose and our Menahem son of our Jose but there was Wardimus Wardimus and Menahem are identical and why was he called Wardimus because his face was like a rose where shall we say that our Jose did not fulfill his Marital duties rather say I cohabited five times and repeated our Jose said I have never called my wife my wife or my ox my ox but my wife I called my home and my ox my field our Jose said I have never looked at my circumcised member but that is not so for Rabbi was asked why were you called our holy teacher said he to them I have never looked at my observed member in Rabbi's case there was another thing to his credit this he did not insert his hand beneath his
Go forth to welcome the Queen Sabbath Arjani donned his robes on Sabbath Eve and exclaimed Come O bride, come O bride, Ravasan of Arhuna visited the home of Ravasan of Arnaman and was offered three seahs of oil cakes Did you know that I was coming? Asked he, are you then more important to us than it? The Sabbath replied, he or bought meat for thirteen iskira pesha from thirteen butchers and handed it over to them his servants as soon as the door was turned and urged them make. Haste quick, make haste quick. Arababu used to sit on an ivory stool and fan the fire. Arain and used to wear an overall for the school of Arishmail taught the clothes in which one cooks a dish for his master. Let him not pour out a cup of wine for his master in the Marsafra would cinch the head of an animal. Rabba salted Shibuta Arhuna let the lamp. Our papa plated the wicks. Arhista cut up the beetroot. Rabba and Arjos of shopwood. Arzara kindled the fire. Arnaman B. Isaac carried in and out. Saying if RMI and RC visited me, would I not carry for the mother's state? RMI and RC carried in and out. Saying if our Yohanan visited us, would we not carry before him? Joseph, who honors the Sabbaths, had in his victory a certain Gentile who owned much property. Soothsayers told him, Joseph, who honors the Sabbaths, will consume all your property. So he went, sold all his property, and bought a precious stone with the proceeds which he set in his turban as he was crossing a bridge. The wind blew it off and cast it into the water, and the fish swallowed it. Subsequently, the fish was hauled up and brought to market on the Sabbath eve towards sunset. Who will buy not cry? They go and take them to Joseph, who honors the Sabbaths. They were told as he is accustomed to buy, so they took it to him. He bought it, opened it, found the jewel therein, and sold it for thirteen roomfuls of gold. And a certain old man met him and said, He who lends to the Sabbath, the Sabbath repays him. Rabbi asked Arishmael son of Ar Jose the wealthy in Palestine where do they merit wealth because they give tithes he replied as it is written Aser te Aser which means give tithes Aser so that thou mayest become wealthy tithes Aser those in Babylon wherewith do they merit it because they honor the Torah replied he and those in other countries where do they merit it because they honor the Sabbath answered he for Ar Hibi Ab related I was once a guest of a man in Laodicea and a golden table was brought before him which had to be carried by sixteen men sixteen silver chains were fixed in it and plates goblets pitchers and flasks were set thereon thereon and upon it were all kinds of food dainties and spices when they set it down they recited the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and when they removed it after the meal they recited the heavens are the heavens of the Lord but the earth hath he given to the children of men said I to him my son whereby. Hast thou merited this? I was a butcher, replied he, and of every fine beast I used to say, This shall be for the Sabbath. Said I to him, Happy art thou that thou hast so merited, and praise be the omnipresent who has permitted thee to enjoy all this. The emperor said to our Joshua, Be Hanani, why has the Sabbath dish such a fragrant odor? We have a certain seasoning, replied he, called the Sabbath which we put into it, and that gives it a fragrant odor. Give us some of it, asked he to him who keeps it. Sabbath retorted he, It is efficacious, but to him who does not keep the Sabbath, it is of no use. The Reshalif asked our Hamana what is meant by the verse, and thou shalt call the holy of the Lord honorable. This refers to the Day of Atonement, replied he, in which there is neither eating nor drinking, hence the Torah instructed honor it with clean festive garments, and thou shalt honor it. Rab said by fixing it earlier, Samuel maintained by postponing it, the sons of our Papa B. Ab asked. Our Papa, we for instance who have meat and wine every day, how shall we mark a change if you are accustomed to dine early? Postpone it if you are accustomed to dine late. Have it earlier answered he or she's hate used to place his scholars in a place exposed to the sun in summer and in a shady place in winter so that they should arise quickly. Our Zerah Talmud, Moshe Bath, be used to seek out peers of scholars and say to them, I beg of you, do not profane it, rob other state. Our Joshua believe I said even. If an individual prays on the eve of the Sabbath, he must recite, and the heaven and the earth were finished, etc. For our Hamana said he who prays on the eve of the Sabbath and recites, and the heaven and the earth were finished, the retreats of him as though he had become a partner with the Holy One. Blessed be he in the creation, for it is said, W. A. Yichol, and they were finished, read not W. A. Yichol, but W. A. Yichol, and they finished. Our Eliezer said, How do we know that speech is like action? Because it is said by the word of the Lord where the heavens made are his da said in Marakba's name he who prays on the eve of the Sabbath and recites and the heaven and the earth were finished the two ministering angels who accompany man place their hands on his head and say to him and thine iniquity is taken away and thy sin purged it was taught our Jose son of our Judah said two ministering angels accompany man on the eve of the Sabbath from the synagogue to his home one a good angel and one an evil one and when he arrives home and finds the lamp burning the table late and the couch bed covered with a spread the good angel exclaims may it be even thus on another Sabbath too and the evil angel unwillingly responds amen but if not the evil angel exclaims may it be even thus on another Sabbath too and the good angel unwillingly responds amen our Eliezer said one should always set his table on the eve of the Sabbath even if he needs only the size of an olive while our Hannah said one should always set his table on the termination of the Sabbath even if he merely requires as much as an olive hot water after the termination of the Sabbath is soothing fresh warm bread after the termination of the Sabbath is soothing a three-year-old calf used to be prepared for our on the termination of the Sabbath of which he ate a kidney when his son Abimi grew up he said to him why should you waste so much let us leave over a kidney from Sabbath Eve so he left it over and a lion came and devoured it our Joshua believe I said he who responds amen may his great name be blessed with all his might his decreed sentence is torn up as it is said when retribution was annulled in Israel for that the people offered themselves willingly bless yet the Lord why when retribution was annulled because they blessed the Lord our high Abba said in our Yohanan's name even if he has attained of idolatry he is forgiven it is written here when retribution was annulled before Parath whilst elsewhere it is written, and Moses saw that the people were broken loose, for before Aaron had let them loose, Reshlakish said he who responds, Amen, with all his might, as the gates of paradise opened for him, as it is written, Open ye the gates that the righteous nation which keepeth truth, Shemur Immunum may enter in red, not Shemur Immunum, but Shemur Immunum, that say, Amen, what does Amen mean? Said our Hannah, God faithful King Rab Judah, son of our Samuel, said in Rab's name, an outbreak of fire occurs only in a place where there is desecration of the Sabbath, for it is said, But if ye will not hearken unto me to hallow the Sabbath day, and not to bear a burden, then will I kindle a fire in the gates thereof, and it shall devour the palaces of Jerusalem, and it shall not be quenched, what does and it shall not be quenched mean? Said Arnaman B. Isaac at the time when no people are available to quench it, Abbe said Jerusalem was destroyed only because the Sabbath was desecrated therein, as it is said, and they have hid their eyes from my Sabbaths, therefore I am profaned among them. Our said Jerusalem was destroyed only because the reading of the Shema morning and evening was neglected therein, for it is said, Woe unto them that rise up early in the morning that they may follow strong drink, etc. And it is written, and the harp and the lute, the bird and the pipe and wine are in their feasts, but they regard not the work of the Lord, and it is written, therefore my people are gone into captivity for lack of knowledge. Our Hamna said Jerusalem was destroyed only because they neglected the education of school children, for it is said, Pour it out, S.C. God's wrath because of the children in the street, why pour it out because the child is in the street? Well, said Jerusalem was destroyed only because its inhabitants were not ashamed of each other, for it is written, Were they ashamed when they committed abomination? Nay, they were not at all ashamed, therefore they shall fall, our Isaac said. Jerusalem was destroyed only because the small and the great were made equal for it is said and it shall be like people like priests which is followed by the earth shall be utterly emptied Aram Rome son of our Simeon B. Abba said in our Simeon B. Abba's name in our Hannah's name Jerusalem was destroyed only because they did not rebuke each other for it is said her princes are become like hearts that find no pasture just as the heart ahead of one is at the side of the other's estale so Israel of that generation hid their faces in the earth and did not rebuke each other Rab Judah said Jerusalem was destroyed only because scholars were despised therein for it is said but they mocked the messengers of God and despised his words and scoffed at his prophets until
People are not sure unless they first stumble over them or in thy hands therefore be thou our judge in that day Yisa shall he lift up his voice saying I will not be an healer Yisa denotes not but swearing and thus it is said thou shalt not take tis of the name of the Lord thy God in vain I will not be a binder of Habesh I will not be of those who shut themselves up Habeshi in the Beth Hamid Rash and in my house in neither bread nor clothing I possess no my promise nor Gemara how does that follow perhaps it is different therefore had he said to them I have studied them the reasons of the law they would have retorted and tell them to us then let him say that he had learned and forgotten why state I will not be a binder up at all there is no difficulty here it is in connection with learning there in connection with worldly affairs mission one may save a basket full of loaves even if it contains sufficient for a hundred meals and a round cake of Press fix and a barrel of wine and he the owner may say to others come and save for yourselves and if they are wise they make a reckoning with him after the Sabbath whither may they be saved into a courtyard provided with an ERUB ben but there is said even into a courtyard unprovided with an ERUB and thither he may carry out all the utensils he requires for his use and he puts on all that he can put on and wraps himself in all wherewith he can wrap himself our Jose said only eighteen garments. Then he may put on garments afresh and carry them out and say to others come and rescue with me tomorrow but he the tenant teaches in the first clause three meals but no more said Arhuna there is no difficulty here it means that he comes to save the whole basket simultaneously there he comes to collect food if he comes to save he may save all if he comes to collect he may collect only for three meals our Abu Bizab said in our name both are where one comes to collect yet there is no. Difficulty here it is into the same courtyard there it is into another courtyard Arhuna the son of Arjashu asked what if one spreads out his garments collects and places therein collects and places therein is it like one who comes to save or like one who comes to collect come and here since Rabbah said Arshis by misled Arhistah by teaching provided that he does not procure a vessel which holds more than three meals it follows that it is like one who comes to save and it is permitted Ar. Naman B. Isaac observed to Rabbah why is it an error he replied because it is stated provided that he does not bring another vessel and catch the dripping liquid or another vessel and join it to the roof thus only another vessel may not be brought but he may save as much as he desires in the same vessel and around cake of press fix etc what have we to do with the reckoning surely they acquire it from Hefker said Arhistah they spoke here of pious conduct will pious men take payment for the Sabbath objected Rabba rather said Rabba we refer here to a God-fearing person who does not wish to benefit from others yet is unwilling to trouble for nothing and this is its meaning and if they are wise that they know that in such a case it is not payment for the Sabbath they make a reckoning with him after the Sabbath whither may they be saved etc why does he state here save for yourselves whilst there he states rescue with me I will tell you in connection with food he states for yourselves because food for three meals only is fit for himself but in connection with garments he states rescue with me because they are fit for him all day our rabbis taught he may put on carry out and take off and again put on carry out and take off even all day this is our mayor's view our Jose said only 18 garments and these are the 18 garments a cloak under tunic hollow belt and sleeveless tunic shirt felt cap apron a pair of trousers a pair of shoes a pair of socks a pair of Bridges the girdle round his loins, the hat on his head, and the scarf round his neck. Mission Arsimian Binano said, One may spread a goat skin over a box chest or trunk which has caught fire because he singes, and one may make a barrier with all vessels, whether full of water or empty, that the fire should not travel onward. Our Jose forbids in the case of new earthen vessels filled with water because since they cannot stand the heat, they will burst and extinguish the fire. Gemara Rab Judah said, In Rab's name, if a garment catches fire on one side, water may be poured onto it, on the other end, if it is thereby extinguished, it is extinguished, an objection is raised. If a garment catches fire on one side, one may take it off and cover himself with it, and if it is extinguished, if it is extinguished, and likewise, if a scroll of the law catches fire, one may spread it out and read it, and if it is extinguished, it is extinguished. Talmud, Mosh of Bath B, he rules as Arsimian Binano's, yet perhaps are. Simeon Binano said merely because he singes but did he rule thus of indirect extinguishing yet since the final clause teaches our Jose forbids in the case of new earthen vessels filled with water because since they cannot stand the heat they will burst and extinguish the fire it follows that the first tenet permits it our rabbis taught if a lamp is on a board one may shake tip up the board and if the lamp falls off and if it is extinguished it is extinguished the school of Arjene. Said they learned this only if one forgot it there but if he placed it there if the board became a stand for a forbidden article a tenet taught if a lamp is behind a door one may open and close it naturally and if it is extinguished it is extinguished Rab cursed this ruling said Rabbanu to Araha the son of Rab other state Araha the son of Rabbanu Arashi why did Rab curse this shall we say because Rab holds with our Judah whereas the tenet teaches as our Simeon because Rab holds with our Judah, if one teaches as Arsimian, shall he curse him? Here he replied, even Arsimian agrees for Abbe and Rabba both said Arsimian agrees in a case of cut off his head and let him not die. Rab Judah said one may open a door opposite a fire on the Sabbath. Abbe cursed this. What are the circumstances? If there is a normal wind blowing, what is the reason of the one who forbids? If there is an abnormal wind, what is the reason of the one who permits? In truth, it refers to a normal wind. One master holds. We prohibit preventively, whilst the other master holds. We do not prohibit preventively. One may make a barrier, etc. Shall we say that the rabbis hold indirect extinguishing is permitted, while our Jose holds that it is forbidden? But we know them to maintain the reverse, for it was taught one may make a barrier of empty vessels and of full vessels which are not liable to burst. Metal vessels, our Jose said, the vessels of Farshine and Farhan and I too are not likely to burst. And should you answer? Reverse our mission while our Jose of the Beretha argues on the view of the rabbis it may be asked but can you reverse them surely Rabbi Talafa said in Rab's name which Tana holds that indirect extinguishing is forbidden our Jose hence in truth you must not reverse it the whole of the Beretha being the view of our Jose but there is a lacuna and it was thus taught one may make a barrier with empty vessels and with full vessels that are not likely to burst and these are the vessels which are not likely to burst metal vessels and the vessels of Farshine and Farhan and I too are not likely to burst for our Jose maintains the vessels of Farshine and Farhan and I too are not likely to burst now the rabbis are self-contradictory and our Jose is self-contradictory for it was taught if one has a divine name written on his skin he must not bathe nor anoint himself nor stand in an unclean place if he must perform an obligatory table he must wind a read about it and descend. And perform table our Jose said he may at all times descend and perform table in the ordinary way provided that he does not rub it there it is different because scripture saith and ye shall destroy their name out of that place ye shall not do so unto the Lord your God only direct action is forbidden but indirect action is permitted if so here too it is written thou shalt not do any work only direct action is forbidden but indirect action is permitted since a man is excited over his property if you permit him indirect action he may come to extinguish it if so the rabbis are self contradictory if there though a man is excited over his property it is permitted how much more so here now is that logical this read how is it meant if it is wound tightly it is an interposition while if it is not wound tightly the water enters you speak of an interposition that follows from the ink the reference is to wet ink for it was taught blood ink honey and milk if dry on the skin constitute an interposition if voice they do not constitute an interposition yet still there is a difficulty rather said Rabbi Bishila this is the reason of the rabbis because they hold one must not stand nude in the presence of the divine name hence it follows that our Jose holds that one may stand nude in the presence of the divine name he places his hand upon it then according to the rabbis to let him place his hand upon it he may chance to forget and remove it then according to our Jose too he may forget and remove it rather reply thus if a read is available that is indeed so the discussion is about going to seek a read the rabbis hold Talmud Mosh of Bathe in its due time is not obligatory hence we seek it whereas our Jose holds table in its dual time is obligatory hence we do not seek it now does then our Jose hold table in its due time is obligatory surely it was taught as Ab and as Ab, a male leper and a female leper he who cohabits within it and he who is defiled through a corpse perform their table by day and
Sabbath and a miracle happened on his behalf, rain descended and extinguished it in the evening. He sent two sela to each of them and fifty to their captain. But when the sages heard of it, they said he did not need this, for we learned if a Gentile comes to extinguish, we do not say to him extinguish or do not extinguish, but if a minor comes to extinguish, we do not permit him because his resting is our obligation. You may infer from this that if a minor eats nibble, it is the duty of Beth to restrain him. Set our Yohanan. This refers to a minor acting at his father's desire, then by analogy in respect to the Gentile, he too acts at the Jews' desire. Is this permitted? A Gentile acts at his own desire. Mishnah a dish may be inverted over a lamp that the beams should not catch fire, and over an infant's excrement, and over a scorpion that it should not bite. Our Judah said an incident came before our Yohanan be Zakai in Arab, and he said, I fear on his account that he may be liable to a sin. Offering Gemara Rab Judah and our Jeremiah B. Abba and our Hanan B. Rabba visited the home of Abin of Neshekiel for Rab Judah and our Jeremiah B. Abba Talmud, Moshe Bath B. Talmud, Moshe Bath B. Couches were brought for our Hanan B. Rabba none was brought now he found him reciting to his son and over an infant's excrement on account of the infant said he to him Abin a fool recites nonsense to his son surely that itself is fit for dogs and should you say that it was not fit for him from yesterday surely it was taught flowing rivers and gushing springs are as the feet of all men and how shall I recite it say over the excrement of fowls on account of an infant but deduce it because it is as a vessel for excrements and should you answer the vessel of excrements is only permitted in virtue of the utensil yet that itself may not be carried out but a mouse was found in our ashy spices and he said to them his servants take it by the tail and throw it out this refers to a dung heap but what? Business as an infant with a dung heap it is in the courtyard, but in a courtyard too it is a vessel of excrements. It refers to a dung heap in the courtyard and over a scorpion that it should not bite. Our Joshua believe I said all animals etc. that cause injury may be killed on the Sabbath. Our Joseph objected five may be killed on the Sabbath, and these are the Egyptian fly, the hornet of Ninoi, the scorpion of Adiabani, the snake in Palestine, and a mad dog anywhere now who is the authority. Shall we say our Judah surely he maintains one is guilty on account of a labor not required for itself, hence it must be our Simeon, and only these are permitted, but not others said our Jeremiah, and who tells us that this is correct, perhaps it is corrupt, said our Joseph. I recited it and I raised the objection, and I can answer it. This is where they are pursuing him and is unanimous. Eight, and recited before Rabbi son of Arhunah, if one kills snakes or scorpions on the Sabbath, the spirit of the Pisces. Displeased with him, he retorted, and as to those pious men, the spirit of the sages is displeased with them. Now he disagrees with Arhunah, for Arhunah saw a man kill a wasp, said he to him, Have you wiped them all out? Our rabbis taught, if one chances upon snakes and scorpions and he kills them, it is manifest that he had chanced upon them in order to kill them. If he does not kill them, it is manifest that he had chanced upon them that they should kill him, but that a miracle was performed by heaven on his behalf. Allah said, Other state, Rabbi Barhana said in our Yohanan's name, that is when they said him, or Rabbi Kahana said, One of them once fell in the Beth Hamidrash and an Abati and arose and killed it, said, Rabbi, a similar one must have attacked him. The scholars asked, A similar one must have attacked him means that he had done well or not come and here for our Abbasan of our Habi Abba and our Zara were sitting in the anteroom of our Janay's academy when something issued from between. Them so they asked Arjani may one kill snakes and scorpions on the Sabbath said he to them I kill a hornet how much more so snakes and scorpions but perhaps that is only incidentally for Rab Judah said one can tread down saliva incidentally and Arshis hate said one can tread down a snake incidentally and Arkatna said one may tread down a scorpion incidentally Abba B. Martha who is Abba B. Minyamai owed money to the house of the Reshalitha so they brought him before the Reshalitha he distressed him and he spat out saliva whereupon the Reshalitha ordered bring a vessel and cover it said he to them you do not need this for thus did Rab Judah say one can tread down saliva incidentally he is a scholar remarked he the Reshalitha let him go our Abba B. Kahana also said in our Hannah's name the candlesticks of Rabbi's household may be handled on the Sabbath Arzara asked him does that mean where they can be taken up with one hand or even with two hands Talmud, Moss. Shabbat such as those of your father's house, he replied, our Abba Kahana also said in our Hannah's name, the litters of Rabbi's household may be handled on the Sabbath. Our Zara asked him, does that mean those that can be moved with one hand or even with two hands, such as those of your father's house, replied he, our Abba Kahana also said, our Hannah permitted Rabbi's household to drink one carried in Gentile kosher sealed with one seal, and I do not know whether it is because he agrees with our Eliza or because of the Gentile's fear of the Nasai's household mission. If a Gentile lights a lamp, an Israelite may make use of its light, but if he does it for the sake of the Israelite, it is forbidden. If he draws water to give his own animal to drink, an Israelite may water his after him, but if he draws it for the Israelite's sake, it is forbidden. If a Gentile makes a stairway to descend by it, an Israelite may descend after him, but if on the Israelite's account, it is forbidden at once. Happened that Argamaliel and the elders were traveling in a ship when a Gentile made a stairway for going down and Argamaliel and the elders descended by it. Gemara now these are all necessary for if we were informed about a lamp that is because a lamp for one is a lamp for a hundred but as for water I might say let us forbid it lest he come to increase the quantity drawn on the Israelites account what is the need of the ruling about a stairway he tells us the story of Argamaliel and the elders are rabbis taught if a Gentile gathers herbs an Israelite may feed his cattle therewith after him but if he gathers on the Israelites account it is forbidden if he draws water to give his cattle to drink an Israelite may water his after him but if on the Israelites account it is forbidden when is that if he does not know him but if he knows him it is forbidden but that is not so for our said in our Hannah's name a man may stand his cattle on grass on the Sabbath but not on Muksa on the Sabbath it means that he stands in front of it the animal and so it goes there and eats the master said when is that if he does not know him but if he knows him it is forbidden but Argamaliel is a case where he knew him said Abbe it was not made in his presence Rabbah said you may even say that it was in his presence a lamp for one is a lamp for a hundred an objection is raised Argamaliel said to them since he did not make it in our presence let us go down by it say since he made it let us go down by it come and here if a city inhabited by Israelites and Gentiles contains baths where there is bathing on the Sabbath if the majority are Gentiles one an Israelite may bathe therein immediately if the majority are Israelites one must walk until hot water could be heated there when they heat they do so with a view to the majority come and here if a lamp is burning at a banqueting party if the majority are Gentiles one may make use of its light if the majority our Israelites it is forbidden if half and half it is forbidden there too when they light a Talmud, Moshe Bath be they do so with a view to the majority Samuel visited the house of Abin of Torah and a Gentile came and lit a lamp whereupon Samuel turned his face away on seeing that he the Gentile had brought a document and was reading it he observed he has lit it for himself so he too Samuel turned his face to the lamp C-H-A-P-T-E-R-X-B-I-I mission all utensils may be handled on it. Sabbath and their doors with them even if they are detached for they are not like the doors of a house which are not of mukin a man may take a hammer to split nuts a chopper to cut around a press fix a saw for sawing cheese a spade to scoop dry fix a winnowing shovel and a pitchfork to place food upon it for a child a reed or a world to stick food a small needle to remove a thorn and a sack needle to open a door there with Gemara all utensils may be handled even if they are detached on the Sabbath while it goes without saying if detached on a weekday on the contrary on the Sabbath they stand prepared in virtue of their origin whereas if detached on a weekday they do not stand prepared in virtue of their origin said Abbe this is its meaning all utensils may be handled on the Sabbath their doors with them even if they are detached on a weekday they may be handled on the Sabbath our rabbis taught the door of a box chest or coffer may be removed but not replaced. That of a hen roost may neither be removed nor replaced. As for that of a hen roost, it is well he holds that since the hen roosts are attached to the ground, the interdict of building applies to the ground, and that of demolishing applies to the
I like that if he has already cut meat upon it it may not be handled he thought of answering him that this agrees with our Nehemiah but when he heard our Hina of Shalmi's dictum in Rab's name all agree in respect of the dyer's pins tubs and being since one is particular about them he appoints a special place for them so here too one appoints a special place for it the pestle it was stated our Hina B Abba said in our Yohanan's name we learned in our mission of a goldsmith's hammer our Shaman B. Abba said we learned of a spice hammer he who says a spice hammer all the more so a goldsmith's hammer he who says a goldsmith's but one is particular about a spice hammer a reed or a whirl etc our rabbis taught if an unripe fig was hidden in straw or a cake which was hidden in live coals and part thereof is uncovered it may be handled but if not it may not be handled our Eliezer Bittad I said one impales them on a reed or a whirl and they the straw or coals are shaken off of their own. A court Arnaman said the halachah is as our Eliezer Bittad I shall we say that Arnaman holds indirect handling is not designated handling surely Arnaman said a radish if it is the right way up is permitted if it is reversed it is forbidden Arnaman retracted from that ruling a small needle to remove a thorn etc Rabbi son of Rabbi sent to our Joseph let our master teach us what of a needle from which the eye or the point has been removed we have learned that he replied a small needle to remove it. Thorn now what does it matter to the thorn whether it has an eye or not either upon put an objection to him if the eye or the point of a needle is removed it is clean said of a you oppose defilement to the Sabbath for defilement we require a working utensil whereas in respect to the Sabbath we require anything that is fit and this too is fit for removing a splinter Rob observed he who raises the objection does so rightly since it is not a utensil in respect to defilement it is not a utensil in respect to the Sabbath an objection is raised a needle whether with or without an eye may be handled on the Sabbath while one with an eye was specified only in respect to defilement Abbe interpreted it on the view of Rabbah as referring to unfinished utensils for sometimes he may decide to use it thus and make it rank as a utensil but if the eye or point is removed one throws it away among the rubbish causing a newborn babe to vomit Arnaman forbids while Arshis hate permits Arnaman. Said once do I rule thus because we learned one must not use an emetic Talmud, Moss should bath be on the Sabbath and Arshis hate there it is unnatural whereas here it is natural Arshis hate said once do I rule thus because we learned a small needle to remove a thorn and Arnaman there it is externally deposited whereas here it is not externally deposited Mishnah a cane for olives if it has a bulb on top is susceptible to defilement if not it is not susceptible to defilement in both cases it may be handled on the Sabbath tomorrow why so it is a flat wooden utensil and these are not susceptible to uncleanness what is the reason we require something similar to a sack it was taught in our Nehemiah's name when he turns the olives he reverses it and looks at it Mishnah our Jose said all utensils may be handled except a large saw and the pin of a plow tomorrow Arnaman said a fuller's trough is like the pin of a plow Abbe said a cobbler's knife and a butcher's chopper and a carpenter's. Ads are like the pin of a plow. Rabbis taught at first day the sages rule three utensils may be handled on the Sabbath a fig cake knife, a pot soup ladle, and a small table knife. Then they permitted other articles and they permitted again still more and they permitted still further until they ruled all utensils may be handled on the Sabbath except the large saw and the pin of a plow. What is meant by then they permitted other articles and they permitted again still more and they permitted still further. Said Abbe first they permitted an article whose function is for a permitted purpose provided it was required for itself. Then they further permitted an article whose function is for a permitted purpose even when its place is required. Then they further permitted an article whose function is for a forbidden purpose provided it was required for itself but not when its place is required. Yet still these might be handled with one hand only but not with two hands until. They finally ruled all utensils may be handled on the Sabbath even with both hands Rabbah observed to him consider he the Tana teaches they permitted other things what difference is it whether they are required for themselves or their places needed rather said Rabbah first they permitted an article whose function is for a permitted purpose both when required itself or when its place is required then they further permitted it to be moved from the sun to the shade then they further permitted an article whose function is for a forbidden purpose to be moved only when it is required for itself or when its place is required but not from the sun to the shade yet it might still be moved by one person only but not by two until they ruled all utensils may be handled on the Sabbath even by two persons have they put an objection to him a mortar containing garlic may be handled if not it may not be handled we treat here of moving it from the sun to the shade he refuted him and both hold alike that if he had cut meat upon it it may not be handled here too it means from the sun to the shade our Hannah said this mission was taught in the days of Nehemiah the son of Hakali for it is written in those days I saw in Judah some trading wine presses on the Sabbath and bringing in sheeps our Eliezer said the laws about Cain's staves fastenings and mortar were all learned before the permission read the handling of utensils canes for we learned neither the placing of the canes nor their removal supersedes the Sabbath staves as we learned there were ten smooth staves there which one placed on his shoulder and his fellow's shoulder then he suspended the sacrifice upon them and skinned it our Eliezer said if the fourteenth of Nisan fell on a Sabbath one placed Talmud Moss should bath his hand upon his fellow's shoulder and his fellow's hand rested upon his shoulder and so the animal was suspended and skinned a fastening as we learned if a door bolt has on its top eh? Fastening contrivance are Joshua said one may shift it from one door and hang it on another on the Sabbath our Tarfon said it is like all utensils and may be moved about in a courtyard a mortar that which we have stated said Rabbi once does that follow perhaps in truth I may argue that they were learned after the permission re utensils thus what was the reason of placing canes on account of moldiness but in that short while they would not become moldy as for the staves it was possible to act as our Eliezer stated the fastening may be as our Jenna who said we treat here of a courtyard not provided with an Arab now our Joshua holds the inside of the door is as within so one carries a utensil of a house through the courtyard whereas our Tarfon holds that the inside of the door is as without so one carries a utensil of the courtyard in the courtyard as for a mortar that agrees with our Nehemiah mission all utensils may be handled whether required or not required our Nehemiah said they May be handled only when required tomorrow what does required and not required mean Rabbah said required an article whose function is for a permitted purpose may be moved when required itself not required an article whose function is for a permitted purpose may be moved when its place is required but an article whose function is for a forbidden purpose may be handled only when required itself but not when its place is required whereupon our Nehemiah comes to say that even an article whose function is for a permitted purpose may be handled only when required itself but not when its place alone is required said Rabbah to him if its place is required do you call it not required rather said Rabbah required an article whose function is for a permitted purpose may be handled whether required itself or its place is required not required means even from the sun to the shade whilst an article whose function is for a forbidden purpose may be moved only when required itself or its Place is required but not from the sun to the shade whereupon our Nehemiah comes to say that even an article whose function is for a permitted purpose may be moved only when required itself or its place is required but not from the sun to the shade now our safra our ahabi huna and our hunabi hanada sat and reasoned according to rabbi on our Nehemiah's view how may we move plates said our safra to them by analogy with the pot of excrement abay asked rabbi according to you on our Nehemiah's view how may we move plates our safra our colleague has answered it by analogy with the pot of excrement he replied abay objected to rabbi a mortar if containing garlic may be handled if not it may not be handled we treat here of moving it from the sun to the shade he further objected to him and both hold alike that if he had already cut meat upon it it may not be moved here too it means from the sun to the shade now as to what we learned one may not support a pot with a leg and the same applies to a door but surely a log on a festival is an article whose function is for a permitted purpose which shows that an article whose function is for a permitted purpose may not be handled whether required itself or its place is needed there this is the reason since on the Sabbath it is an article whose function is for a forbidden purpose is it preventively forbidden on festivals on account of the Sabbath and should you say let the Sabbath itself be permitted since an article whose function is for a forbidden purpose may be handled when required itself or its place is required that is only where it comes within the category of a utensil but not where it does not come within the category of a utensil yet do we en
Respect of carrying out do you know them to rule likewise in respect of handling is then handling itself not forbidden on account of carrying out now Rab 2 holds this view of Rabba for Rab said moving a whole lest it be stolen is unnecessary handling and is forbidden thus only when it is in order that it should not be stolen but if it is required for itself or its place is required it is permitted but that is not so for Arkahana visited Rab's house whereupon he ordered bring a log of wood for Kahana to sit now surely that was to imply that a thing whose function is for a forbidden purpose may be handled only when required itself but not merely when its place is required this is what he said to them remove the log from Kahana's presence alternatively there it was moved from the sun to the shade Armari B Rachel had some pillows lying in the sun he went to Rabba and asked him may these be moved it is permitted replied he but I have others they are of use for guests. I have some for guests to you have revealed your opinion that you agree with Rab observed he to all others it is permitted but to you it is forbidden our Abba said in the name of our high Ashi and Rab's name table brushes made of cloth may be handled on the Sabbath but not those made of palm twigs our Eliezer maintained even those made of palm twigs what are we discussing shall we say where they are handled when required in themselves or their places required shall Rab rule here but not those made of palm twigs surely Rab agrees with Rab again if it means from the sun to the shade shall our Eliezer rule here even those made of palms in truth it means from the sun to the shade say and thus did our Eliezer rule mission all utensils which may be handled on the Sabbath their fragments may be handled too provided however that they can perform something in the nature of work thus the fragments of a kneading trough that can be used to cover the mouth of a Barrel therewith and the fragments of a glass to cover therewith the mouth of a cruise are Judah maintained provided that they can perform something in the nature of their own former work thus the fragments of a kneading trough to pour a thick mass therein or of a glass to pour oil therein Gemara Rab Judah said in Samuel's name the controversy is only if they were broken from the eve of the Sabbath one master holding only provided they are fit for something in the nature of their own former work but not for something in the nature of a different work whereas the other master holds even if fit for something in the nature of a different work but if they are broken on the Sabbath all agree that they are permitted since they are mukin in virtue of their origin are zitra objected we may heat an oven with utensils but not with fragments of utensils now when were these broken shall we say that they were broken from the eve of the festival then they are simply pieces of wood Hence it must surely be on the festival yet he teaches we may heat with utensils but not with fragments of utensils rather if stated it was thus stated Rab Judah said in Samuel's name the controversy is only if they are broken on the Sabbath one master holding that they are mukin whilst the other master holds that they are nolid but if broken on Sabbath he all hold that they are permitted since they were mukin for work from the daytime one buried the taught we may heat with utensils but not with fragments of utensils another was taught just as we may heat with utensils so may we heat with fragments of utensils whilst the third taught we may heat neither with utensils nor with fragments of utensils one agrees with our Judah one with our Simeon and the last with our Nehemiah our Naman said the bricks that are left over from a building may be handled since they are fit to sit on but if he places them in rows then he has certainly set them apart our Naman said in Samuel's name a small Shard may be moved about in a courtyard but not in a Carmelith but Arnaman giving his own view maintained even in a Carmelith but not in the street whereas Rabba said even in the street now Rabba is consistent with his view for Rabba was walking in the manner of Mahosa when his shoes become soiled with clay so his attendant came took a shard and wiped it off the rabbis his disciples rebuked him said he it is not enough that they have not learned they would even teach if it were in a courtyard would it not be fit for covering a utensil here too I have a use for it Rab Judah said in Samuel's name the bung of a barrel which is broken in pieces may be handled on the Sabbath it was taught likewise if a bung is broken in pieces both it and the fragments thereof may be handled on the Sabbath but one must not trim a fragment thereof to cover a vessel or support the legs of a bed therewith but if one throws it away on the dung heap it is forbidden our papa if so if one Throws away his robe is the two prohibited rather said our Papa Talmud, Mosh of Bath if he threw it away whilst yet day it is forbidden Barhamjuri said in Samuel's name shreds of reeds detached from a mat may be handled on the Sabbath what is the reason said Rabba Barhamjuri explained it to me what is the reed dash mat itself fit for for covering the earth these two are fit for covering dirt Arzara said in Rab's name pieces of silk of aprons may not be handled on the Sabbath said Abathus. Refers to rags less than three finger breadths square which are of no use to rich or poor our rabbis taught the fragments of an old oven are like all utensils which may be handled in a courtyard this is our Meir's view our Judah said they may not be handled our Jose testified in the name of our Eliezer B Jacob concerning the fragments of an old oven that they may be handled on the Sabbath and concerning its lid of the oven that it does not require a handle wherein do they differ said Abay where they perform something in the nature of work but not in the nature of their own former work are Judah being consistent with his view and are with his Rabba demurred if so instead of disputing about the fragments of an oven let them dispute about the fragments of utensils in general rather said Rabba they dispute about the fragments of the following oven for we learned if he sets it the oven over the mouth of a pit or a cellar and places a stone there are Judah said if one can heat it from underneath and it is thereby heated above it is unclean if not it is clean but the sages maintain since it can in any wise be heated it is unclean and wherein do they differ in this verse whether oven or range of pots it shall be torn down they are unclean shall be unclean unto you or Judah holds where tearing down is wanting it is unclean whilst where tearing down is not wanting it is not unclean whereas the rabbis hold they shall be unclean unto you implies in all cases but the rabbis do. Surely it is written it shall be torn down that is intended in the opposite direction for one might argue since it is attached to the ground it is like the very ground itself therefore it informs us otherwise and the other are Judah too surely they shall be unclean unto you is written that is explained as Rab Judah's dictum in Samuel's name for Rab Judah said in Samuel's name they differ only in respect of the first firing but at the second firing even if it is suspended to a camel's neck will observe and as for the first firing according to the rabbis even if it is suspended from a camel's neck are ashy demurred if so instead of disputing about the fragments of the oven let them dispute about the oven itself foreseeing that the oven itself according to our Judah is not a utensil need the fragments be mentioned rather said our ashy in truth it is as we originally stated and the controversy is where it, the fragment can serve as a baking tile whilst our mayor argues on Judah's opinion thus according to my view even if they the fragments can perform something in the nature of any work but even on your view you must at least agree with me here that in such a case it is its own work but our Judah argues it is dissimilar there it is heated from within here it is heated from without there it stands here it does not stand our Jose testified in the name of our Eliezer B Jacob concerning the fragments of an old oven that they may be handled on the Sabbath end concerning its lid that it does not require a handle Rabbin has said in accordance with whom do we handle nowadays the oven lids of the town Mahasha which have no handle in accordance with whom our Eliezer B Jacob mission if a stone is placed in a pumpkin shell and one can draw water in it and if the stone does not fall out one may draw water in it if not one may not draw water in it Talmud Mosh of Bath B if a vine dash branch it is already an oven from the first firing this extended Possibility of defilement is taught by the emphatic repetition and it shall be unclean unto you I is tied to a pitcher one may draw water with it on the Sabbath as for the stopper of a skylight our Eliezer said when it is fastened and suspended one may close the skylight with it if not one may not close the skylight with it but the sages maintained in both cases we may close the skylight with it tomorrow we learned elsewhere if a stone is on the mouth of a caskey G of wine one tilts it on a side and it falls off Rabbi said in Rmi's name and our Yohanan's name they learned this only if one forgets it there but if he places it there at the barrel becomes a stand for a forbidden article whereas it Joseph said in Rc's name and our Yohanan's name they learned this only if one forgets it there but if he places it there at the stone becomes a covering of the barrel Rabbi said an objection is raised against my teaching if a stone is placed in a pumpkin shell and one can draw water in it and it does not fail out one may draw water in it but it is not analogous there since it is firmly fastened it is made as a wall of the vessel our Joseph said an objection is also raised against my teaching if not one
was taught as for the dry branches of a palm tree which one cut down for fuel and then he changed his mind intending them for sitting thereon he must tie them together our simian begamaliel said he need not tie them together said our you may even say that it agrees with our simian begamaliel we treat here of one branch that is attached to its parent stock if so he makes use of what is attached to the soil it is below three our ashi said you may even say that it refers to a detached branch it is a preventive measure lest he cut i.e. shorten it as for the stopper of a skylight etc rabbi bar Hannah said in our yohanan's name all agree that we may not make for the first time a temporary building on a festival whilst on the sabbath it goes without saying they differ only in respect of adding to a building our elias are maintaining we may not add on a festival whilst on the sabbath it goes without saying whereas the sages rule we may add on the sabbath whilst it is Superfluous to speak of a festival, but the sages maintain in both cases we may close the skylight with it. What does in both cases mean? Our Abba said in our Kahana's name Talmud, Mosh of Batha, whether it is fastened or not, providing that it was prepared, said our Jeremiah to him, but let the master say whether it is suspended or not, providing that it is fastened for Rabbi Barhana said in our Yohanan's name, just as there is a controversy here, so is there a controversy in respect of a dragging bolt. For we learned with a dragging bolt one may lock the door in the temple, but not in the country, but one that is laid apart on the ground is forbidden in both places. Our Judah said that which is laid apart is permitted in the temple, and that which is dragged in the country now it was taught which is a dragging bolt wherewith we may close a door in the temple, but not in the country that which is fastened to the door and suspended one and reaching the ground, our Judah said such is permitted. Even in the country, but which is forbidden in the country, that which is neither fastened nor suspended, but which one removes and places in a corner further. Our Joshua B. Abba said in Allah's name, who is the tana of a dragging bolt? It is our Eliezer said he to him, I hold with the following tana, for it was taught if a private individual prepares a cane for opening and shutting a door there with if it is tied and suspended to the door, he may open and shut it there with if it is not tied and suspended, may not open and shut it there with our Simeon B. Gamaliel ruled if it is prepared, even if it is not fastened. Our Judah B. Shalaf said in our name and our Yohanan's name, the Halajah is as our Simeon B. Gamaliel now did our Yohanan say, Thus surely we learned all lids of vessels, Talmud, Mosh of Bath B, which have a handle on the Sabbath, whereon our Judah B. Shila said in our name and our Yohanan's name, providing that they have the character of utensils, and should you answer here too, it means. Where it ranks as a utensil does then our Simeon B. Gamaliel require it to have the character of a utensil surely it was taught as for the dry branches of a palm tree which one cut down for fuel and then changed his mind intending them for sitting thereon he must tie them together our Simeon B. Gamaliel said he need not tie them together our Yohanan agrees with him in one and disagrees with him in the other our Isaac the Smith lectured at the entrance of the Rishul of the Hall of are Eliza Aram Rome objected and from their words we learned that we may close a skylight measure amique and tie a temporary knot on the Sabbath said Abbe to him what is your view because it is taught anonymously but the mission concerning a dragging bolt is also anonymous yet even so an actual incident is weightier mission all lids of utensils which have a handle may be handled on the Sabbath said our Jose when is that said in the case of lids of ground buildings but the lids of utensils may in any case be handled on the Sabbath Gemara Arjuna Bishila said in RC's name and Aryohanan's name provided that they have the character of a utensil all agree covers of ground buildings may be handled only if they have a handle but not otherwise covers of utensils even if they have no handle where do they differ in respect of utensils joined to the ground one master holds we forbid them preventively while the other master holds we do not forbid preventively another version where do they differ in respect of an oven cover one master likens it to the cover of a ground building while the other master likens it to the cover of utensils C-H-A-P-T-E-R-X-V-I-I I mission one may clear away even four or five baskets of straw or produce grain to make room for guests or on account of the neglect of the Beth Hamid Rash but not the store one may clear away clean terima demi the first tithe whose terima has been separated routine second tithe and hippish and dry lupins because it is food for goats but one may not clear away table the first tithe whereof terima has not been taken unredeemed second tithe or hippish law for mustard our simian begamaliel permits it in the case of law because it is food for ravens as for bundles of straw twigs or young shoots if they were prepared as animal fodder they may be moved if not they may not be moved Gemara seeing that five may be cleared away need four be stated set our his it means four out of five some there are who stay four of a small store and five of a large store and what does but not the store mean that one must not commence dealing with the store for the first time in which tanner rules thus it is arjuna who accepts the interdict of muksa but samuel said it means four or five talmud mosh of just as people speak yet if one desires even more may be cleared away and what does but not the store mean that one must not completely remove the whole of it lest he come to level up Depressions, but one may indeed commence therewith and who rules thus it is our Simeon who rejects the interdict of Muksa or rabbis taught one must not commence with a store for the first time but he may make a path through it to enter and go out he may make a path but surely you say one must not commence this is its meaning one may make a path through it with his feet as he enters and goes out our rabbis taught it produces heap together for storage and one commence using it on it eve of the sabbath he may take supplies from it on the sabbath if not he may not take supplies from it on the sabbath this is our Simeon's view but our aha permits it whither does this tend rather say this is our aha's view but our Simeon permits it attended taught what is the standard quantity for produce that is heaped together elitek arni humi bizekari asked abe what is the standard quantity for produce that is heaped together said he to him surely it was said the standard quantity for Produce that is heaped together is a leaf the scholars ask these four or five baskets that are stated does it mean only in four or five baskets but not more which shows that it is better to minimize one's walking or perhaps it is better to minimize the burden come in here for one berry the taught one may clear away even four or five tubs of pitchers of wine and oil whereas another was taught in ten or fifteen surely they differ in this is one master holds it is better to minimize it. Walking while the other master holds it is better to reduce the burden no all hold that it is better to reduce the walking do you think that ten or fifteen refers to tubs no it refers to the pitchers yet there is no contradiction here in the first the references where they can be carried only singly in a tub whereas there where they can be carried in twos and there where they can be carried in threes of the size of the jugs of harp any yeah, other scholars ask these four or five that are Stated does it mean even if he has more guests or perhaps it all depends on the number of guests and should you say that it all depends on the number of guests can one person clear them away for all of them or perhaps each man must do so for himself come and hear for Rabbi said in our highest name Rabbi once went to a certain place seeing that the place was too cramped for the disciples he went out to a field and found it full of sheaves whereupon Rabbi cleared the whole field of it. Sheaves while our Joseph related in our Ashai's name our high once went to a certain place seeing that the place was too cramped for the disciples he went out to a field and found it full of sheaves whereupon our high cleared the whole field of the sheaves this proves that it all depends on the number of guests but still the question remains can one person clear them away for all or perhaps each man must do so for himself come and hear and Rabbi cleared the sheaves then on your view did Rabbi. Personally clear them, but he gave orders that at the field be cleared yet after all each acted for himself to make room for the guests, etc. Our Yohanan said hospitality to wayfarers is as great as early attendance at the Beth Hamid Rash since he the tenant states to make room for guests or on account of the neglect of the Beth Hamid Rash Ardimi of Nihardia said it is greater than early attendance at the Beth Hamid Rash because he states to make room for guests and then and on account of it. Neglect of the Beth Hamid Rash Rab Judah said in Rab's name hospitality to wayfarers is greater than welcoming the presence of the Shechen offer it is written and he said my lord if now I have found favor in thy sight pass not away etc. Our Eliezer said come and observe how the conduct of the Holy One blessed be he is not like that of mortals the conduct of mortals is such that an inferior person cannot say to a great er man wait for me until I come to you whereas in the case of the Holy One. Blessed be he it is written and he said my lord if now I have found etc. Our Judah B.
his things behind him and went home with a sorrowful heart after the festival his employer took his wages in his hand together with three laden asses one bearing food another drink and the third various sweet meats and went to his house after they had eaten and drunk he gave him his wages said he to him when you asked me give me my wages and I answered you I have no money of what did you suspect me I thought perhaps you came across cheap merchandise and had purchased it therewith and when you requested me give me cattle and I answered I have no cattle of what did you suspect me I thought they may be hired to others when you asked me give me land and I told you I have no land of what did you suspect me I thought perhaps it is leased to others and when I told you I have no produce of what did you suspect me I thought perhaps they are not tithed and when I told you I have no pillows or bedding of what did you suspect me I thought perhaps he has sanctified all his Property to heaven by the temple service exclaimed he it was even so I bowed away all my property because of my son Harkness who would not occupy himself with the Torah but when I went to my companions in the south they absolved me of all my vows and as for you just as you judged me favorably so may the omnipresent judge you favorably our rabbis taught it happened that a certain pious man ransomed an Israelite maiden from captivity at the end he made her lie at his feet on the morrow he went down had a ritual bath and learned with his disciples said he to them when I made her lie at my feet of what did you suspect me we thought perhaps there is a disciple amongst us who as he character is not clearly known to our master when I descended and had a ritual bath of what did you suspect me we thought perhaps through the fatigue of the journey the master was visited by nocturnal pollution by the temple service exclaimed he to them it was even so and just as you judged me favorably. So may the omnipresent judge you favorably our rabbis taught the scholars were once in need of something from a noble woman where all the great men of Rome were to be found said they who will go I will go replied our Joshua so our Joshua and his disciples went when he reached the door of her house he removed his tefillin at a distance of four cubits entered and shut the door in front of them after he came out he descended had a ritual bath and learned with his disciples said he to them what I removed my tefillin of what did you suspect me we thought our master reasons let not sacred words enter a place of uncleanness when I shut the door of what did you suspect me we thought perhaps he has to discuss an affair of state with her when I descended and had a ritual bath of what did you suspect me we thought perhaps some spittle spurted from her mouth upon the rabbis garments by the temple service exclaimed he to them it was even so and just as you judged me favorably so may the omnipresent judge you favorably we may clear away clean terramah etc but that is obvious it is necessary to teach it only where it is lying in the hand of an Israelite you might say since it is of no use for him it is forbidden to handle it he the Tana informs us therefore that since it is fit for a priest it is permitted demiai etc but demiai is not fit for him since if he desired he could renounce ownership of his property and become a poor man whereby it would be fit for him. It is fit for him now too for we learned the poor may be fed with demiai and billeted soldiers may be given demiai and Arhuna said it was taught Bethshem I maintain the poor may not be given demiai as food nor billeted soldiers but Bethilel rule the poor may be given demiai as food and likewise billeted soldiers and the first tithe whose terramah has been separated but that is obvious it is necessary to teach it only where he anticipated the separation of the first tithe in the ears. And separated terima of tithe, but not the great terima. And this is as the following dictum of Arabah in the name of Reshlah. His first tithe, which one anticipated in the years, is exempt from the great terima. For it is said, and ye shall offer up an heave offering of it for the Lord a tithe of the tithe. I ordered thee to offer a tithe of the tithe, but not the great terima. Plus the terima of the tithe of the tithe. Our Papa said to Abay, if so, even if he anticipates it in the stack, he should be exempt for your sake. Scripture writes out of all your gifts, ye shall offer every heave offering of the Lord. And what reason do you see to interpret thus? The one has become corn dagon, while the other has not become corn. And the second tithe, etc. But that is obvious. It is necessary to teach it only where the principle has been given, but not the fifth. Thus he informs us that the fifth is not indispensable. And dry lupins, etc. Only dry, but not moist. What is the reason? Since it is bitter. She the goat will not eat a Talmud, Moth should bath but not Tebal etc. That is obvious it is necessary to teach it only of Tebal made so by rabbinical law Egypt it was sown in an unperforated pot nor the first tithe etc. That is obvious it is necessary to teach it only where it had been anticipated in the pile the tithe having been separated but not the great terima you might argue as our Papa proposed to Abbe hence he the Tana informs us that it is as Abbe answered him or the second tithe etc. That is obvious it is necessary to teach it only where they have been redeemed but not in accordance with their laws i.e. the second tithe was redeemed by ungoing metal for the divine law states and thou shalt bind up wizard of the money in thine hand implying that which bears a figure zura and hippish which was secularized by means of land for the divine law states then he shall give the money and it shall be assured to him nor law our rabbis taught we may handle. Has it because it is food for gazelles and mustard because it is food for doves? Our Simeon Begamaliel said we may also handle fragments of glass because it is food for ostriches said our Nathan to him if so let bundles of twigs be handled because they are food for elephants and our Simeon Begamaliel ostriches are common whereas elephants are rare Amimar observed provided he has ostriches are ashy said to Amimar then when our Nathan said to our Simeon Begamaliel let bundles of dried branches be handled because they are food for elephants if one has elephants why not but he means they are fit for elephants so here too they are fit for ostriches Abbe said our Simeon Begamaliel our Simeon our Ishmael and our Akiba all hold that all Israel are royal children our Simeon our Gamaliel as stated our Simeon for we learned royal children may anoint their wounds with oil since it is their practice to anoint themselves thus on weekdays our Simeon said all Israel are royal children our Ishmael and our Akiba for it was Taught if one is a debtor for a thousand zoos and wears a robe a hundred minas in value he is stripped thereof and robed with a garment that is fitting for him it was taught in the name of our Ishmael and it was taught in the name of our Akiba all Israel are worthy of that robe bundles of straw twigs etc our rabbis taught bundles of straw bundles of branches and bundles of young shoots if one prepared them as animal fodder may be handled if not they may not be handled our Simeon B. Gamaliel said bundles which can be taken up with one hand may be handled with two hands may not be handled as for bundles of Sia Hisop and Koranith if they were brought in for fuel one must not draw on them for food on the Sabbath if brought in as animal fodder he may draw on them on the Sabbath and he may break it with his hand and eat thereof provided that he does not break it with a utensil and he may crush it and eat provided that he does not crush a large quantity with a utensil the words of our Judah, but the sages maintain he may crush it with the tips of his fingers, and he provided, however, that he does not crush a large quantity with his hands in the same way as he does on weekdays. The same applies to Amitha, the same applies to Hidamru, and the same applies to other kinds of spices. What is Amitha Nanya? What is Sia? Said Rabjud Sia is Zithrez of Izabrat. His of Koranitha is what is called Koranitha, but there was a certain man who asked who wants Koranitha, and it transpired that he meant time rather Sia is Zithrez of Izabrat, and Koranitha is Hashi time. It was stated salted meat may be handled on the Sabbath, unsalted meat. Arhuna says it may be handled, Arhistor rules it may not be handled, Arhuna says it may be handled, but Arhuna was Rab's disciple, and Rab agrees with Arjuda who accepts the prohibition of Muksa in the interdict of Muksa in respect of eating. He agrees with Arjuda in the interdict of Muksa as regards handling he. Agrees with our Simeon our rules it may not be handled but our Isaac BMI visited our Histah's house and he saw a slaughtered duck being moved from the sun into the shade and our Histah observed I see here a financial loss a duck is different because it is fit as raw meat our rabbis taught salted fish may be handled unsalted fish may not be handled meat whether unsalted or salted may be handled and this is taught anonymously as our Simeon our rabbis taught bones may be handled because they are food for dogs Talmud, moths should bath be putrid meat because it is food for beasts uncovered water because it is fit for a cat our Simeon Begamaliel said it may not be kept at all because of the danger mission a basket may be overturned before fledglings for them to ascend or descend if a fowl runs away from the house she is pushed with the hands until she re-enters calves and foals may be made to walk and a woman may make her
refers to a fowl. Abbe said when one kills a fowl, he should either press its legs on the ground or else lift them up, lest it places its claws on the ground and tears its organs loose. Mishnah one may not deliver an animal in giving birth on a festival, but one may assist it. We may deliver a woman on the Sabbath, summon a midwife for her from place to place, desecrate the Sabbath on her account, and tie up the navel string. Our Jose said one may cut it two and all the requirements of circumcision. May be done on the Sabbath. Gemara, how may we assist? Rab Judah said the newborn calf lamb, etc., is held so that it should not fall on the earth. Arnam and said the flesh is compressed in order that the young should come out. It was taught in accordance with Rab Judah. How do we assist? We may hold the young so that it should not fall on the ground, blow into its nostrils, and put the teeth into its mouth that it should suck. Our Simeon B. Gamaliel said we stimulate pity to a clean animal on a festival. What was done? Said of a lump of salt was brought and placed in its womb so that its mother might remember its travails and have pity upon it. And we sprinkle the water of the afterbirth upon the newly born animal so that its mother might smell it and have pity upon it. Yet only in the case of a clean animal, but not an unclean one. What is the reason an unclean animal does not spurn its young? And if it does spurn it, it does not take it back. One may deliver a woman, etc. Consider he did. Tana teaches one may deliver a woman and summon a midwife for her from place to place then what does and desecrate the Sabbath on her account add it adds the following taught by the rabbis if she needs a lamp her neighbor may kindle a lamp for her and if she needs oil her neighbor brings her oil in her hand but if that in her hand is insufficient she brings it in her hair and if that in her hair is insufficient she brings it to her in a vessel the master said if she needs a lamp her neighbor may kindle a lamp for her that is obvious this is necessary to be taught only in the case of a blind woman you might argue since she cannot see it it is forbidden hence he informs us that we tranquilize her mind as she reasons if there is anything required my friend will see it and do it for me if she needs oil etc but deduce it on the grounds of ringing out rabbi and our joseph both answer the interdict of ringing out does not apply to hair or as she said you may even Say that ringing out does apply to hair she brings it to her in a vessel by means of her hair because as much as we can vary it we do so Rab Judah said in Samuel's name if a woman is in confinement as long as the uterus is open whether she states I need it or I do not need it we must desecrate the Sabbath on her account if the uterus is closed whether she says Talmud, Mosh of I need it or I do not need it we may not desecrate the Sabbath for her that is how our Ashi recited it Mar. Zutra recited it thus Rab Judah said in Samuel's name if a woman is in confinement as long as the uterus is open whether she says I need it or I do not need it we desecrate the Sabbath for her if the uterus is closed if she says I need it we desecrate the Sabbath for her if she does not say I need it we do not desecrate the Sabbath for her Robin asked Mirmar Mar Zutra recited it in the direction of leniency while our Ashi recited it in the direction of stringency which is the law of the lawyers. As Marzutra replied, he where a matter of life is in doubt, we are lenient from when is the opening of the uterus. Abbe said, from when she sits on the seat of travail, Arhuna son of our Joshua said, from when the blood slowly flows down, others state, from when her friends carry her by her arms, for how long is the opening of the uterus. Abbe said, three days. Rabbi said, in Rab Judah's name, seven others maintain thirty. The scholars of Nihardia said, a lying in woman has three periods from three days. After confinement, seven days and thirty days from three days, whether she says, I need it or she says, I do not need it, we desecrate the Sabbath for her from seven days. If she says, I need it, we desecrate the Sabbath for her. If she says, I do not need it, we do not desecrate the Sabbath for her from thirty days. Even if she says, I need it, we may not desecrate the Sabbath for her, yet we may do so by means of a Gentile as Arla, the son of Arla, who said, all the requirements of an invalid. May be done by means of a Gentile on the Sabbath, and as Arhamana who said in a matter entailing no danger to life, one bids a Gentile, and he does it. Rab Judah said in Samuel's name for a woman in confinement, the period is thirty days in respect of what law the scholars of Nihardia said in respect of a ritual bath. Rab observed, we said this only if her husband is not with her, but if her husband is with her, he makes her warm, even as Arhistah's daughter performed table within thirty days in her husband's absence, caught a chill and was carried in a bed to Rabbi Pamadai. The Rab Judah said in Samuel's name, we may make a fire for a lying in woman on the Sabbath in the winter. Now it was understood from him only for a lying in woman, but not for an invalid, only in winter, but not in summer. But that is not so, there is no difference between a lying in woman and any other invalid, and summer and winter are like this follows since it was stated, our high B. Abin said in Samuel's name, if one lets blood and catches a chill. A fire is made for him even on the Tamu summer solstice. A tea chair was broken up for Samuel. A table made of juniper wood was broken up for Rab Judah. A footstool was broken up for Rab. Whereupon Abbe said to Rab, But you are infringing. Thou shalt not destroy. Thou shalt not destroy. In respect of my own body is more important to me. He retorted. Rab Judah said in Rab's name, One should always sell even the beams of his house and buy shoes for his feet. If one has let blood and has nothing to eat, let him sell the shoes from off his feet and provide the requirements of a meal there. With what are the requirements of a meal? Rab said meat. While Samuel said wine. Rab said meat. Life for life. While Samuel said wine. Red wine to replace red blood. Nemonic S. Hanim for Samuel on the day he was blood. A dish of pieces of meat was prepared. Are you had and drank until the smell of the wine issued from his ears. Arnam and drank until his milk swam in wine. Are. Joseph drank until it the smell issued from the puncture of bleeding Rabbi sought wine of a vine that had had three changes of foliage Arnam and B. Isaac said to his disciples I beg of you tell your wives on the day of blood letting Naman is visiting us now all artifices are forbidden save the following article which is permitted visit one is blood and cannot buy one let him take a bad zoos and go to seven shops until he has tasted as much as a rebuff but if not let him eat seven black dates rub his temples with oil and sleep in the sun at last found Samuel sleeping in the sun said he to him O Jewish sage can that which is injurious be beneficial it is a day of bleeding replied he yet it is not so but there is a day when the sun is beneficial for the whole year it is a day of the Tamu summer solstice and he said to himself I will not reveal it to him Nimon sparingly when taste Tari Rab and Samuel both say if one makes light of the meal after bleeding his food will be Made light of by heaven, for they say he has no compassion for his own life. Shall I have compassion upon him? Rab and Samuel both say he who is blood, let him not sit where a wind can enfold him, lest the cover drained him of blood and reduced it to just a rebuke, and the wind come and drained him still further, and thus he is in danger. Samuel was accustomed to be blood in a house whose wall consisted of seven whole bricks and a half brick in thickness. One day he bled and felt himself. Weak he examined the wall and found a half brick missing. Rab and Samuel both say he who is blood must first partake of something and then go out, for if he does not eat anything, if he meets a corpse, his face will turn green, if he meets a homicide, he will die, and if he meets Talmud, Mosh of Bath, B.A. Swine at the meeting is harmful in respect of something else. Rab and Samuel both say one who is blood should tarry a while and then rise for a master set in five cases, one is nearer to death. Then to life and these are they when one eats and immediately rises drinks and rises sleeps and rises lets blood and rises and cohabits and rises Samuel said the correct interval for bloodletting is every 30 days in middle age one should decrease the frequency at a more advanced age he should again decrease the frequency Samuel also said the correct time for bloodletting is on a Sunday Wednesday and Friday but not on Monday or Thursday because a master said he who possesses ancestral merit may let blood on Monday and Thursday because the heavenly court and the human court are alike then why not on Tuesday because the planet Mars rules at even numbered hours of the day but on Friday too it rules at even numbered hours since the multitude are accustomed to it the Lord preserve it the simple Samuel said a Wednesday which is the fourth of the month a Wednesday which is the fourteenth a Wednesday which is the twenty fourth a Wednesday which is not followed by four Days all are dangerous the first day of the month and the second cause weakness the third is dangerous the eve of a festival causes weakness the eve of Pentecost is dangerous and the rabbis laid an interdict upon the eve of every festival on account of the festival of Pentecost when there issues a wind called
As it is said, and as for thy nativity in the day thou wast born, thy navel was not cut, neither wast thou washed in water to cleanse thee, thou wast not salted at all, nor swaddled at all, and as for thy nativity in the day thou wast born, hence an infant may be delivered on the Sabbath, thy navel was not cut, hence the navel string is cut on the Sabbath, neither wast thou washed in water to cleanse thee, hence the infant is washed on the Sabbath, thou wast not salted at all, hence the infant is salted on. The Sabbath nor swaddled at all, hence the infant is swaddled on the Sabbath. Talmud, Mosh Shabbat A C H A P T E R X I X Mishnah Our Eliezer said if one did not bring an instrument on the eve of the Sabbath, he must bring it on the Sabbath uncovered, but in times of danger he hides it on the testimony of witnesses. Our Eliezer said further one may cut timber to make charcoal for manufacturing iron. Our Akiva stated a general principle any manner of work which could be performed on Sabbath he does. Not supersede the Sabbath, but that which could not be performed on Sabbath he does supersede the Sabbath. Gemara the scholars asked is our Eliezer's reason out of love for the precept, or perhaps it is because of suspicions. What is the practical difference whether it may be brought covered on the testimony of witnesses? If you say it is out of love for the precept, it must be uncovered and not hidden, but if you say it is because of suspicions, it is well even if hidden, what then it was stated our Levi. Said our Eliezer ruled thus only out of love for the precept it was taught likewise he must bring it uncovered and he must not bring it covered this is our Eliezer's opinion our Ashi said our Mishnah too proves this because it states but in times of danger he hides it on the testimony of witnesses thus in times of danger only but not when there is no danger this proves that it is out of love for the precept this proves it another very the taught he brings it uncovered but he must not bring it covered this is our Eliezer's view our Judah said in our Eliezer's name in times of danger it was the practice to bring it hidden on the testimony of witnesses the scholars asked the witnesses which he mentions does it mean he and another one or perhaps he and another two come in here but in times of danger he hides it on the testimony of witnesses if you agree to say he and two others it is well but if you say he and another one witnesses are there such as are eligible to testify Elsewhere our Eliezer said further etc. Our rabbis taught in our Eliezer's locality they used to cut timber to make charcoal for making iron on the Sabbath in the locality of our Jose the Galilean they used to eat flesh of fowl with milk. Levi visited the home of Joseph the feller and was offered the head of a peacock in milk which he did not eat when he came before rabbi he asked him why did you not place them under the band it was the locality of our Judah B. But they were replied he and I thought. Perhaps he has lectured to them in accordance with our Jose the Galilean for we learned our Jose the Galilean said it is said you shall not eat any nibble and it is said thou shalt not see the kid in its mother's milk this teaches that which is forbidden on the score of nibble may not be seated in milk now since a fowl is prohibited when nibble you might think that one must not see it in milk therefore it is stated in its mother's milk hence a fowl is excluded since it has no mother's milk. Our Isaac said there was one town in Palestine where they followed our Eliezer and they died there at the proper time. Moreover, the wicked state once promulgated a decree against Israel concerning circumcision, yet did not decree against that town. It was taught our Simeon B. Gamaliel said every precept which they accepted with joy, e.g., circumcision, as it is written, I rejoice at thy word, as one that findeth great spoil, they still observe with joy, while every precept which they accepted with displeasure, e.g., the forbidden degrees of consanguinity, as it is written, and Moses heard the people weeping throughout their families, i.e., on account of the affairs of their families, they still perform them with strife, for there is no marriage settlement which does not contain a quarrel. It was taught our Simeon B. Eliezer said every precept for which Israel submitted to death at the time of the royal decree, e.g., idolatry and circumcision, is still held firmly in their minds, whereas every precept for which Israel did not submit to death at the time of the royal decree, e.g. Tefillin is still weak in their hands for our Janay said Tefillin demand a pure body like Elisha the men of the wings. What does this mean? Abay said that one must not pass wind while wearing them. Rabbah said that one must not sleep in them. And why is he called the men of the wings? Because the wicked state once proclaimed a decree against Israel that whoever don Tefillin should have his brains pierced through yet Elisha put them on and went out into the streets. Aquas to saw him, he fled before him and the latter gave pursuit as he overtook him. He Elisha removed them from his head and held them in his hand. What is that in your hand? He demanded the wings of a dove was his reply. He stretched out his hand and the wings of a dove were found therein. Hence he is called Elisha the men of the wings. And why did he tell him the wings of a dove rather than that of other birds? Because the congregation of Israel is likened. To a dove as it is said as the wings of a dove covered with silver and her pinions with yellow gold just as a dove is protected by its wings so with the Israelites their precepts protect them our Abu B. Our said in our Isaac's name they once forgot to bring a knife on Sabbath Eve so they brought it on the Sabbath through roofs and courtyards Talmud, Mosh Shabbat be this being against the will of our Eliezer our Joseph demurred you say against the will of our Eliezer on the contrary it is our Eliezer who permits it even through the street but only with the consent of the rabbis who forbid it to be carried through the street yet permitted through roofs courtyards and enclosures yet is this permitted surely it was taught just as one may not bring it through the street so may one not bring it through roofs through enclosures or through courtyards said our Ashi it was not with the consent of our Eliezer and his opponent S but with the consent of our Simeon for we learned our Simeon said roofs. Enclosures and courtyards are all one domain in respect of utensils which spent the Sabbath therein, but not in respect of utensils which rested in the house. Our Zara asked R.C. in the case of an alley in which they its residents have not become partners. What about carrying in the whole of it? Do we say it is like a courtyard just as a courtyard even if an Arab has not been made it is permitted to carry in the whole of it so this too though they have not become partners in it it is permitted to carry in the whole of it or perhaps it is unlike a courtyard for a courtyard has four walls partitions whereas this has not four walls alternatively a courtyard has tenants whereas this has no tenants he was silent and said nothing to him on a subsequent occasion here Zara found him R.C. sitting and stating our Simeon B. Lakish said in the name of our Judah the prince they once forgot to bring a knife on Sabbath Eve so they brought it on the Sabbath now this matter was difficult for the Sages to understand how could they abandon the opinion of the sages and act as our Eliezer firstly since our Eliezer was a follower of Beth Shammai and further where an individual and many are in dispute the halacha is as the many were upon our Ashai said I asked our Judah the circumciser and he told me it was an alley wherein they its residents had not become partners and they brought it the night from one end to the other said he to him do you then hold that in the case of an alien which they had not become partners it is permitted to carry in the whole of it yes he replied said he or to him R.C. but I once asked it of you and you did not answer me perhaps in the rapid course of your review your tradition sped back to you yes he replied in the course of my review my tradition sped back to me it was stated Arzara said in Rab's name in the case of an alien which no partnership had been made one may not carry therein save within four cubits abe. Observed Arzara stated this law but did not explain it until Rabbi Abu came and explained it for our and said in Rabbi Abu's name in Rab's name in the case of an alley in which no partnership has been made if the courtyards are combined with the houses one may not carry there in the alley save within four cubits but if the courtyards are not combined with the houses one may carry over the whole of it. Our Hanan Hosea said to Rabbi why does it differ when the courtyards are combined with the houses presumably because the courtyards have been transformed and are become houses Rab being consistent with his view for Rab said an alley does not become permitted for carrying through a stake and a beam unless Talmud, Mosh Shabbat houses and courtyards open into it whereas here we have houses but not courtyards and even if they are not combined let us regard these houses as though closed up so we have courtyards but not houses they can all renounce their rights. In favor of one, but even so, we have a house, but not houses. It is possible that from morning until midday they renounce their rights in favor of one, and from midday until evening in favor of another. But even so, when there is one, there is not the other. Rather, said Arashi, what makes the courtyards interdicted in respect of the alley? Of course, the houses and these are non-existent. Our high said in our Yohanan's name, not in respect of everything. Did our Eliza rule that the preliminary preparations of a precept supersede the Sabbath?
Eliezer's view again if it is to exclude sukkah surely it was taught the sukkah and all its preliminary supersede the Sabbath this is our Eliezer's view again if it is to exclude unleavened bread surely it was taught unleavened bread and all its preliminary supersede the Sabbath this is our Eliezer's view if on the other hand it is to exclude the shofar surely it was taught the shofar and all its preliminary supersede the Sabbath this is our Eliezer's view said our Adabi Ahab it is to exclude fringes for one's garment and mezuzah for one's door it was taught likewise and they agree that if one inserts fringes in his garment or affixes a mezuzah to his door he is culpable what is the reason our Joseph said because no definite time is appointed for them said Abay to him on the contrary since no time is appointed for them Talmud, Mosh Bath B every moment is the proper time for them rather said Arnaman B Isaac others state Arhuna son of our Joshua because it is in one's power to renounce their ownership the master said the lalab and all its preliminary supersede the sabbath this is our Eliezer's view once does our Eliezer know this if from the omer and the two loaves that may be because they are requirements of the most high rather scripture set and ye shall take it on the first day branches of palm trees etc on the day intimating even on the sabbath now in respect of which law shall we say in respect of handling is a verse necessary to authorize Handling hence it must be in respect of its preliminaries and the rabbis that is required to teach by day but not by night then our Eliezer once does he learn by day but not by night he deduces it from and ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days days only not nights and the rabbis it is necessary you might argue let us learn the meaning of seven days from the seven days of sukkah just as their days means and even nights so here two days and even nights hence it teaches us otherwise then let the divine law state it in the case of Lalab and these others could be adduced and learned therefrom because one could refute the analogy as for Lalab its preliminary supersede the Sabbath because it requires four species of sukkah and all its preliminary supersede the Sabbath this is our Eliezer's view once does our Eliezer learn this if from the Omer and the two loaves there it may be because they are requirements of the most high if from Lalab that may be because it requires four species rather the scope of seven days is deduced from the seven days of Lalab just as there its preliminary supersede the Sabbath so here too its preliminary supersede the Sabbath then let the divine law write it in connection with sukkah and these others could be adduced and learned therefrom because one could refute the analogy as for sukkah that is because if the precept is binding by night just as by day unleavened bread and all its preliminaries Supersede the Sabbath. This is our Eliezer's view. Once does our Eliezer know this? If from the Omer and the two loaves, there it may be because they are requirements of the Most High. If from the Lab, because it requires four species. If from Sukkah, because it is binding by night, just as by day. Rather, the meaning of the fifteenth day is learned from the festival of Tabernacles. Just as there, its preliminary supersede the Sabbath. So here too, its preliminary supersede the Sabbath. Then let the divine law stated in connection with unleavened bread and these others could be adduced and learned therefrom. Because one could refute the analogy as for unleavened bread. That is because it is obligatory upon women, just as upon men. The shofar and all its preliminary supersede the Sabbath. This is our Eliezer's view. Once does our Eliezer know this? If from the Omer and the two loaves, because they are requirements of the Most High. If from the Lab, because it requires four species. If from Sukkah because it is binding by night just as by day if from unleavened bread because it is obligatory upon women just as upon men rather scripture saith it is in day of blowing of trumpets unto you it must be blown by day even on the Sabbath and in respect of what shall we say in respect of blowing the shofar but the school of Samuel taught ye shall do no servile work the blowing of the shofar and the removal of bread from an oven are excluded as being an art not work hence it must be in respect of its preliminaries and the rabbis that is required to teach by day but not by night then our Eliezer once does he learn by day but not by night he deduces it from in the day of atonement shall yes and abroad the trumpet throughout all your land and these are learned from each other now let the divine law stated in connection with shofar and these others can come and be learned therefrom one cannot learn from the blowing of the shofar on new year because it brings it Remembrance of Israel to their father in heaven one cannot learn from the blowing of the shofar on the day of atonement either because a master said when the Beth didn't blew the shofar slaves departed to their homes and estates reverted to their original owner circumcision and all its preliminary supersede the Sabbath this is our Eliezer's view once does our Eliezer learn this if he learns it from all the others the objection is as we stated moreover as for those Talmud, Mosh Bathe. They may supersede the Sabbath because if their time passes they are annulled rather this is our Eliezer as reason because scripture said and in the eighth day the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised implying even on the Sabbath then let the divine law write it in connection with circumcision and these others can come to be deduced thence because one can refute the analogy as for circumcision that is because thirteen covenants were made in connection there with now the rabbis. Disagree with our Eliezer only in respect of the preliminaries of circumcision, but as for circumcision itself, all hold that it supersedes the Sabbath. Whence do we know it said, well, it is a traditional law, and thus did our Isaac say it is a traditional law, and objection is raised. How do we know that the saving of life supersedes the Sabbath? Our Eliezer B. Ezra said, if circumcision which is performed on but one of the limbs of man supersedes the Sabbath, the saving of life of Menorah must supersede it. Sabbath now, if you think that it is a traditional law, can one argue a Menorah from a traditional law? Surely it was taught our Eliezer said to him, Akiba, that a bone of a corpse the size of a barley grain defile is a traditional law, whereas that a quarter log of blood of a corpse defies is deduced by you a Menorah, and we do not argue a Menorah from a traditional law. Rather said our Eliezer, we learn a sign written in connection with circumcision from a sign written in connection with it. Sabbath if so let Tefillin in connection with which sign is written supersede the Sabbath rather covenant is learned from covenant then let the circumcision of an adult in connection with whom covenant is written supersede the Sabbath rather generations is learned from generations then let fringes in connection with which generations is written supersede the Sabbath rather said Arnaman B. Isaac we learn sign covenant and generations from sign covenant and generations thus excluding the others in connection with each of which only one is written are Yohanan said scripture set in the eighth day in the day implying even on the Sabbath rush Lakish objected to are Yohanan if so those who lack atonement in connection with whom in the day is written do they too supersede the Sabbath that is required for teaching by day but not by night but this too is required for teaching by day but not by night that is deduced from any that is eight days old but this too can be derived from in the day that he commanded the children of Israel to offer their oblations etc though it may be derived from in the day that he commanded etc yet at the other verse is necessary you might argue since the merciful one had compassion upon him permitting him to bring a lesser sacrifice in poverty he may bring it at night too hence we are informed otherwise rub in a demur if so let us are and in one and be eligible for them surely scripture brought him back our ahabi jacob said scripture set the eighth intimating the eighth even if it is the sabbath but this eighth is required to exclude the seventh that follows from and that is eight days old yet they are still required one to exclude the seventh and the other to exclude the ninth for if we deduce from one verse only i might say only the seventh is excluded since its time for circumcision has not yet arrived but from the eighth onward that is the right time hence it is clear that it must be Explained as our Yohanan it was taught in accordance with our Yohanan and not as our Ahabi Jacob and in the eighth day the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised even on the Sabbath and to what do I apply everyone that prophet it shall surely be put to death to labors other than circumcision yet perhaps it is not so but it includes even circumcision whilst to what do I apply in the eighth shall be circumcised to all days except the Sabbath therefore in the day is stated teaching. Even on the Sabbath Rob observed why was this tanna content at first and what was his difficulty eventually he argues thus in the eighth shall be circumcised even on the Sabbath and to what do I apply everyone that prophet it shall be put to death to labors other than circumcision but circumcision supersedes and what is the reason it follows a minority of leprosy which suspends the sacrificial service Talmud, Mosh of Bath be whilst the sacrificial service supersedes the Sabbath yet. Circumcision supersedes it then the Sabbath which is superseded by the sacrificial service surely circumcision supersedes it and what is the or perhaps it is not so which he states he then argues thus yet once does it follow that leprosy is more stringent perhaps the Sabbath is more stringent since there
What do I apply? Take heed in the plague of leprosy to other places, excluding the foreskin. Yet circumcision supersedes leprosy. What is the reason? Because it is inferred a memory of circumcision supersedes the Sabbath, which is stringent. How much more so leprosy? And what is the or perhaps it is not so? Which he states he then argues. How do we know that the Sabbath is more stringent? Perhaps leprosy is more stringent since it supersedes the sacrificial service, while the sacrificial service supersedes. The Sabbath therefore flesh is stated intimating even when above earth is there another version circumcision supersedes leprosy what is the reason because a positive command comes and supersedes a negative command and what is the or is it not so which he states he then argues perhaps we rule that a positive command comes and supersedes a negative command only in the case of a negative command by itself but this is a positive command plus a negative command and how do I apply the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised when it does not contain above earth therefore flesh is stated intimating even when above earth is there now this is well of an adult in connection with whom flesh is written of an infant two flesh is written but whence do we know one of intermediate age said of a it is inferred from the other two combined it cannot be inferred from an adult alone since there is a penalty of in this case it cannot be inferred from an infant eight days old since there it is circumcision at the proper time. The feature common to both is that they must be circumcised and they supersede leprosy. So all who must be circumcised supersede leprosy. Rabbi said that circumcision at the proper time supersedes leprosy requires no verse for it is inferred a memory if it supersedes the Sabbath, which is more stringent. How much more so leprosy said our Sapphire to Rabbi? How do you know that the Sabbath is more stringent? Perhaps leprosy is more stringent seeing that it supersedes the sacrificial service. Whilst the sacrificial service supersedes the Sabbath, there it is not because leprosy is more stringent, but because the person is unfit. Why so let him cut off the Bahirath and perform the service he still lacks stable. This is well of unclean eruptions. What can be said of clean eruptions? Rather, our Ashi said, where do we rule that a positive command comes and supersedes a negative one? E.g. circumcision in the place of leprosy or fringes and kiline, where at the very moment that the negative injunction is disregarded, the positive command is fulfilled. But here, at the moment that the negative injunction is disregarded, the positive command is not fulfilled. Now, this discussion of Rabbah and our Safar Talmud, Mosh Bath, is a controversy between Tanaim, for it was taught flesh, and even if a Bahirath is there, it shall be circumcised. The words of our Josiah, our Jonathan, said this is unnecessary if it supersedes the Sabbath, which is more stringent. How? Much more so leprosy, the master said flesh, and even if a Bahirath is there, it shall be circumcised. The words of our Josiah, why is a verse required for this? It is an unintentional act, and an unintentional act is permitted. Said Abay, this is only necessary according to our Judah, who maintains an unintentional act is forbidden. Rabbah said, you may even say according to our Simeon, our Simeon admits in the case of cut off his head, but let him not die. Now, does not Abay accept this reasoning? Surely Abay. And Rabbah both said our Simeon admits in the case of cut off his head but let him not die after hearing it from Rabbah he accepted its logic others recite the stictum of Abay and Rabbah in reference to the following take heed in the plague of leprosy that thou observe diligently to do etc to do thou art forbidden but thou mayest effect it by means of bast on the foot or a pole on the shoulder and if it goes it goes but what need of a verse for this it is an unintentional act and an unintentional act is permitted said Abay it is only necessary according to our Judah who maintained an unintentional act is forbidden but Rabbah said you may even say that it agrees with our Simeon yet our Simeon admits in the case of cut off his head but let him not die now does not Abay accept this reasoning surely Abay and Rabbah both said our Simeon admits in the case of cut off his head but let him not die after hearing it from Rabbah he accepted its logic now Abay on our Simeon's view how does he utilize this Word flesh said Aramram is referring to one who asserts that it is his intention to cut off his Bahirath that is well of an adult what can be said of an infant said Armeshachia it refers to the infant's father who asserts that it is his specific intention to cut off his son's Bahirath then if there is another let another perform it for our Simeon Belikish said wherever you find a positive command and a negative command in opposition if you can fulfill both of them it is preferable but if not let the positive command come and supersede the negative command this is where there is no stranger the master said it supersedes festivals only when performed at its proper time Hezekiah said and the school of Hezekiah taught likewise and ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning but that which remaineth of it until the morning ye shall burn with fire now the second until the morning need not be stated what then is the teaching of until the morning scripture comes to a point the second morning for its burning of a said scripture saith the burnt offering of the Sabbath shall be burnt on its Sabbath, but not the burnt offering of weekdays on the Sabbath, nor the burnt offering of weekdays on festivals. Rabbah said scripture saith no manner of work shall be done in them save that which every man must eat that only may be done of you that but not its preliminaries only, but not circumcision out of its proper time which might otherwise be inferred a minori are. As she said on the seventh day is a Sabbath of holy rest should is an affirmative precept, thus there is an affirmative and a negative precept in respect of festivals, and an affirmative precept cannot supersede a negative plus an affirmative precept. Our Akiva stated a general principle, etc. Rab Judah said in Rab's name the Holocaust is as our Akiva, and we learn similarly in respect to the Passover sacrifice, our Akiva stated a general principle, any labor which can be performed on the eve of it. Sabbath does not supersede the Sabbath slaughtering the Passover sacrifice which cannot be done on the eve of the Sabbath supersedes the Sabbath and Rab Judah said in Rab's name the Halachah is as our Akiva and these are necessary for if he informed us of the Halachah in connection with circumcision it is only there that the preparatory requirements which could be done the previous day do not supersede the Sabbath since there is no Kareth but as for the Passover sacrifice where there is Kareth you might argue let them the preliminary supersede the Sabbath and if he told us the Halachah about the Passover sacrifice that is because thirteen covenants were not made in connection therewith but as for circumcision seeing that thirteen covenants were made in connection therewith I would say let them the preliminary supersede the Sabbath thus they are necessary mission we perform all the requirements of circumcision on the Sabbath we circumcise uncover the corona suck. The wound and place a compress and come in upon it. If one did not crush the common on the eve of the Sabbath, he must chew it with his teeth and apply it to the wound. If he did not beat up wine and oil on the eve of the Sabbath, each must be applied separately. We may not make a halak for it in the first place, but must wrap a rag about it. If this was not prepared from the eve of the Sabbath, one winds it about his finger and brings it and even through another courtyard Talmud, Mosh of Bathby. Gemara consider he the Tana states them all separately. What is all the requirements of circumcision to include it is to include that which our rabbis taught he who circumcises as long as he is engaged in the circumcision, he returns both for the shreds of the corona which invalidate the circumcision and for those which do not invalidate the circumcision. Once he has withdrawn, he returns on account of the shreds which invalidate the circumcision, but not for the shreds which do not. Invalidate the circumcision who teaches once he has withdrawn he must not return said Rabbi be Barhanan in our Yohanan's name it is Arishmael the son of our Yohanan be Baraka for it was taught if the fourteenth of Nisan falls on the Sabbath the Passover sacrifice is flayed as far as the breast this is the view of Arishmael the son of our Yohanan be Baraka but the sages maintain we flay the whole of it but how so our Yohanan may rule thus only there because we do not require the application of it. Verse this is my God and I will adorn him but here that we require this is my God and I will adorn him that indeed is so for it was taught this is my God and I will adorn him i.e. adorn thyself before him in the fulfillment of precepts thus make a beautiful sukkah in his honor a beautiful lulab a beautiful shofar beautiful fringes and a beautiful scroll of the law and write it with fine ink a fine reed pen and a skilled penman and wrap it about with beautiful silks abyss all interpreted. And I will be like him, be thou like him, just as he is gracious and compassionate, so be thou gracious and compassionate. Rather said our Ashi, which Tana is this, it is our Jose, for we learned whether it is clearly visible or it is not clearly visible. The Sabbath is desecrated on its account, our Jose ruled. If it is clearly visible, they must not desecrate the Sabbath for it, but how so perhaps our Jose rules thus only there because the Sabbath was not given to be superseded,
Hence he is punished with Kharath we suck out etc. Our Papa said if a surgeon does not suck the wound it is dangerous and he is dismissed it is obvious since we desecrate the Sabbath for it it is dangerous you might say that this blood is stored up therefore he informs us that it is the result of a wound and it is like a bandage and come in just as when one does not apply a bandage and come in there is danger so here too if one does not do it there is danger we place a compress upon it Abbe said. Mother told me a salve compress for all pains is made of seven parts of fat and one of wax. Rabbah said wax and resin. Rabbah taught this publicly at Mahozo whereupon the family of Benjamin the doctor tore up their bandage cloth said he to them yet I have left you one cure unrevealed for Samuel said he who washes his face and does not dry it well scabs will break out on him Talmud, Moshe Batha what is his remedy let him wash it well and be juice if one did not crush it on the eve of the Sabbath our rabbis taught the things which may not be done for circumcision on the Sabbath may be done on festivals come and may be crushed and wine and oil may be beaten up together on its account. Abbe asked our Joseph wherein does the powdering of come in on festivals differ presumably because it can be used in addition and wine and oil too are fit for an invalid on the Sabbath for it was taught one may not beat up wine and oil for an invalid on the Sabbath. Our Simeon B. Eliezer said in R. Meir's name one may indeed beat up wine and oil. Our Simeon B. Eliezer related our Meir was once suffering internally and we wished to beat up wine and oil for him but he would not permit us said we to him your words shall be made void in your own lifetime though I ruled us he replied yet my colleagues rule otherwise and have never presumed to disregard the words of my colleagues now he was stringent in respect to himself but for all others it is permitted there it need not be well beaten whereas here it needs to be well beaten then let us do likewise here too and not mix it well that is what he teaches each must be placed separately our rabbis taught one may not strain mustard grain through its own strainer nor sweeten it with a glowing coal Abbe asked our Joseph wherein does it differ from what we learned an egg may be passed through a mustard strainer there it does not look like selecting whereas here it looks like selecting he replied nor sweeten it with a glowing coal but surely it was taught one may sweeten it with a glowing coal there is no difficulty one refers to a metal coal the other to a wood coal Abbe asked our Joseph wherein does it differ from roasting meat on coals there it is impossible whereas here it is possible Abbe asked our Joseph what about cheese making it is forbidden answered he wherein does it differ from kneading dough there it is impossible here it is possible replied he but the people of Nihardia say freshly made cheese is palatable they mean this even freshly made cheese is palatable one may not make a haluk for it etc Abbe said mother told me the side salvage of an infant's haluk should be uppermost lest the thread thereof stick and he the infant may become properly mutilated Abbe's mother used to make a lining for half the haluk Abbe said if there is no haluk for an infant a hem rag should be brought and the hem tied round at the bottom and doubled over at the top Abbe also said mother told me an infant whose anus is not visible should be rubbed with oil and stood in the sun and where it shows transparent it should be torn crosswise with a barley grain but not with a metal instrument because that causes inflammation Abbe also said mother told me if an infant cannot suck his lips are cold what is the remedy a vessel of burning coal should be brought and held near his nostril so as to heat it then he will suck Abbe also said mother told me if an infant does not breathe he should be fanned with a fan and he will breathe Abbe also said mother told me if an infant cannot breathe easily his mother's afterbirth should be brought and rubbed over him and he will breathe easily Abbe also said mother told me if an infant is too thin his mother's afterbirth should be brought and rubbed over him from its narrow end to its wide end if he is too fat it should be rubbed from the wide to the narrow end Abbe also said mother told me if an infant is too red so that the blood is not yet absorbed in and we must wait until his blood is absorbed and then circumcise him if he is green so that he is deficient in blood we must wait until he is full-blooded and then circumcise him for it was taught our Nathan said I once visited the sea towns and a woman came before me who had circumcised her first son and he had died and her second son and he had died the third she brought before me seeing that he was too red I said to her wait until his blood is absorbed so she waited until his blood was absorbed and then circumcised Hanai and he lived and they called him Nathan the Babylonian after my name on another occasion I visited the province of Cappadocia and a woman came before me who had circumcised her first son and he had died and her second son and he had died the third she brought before me seeing that he was green the first examined Hanai and saw no covenant blood in him I said to her wait until he is full-blooded she waited and then circumcised him and he lived and they called him Nathan the Babylonian after my name Talmud, Mosh of Bath B. Mishnah we may bathe the infant both before and after the circumcision and sprinkle warm water over him by hand but not with a vessel our Eliezer B. Ezra said we may bathe an infant on the third day of circumcision which falls on the Sabbath because it is said and it came to pass on the third day when they were sore as for one who is doubtful and an hermaphrodite we may not desecrate the Sabbath on their account but our Judah permits. It in the case of an hermaphrodite Gemara but you say in the first clause we may bathe Rab Judah and Rab Abba both said he the Tana teaches how it is to be done thus we may bathe the infant both before and after the circumcision how we sprinkle warm water over him by hand but not with a vessel Rab objected but he states we may bathe rather said Rabbah he teaches us we may bathe the infant both before and after circumcision on the first day in the normal manner but on the Third day which falls on the Sabbath we sprinkle warm water over him by hand but not with a vessel our Eliezer B. Ezra said we may bathe an infant on the third day which falls on the Sabbath because it is said and it came to pass on the third day when they were sore it was taught in accordance with Rabbah we may bathe the infant before and after the circumcision on the first day in the normal manner but on the third day which falls on the Sabbath we besprinkle him by hand our Eliezer B. Ezra said we may bathe an infant on the third day which falls on the Sabbath and though there is no proof there is an illusion thereto for it is said and it came to pass on the third day when they were sore and when they sprinkle they sprinkle neither with a glass nor with a dish nor with a vessel but only by hand disagrees with the first tanah why does he say though there is no proof there is an illusion thereto because an adult's flesh does not heal quickly whereas an infant's does a certain Person came before Rabbah and he gave him a ruling in accordance with his view. Then Rabbah fell ill, said he, What business did I have with the interpretation of the older scholars? Thereupon the rabbi said to Rabbah, But it was taught in accordance with the master. Our mission supports them. He replied, How so? Since it states, Our Eliezer B. Ezra said, We may bathe the infant on the third day which falls on the Sabbath. It is well if you assume that the first tana means that we may merely sprinkle. Hence, Our Eliezer B. Ezra says to him, We may bathe. But if you explain that the first tana means we may bathe on the first day and sprinkle on the third day, then instead of the statement, Our Eliezer B. Ezra said, We may sprinkle, we may also sprinkle on the third day is required. When our Dimi came, he said, In Our Eliezer's name, the Halachah says, Our Eliezer B. Ezra in the West Palestine, they pondered thereon, Is the bathing of the whole body permitted or only the bathing of it? Membram said one of the rabbis named our Jacob it is logical that it means the bathing of the whole body for should you think the bathing of the membrum is this worse less important than hot water on a wound for rab said one does not withhold hot water and oil from a wound on the Sabbath our Joseph demurred and do you not admit a distinction between hot water heated on the Sabbath and hot water heated on the eve of the Sabbath to the Sardini demurred and whence does it follow that they differ? Here in respect of hot water heated on the Sabbath perhaps they differ in respect of hot water heated on the eve of the Sabbath said Abbe I wanted to answer him but our Joseph anticipated me and answered him because it is a danger for him it was stated likewise when Rabin came he said in Arabab's name in our Eliezer's name other state Arabab said in our Yohanan's name the Halachah says our Eliezer B. Ezra in respect of both hot water heated on the Sabbath and hot water heated on the eve of the Sabbath whether for the bathing of the whole body or for the bathing of the membrum because it is dangerous for him to turn to the main text rap said one does not withhold hot water and oil from a wound on the Sabbath but Samuel said one must place it outside the wound and it flows down onto the wound and objection is raised one may not put oil and hot water on a rag to apply it to a wound on the Sabbath there it is on account of wringing out come and here one may not pour hot water and
Circumcised that you must cause a few drops of the covenant blood to flow from him because it is a suppressed foreskin about what do they differ about a proselyte who was converted when already circumcised their Beth Shem I maintain one must cause a few drops of the covenant blood to flow from him whereas Beth Hillel rule one need not cause a few drops of the covenant blood to flow from him the master said but of one that is doubtful does not supersede the Sabbath what does this include? It includes the following which was taught by our rabbis for a seven months infant one may desecrate the Sabbath but for an eight months infant one may not desecrate the Sabbath for one in doubt whether he is a seven months or an eight months infant one may not desecrate the Sabbath an eight months infant is like a stone and may not be handled but his mother bends over and suckles him because of the danger it was stated Rab said the Halachat is as the first tano while Samuel said it. Halachat is as our Simeon B. Eliezer a circumcised child was born to our Adabi Ahab he took him to thirteen circumcisors until he mutilated him privily I deserve it for transgressing Rab's ruling said he said our nomin to him and did you not violate Samuel's ruling Samuel ruled this only of weekdays but did he rule this of the Sabbath your Adabi Ahab held that it is definitely a suppressed foreskin for it was stated Rab said we suspect that it may be a suppressed foreskin our Joseph. Said it is certainly a suppressed foreskin. Our Joseph said, Whence do I know it? Because it was taught. Our Elizer Hakapper said, Beth Shemai and Beth Hillel do not disagree concerning him who was born circumcised that one must cause a few drops of the covenant blood to flow from him concerning what do they differ as to whether the Sabbath is desecrated on his account. Beth Shemai maintain we desecrate the Sabbath on his account while Beth Hillel rule we must not desecrate the Sabbath on his account. Does it then not follow that the first Tana holds we desecrate the Sabbath for him but perhaps the first Tana maintains that all agree that we may not desecrate the Sabbath for him if so our Elizer Hakapper comes to teach us Beth Shemai's view but perhaps he means this Beth Shemai and Beth Hillel did not disagree in this matter. RC said he whose mother is defiled through confinement must be circumcised at eight days but he whose mother is not defiled through confinement is not. Circumcised on the eighth day because it is said if a woman conceive seed and bear a man child then she shall be unclean etc. And in the eighth day the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised said Abbe to him let the early generations prove the reverse where the mother was not defiled through confinement yet circumcision was of the eighth day the Torah was given replied he Talmud, Mosh of Bath B and then a new law was decreed but that is not so for it was stated if one is extracted through the Caesarean section or has two foreskins are who not and are high be rab differ thereon one maintains we desecrate the Sabbath for them whilst the other holds we do not desecrate the Sabbath for them thus they differ only concerning the desecration of the Sabbath for them but we certainly circumcise them on the eighth day one is dependent on the other this is a controversy of Tanaim for it was taught there is a slave born in his master's house who is circumcised on the first day. And there is one born in his master's house who is circumcised on the eighth day. There is a slave bought with money who is circumcised on the first day. And there is a slave bought with money who is circumcised on the eighth day. There is a slave bought with money who is circumcised on the first day. And there is a slave bought with money who is circumcised on the eighth day. How so? If one purchases a pregnant female slave and then she gives birth, that the infant is an acquired slave who is circumcised at eight days. If one purchases a female slave together with her infant child, that is a slave bought with money who is circumcised on the first day. And there is a slave born in his master's house who is circumcised on the eighth day. How so? If one purchases a female slave and she conceives in his house and gives birth, that is a slave born in his master's house who is circumcised at eight days. Arhamma said, if she gives birth and then has a ritual bath, that is a Slave born in his master's house who is circumcised on the first day if she has a ritual bath and then gives birth that is a slave born in his master's house who is circumcised at eight days but the first ten allows no distinction between one who first has a ritual bath and then gives birth and one who gives birth and then has a ritual bath so that though his mother is not defiled through her confinement he is circumcised on the eighth day Rabbi said as for our hammer it is well we find. A slave born in his master's house who is circumcised on the first day and one who is circumcised on the eighth day one bought with money who is circumcised on the first day and one bought with money who is circumcised on the eighth day thus if she gives birth and then has a ritual bath that is a slave born in his master's house who is circumcised on the first day if she has a ritual bath and then gives birth that is a slave born in the house who is circumcised on the eighth day. One bought with money who is circumcised on the eighth day, e.g., if one purchases a pregnant female slave and she has a ritual bath and then gives birth, one bought with money who is circumcised on the first day, e.g., where one buys a pregnant female slave and another buys her unborn child, but according to the first ten, as for all others, it is well they are conceivable, but how can a slave born in the house be found who is circumcised on the first day, said our Jeremiah, in the case of one who buys a female slave for her unborn child, this is satisfactory on the view that a title to the use of is not as a title to the principle, but on the view that a title to the use of is as a title to the principle, what can be said, said our Meshachia, it is possible where one buys a female slave on condition that he will not subject her to a ritual bath, it was taught our Simeon B. Gamaliel said, any human being who lives thirty days is not in a because it is said, and those that are to be. Redeemed of them from a month old shall thou redeem an animal which lives eight days is not in a fell for it is set and from the eighth day and henceforth it shall be accepted for an oblation etc. This implies that if an infant does not last so long it is doubtful Talmud, Mosh of Batha how then can we circumcise him said our Adabi Ahab we circumcise him in either case if he is viable he is rightly circumcised whilst if not one merely cuts flesh then as to what was taught if there is doubt whether he is a seven months infant or an eight months we must not desecrate the Sabbath on his account why so let us circumcise him in either case if he is viable he is rightly circumcised if not you merely cut flesh mar the son of Robin said our Nehumi be Zechariah and I explained that we do indeed circumcise him this teaching is required only in respect of the preliminaries of circumcision this being in accordance with our Eliza Abbe said this is dependent on ten and if any. Beast of which ye may eat, die he that touch it, the carcass thereof shall be unclean until the even this is to include an eight months animal teaching that Shechita does not render it clean our Jose son of our Judah and our Eliezer son of our Simeon maintain it is Shechita does render it clean surely they differ in this one master holds it is a living creature whilst the other master holds it is technically dead said Rabbi if so instead of disputing on the matter of uncleanness and cleanness let them dispute on the question of consumption rather say then all hold that it is technically dead but our Jose son of our Judah and our Eliezer son of our Simeon argue it is as a tirfa a tirfa though indeed it is dead does not Shechita render it clean so here too it is not different but the Rabbi's reason it is unlike a tirfa for a tirfa had a period of fitness whereas this one enjoyed no period of fitness and should you object what can be said about a tirfa from birth there Shechita is efficacious for its kind, whereas here Shechita is not efficacious for its kind. The scholars ask, do the rabbis disagree with our Simeon B. Gamaliel or not? Should you answer that they differ is the Halachai's he or not come and here if a calf is born on a festival, one may slaughter it on a festival. What case do we treat of here where we know for certain that its months of bearing were complete? Come and here and they agree that if it is born together with its blemish, it is. You can hear too it is said where its months of bearing were complete. Come and here for Rab Judah said in Samuel's name the Halachai's as our Simeon B. Gamaliel. The Halachai's thus implies that they, the rabbis disagree. This proves it. Abbe said if it falls from a roof or is devoured by a lion, all hold that it was viable. When do they differ if it yawns and dies? One master holds it was viable whilst the other master holds it was technically dead. What is the practical difference whether it Freeze the mother from Levi right marriage if it falls from a roof or is devoured by a lion all hold that it was viable but surely our papa and our Hunah the son of our Joshua visited the house of our Adib Abin son who prepared a thirdborn calf for them on its seventh day from birth whereupon they said to him had you waited with it until evening we would have eaten thereof now we will not eat thereof rather say thus if it yawns and dies all agree that it was dead non-viable they differ where it falls from a roof or is devoured by a lion one master holding that it was viable the other master that it was dead a child was born
from 20 years old etc. But not a tum tum or an hermaphrodite. You might think that he does not come within the valuation of a man yet he does come within the valuation of a woman. Therefore it is stated the male and if it be a female a certain male a certain female but not a tum tum or a hermaphrodite. Talmud, Moshe Bathe and an anonymous statement in the Sifra is according to Arjuna Arnaman B. Isaac said we too learned likewise all are eligible to sanctify save a deaf mutant. Imbecile and a minor Arjuna admits a minor but invalidates a woman and an hermaphrodite. This proves it and why is circumcision different because it is written every male among you shall be circumcised. Mishnah if a man has two infants one for circumcision after the Sabbath and the other for circumcision on the Sabbath and he hears and circumcises the one belonging to after the Sabbath on the Sabbath he is culpable if he has one for circumcision on the eve of the Sabbath and another for circumcision on the Sabbath and he hears and circumcises the one belonging to the eve of the Sabbath on the Sabbath our Eliezer holds him liable to a sin offering but our Joshua exempts him. Gemara Arhuna recited he is culpable. Rab Judah recited he is not culpable. Arhuna recited he is culpable because it was taught our Simeon B. Eliezer said our Eliezer and our Joshua did not differ concerning a man who has two infants one for circumcision on the Sabbath and another for circumcision after the Sabbath. And hears and circumcises the one belonging to after the Sabbath on the Sabbath that he is culpable about what do they disagree about him who has two infants one for circumcision on the eve of the Sabbath and another for circumcision on the Sabbath and hears and circumcises the one belonging to the eve of the Sabbath on the Sabbath our Eliezer declaring him liable to a sin offering while our Joshua exempts him now both learn it from not but idolatry our Eliezer holds it is like idolatry. Just as idolatry the divine law decreed do not engage therein and if one engages therein he is culpable so here too it is not different but our Joshua argues there there is no precept fulfilled whereas here there is a precept Rab Judah recited he is not culpable for it was taught our Meir said our Eliezer and our Joshua did not differ concerning a man who has two infants one for circumcision on the eve of the Sabbath and another for circumcision on the Sabbath and hears and circumcises the one belonging to the eve of the Sabbath on the Sabbath that he is not culpable about what do they disagree about him who has two infants one for circumcision after the Sabbath and another for circumcision on the Sabbath and hears and circumcises the one belonging to after the Sabbath on the Sabbath our Eliezer declaring him liable to a sin offering while our Joshua exempts him now both learn it from not save idolatry our Eliezer holds it is like idolatry just as idolatry the divine law decreed. Do not engage therein and if one engages therein he is culpable so here too it is not different but our Joshua argues there he is not preoccupied with the precept whereas here he is preoccupied with the precept our high taught our mayor used to say our Eliezer and our Joshua did not differ concerning him who has two infants one for circumcision on the eve of the Sabbath and one for circumcision on the Sabbath and hears and circumcises the one belonging to the eve of the Sabbath on the Sabbath that he is culpable about what do they disagree about a man who has two infants one for circumcision after the Sabbath and another for circumcision on the Sabbath and hears and circumcises the one belonging to after the Sabbath on the Sabbath our Eliezer declaring him liable to a sin offering while our Joshua exempts him now if our Joshua exempts him in the second clause though he does not fulfill a precept shall he declare him culpable in the first clause where he does fulfill a precept the school of R. Janay said the first clause is e.g. where the infant belonging to the Sabbath was previously circumcised on the eve of the Sabbath so that the Sabbath does not stand to be superseded but in the second clause the Sabbath stands to be superseded said Arashi to Arkahana but in the first clause too the Sabbath stands to be superseded in connection with infants in general nevertheless as far as this man is concerned it does not stand to be superseded Mishnah an infant is to be circumcised on the 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th and 12th days neither earlier nor later how so in the normal course it is on the 8th if he is born at twilight on the 9th at twilight on Sabbath eve on the 10th if a festival follows the Sabbath on the 11th if the two days of New Year follow the Sabbath on the 12th an infant who is ill is not circumcised until he recovers Gamara Samuel said when his temperature subsides to normal we allow him full seven days for his complete recovery the Scholars ask, do we require 24 hours days come and here for Luda taught the day of his recovery is like the day of his birth surely that means just as with the day of his birth we do not require 24 hours day so with the day of his recovery we do not require 24 hours day no the day of his recovery is stronger than the day of his birth for whereas with the day of his birth we do not require 24 hours day with the day of his recovery we do require a 24 hours day mission these are the shreds which invalidate circumcision flesh that covers the greater part of the corona and he must not partake of terima and if he is fleshy he must repair it for appearances say Talmud, Mosh of Bath B if one circumcises but does not uncover the circumcision it is as though he has not circumcised Gemara our Avina said in the name of our Jeremiah B. Abba in Rab's name this means the flesh that covers the greater part of the height of the corona and if he is fleshy etc. Samuel said if an infant as member is overgrown with flesh we examine him as long as he appears circumcised when he forces himself it is unnecessary to recircumcise him but if not he must be recircumcised in a very it was taught our Simeon B. Gamaliel said if an infant as member is overgrown with flesh we examine him if he does not appear circumcised when he forces himself he must be recircumcised otherwise he need not be recircumcised wherein do they differ they differ. Where it is only partially visible if one circumcises but does not uncover the circumcision our rabbis taught he who circumcises must recite who has sanctified us with thy commandments and has commanded us concerning circumcision the father of the infant recites who has sanctified us with thy commandments and has commanded us to lead him into the covenant of our father Abraham the bystanders exclaim even as he has entered the covenant so may he enter into the tour of the marriage canopy. And good deeds, and he who pronounces the benediction recites who has sanctified the beloved one from the womb. He set a statute in his flesh, and his offsprings he sealed with the sign of the holy covenant. Therefore, as a reward for this, O living God, who art our portion, give command to save the beloved of our flesh from the pit for the sake of thy covenant, which thou hast set in our flesh. Blessed art thou, O Lord, who makest the covenant. He who circumcises proselytes says, Blessed art thou, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with thy commandments and has commanded us concerning circumcision. He who pronounces the benediction recites who has sanctified us with thy commandments and has commanded us to circumcise proselytes and to cause the drops of the blood of the covenant to flow from them. Since but for the blood of the covenant, heaven and earth would not endure, as it is said, if not my covenant by day and by night, I had not appointed the ordinances of heaven and Earth blessed art thou, O Lord, who makest the covenant, he who circumcises slaves recites, who has sanctified us with thy commandments and has commanded us concerning circumcision, while he who pronounces the benediction recites, who has sanctified us with thy commandments and has commanded us to cause the drops of the blood of the covenant to flow from them, since but for the blood of the covenant the ordinances of heaven and earth would not endure as it is said, if not my covenant by day and by night I had not appointed the ordinances of heaven and earth blessed art thou, O Lord, who makest the covenant, C-H-A-P-T-E-R-X-X, Mishnah, our Eliezer said, one may suspend a strainer on festivals and pour wine through a suspended strainer on the Sabbath, but the sages rule one may not suspend a strainer on festivals nor pour wine through a suspended strainer on the Sabbath, but we may pour IT through a suspended strainer on festivals, Gemara, seeing that our Eliezer holds that we may not. Even add to a temporary tent can it be permitted to make one in the first place what is the solution for we learned as for the stopper of the skylight our Eliezer said when it is fastened and suspended one may close the skylight with it if not one may not close the skylight with it but the sages maintain in both cases you may close the skylight with it whereon Rabbi Barhanna said in our Yohanan's name all agree that a temporary tent may not be made on festivals whilst on the Sabbath it goes without saying they differ only in respect of adding to a tent our Eliezer maintaining one may not add on a festival whilst on the Sabbath it goes without saying whereas the sages rule one may add on the Sabbath whilst it is superfluous to speak of festivals our Eliezer agrees with our Judah for it was taught the only difference between festivals and the Sabbath is in respect of food for
Strainer on the Sabbath, the scholars asked what if one does strain one arkahana said if one strains he incurs a sin offering arshis hate demurred is there aught for which the rabbis impose a sin offering whereas our Eliezer permits it at the very outset to this arshis of demurred why not surely there is a golden city where our Meir imposes a sin offering while our Eliezer gives permission at the very outset what is this for it was taught a woman must not go out with a golden city and if she does go out she is liable to a sin offering this is our Meir's view but the sages rule she may not go out with it yet if she goes out she is not culpable our Eliezer maintained a woman may go out with a golden city at the very outset said Abay to him do you think that our Eliezer refers to our Meir who rules that she is liable to a sin offering he refers to the rabbis who maintain that there is no culpability though it is forbidden whereupon he said to them it is permitted at the very outset on what Grounds is he warned Rabbi said on the grounds of selecting Arzara said on the score of sifting Rabbi said reason supports my view what is usual in selecting one takes the edible matter and leaves the refuse so here too he takes the edible the wine and leaves the refuse Arzara said reason supports my view what is usual in sifting the refuse remains on top whilst the edible matter falls below so here too the refuse remains on top whilst the edible matter drops below Rami B. Ezekiel. Recited one must not spread a doubled over sheet yet if he does he is not culpable but it is forbidden if a thread or a cord was wound about it it may be spread at the very outset Arkahana asked Rab what about a canopy a bed too is forbidden what about a bed a canopy too is permitted he replied what about a canopy and a bed a canopy is forbidden replied he while a bed is permitted yet there are no contradictions when he said a bed too is forbidden he meant one like that used by the Carmenians. When he said to him a canopy too is permitted he referred to one like Rami B. Ezekiel as a canopy is forbidden while a bed is permitted refers to one like ours. Our Joseph said I saw the canopy beds of Arhunaz house stretched out at night and thrown down in the morning. Rab said in Arhai's name a door curtain may be hung up and taken down and Samuel said in Arhai's name Talmud, Mosh should bath be a bridal bed may be set up and it may be dismantled. Arshis hate son of Aridi said that was said. Only where its roof is not a handbreadth in width but if its roof is a handbreadth it is forbidden and even if the roof is not a handbreadth this was said only where there is not the width of a handbreadth within three handbreadths from the top but if there is a handbreadth within three from the top it is forbidden and this is said only if its slope is less than a handbreadth but if its slope is a handbreadth the slopes of tents are as tents and it was said only if it does not descend a and breadth below the bed, but if it descends a hand breadth below the bed, it is forbidden. Arshis hate son of Aridi also said a peak cap is permitted, but it was stated a peak cap is forbidden. There is no difficulty in the one case; it is a hand breadth in size, and the other it is not a hand breadth. If so, if one lets his cloak protrude, a hand breadth is he too culpable? Rather say there is no difficulty here; it is tightly fitted on his head. There it is not tightly fitted. Rami B. Ezekiel sent to Arhu tell us pray those well favored dicta which you told us formerly in Rab's name too about the Sabbath and one about Torah. He sent back to him as to what was taught. It is permitted to stretch the leather bag by its thongs. Rab said they learned this only of two men, but if done by one man, it is forbidden. Abay said, but it cannot be even if stretched by ten men is forbidden, for it is impossible that it shall not be somewhat stretched. What is the other dictum if one of the shafts of a stove falls off it the stove may be handled if both fall off it may not be handled Rab said even if one falls out it is forbidden lest he refix it and one about Torah for Rab said the Torah is destined to be forgotten in Israel because it is said then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful now I do not know what this wonder is but when it is said therefore behold I will proceed to do a wonderful work among this people even a wonderful work and a wonder and the wisdom of their wise men shall perish it follows that this wonder refers to Torah our rabbis taught when our masters entered the vineyard at Yevna they said the Torah is destined to be forgotten in Israel as it is said behold the days come saith the Lord God that I will send a famine in the land not a famine of bread nor thirst for water but of hearing the words of the Lord and it is said and they shall wander from sea to sea and from the north even to the east they shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord and shall not find it. The word of the Lord means halacha. The word of the Lord means the end. The word of the Lord means prophecy. And what does they shall run to and fro to seek? The word of the Lord means said a woman is destined to take a loaf of terima and go about in the synagogues and academies to know whether it is unclean or clean, and none will know whether it is clean or unclean. But that is explicitly stated. All food which may be eaten shall be unclean. Rather to know whether it is a first degree or a second degree of uncleanness, and none will know. But that too is a mission. For we learned if a dead creeping thing is found in an oven, the bread within it is a second because the oven is a first. They will be in doubt over what our Adabi Ahab asked. Rabbi, let us regard this oven as though it were filled with uncleanness, and let the bread be a first. He replied, We do not say let us regard this oven as though it were filled with uncleanness, for it was taught you. Might think that all utensils become unclean in the airspace of an earthen vessel, therefore it is stated whatsoever is in it shall be unclean all food therein which may be eaten food and liquids become unclean in the airspace of an earthen vessel. It was taught our Simeon B.O. He said heaven forfend that the Torah be forgotten in Israel for it is said for it shall not be forgotten out of the mouths of their seed. Then how do I interpret they shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord and shall not find it they will not find Talmud, Mosh Bath a clear halachah or a clear mission in any place it was taught our Jose B. Elisha said if you see a generation overwhelmed by many troubles go forth and examine the judges of Israel for all retribution that comes to the world comes only on account of the judges of Israel as it is said here this I pray you heads of the house of Jacob and rulers of the house of Israel that abhor judgment and pervert all equity they build up Zion with. Blood and Jerusalem with iniquity, the heads thereof judge for reward, and the priests thereof teach for hire, and the prophets thereof divine for money, yet will they lean upon the Lord, etc. They are wicked, but they place their confidence in him who decreed, and the world came into existence. Therefore, the Holy One, blessed be he, will bring three punishments upon them, answering to the three sins which they cultivate, as it is said, therefore shall Zion for your sake be plowed as a field, and Jerusalem shall become heaps, and the mountain of the house as the high places of the forest, and the Holy One, blessed be he, will not cause his divine presence to rest upon Israel until the wicked judges and officers cease out of Israel, for it is said, and I will turn my hand upon thee, and thoroughly purge away thy dross, and will take away all thy tin, and I will restore thy judges as at the first, and thy counselors as at the beginning, etc. O said, Jerusalem shall be redeemed only by righteousness as it is. Written Zion shall be redeemed with judgment and her converts with righteousness. Our Papa said, When the haughty cease to exist in Israel, the Magi shall cease among the Persians. When the judges cease to exist in Israel, the Kiliarchy shall cease. When the haughty cease to exist in Israel, the Magi shall cease among the Persians, as it is written, and I will surely purge away thy haughty ones. When the judges cease to exist in Israel, the Kiliarchy shall cease, as it is written, the Lord hath taken away thy judgments. He hath cast out thine enemy, Armelah said in the name of our Eliezer, son of our Simeon. What is meant by the verse, The Lord hath broken the staff of the wicked, the scepter of the rulers. The Lord hath broken the staff of the wicked refers to the judges who become a staff for their sheriffs. The scepter of the rulers refers to the scholars in the families of the judges. Marzitra said this refers to the scholars who teach the laws of the public to ignorant judges, our Eliezer be. Meles said in the name of Reshlakish what is meant by the verse for your hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with iniquity your lips have spoken lies your tongue muttereth wickedness for your hands are defiled with blood this refers to the judges and your fingers with iniquity to the judges scribes your lips have spoken lies to the advocates of the judges your tongue muttereth wickedness to the litigants Armelah also said in the name of our Isaac of Magdala from the day that Joseph departed from his brothers he did not taste wine for it is written the blessings of thy father shall be on the head of Joseph and on the crown of the head of him who was a Nazi right since his departure from his brethren our Jose B. Arhanan said they too did not taste wine for it is written and they drank and drank largely with him which implies that they did not drink until then and the other there was no extensive drinking
For him as for a corpse he sent word to them neither Jews nor Syrians non-Jews may occupy themselves with a corpse neither on the first day of the festival nor on the second but that is not so for our Judah Bishalath said in RSC's name such a case happened in the synagogue of Ma'an on a festival near the Sabbath Talmud, Mosh of Bath though I do not know whether it preceded or followed it and when they went before our Yohanan he said to them let Gentiles occupy themselves with him the dead. Robert II said as for a corpse on the first day of festivals Gentiles should occupy themselves with him on the second day of festivals Israelites may occupy themselves with him and even on the second day of New Year which is not so in the case of an egg here too because they were not learned in the law Rabin B.R. who not said in our Habibigiria's name a man may wrap himself in a canopy sheet and tie it with its cords to go out into the street on the Sabbath without fear how does this differ from? Arunas dictum for Arunas said in Rab's name if one goes out on the Sabbath wearing a garment not provided with proper fringes as required by law he is liable to a sin offering fringes are important in relation to the cloak hence they are not merged therein these are not of separate importance and so are counted as not Rab's son of Arunas said a man may employ an artifice in connection with a strainer on a festival suspending it for pomegranates yet straining leaves therein said. Our Ashi provided he does place pomegranates in it how does it differ from what was taught one may brew beer on the intermediate days of a festival when it is required for the festival but if not required for the festival it is forbidden this applies to both barley beer and date beer though one has old beer he may practice an evasion and drink of the new there the matter is not evident here the matter is evident the scholar said to our Ashi see sir a rabbinical disciple whose name is Arunas. Be him another state Arunah Behil one who took peel of garlic placed it in the bunghole of a barrel and asserted my intention is to put it away here he also went and dozed in a ferry and thus crossed to the other side and looked after his fruit asserting my intention was to sleep said he to them you speak of an artifice it is an artifice in connection with the rabbinical interdict and a disciple of the rabbis will not come to do this at the very outset mission of water may be poured over. Please in order to clarify them and wine may be strained through cloths and through a basket made of palm twigs and an egg may be passed through a mustard strainer and an omelet may be prepared on the Sabbath. Our Judah said on the Sabbath it may only be made in a goblet on festivals in a legend and on the intermediate days of festivals in the barrel. Arzadik said it all depends on the number of guests. Gemara Zeiri said one may pour clear wine and clear water into a strainer on the Sabbath without. Fear but not turbid liquids an objection is raised. Our Simeon B. Gamaliel said one may stir up a barrel of wine, i.e. the wine and the lees and pour it into a strainer on the Sabbath without fears. E.I.R.I. explained that they learned this of the season of the wine pressing wine may be strained through cloths. Our Shimei B. High said provided that one does not make a hollow and through a basket made of palm twigs. Our High B. Ashi said in Rab's name provided he does not lift at the basket a handbreadth from the bottom of the vessel. Rab said spreading a rag over half a cask to cover it is permitted over the whole cask is forbidden. Our Papa said a man must not stuff ships into the mouth of a cask jug because it looks like a strainer. Our Papa's household poured wine slowly from one vessel to another. Our Ahav Dipti objected but there is the residue. The residue had no value in our Papa's household and egg may be passed through a mustard strainer. Our Jacob Karhar recited Talmud, Mosh of Batha because it is only done for coloring it was stated if mustard grain is needed on Sabbath on the morrow Rab said one must crush dissolve it with a utensil but not by hand said Samuel to him by hand does one then crush it every day by hand is it asses food rather said Samuel he must crush it by hand but not with a utensil it was stated our Eliezer said both the one and the other are forbidden while our Yohanan ruled both the one and the other are permitted Abay and Rabba both say the Halachah is not as our Yohanan our Yohanan subsequently adopted our Eliezer's thesis while our Eliezer adopted Samuel's thesis Abay and Rabba both said then the Halachah is as our Yohanan Abay's mother prepared it for him but he would not eat it Zeiri's wife prepared some for our high Ashi but he would not eat it said she to him I prepared it for your teacher Zeiri and he ate whilst you do not eat Rabba Bishaba said I was standing before Rabba and I stirred the mustard for him with the smooth inner. Part of the garlic and he ate it. Marzutra said the law is not as all these opinions but as the following which was stated if mustard is needed on the eve of the Sabbath on the morrow one may crush dissolve it both by hand or with a utensil he may pour honey in it yet he must not beat it up but may mix them if cress was chopped up on the eve of the Sabbath on the morrow one may put oil and vinegar into it and add ametha thereto and he must not beat them up but may mix them if garlic was crushed on the eve of the Sabbath on the morrow one may put beans and grits therein yet he must not pound them but may mix them and one may add ametha to it what is ametha nanya may observe this proves that nanya is good for seasoning cress and an omelet may be prepared on the Sabbath our rabbis taught an omelet may be prepared on the Sabbath but alantith may not be prepared on the Sabbath what is an omelet and what is alantith an omelet is a mixture of wine honey and pepper alantith is a Mixture of old wine, clear water, and balsam, which is prepared as a cooling draft in the baths. Our Joseph said, I once entered the baths after Marakba on leaving. I was offered a cup of such wine, and I experienced a cooling sensation from the hair of my head right down to my toenails. And had I drunk another glass, I would have been afraid lest it be deducted from my merits in the future world. But Marakba drank it every day. Marakba was different because he was accustomed to it. Misha. Hildith must not be dissolved in warm water, but it may be put into vinegar, and one must not cause leaks to float nor rub them, but they may be put into a sieve or a basket. Stubble may not be sifted through a sieve nor placed on an eminence for the chaff to drop down, but one may take it up in a sieve and put it into the manger. Gemara, the scholars asked, What if one does dissolve it or add of nourish maintained before our Joseph? If one dissolves it, he is liable to a sin offering said Abbe to him. If so, if one soaks raw meat in water, is he too liable? Rather, said Abay, it is a rabbinical prohibition that one should not act as he does during the week. Our Yohanan asked, Our Jenny may Hildith be dissolved in cold water? It is forbidden, replied he, but we learned Hildith must not be dissolved in warm water, implying that it is permitted in cold water. If so, what is the difference between you and me? Our mission is the opinion of an individual, for it was taught Hildith may be dissolved neither in warm nor in cold water. Our Jose said, In warm water, it is forbidden, in cold it is permitted. What is it made for as a remedy for Esma? Our Ahabi Joseph suffered with Esma. He went to Marakba, who advised him, Go and drink three gold in our weights of Hildith on three days. He went and drank it on Thursday and Friday. The following morning, he went and asked about it in the Beth Hamid Rash said to him, The school of our other state, the school of Marsan of our Ad recited, One may drink a cab. Or two cabs without fear about drinking said he I do not ask my question is what about dissolving it or high be Abin observed to them this case happened to me and I went and consulted our Adabi Ahabu but he could not inform me so I went and asked Arunah and he answered me thus did Rab say he may dissolve it in cold water and place it in the sun is this only according to him who permits dissolving no it is even according to him who forbids it that is only if one had not drunk at all. But here since he had drunk it on Thursday and Friday if he would not drink it on the Sabbath he would be endangered our Ahabi Joseph was walking along leaning on the shoulder of Arnam and B. Isaac his sister's son when we reach our Safra's house lead me and he requested when they arrived there he let him in how about rubbing the stiffness out of linen washing asked he is his intention to soften the linen and it is permitted or perhaps his intention is to make it whiter which is forbidden his. Intention is to soften it, replied he, and it is permitted when he went out here. Arnaman inquired, What did you ask him? I asked him, What about rubbing linen on the Sabbath? replied he, and he answered me, It is permitted, but let the master inquire about a scarf. I do not ask about a scarf because I asked it of Arhuna, and he decided it for me. Then let the master solve this from a scarf there. It looks like making it whiter, but here it does not look like making it whiter. Arista said, As for linen, Talmud, Mosh of Bath be to draw it away from a cane is permitted to draw out the cane from it is forbidden. Rabba said, But if it is a weaver's implement, it is permitted. Arista said, A bunch of vegetables, if fit as food for animals, may be hand
and wash it every 30 days and I guarantee that it will relieve him from buying another for a full year what does kitten with underwear mean kit and a off on flax are his to also said a scholar should not sit upon a new mat because it destroys the garments are his to also said a scholar should not send his garments to his host for washing for this is not in good taste lest he see something and he come to despise him are his to advise his daughters act modestly before your husbands do not eat bread before your husbands do not eat greens at night do not eat dates at night nor drink beer at night and do not ease yourselves where your husbands do and when someone calls at the door do not say who is he but who is she he or his to held a jewel in one hand and a valueless seed grain in the other the pearl he showed them but the seed grain he did not show them until they were suffering and then he showed it to them one must not cause leaks to float our mission does not agree with it Following Tana for it was taught our Eliza B. Jacob said one must not look at the seed at all Mishnah one may sweep out the manger for a stall ox and move the remnants aside for the sake of a grazing animal this is our dose's view but the sages forbid it one may take fodder from one animal and place it before another animal on the Sabbath Amara the scholars asked do the rabbis disagree with the first clause or with the second or with both come and here for it was taught but the sages maintain both the one and the other must not be moved on aside Arista said they differ in respect of a ground manger but all agree that a manger which is a vessel is permitted but is there any opinion that a ground manger is permitted surely one levels the holes rather if stated it was thus stated Arista said they differ in respect of a vessel manger but all hold that a ground manger is forbidden one may take fodder from one animal etc one bury the taught one may take fodder from before an animal that is fastidious and place it before an animal that is not fastidious while another taught one may take fodder from before an animal that is not fastidious and place it before an animal that is fastidious have they observed both bury this hold that one may take from an ass to put before an ox but not from an ox and place it before an ass now when it is taught one may take from before an animal that is fastidious it refers to an ass which does not drop saliva into its food and place it before an animal that is not fastidious to a cow talmud mosh of which drops saliva and when it is taught one may take fodder from before an animal that is not fastidious it refers to an ass which is not particular about what it eats and put it before an animal that is fastidious to a cow which is particular about what it eats mission one must not move straw lying upon a bed with his hand yet he may move it with his body but if it is fodder for animals or a Pillow or a sheet was upon it before nightfall he may move it with his hand one may undo a householder's clothes press but not force it down but a launderer's press may not be touched our Judah said if it was undone before the Sabbath one may unfasten the hole and remove it Gemara Arnaman said a radish if it is the right way up it is permitted if it is reversed it is forbidden our Adabi Abba said the scholar said we learned a Mishnah in disagreement with Arnaman one must not move straw lying upon a bed with his hand yet he may move it with his body but if it is fodder for animals or a pillow on a sheet was upon it before nightfall he may move it with his hand this proves indirect handling is not designated handling this proves it Rab Judah said to crush pepper grains one by one with a knife handle is permitted in twos it is forbidden Rabba said since he does it in a different way crushing even many is permitted to Rab Judah also said if one bathes in water he should first Dry himself and then ascend lest he come to carry four cubits in a carmelite if so when he enters to his force propels the water four cubits which is forbidden they did not prohibit one's force in a carmelite of a other state Rab Judah said one may scrape off the clay from his foot onto the ground but not onto a wall said Rabba why not onto a wall because it looks like building but it is ignorant building rather said Rabba he may scrape it off onto a wall but not onto the ground lest he come to level holes it was stated Marson of Rabba said both are forbidden our Papa said both are permitted according to Marson of Rabba whereon shall he scrape it he scrapes it on a plank Rabba said a man should not sit on the top of a stake lest an article roll away from him and he come to fetch it Rabba also said one must not bend sideways a cask which is standing on the ground lest he come to level hollows Rabba also said one must not squeeze a cloth stopper into the mouth of a jug lest he come to ring it out. Arkahana said, As for the clay mire on one's garment, he may rub off from the inside, but not from the outside. An objection is raised. One may scrape off the clay from his shoes with the back of a knife, and that which is on one's garment, he may scrape off with even his fingernail, providing that he does not rub it. Surely that means that he must not rub it at all. No, he must not rub it from the outside, but only from the inside. Aravav said, In our Eliezer's name, in our Janay's name, a new shoe may be scraped, but not an old one. Talmud, Mosh of Bath, be with what does one scrape it? Said Aravav with the back of a knife. A certain old man said to him, Delete your teaching on account of what our high taught. One must not scrape either a new shoe or all old one, nor must he rub his foot with oil while it is in the shoe or sandal, but one may rub his foot with oil and place it in his shoe or sandal. He may also oil his whole body and roll himself on a leather spread. Without fear, Arista said they learned this only if his intention is to polish it, but if it is to dress it, it is forbidden to dress it. Surely that is obvious. Moreover, does anyone permit it if he desires to polish it? Rather, if stated it was thus stated, Arista said they learned this only of a quantity sufficient merely to polish it, but if the quantity is sufficient to dress it, it is forbidden. Our rabbis taught a small footed man must not go out with the shoe of a large footed man. But he may go out with too large a shirt. A woman must not go out with a gaping shoe, nor may she perform halizah there with yet. If she does perform halizah there with the halizah is valid, and one must not go out with a new shoe of what shoe did they rule this of a woman's shoe bark of her taught they learned this only where she had not gone out there in one hour before nightfall, but if she went out there in on the eve of the Sabbath, it is permitted one bury the taught a shoe may be removed from. It's last while another taught it may not be removed there is no difficulty one is according to our Eliezer the other according to the rabbis for we learned if a shoe is on the last our Eliezer declares it clean while the sages declare it is unclean this is well according to Rabbah who maintained it is permitted to handle an article whose function is for a forbidden purpose whether it is required itself or for its place then it is correct but on Abbe's view that it may be handled for itself. But it is forbidden to handle it when its place is required what can be said we treat here of one issue that is loose on the last for it was taught our Judah said if it is loose it is permitted to remove it the reason then why it is permitted is because it is loose but if it is not loose it is not permitted this is well on Abbe's view that an article whose function is for a forbidden purpose may be handled when required for itself but not when its place only is required then it is correct but according to Rabbah who maintains it is permitted to handle it both when required for itself or when its place is required what can be said for why particularly a loose shoe even if not loose too it is thus that represents our Judah's view in our Eliezer's name for it was taught our Judah said in our Eliezer's name if it is loose it is permitted C-H-A-P-T-E-R-X-X I mission a man may take up his son while he has a stone in his hand or a basket with a stone in it and unclean terima may be handled together with clean terima or with hullen our Judah said one may also remove the admixture of terima in hullen when one part is neutralized in a hundred parts Gemara Rabbah said if one carries out a live child with a purse hanging around its neck he is culpable on account of the purse a dead child with a purse hanging around its neck he is not culpable a live child with a purse hanging around its neck he is culpable on account of the purse but let him be culpable on account of the child Rabbah agrees with our Nathan who maintained a living person carries himself but let the purse be counted as not in relation to the child did we not learn if one carries out a living person in a bed he is not culpable even in respect of the bed because the bed is subsidiary to him a bed is accounted as not in relation to a living person but a purse is not accounted as not in relation to the child a dead child with a purse hanging around its neck he is not culpable but let him be culpable on account of the child Rabbah agrees with our Simeon who maintained one is not culpable on account of a labor unrequired per se we learned a man may take up his son while he has a stone in his hand the school of our Janay said this refers to a child who pines for his father if so Talmud Mosh of why particularly a stone the same applies to a dinar why did Rabbah say they learned only a stone but a dinar is forbidden in the case of a stone if it falls down the father will not come to fetch it but with a dinar if it falls down the father will come to fetch it it was taught in accordance with Rabbah if one carries out his garments folded up and lying on his
Objection is raised one may handle unclean terima together with clean terima or with hollen whether the clean is on top and the unclean is below or the unclean is on top and the clean is underneath this refutes Arhista Arhista answers you our mission means that it is required for itself the Baritha is where its place is required what compels Arhista to interpret our mission as meaning that it is required for itself said Rabba our mission by deduction supports him for the second clause states if money is lying on a cushion one shakes the cushion and it falls off whereon Rabbi Barhan has said in Aryohan name they learned this only if it, the cushion is required for itself but if its place is required one removes it while it, the money is upon it and since the second clause means that it is required for itself the first clause too means that it is required for itself Arjuda said one may also remove etc yet why surely he makes a fit Arjuda agrees with our Eliezer who maintains the Terima lies as a separate entity for we learned if SEI of Terima falls into less than a hundred and thus they become a forbidden mixture and then some of the mixture falls elsewhere our Eliezer said it creates a forbidden mixture as though it were certain Terima but the sages maintain the mixture creates a forbidden mixture only in proportion but say that you know him to rule us with stringency do you know him to rule us with lenience rather reply thus he our Judah rules as our Simeon as we learned if Sei of Terima falls into a hundred and one has no time to remove it until another falls in it is all forbidden but our Simeon permits it yet how does this follow perhaps there they differ in this is the first tana holds so they fell in consecutively it is as though they fell in simultaneously so that each falls into fifty whereas our Simeon holds the first is neutralized in a hundred and this one is neutralized in a hundred and one. Rather reply thus he our Judah rules as our Simeon B. Eliezer for it was taught our Simeon B. Eliezer said one may cast his eyes at one side and he from the other yet does he agree with him Talmud, Mas Shabbat be surely he disagrees for it was taught our Judah said one removes the admixture of Terima in Holland when one part is neutralized in a hundred and one parts our Simeon B. Eliezer said one cast his eyes at one side and eats from the other our Judah's ruling goes beyond our Simeon B. Eliezer's mission if a stone is on the mouth of a cask of wine one tilts it on a side and it falls off if it the cask is standing among other casks he lifts it out tilts it on a side and it falls off if money is lying on a cushion one shakes the cushion and it falls off if dirt is upon it one wipes it off with a rag if it is of leather water is poured over it until it disappears Gemara Arhuna said in Rab's name they learned this only where one forgot it there but if he placed it there if the cask becomes a stand for a forbidden article if it is standing among other casks etc which Tana holds that wherever there is something permitted and something forbidden one must occupy oneself with what is permitted not with what is forbidden said Rabbi Barhan in Aryohanan's name it is our Simeon Begamaliel for we learned if one selects beans on a festival Beth Shammai maintained he must select the edible beans and eat them whereas Beth Hillel rule he may select in the usual. Way into his lap or into a plate now it was taught our Simeon B. Gamaliel said when was this said when the edible exceeds the non-edible but if the non-edible exceeds the edible all agree that he must select the edible but here it is analogous to where the edible exceeds the non-edible since he cannot take the whole of the wine should he desire it unless he lifts it up it is analogous to where the non-edible exceeds the edible if it is standing among the casks he lifts it out it was taught our Jose said if the cask is lying among a store of casks or if glassware is lying under it he lifts it out elsewhere tilts it on a side so that it falls off takes thereof what he requires and replaces it if money is lying on a cushion our high B. Ashi said they learned this only where one forgot it there but if he placed it there at the cushion became a stand for a forbidden article Rabbi B. Barhana said they learned this only when it is required for itself but if its place is required one May remove it the cushion while the coins are yet upon it and thus did Hive Rabbi Dipti recite they learned this only when it is required for itself but if its place is required one may move it while they are yet upon it if money is lying on a cushion one shakes etc. Arashai said if one forgets a purse in a courtyard he places a loaf for a child thereon and moves it or Isaac said if one forgets a brick in a courtyard he places a loaf for a child thereon and moves it or Judah Bishila. Said in Arasi's name they once forgot a saddlebag full of money in the street and went and consulted our Yohanan and he told them place a loaf for a child thereon and move it Marzitra said the law is as all these rulings where one forgets Arashi said even if one forgets this is still not permitted and they permitted the expedient of a loaf for a child only in connection with the corpse have a place a little on a pile of sheets Rabbi placed a knife on a young dove and handled it said our Joseph how. Are the rulings of children assume that the rabbis ruled thus when one forgets but was it said that it is permitted at the very outset of a retorted but that I am a person of importance would I need a little on sheep surely they are fit for reclining thereon Rabba retorted but that I am a person of importance would I need a knife on a young duff surely it is fit for me as Ramit thus the reason is because it is fit as Ramit but if it were not fit as Ramit it might not be. Handel shall we say that Rabba agrees with our Judah but surely Rabba said to his servant roast me a duck and throw its entrails to a cat Talmud, Mosh Shabbatha there since they would putrefy his mind was set upon them from the previous day logic to indicates that Rabba agrees with our Judah for Rabba lectured a woman must not enter a woodshed to take thence a wood poker and if a wood poker is broken on a festival it may not be used as fuel on the festival because we may heat with utensils but not with fragments of utensils this proves admission of Beth Shammai say one may remove bones and nutshells from the table but Beth Hillel rule one must take away the whole board and shake it one may remove from the table crumbs less than the size of an olive and the panicles of beans and lentils because they are food for animals as for a sponge if it has a liter and handle one may wipe the board with it if not one may not wipe the board with it the sages maintain in either case it may be handled on the Sabbath and is not susceptible to defilement Gemara Arnam and said as for us we have no other view but that Beth Shammai agrees with our Judah and Beth Hillel with our Simeon one may remove crumbs from the table this supports our Yohanan for our Yohanan said crumbs less than an olive in size may not be wantonly destroyed panicles of beans who is the authority apparently our Simeon who rejects the interdict of Muksa and consider the final clause as for a sponge if it has a liter and Handle one may wipe the board with it if not one may not wipe with it. This agrees with Arjuna who maintains that which is unintentional is forbidden here. Even our Simeon agrees for Abay and Rabba both maintained our Simeon admits in a case of cut off his head but let him not die. The kernels of Syrian dates may be handled since they are fit for cattle on account of their parent source but those of Persian dates are forbidden. Samuel handled them in virtue of a piece of bread mnemonic. As harness as have as Samuel is consistent with his view for Samuel said one may carry out all his requirements with bread. Rabba handled them in virtue of a bowl flask of water. Arhuna the son of Arjashua made them as a pot of excrement said Arashi to Amimar but may we make a pot of excrements at the outset. Arshis hate threw them away spat them out with his tongue. Our Papa threw them behind the couch and was said of Arzekari Bukalos that he would turn his face to the back of the couch and throw. The way Talmud, Mosh of Bath B C H A P T E R X X I I mission if a cask of wine I S broken one may save thereof the requirements for three meals and he the owner can say to others come and save for yourselves provided that he does not sponge it up fruit may not be squeezed in order to express their juices if they exude of their own accord they are prohibited our Judah said if they stand as eat a blessed that which exudes from them is permitted but if for liquids that which exudes from them is prohibited if honeycombs are crushed on the eve of the Sabbath and if the honey exudes spontaneously it is forbidden but our Eliezer permits it Gemara Tana taught one must not sponge up wine nor dab up oil so that he should not act as he does during the week our rabbis taught if one's produce is scattered in his courtyard he may collect a little at a time and eat it but not into a basket or a tub so that he should not act as he does during the week fruit may not be squeezed etc. Rab Judah. Said in Samuel's name, Arjuna agreed with the sages in respect to olives and grapes. What is the reason since they are normally for expressing he puts his mind to them? But Allah said in Rab's name, Arjuna disagreed in respect of olives and grapes too. While Aryohan said the halachah is as Arjuna in the case of other produce, but the halachah is not as Arjuna in the case of olives and grapes. Rabbi
Wound is unclean shall cow's milk be unclean Talmud, moss should bath without the owner's desire though the blood of its wound is clean I am more stringent in the case of milk than in the case of blood replied he because if one milks as a remedy if the milk is unclean whereas if one lets blood as a remedy it is clean said they to him let baskets of olives and grapes prove it for the liquid that exudes from them with their owner's desire is unclean without their owner's desire is clean. Now does not with desire mean that he the owner is pleased therewith whilst without his desire means that if the purpose is unspecified now if olives and grapes which stand to be pressed yet where the juice exudes without desire it is nothing how much more so mulberries and pomegranates which do not stand to be pressed no with desire means that it is unexpressed whilst without desire means that he the owner revealed his mind saying it does not please me an alternative answer is Baskets of olives and grapes are different for since it stands to be wasted he the owner indeed renounces it beforehand we have thus found that our Judah agrees with the rabbis in the case of olives and grapes how do we know that the rabbis agree with our Judah in the case of other fruits because it was taught one may express Talmud, Moss should bath be plums quinces and surpapples but not pomegranates and indeed the household of Manasia be used to express pomegranates and how do you know that this is the ruling of the rabbis perhaps it is our Judah's view even granted that it is our Judah's when have you heard our Judah to permit the juice when it exudes of itself have you heard him to rule that we may express it at the very outset but what you must answer is since they are not intended for pressing it is permitted even at the outset consequently even if it is assumed to be the ruling of the rabbis since they are not intended for pressing it is permitted at the very Outset hence it follows that this agrees with the rabbis too this proves that the household of Manasia B. Menahem used to express pomegranates are and said the halachah is in accordance with the household of Manasia B. Menahem said Rabbah to Arnaman was then Manasia B. Menahem atana and should you say that you mean the halachah is as this tana because he agrees with the practice of Manasia B. Menahem just because he agrees with Manasia B. Menahem the halachah is as he does Manasia B. Menahem. Represent the majority of people yes for we learned if one maintains thorns in a vineyard our Eliezer said they are forbidden but the sages maintained only that the like of which is normally kept creates an interdict now our utensils which can serve the liquid it is regarded as exuding with his desire even where he said nothing Hannah said what is our Eliezer's reason because in Arabia the thorns of fields are kept for the camels how compare Arabia is a whole region but here his practice counts as not in relation to that of all other people rather this is the reason as our histah for our histah said if beets are expressed and the juice poured into a mikwe it renders a mikwe unfit on account of changed appearance but these are not normally expressed what you must then answer is that since he assigned value there to it ranks as liquid so here too since one assigns a value there to it ranks as a liquid our papa said the reason is that it is something wherewith a mikwe may not be made in the first place and everything wherewith a mikwe may not be made in the first place renders a mikwe unfit through changed appearance we learned elsewhere if wine vinegar or secretion of olives falls there in a mikwe and changes its appearance it is unfit which tana holds that secretion of olives is a liquid said abay it is our jacob for it was taught our jacob said the secretion is as a liquid and why did they the sages rule the secretion which exudes at the beginning is clean because one does not desire to keep it. Our Simeon said secretion is not as a liquid, and why did they rule the secretion that exudes from the bale made up for the press is unclean because it cannot but contain particles of diluted oil wherein do they differ? They differ in respect to what uses after the olives have been subject to their own pressure. Rabbi said the reason is because it is something where Abamikwe may not be made, and such renders Amikwe unfit through change of color. Rab Judah said in Samuel's name one may squeeze out a cluster of grapes into a pot, but not into a plate. Our Hista observed from our master's words we may learn that one may milk a goat into a pot of food, but not into a plate. This proves that he holds a liquid that unites with a solid food stuff is accounted a food stuff. Rami Biham objected if a milk to goat the milk is unclean, but if you say a liquid that unites with a solid food stuff is a food stuff whereby did it become susceptible as our Yohanan said. Elsewhere by the drop of milk smeared on the nipple, so here too by the drop smeared on the nipple, Robin objected if a person unclean through a corpse squeezes out olives or grapes Talmud, moss should bath exactly as much as an egg in quantity, it is clean, hence if more than an egg in quantity, if the juice is unclean, but if you say a liquid that unites with a solid food stuff is a food stuff whereby did it become susceptible, he raised the objection and he himself answered it, it refers to squeezing out into a plate, our Jeremiah said this is dependent on tanaim, if one smooths the surface of dough with grapes, grape juice, it does not become susceptible to defilement, our Judah maintained it is made susceptible, do they not differ in this one master holds a liquid that unites with a solid food stuff is a food stuff, while the other master holds that it is not a food stuff, said our papa all hold a liquid that unites with a food stuff is not a food stuff, but here they differ in respect. Of a liquid that will eventually be destroyed, one master holds it is accounted a liquid, while the other master holds it is not a liquid, and they differ in the same controversy as that of these tanaim. For it was taught if one splits olives with unclean hands, they are rendered susceptible if in order to salt them, they are not rendered susceptible if in order to know whether the olives are right for gathering or not, they do not become susceptible. Our Judah said they do become susceptible now. Surely they differ in this viz. One master holds a liquid that stands to be destroyed is accounted a liquid, while the other master holds that it is not a liquid, said Arhuna, the son of our Joshua. These latter tanaim indeed differ in respect of a liquid that stands to be destroyed, while the former tanaim differ in respect of liquid whose purpose is to polish the dough. Our Zara said in our high B. Ashi's name in Rab's name, a man may squeeze a bunch of grapes into a pot of food, but not into it. Plate, but one may squeeze a fish for its brine even into a plate. Now Ardimi sat and stated this ruling said of A to Ardimi, you recite it in Rab's name, hence it presents no difficulty to you, but we recite it in Samuel's name, so it presents a difficulty to us. Did Samuel say one may squeeze a fish for its brine even into a plate? Surely it was stated if one presses out pickled preserves, Rab said if for their own sake it is permitted, if for their fluid he is not culpable, nevertheless it is forbidden, but with boiled preserves, whether for their own sake or for their fluid it is permitted, while Samuel ruled both with pickled preserves and boiled preserves, if for their own sake it is permitted, if for their fluid he is not culpable, yet it is forbidden by God, replied he, mine eyes have beheld and not a stranger, I heard it from our Jeremiah's mouth and our Jeremiah from our Zara and our Zara from our high B. Ashi and our high B. Ashi from Rab to turn to the main text if one presses out pickled. Preserves Rab said if for their own sake it is permitted if for their fluid he is not culpable nevertheless it is forbidden but with boiled preserves whether for their own sake or for their fluid it is permitted while Samuel ruled both with pickled preserves and boiled preserves if for their own sake it is permitted if for their fluid he is not culpable yet it is forbidden our Yohanan said both with pickled and boiled preserves if for their own sake it is permitted if for their fluid he is liable to a sin offering an objection is raised one may squeeze pickled preserves on the Sabbath for the requirements of the Sabbath but not against the termination of the Sabbath but one must not express olives and grapes and if he does he is liable to a sin offering this is a difficulty according to Rab Samuel and our Yohanan Rab reconciles it with his view Samuel with his and our Yohanan with his Rab reconciles it with his view one may squeeze pickled preserves on the Sabbath for the Requirements of the Sabbath, but not against the termination of the Sabbath. When is the said when it is done for their own sake? But if for their fluid he is not culpable, yet it is forbidden. While as for boiled preserves, whether done for their own sake or for their fluid, it is permitted. But one must not express olives and grapes. And if he does, he is liable to a sin offering. Samuel explains it according to his view. One may squeeze pickled preserves on the Sabbath for the requirements of the Sabbath, and the same applies to boiled preserves. When is the said when it is for their own sakes? But if for their fluid he is not culpable, yet it is forbidden. And one must not express olives and grapes. And if he does, he is liable to a sin offering. Our Yohanan explains it according to his view. One may squeeze pickled preserves for the requirements of the Sabbath, but not against the termination of the Sabbath. This applies to both pickled and boiled preserves. When is that
Observe, does he come to inform us of another person said Abbe to him he comes to tell us much for if we learn from our mission alone I would argue only there is it but since it the honey was a solid foodstuff originally and is now a foodstuff but here that they the grapes etc were originally a foodstuff but now a fluid I would say it is not so hence he informs us otherwise Mishnah whatever was put into hot water before the Sabbath may be steeped again in hot water on it. Sabbath but whatever was not put into hot water before the Sabbath may only be rinsed with hot water on the Sabbath except old salted pickled fish small salted fish and the coleus of the Spaniards because their rinsing completes their preparation tomorrow what for example our Safra said e.g. our Abbas Fal S. our Safra also said I once paid a visit their Palestine and ate their oven but for our Abba who made me drink wine of three foliages I would have been in danger are you had expectorated at the mention of Babylonian Qutah said our Joseph then we Babylonians should expectorate at our Abbas Fal moreover our Gaza has related I once paid a visit there in Palestine and prepared some Babylonian Qutah and all the invalids of the West Palestine asked me for it whatever was not put into hot water etc what if one does rinse them our Joseph said if one rinses them he incurs a sin offering Mar the son of Robin said we too learned thus except old salted pickled fish and the coleus of it. Spaniards because their rinsing completes their preparation this proves that our high Abba and RC were sitting before our Yohanan while our Yohanan was sitting and dozing now our high Abba asked RC why are the fowls in Babylonia fat go to the wilderness of Gaza replied he and I will show you fatter ones why are the festivals in Babylon so joyous because they its inhabitants are poor why are the scholars in Babylonia distinguished in dress because they are not well learned why are idolaters lustful because they eat abominable and creeping things our Yohanan awoke thereat and said to them children did I not this teach you say unto wisdom thou art my sister if the matter is as clear to thee as that thy sister is interdicted to thee say it but if not do not say it said they to him and let the master tell us some of these why are the fowls of Babylonia fat because they were not sent into exile as it is said Moab hath been at ease from his youth and he hath settled on his Least neither hath he gone into capacity therefore his taste remaineth in him and his scent is not changed and how do we know that they suffered exile here in Palestine because it was taught our Judah said for fifty two years no man passed through Judea as it is said for the mountains will I take up a weeping and wailing and for the pastures of the wilderness a lamentation because they are burned up so that none passeth through both the fowl of the heavens and the beast behemoth are fled they. Our God the numerical value of behemoth is fifty two our Jacob said in our Yohanan's name they all returned save the coleus of the Spaniards for rap said the water courses of Babylonia carry back the water to the fountain of Etam but these coleus since their spine is not firm could not go up why are the festivals in Babylonia joyous because they were not subject to that curse whereof it is written I will also cause all her mirth to cease her feasts her new moons her sabbaths and all her solemn. Assemblies and it is written your new moons and your appointed feasts my soul hate they are a trouble unto me what does they are a trouble unto me mean said our Eliezer the Holy One blessed be he saith not enough is it for Israel that they sinned before me but that they trouble me to know which evil decree I am to bring upon them our Isaac said there is no single festival when troops did not come to Sephoris our Hannah said there is no single festival when there did not come to Tiberias a general with his sweet and centurions why are the scholars of Babylonia distinguished in dress because they are not in their original homes as people say in my own town my name is sufficient away from home my dress in days to come shall Jacob take root Israel shall blossom Yazis and Budyapara our Joseph recited this refers to scholars in Babylonia who read blossoms scissors and flowers prahim around the Torah why are idolaters lustful because they did not stand at Mount Sinai for when Talmud, Mosh of Bath of the serpent came upon Evie injected a lust into her as for the Israelites who stood at Mount Sinai their lustfulness departed the idolaters who did not stand at Mount Sinai their lustfulness did not depart our Ahasan of Rabbah asked our Ashi what about proselytes though they were not present their guiding stars were present as it is written neither with you only do I make this covenant and this oath but with him that standeth here with us this day before the Lord our God and also with him that is not here with us this day now he differs from our Abu Bikahana for our Abu Bikahana said until three generations a lustful strain did not disappear from our patriarchs Abraham begot Ishmael Isaac begot Esau but Jacob begot the twelve tribes in whom there was no taint whatsoever Mishnah one may break open a cask in order to eat raisins thereof provided that he does not design making a utensil and one may not perforate the bung of a cask this is our Judah's ruling. But the sages permit it and one must not pierce it at the side thereof while if it is perforated one must not place wax upon it because he crushes it. Our Judah said such an incident came before our Yohanan Bezakai in Arab and he said I fear on his account that he may be liable to a sin offering tomorrow. Our Ashai said they learned this only of pressed raisins but not when they are loose apart but not if they are loose apart an objection is raised. Our Simeon Begamaliel said one may bring a cask of wine strike off its head with a sword and place it before guests on the Sabbath and he need have no fear that is according to the rabbis our mission is according to our Nehemiah now what compels our Ashai to establish our mission as agreeing with our Nehemiah so that it refers to pressed raisins let him explain it as referring to loose raisins and in agreement with the rabbi said rabbi our mission presents a difficulty to him why particularly teach raisins let him attend a teach. Fruit hence it follows thence that the reference is to press raisins one buried the taught one may untie unravel or cut through the wicker wrappers of raisins and dates another was taught one may untie but not unravel or cut there is no difficulty one agrees with the rabbis the other with our Nehemiah for it was taught our Nehemiah said even a spoon even a rope and even a knife may be handled only when required for their usual function our she's hate was asked what about piercing a cask with a spit on the sabbath does he intend making an opening so it is forbidden or perhaps his intention is to be generous and it is permitted he intends making an opening replied he and it is forbidden an objection is raised our Simeon Begamaliel said one may bring a cask of wine and strike off its head with a sword there his intention is certainly to be generous but here if he really means to be generous let him open it one may not perforate the bung etc our said the controversy is in Respect of a hole at the top, but all agree that it is forbidden at the side, and thus he teaches one must not pierce it at the side thereof. But our histah maintained the controversy is in respect of a hole at the side, but all agree that it is permitted on the top, and as to what he teaches one must not pierce it at the side thereof. There it refers to the cask itself. Our rabbis taught one may not pierce a new hole on the Sabbath, but if one comes to add, he may add, but some say one may not add, but they all agree that one may pierce an old hole at the very outset. Now, as to the first tan over, and does it differ from boring a new hole which may not be done, presumably because an opening is thereby effected, then in adding to an opening is improved, effected, said rabbi by the words of the Torah. Every opening which is not made for putting in and taking out is not an opening, and it was the rabbis who forbade it on account of the ventilation of a handcoop which is made to permit it. Fresh air to enter and the fumes to pass out hence if one comes to add he may add for in the handcoop one will certainly not come to add Talmud, Moth should bath be on account of insects yet some say one may not add sometimes one may not make it the hole properly in the first place and so come to enlarge it our nomin lectured on the authority of our Yohan and the Holochagas as some maintain but they all agree that you may pierce an old hole at the very outset Rav Judah said in Samuel's name they learnt this only where it was done in order to conserve the fragrance but if in order to strengthen it the casket is forbidden how is it when it is to conserve and how is it when meant to strengthen said our histog if it is above the level of the wine its purpose is to conserve it below the top of the wine its purpose is to strengthen Rav said if below the top of the wine that too is to conserve and how is it to strengthen e.g. if it was pierced below the leaves Abbe said to Rab is something which supports you was taught a closed house has four cubits if one had broken open its door frame it does not receive four cubits a closed house room does not defile all around it if he had broken through the door frame it defiles all around it the insertion of a tube rap forbids while Samuel permits as for cutting it in the first place all agree that it is forbidden again all agree that replacing it is permitted they differ only where it is cut but not made to measure. He who forbids its insertion holds that we preventively prohibit
are lying about to wear linen sheets wrapped forbids while Samuel permits of soft ones all agree that it is permitted in the case of hard ones all agree that it is forbidden they differ in respect of medium ones he who forbids holds that they look like a burden while he who permits holds that they do not look like a burden now this view of Rab was stated not explicitly but by inference for Rab visited a certain place where he had no room so he went out and sat in a caramel of linen sheets were brought him but he did not sit upon them he who saw this thought that it was because linen sheets are forbidden yet that is not so for Rab had indeed announced that linen sheets are permitted but he did not sit on them out of respect for our masters and who are they are Kahana and Arasim a dish may be placed in a pit for it to be guarded and wholesome water into noisome water for it to be cooled or cold water in the sun for it to be heated if one's garments fall into water on the road he may walk in them without fear when he reaches the outermost courtyard he may spread them out in the sun but not inside of the people tomorrow but it is obvious you might say let us preventively forbid it on account of the leveling of depressions hence he the tana informs us otherwise and wholesome water etc it is obvious the second clause is required or cold water in the sun etc that too is obvious you might say let us preventively forbid it lest he come to put it Away in hot ashes, therefore he teaches us otherwise if one's garments drop, etc. Rab Judah said in Rab's name, wherever the sages forbade ought for appearance sake, it is forbidden even in the innermost chambers. We learned he may spread them out in the sun, but not inside of the people. It is a controversy of Tanaim, for it was taught he may spread them out in the sun, but not inside of the people. Our Eliezer and our Simeon forbid it, our Huna said Talmud, Mosh Bath, if one shakes out his cloak on the Sabbath, he is liable to a sin offering. Now we said this only of new ones, but in the case of old ones, we have not against it, and this is said only of black ones, but in the case of white or red ones, we have not against it. But in any case, there is no culpability unless he is particular about them. Will visit Pumatai, the seeing the scholars shaking their garments, he observed the scholars are desecrating the Sabbath, said Rab Judah to them, shake them in his presence for we. Are not particular at all about the clothes. Abbe was standing before our Joseph said he to him, Give me my hat, seeing some do upon it. He hesitated to give it to him, shake it and throw it off. He directed, For we are not particular at all. Our Isaac B. Joseph said in our Yohanan's name, If one goes out on the Sabbath with a cloak folded up and lying on his shoulders, he is liable to a sin offering. It was taught likewise clothes vendors who go out on the Sabbath with cloaks folded up and lying on their shoulders are liable to a sin offering. And they the sages said this not of clothes vendors alone, but of all men, but that it is the nature of merchants to go out thus again. If a shopkeeper goes out with coins bound up in his wrapper, he is liable to a sin offering. And they said this not of a shopkeeper alone, but of all men, but that it is a shopkeeper's nature to go out thus and runners may go out with the scarfs on their shoulders. And they said this not of runners alone, but of all men, but that it is the nature of runners to go out thus our Judah said it once happened that Harkness son of our Eliezer B. Harkness went out on the Sabbath with the scarf on his shoulder but that a thread thereof was wound round his finger but when the matter came before the sages they said it is permitted even if a thread is not wound about one's finger our nom and B. R. Histah lectured in our Histah's name the Halachah is that it is permissible even if a thread is not wound about his finger Ola visited the Academy of a sea behind I and was asked is it permitted to make a marzave on the Sabbath said he to them thus did our Eliezer say it is forbidden to make a marzave on the Sabbath what is a marzave said Arzera the capes worn by Babylonian women our Jeremiah was sitting before Arzera and asked him how is it thus it is forbidden replied he and how is it thus it is forbidden replied he or Papa said adopt this general rule whatever is done with the intention of gathering it the skirts up is forbidden. Whatever is for adornment is permitted just as our Shisha son of Aridi used to adorn himself with his cloak when Ardimi came he said on one occasion Rabbi went out into the field with the two ends of his cloak lying on his shoulder thereupon Joshua Bezirus the son of Armadir's father-in-law said to him did not Armadir declare one liable to a sin offering in such a case was Armadir so very particular he explained so Rabbi let his cloak fall when Rabin came he said it was not Joshua Bezirus but Joshua Bekapuze I Arakiba son-in-law said he did not Arakiba declare one liable to a sin offering in such a case was Arakiba so very particular he explained so Rabbi let his cloak fall when our Samuel B. R. Judah came he said it was stated that this question was asked Mishnah if one bathes in the water of a pit or in the water of Tiberias and dries himself even with ten towels he must not fetch them in his hand but ten men may dry their faces hands and feet on one towel and fetch it in there. Hence one may oil and lightly massage the body but not knead or scrape you must not go down to a wrestling ground or induce vomiting or straighten an infant eslims or set a broken bone if one's hand or foot is dislocated he must not agitate it violently in cold water but may bathe it in the usual way and if it heals it heals gamara the water of a pit is taught analogous to the water of Tiberias just as the water of Tiberias is hot so by the water of a pit hot water is meant and furthermore it states if one bathes only if it is done but not at the outset hence Talmud, Mosh of bath be sousing the whole body is well permitted even at the very outset who is the authority for this it is our Simeon for it was taught a man must not souse the whole of his body either with hot or with cold water this is our Meir's view but our Simeon permits it our Judah said it is forbidden with hot water but permitted with cold and dries himself even with ten towels the first clause informs us of the most surprising ruling and the second clause informs us of the most surprising ruling the first clause informs us of the most surprising ruling even these which do not contain much water are forbidden for since there is only one person he will come to ring it out and the second clause informs us of the most surprising ruling even these though they contain very much water are permitted for since there are many they will remind each other our rabbis taught a man may dry himself with a towel and place it on the windowsill but he must not give it to the bath attendants because they are suspected of that thing our Simeon said one may dry himself with one towel and bring it home a ask our joseph what is the law said he to him lo there is our Simeon lo there is rabbi lo there is samuel lo there is our yohanan our Simeon, as we have stated rabbi for it was taught rabbi said when we learned torah at our Simeon's academy into coat we used to carry up oil and towels from the courtyard too the roof and from the roof to an enclosure until we came to the fountain where we bathed Samuel for Rab Judah said in Samuel's name a person may dry himself with a towel and carry it home wrap round his hand our Yohanan for our high B Abba said in our Yohanan's name the Halachah is a person may dry himself with a towel and carry it home wrap round his hand yet did our Yohanan say thus surely our Yohanan said the Halachah is as an anonymous mission whereas we learned and dries himself even with ten towels he must not fetch them in his hand he recited this as Ben Hakan A.I.S. our high B Abba said in our Yohanan's name the bath attendants may bring women's bathing clothes to the baths providing that they cover their heads and the greater part of their bodies in the mess for a seventh our high B Abba said in our Yohanan's name one must tie its two bottom ends our high B Abba also said in our Yohanan's name that means below the shoulders Rabba said to the citizens of Mahosa when you carry the Apparel of the troops let them drop below your shoulders one may oil and lightly massage the body our rabbis taught one may oil and massage the bowels of an invalid on the Sabbath provided this is not done as on weekdays how then shall it be done our Hamas son of our Hananah said they must first be oiled and then massage our Yohanan said the oiling and massaging must be done simultaneously but one may not need our high B Abba said in our Yohanan's name one may not stand on the mud of Diomseth because it stimulates the body and loosens the bowels Rab Judah said in Rab's name the complete period of Diomseth is 21 days and Pentecost is included the scholars asked does Pentecost belong to this end or to that end come and here for Samuel said all potions medicines taken between Passover and Pentecost are beneficial perhaps that is only there where it is beneficial only as long as the weather is cold but here it is on account of the heat so when the weather is warm it is even more beneficial our Helbo said the wine of Paragitha and the water of Diomseth cut off the ten tribes from Israel our Eliezer Birak visited that place he was attracted to them and in consequence his learning vanished when he returned he arose to read in the scroll of the Torah he wished to read Heodesh
waiter to him and said, Go and seize him. So he went and seized him. When he Rab appeared, he found him. Rab Judah lecturing, One may not reset a fracture, said he to him. Thus did our Hannah of Baghdad say in Samuel's name, The Halisha is that one may reset a fracture, said he to him. Surely Hannah is one of ours, and Samuel is one of ours. Yet I have not heard this. Did I then not summon you justly if one's hand is dislocated, etc.? Our we was sitting before our Joseph when his hand became dislocated. How is it? Thus asked he, it is forbidden, and how is it thus it is forbidden? In the meantime, his hand reset itself, said he to him, What is your question? Surely we learned if one's hand or foot is dislocated, he must not agitate it violently in cold water, but may bathe it in the usual way, and if it heals, it heals. But did we not learn one may not reset a fracture? He retorted, Yet our Hannah of Baghdad said in Samuel's name, The Halisha is that one may reset a fracture. Will you weave all in one web? He replied, Where? It was stated, it was stated, but where it was not stated, it was not stated. C-H-A-P-T-E-R-X-X-I-I mission. A man may borrow pictures of wine and pictures of oil from his neighbor, provided he does not say to him, Lend them hell we need to me. And similarly, a woman may borrow loaves from her neighbor. If he does not trust him, he leaves his cloak with him as a pledge and makes a reckoning with him after the Sabbath. In the same way, if the eve of Passover in Jerusalem falls on a Sabbath, one leaves his cloak with him, the vendor, and receives his paschal lamb and makes a reckoning with him after the festival. G-E-M-A-R-A, Rabbi, son of Arhain, and asked Abbe, wherein does hell we need differ from Hashalni? In the case of Hashalni, he replied, he, the lender, will not come to write it down, whereas if he says hell we need, he will come to write it down. But since on weekdays it sometimes happens that one wishes to say hell we need, but says Hashalni, yet he is not particular and comes to write it down, so on the Sabbath too he may come to write it down on the Sabbath he replied since the rabbis permitted Hashalni only but not Halwini the matter is distinguishable and he will not come to write Rabbi son of Arhain and said to Abbe consider the rabbi said regarding all actions on festivals as far as it is possible to vary we vary them and the women who fill their pitchers on festivals why do they not vary their way of doing it because it is impossible how should they do it shall those who usually draw water with a large pitcher now draw it with a small pitcher then they increase the amount of walking shall those who usually draw water with a small pitcher now draw it with a large one then they increase the burden Talmud Mosh of Bath B shall one spread a cloth then he may come to wring it out shall one cover it with a lid at the string wherewith it is tied may break and he will come to knot it therefore it is impossible Rabbi son of Arhain and also said to Abbe we learned one must not clap the hands, beat the breast, or dance on festivals, yet we see that they do it and do not rebuke them in any way. Then, on your reasoning, when Rabbi said a man should not sit on the top of a stake lest an article roll away from him and he come to fetch it, yet we see women who carry pictures and sit at the entrance of alleys, and we do not rebuke them, but leave Israel better that they should sin in ignorance than deliberately. Now he understood from this that that principle holds good only in respect of rabbinical enactments, but not scriptural laws, yet that is not so. There is no difference between a rabbinical and a scriptural law for lo, the addition to the day of atonement is scriptural, yet we see them women eat and drink until it is dark and do not rebuke them, and similarly, a woman may borrow loaves from her neighbor, etc. Only on the Sabbath is it forbidden, but on weekdays it is well. Shall we say that our mission does not agree with Hillel, for we learned. And thus Hillel used to say a woman must not lend a loaf to her neighbor without first valuing it lest we advances and they the lender and the borrower come to transgress the prohibition of usury you may even say that it agrees with Hillel the one is in a place where its value is fixed the other where its value is not fixed if he does not trust him it was stated as for a loan made on a festival our Joseph said it cannot be claimed whilst Rabbi said it can be claimed our Joseph said it cannot be claimed for if you say that it can be claimed he the lender will come to record it Rabbi said it can be claimed for if you say that it cannot he will not lend him and so he will come to abstain from the joy of the festival we learned if he does not trust him he leaves his cloak with him now it is well if you say that it cannot be claimed therefore he must leave his cloak with him and make a reckoning with him after the Sabbath but if you say that it can be claimed why must he leave his cloak with him, let him lend it, and then redash claim it. He says, I do not wish to stand at court, and before judges are EDB of an objective, if one kills a cow and apportions it on New Year, then if the month was prolonged, it cancels the debt, but if not, it does not cancel the debt, but if it cannot be claimed, what does it cancel? There it is different because it is retrospectively revealed that it was a week they come and hear a refutation from the second clause, but if not, it does not cancel. The debt now it is well if you say that it can be claimed, hence he teaches that it does not cancel the debt, but if you say that it cannot be claimed, then what is meant by it does not cancel the debt that if he the debtor pays him, he accepts it whence it follows that the first clause means that even if he pays him, he must not accept in the first clause, he must tell him I'll release it while in the second he need not say I'll release it as we learned if one repays a debt in the seventh year. He the creditor must tell him I release it, but if he the debtor replies I repay, even so he may accept it from him, for it is said, and this is the word of the release. Are we used to take a pledge? Rabbi had recourse to an artifice in the same way of the eve of Passover, etc. Our Yohan said one may sanctify his Passover sacrifice on the Sabbath and his festival sacrifice on the festival. Shall we say that we can support him in the same way of the eve of Passover in Jerusalem falls on a Sabbath? One leaves his cloak with him and receives his paschal lamb and makes a reckoning with him after the festival. No, we treat here of one who assigns shares to others together with himself in his Passover sacrifice so that it stands sanctified from before. But we learned one may not enroll to share in an animal on the festival in the first place. Here it is different since he is a habitué of his. It is as though he had enrolled for it beforehand. But Arashai taught a man can go to a Shepherd to whom he is accustomed to go and he gives him a sheep for his Passover sacrifice and he sanctifies it and fulfills his obligation there with there too since he is accustomed to go to him he the shepherd does indeed sanctify it beforehand but he states he sanctifies it the sanctification is a rabbinical preferment but did our Yohanan say thus surely our Yohanan said the Halisha is always as an anonymous mission whereas we learned one may not sanctify vow evaluation devote or separate to room and tithes all these were said of festivals and how much more so of the Sabbath there is no difficulty one refers to obligatory offerings for which there is a fixed time the other refers to obligations for which there is no fixed time mission a man may count his guests and his dainty portions by word of mouth but not from writing a man may cast lots with his sons and the members of his household for the table provided that he does not intend to offset a large portion against a small one and priests may cast lots for sacrifices on festivals but not for the portions Talmud, Mosh of Bath what is the reason RBB said it is a preventive measure lest he erase Abbe said it is a preventive measure lest he read wherein do they differ they differ where it is written high up on the wall according to him who says lest he erase we do not fear but according to him who says lest he read secular documents we do fear now as to him who says lest he erase let us fear lest he read secular documents moreover have we no fear that he may erase surely we learned one may not read by the light of a lamp whereon Rabbi said even if it is as high as twice a man's stature even if it is as high as the measurement of two ox goats or even as ten houses on top of each other he must not read rather they differ where it is written on the wall and is low down according to him who says lest he erase we fear but according to him who says lest he read secular Documents we do not fear for one will not confuse a wall with a document now according to him who says lest he read etc. Let us fear lest he erase rather they differ where it is engraved on a tablet or a board on the view that it is lest he erase we have no fear but on the view that it is lest he read we do fear but according to him who says lest he erase let us fear lest he read etc. And should you answer a tablet or a board cannot be confused with a document surely it was taught a man. May count how many shall be within and how many without and how many portions he is to set before them from writing on a wall but not from writing on a tablet or a board how is it meant shall we say that it is indeed written wherein does one differ from the other hence it must surely mean that it is engraved yet he states from writing on the wall but not from writing on a tablet or a board rather say thus in truth they differ where it is written high up on the wall and as for your
Samuels name the members of the company who are particular with each other transgress the prohibitions of measure weight number borrowing and repaying on the festival Talmud, Moshe Bath B and according to Beth Hillel usury too if so the same applies to his sons and household as for his sons and household this is the reason as Rab Judah said in Rab's name for Rab Judah said in Rab's name one may lend to his sons and household on interest in order to give them experience thereof if so a large portion set off against a small portion should be permitted to that indeed is so and there is a lacuna while it is thus taught a man may cast lots for his sons and household for the table even setting a large portion against a small portion what is the reason as Rab Judah asked in Rab's name yet only for his sons and household but not for strangers what is the reason as Rab Judah asked in Samuel's name further setting a large portion against a small portion is Forbidden even on weekdays in the case of strangers what is the reason on account of gambling and priests may cast lots for etc. What does but not for the portions mean said are Jacob the son of the daughter of Jacob but one must not cast lots for the portions of weekday sacrifices on the festivals that is obvious you might argue since it is written for that people are like the priests that quarrel even the portions of weekdays too therefore he informs us that it is not so are Jacob son of Jacob's daughter also said he through whom his neighbor is punished is not permitted to enter within the barrier precincts of the Holy One blessed be he how do we know this shall we say because it is written and the Lord said who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead and one said on this matter and another said on that matter and there came forth a spirit and stood before the Lord and said I will persuade him and he said I will go forth and be a lying spirit in the Mouth of all his prophets, and he the Lord said, Thou shalt entice him and shall prevail. Also go forth and do so. Now we discuss what spirit is meant, and are Yohanan answered the spirit of Naboth the Jezreelite, and what does go forth mean said Rab go forth from within my precincts, but perhaps there this is the reason is because it is written he that speak falsehood shall not be established before my eyes again if it is derived from here thou art filled with shame for glory, drink thou. Also and be as one uncircumcised, etc. And it is maintained thou art filled with shame for glory refers to Nebuchadnezzar, whilst drink thou also and be as one uncircumcised refers to Zedekiah. One objection is that the whole verse is written in reference to Nebuchadnezzar, and further what could the righteous Zedekiah have done to him for Rab Judah said in Rab's name when that wicked man Nebuchadnezzar wished to do thus to that righteous man Zedekiah, etc. Rather it follows from this also. To punish the righteous is not good now is not good can mean not but that he is evil and it is written for thou art a god that hath no pleasure in wickedness evil shall not sojourn with thee which means thou art righteous therefore evil shall not sojourn in thy habitation how is it implied that Halashim connotes lots because it is written how art thou fallen from heaven O day star son of the morning how art thou cut down to the ground thou whole who didst cast lots over the nations etc. Rabbi son of Arhuna said this teaches that he Nebuchadnezzar cast lots over the royal chiefs to ascertain whose turn it was for Pederasti and it is written all the kings of the nations all of them sleep in glory etc. Arhuna said that means that they rested from Pederasti Arhuna also said as long as that wicked man lived mirth was never heard in the mouth of any living being for it is written the whole world is at rest and is quiet they break forth into singing whence it follows. That hitherto there was no singing, our Isaac also said in our Yohanan's name, one may not stand in that wicked man's palace, for it is said, and Satyrs shall dance there. Rab Judah said in Rab's name, when that wicked man Nebuchadnezzar wished to treat that righteous one, Zedekiah, thus his member was extended three hundred cubits and magged in front of the whole company of captive kings, for it is said, Thou art filled with shame for glory, drink thou also, and be as one uncircumcised. He the numerical value of Orel is three hundred. Rab Judah also said in Rab's name, when that wicked man descended to Gehenna, all who had previously descended thither trembled, saying, Does he come to rule over us, or to be as weak as we are? For it is said, Art thou also become weak as we were, art thou to rule over us? A heavenly echo went forth and declared, Whom dost thou pass in beauty, go down with and be thou laid with the uncircumcised? How hath the oppressor ceased the golden city, he beseased? Rab Judah said in Rab's name, This people have ceased that demanded Talmud, Moshe Batha measure out tribute and bring it to us. Others interpret that demanded bring ever more and more without measure, and excellent greatness was added to me. Rab Judah said in our Jeremiah B. Abba's name, This teaches that he rode upon a male lion to whose head he had tied a snake for reins in fulfillment of what is said, and the beast of the field also have I given him to serve him. Mission a man must not hire laborers on the Sabbath, nor instruct his neighbor to hire laborers on his behalf. One must not go to the Tehom to await nightfall in order to hire laborers or bring in produce, but one may do so in order to wash his field, and then he can bring home produce with him. Abbas all stated a general principle, whatever I have a right to instruct that it be done, I am permitted to go to await nightfall for it at the Tehom tomorrow, wherein does he differ from his neighbor, said our Papa a Gentile. Neighbor is meant our Ashi demur surely in order to a Gentile is forbidden as a Shabbat rather said our Ashi one may even say that an Israelite neighbor is meant yet he the Tana informs us this one may not say to his neighbor hire laborers for me but one may say to his neighbor well we shall see whether you join me in the evening and with whom does our mission agree with our Joshua B. Karha for it was taught one must not say to his neighbor well we shall see whether you join me in the evening our Joshua B. Karha said one may say to his neighbor well we shall see whether you join me in the evening Rabbi Barhana said in our Yohanan's name the Halachah is as our Joshua B. Karha Rabbi Barhana also said in our Yohanan's name what is our Judah B. Karha's reason because it is written nor finding thine own pleasure nor speaking thine own words explicit speech is forbidden but thought is permitted our Ahasan of Arhuna pointed out a contradiction to Rabbi did our Yohanan say Speech is forbidden, thought is permitted, which shows that thought is not the same as speech, but surely Rabbi Barhana said in our Yohanan's name, one may meditate on learning everywhere except at the baths or in the privy there it is different because the fulfillment of and thy camp shall be holy is required, which is absent, but it is also written that he see no indecent speech dabar in thee that is required for Rab Judah as dictum for Rab Judah said one may not recite the Shema in the presence of a naked heathen, why particularly a heathen, even an Israelite too, he proceeds to a climax, it is superfluous to state that it is forbidden in the presence of a naked Israelite, but as for a heathen, since it is written of him whose flesh is the flesh of asses, I might say that it is permitted, therefore he tells us otherwise, yet perhaps that indeed is so scripture said, and they saw not their father's nakedness now is speech forbidden, surely are his and our on both set accounts. In connection with religion may be calculated discussed on the Sabbath and our Eliezer said one may determine charity grants to the poor on the Sabbath again our Jacob B.E.D. said in our Yohanan's name one may supervise matters of life and death and matters of communal urgency on the Sabbath and one may go to the synagogues to attend to communal affairs on the Sabbath also our Samuel B. Namani said in our Yohanan's name one may go to theaters and circuses and basilicas to attend to communal affairs on the Sabbath further the school of Manasseh taught one may make arrangements on the Sabbath for the betrothal of young girls and the elementary education of a child and to teach him a trade scripture Seth nor finding thine own affairs nor speaking thine own words thine affairs are forbidden the affairs of heaven religious matters are permitted Rab Judah said in Samuel's name unimportant accounts and past expenditure accounts may be calculated on the Sabbath it was taught likewise one may not Calculate past or future accounts but accounts of unimportance Talmud, Mosh of B or a past expenditure may be calculated but the following contradicts it one may reckon up accounts that are not required but one may not reckon up on the Sabbath accounts that are necessary e.g. a man may say to his neighbor I hired so many laborers for this field I expended so many denarii for this residence but he must not say to him I have expended so much and am yet to expend so much then according to your reasoning that Beretha itself presents a difficulty but in the one case he is still in possession of his employees wages in the other he is not in possession of his employees wages one must not go to the Tehom to await nightfall our rabbis taught it once happened that a breach was made in the field of a pious man and he decided to fence it about when he recalled that it was the Sab
Sabbath in the case of a corpse too it is conceivable where the purpose is to cut out shrouds for him but one may go to the Tihum to await nightfall etc. Though he did not recite Havdalah surely our Eliezer B. Antigona said on our Eliezer B. Jacob's authority one is forbidden to attend to his affairs before reciting Havdalah and should you answer that he recites Havdalah in the prayer surely Rab Judah said in Samuel's name he who recites Havdalah in the prayer must also recite it over a cup of wine and should you answer that he does recite Havdalah over a cup it may be asked is a cup procurable in the fields our Nathan B. M. I explained this before Rabbi they learned this of the season of wine pressing our Abba said to our Ashi in the West Palestine we say thus he who makes a distinction between holy and profane and then we attend to our affairs our Ashi related when I was at Arkahana's academy he used to recite who makes a distinction between holy and profane and then we chopped up. Logs Abbasal stated a general principle whatever I have etc. to what does Abbasal refer shall we say that he refers to the first clause is one must not go to the Tihum to await nightfall in order to hire laborers or bring in produce Talmud, Mosh should bathe then instead of whatever I have a right to instruct that it be done I am permitted to await nightfall for IT he should state whatever I have no right to instruct that it be done I am not permitted to await nightfall for it whereas if he bases himself on the second clause but one may do so in order to watch over his fields and then he can bring home produce with him then he should state whatever I have a right to await nightfall at the Tihum I am permitted to instruct that it be done in truth he refers to the second clause but Abbasal bases himself on the following for Rab Judah said in Samuel's name one may say to his neighbor watch for me over the fruit in your Tihum and I will watch for you over the fruit. In my Tihum and thus Abbasal argues with the first Tana do you not admit that one may say to his neighbor watch for me over the fruit in your Tihum and I will watch for you over the fruit in my Tihum and say whatever I have a right to instruct that it be done I am permitted to await nightfall for IT what does the general principle add it adds the following which our rabbis taught one may not go to the Tihum to await nightfall in order to bring an animal if it is standing without the Tihum one may call it and it comes Abbasal stated a general principle whatever I have a right to say that it shall be done I am permitted to await nightfall at the Tihum for it and one may go to await nightfall in order to attend to the affairs of a bride or of a corpse to bring a coffin and shrouds for him and one may give instructions to another go to such and such a place and if you cannot obtain them from there bring them from elsewhere if you cannot obtain them for a may not obtain them for two minutes our Jose son of Arjuna said provided that he does not mention the exact price to him Mishnah you may go to the Tihum against nightfall in order to attend to the affairs of a bride or of a corpse to bring a coffin and shrouds for him if a Gentile brings reed pipes on the Sabbath one must not be well an Israelite on them unless they came from a near place if he a Gentile made a coffin for himself or dug a grave for himself an Israelite may be buried therein but if he made it for the sake of an Israelite he may never be buried therein tomorrow what does from a near place mean Rab said literally from a near place while Samuel said we conjecture that they, the reed pipes were just without the city wall during the night Rab said the deduction of our Mishnah supports Samuel for it is stated if he a Gentile made a coffin for himself or dug a grave for himself an Israelite may be buried therein this proves that it is permitted on account of a doubt so here to it is permitted on account of a doubt and we learned in accordance with Rab to a city inhabited by Israelites and Gentiles which contains baths where there is bathing on the Sabbath if the majority are Gentiles one an Israelite may bathe therein immediately if the majority are Israelites one must wait until hot water could be heated if half and half one must wait until hot water could be heated our Judah said in the case of a small bath if there is there a man of authority he an Israelite may bathe therein immediately what is a man of authority said Rab Judah in the name of our Isaac son of Rab Judah if there is there an important personage who possesses ten slaves who he ten kettles of water for him simultaneously then if it is a small bath he the Israelite may bathe therein immediately if he a Gentile made a coffin for himself or dug a grave for himself etc yet why so here to let him wait until it could be made settle it refers to one a grave that stands in an Army camp that is well of a grave but what can be said of a coffin said Arabah refers to a coffin that is lying on his grave mission all the requirements of the dead may be done he may be anointed with oil and washed provided that no limb of his is moved the pillow may be removed from under him and he may be placed on sand in order that Talmud, Mosh should bath be he may be able to keep the jaw may be tied up not in order that it should close but that it should not go further open and likewise if a beam is broken it may be supported by a bench or bed staves not in order that it the break should close up but that it should go no further tomorrow but surely Rab Judah related in Samuel's name it once happened that a disciple of Armeir followed him into the baths and wished to swill the ground for him but he said to him one may not swill then he wished to oil the ground for him but he said to him one may not oil ground may be confused with ground but a corpse cannot be Confused with ground what does all add it adds the following which our rabbis taught cooling vessels and metal vessels may be brought and placed on his corpse's stomach in order that he should not swell and his apertures may be stopped up in order that the air should not enter and thus said Solomon too in his wisdom or ever the silver cord be snapped asunder this refers to the spinal cord and the golden bowl be broken this alludes to the membrum and the pitcher be broken at the fountain that means the stomach and the will broken at the cistern this refers to the excrements and thus it is said and I will spread dung on your faces even the dung of your feasts are who not other state Arhega said this refers to people who abandon study and spend all their days at feasts are Levi said in our pappy's name and our Joshua's name after three days from death the stomach bursts and its contents lies cast out before his face and exclaims take what you have put in me mission one may not close the eyes of a corpse on the Sabbath nor on weekdays when he is about to die and he who closes the eyes of a dying person at the point of death is a murderer Gemara our rabbis taught he who closes the eyes of a dying man at the point of death is a murderer this may be compared to a lamp that is going out if a man places his finger upon it it is immediately extinguished it was taught our Simeon B. Gamaliel said if one desires that a dead man's eyes should close let him blow one into his nostrils and apply oil between his two eyelids and hold his two big toes then they close of their own accord it was taught our Simeon B. Gamaliel said for a day old infant the Sabbath is desecrated for David king of Israel dead the Sabbath must not be desecrated for a day old infant the Sabbath is desecrated the Torah ordered desecrate one Sabbath on his account so that he may keep many Sabbaths for David king of Israel dead the Sabbath must not be desecrated once man dies he is free from all obligations and thus are you had and interpreted among the dead I am free once a man is dead he is free from religious duties it was further taught our Simeon B. Eliezer said a day old infant alive need not be guarded from weasels or mice but a king of Bashan dead needs guarding from weasels and mice as it is said and the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth as long as a man is alive his fear lies upon dumb creatures once he dies his fear ceases our papa said we hold as tradition that a lion does not attack two persons together but we see that it does that is explained as Rami B. Abba for Rami B. Abba said a beast has no power over man until it appears to it as an animal for it is said man that is in honor and understandeth not is like the beast that perish our Hannah said one may not sleep in a house alone and whoever sleeps in a house alone is seized by Lilith it was further taught our Simeon B. Eliezer said perform righteousness and charity. Whilst thou canst find an object for thy charity has the opportunity and it is yet in thy power and Solomon in his wisdom too said remember also that greater in the days of thy youth or ever the evil days come this refers to the days of old age and the years draw nigh when thou shalt say I have no pleasure in them this refers to the messianic era wherein there is neither merit nor guilt now he disagrees with Samuel who said the only difference between this world and the messianic era is in respect of servitude to foreign powers for it is said for the poor shall never cease out of the land it was taught our Eliezer Hakapper said let one always pray to be spared this fate poverty for if he does not descend to poverty his son will and if not his son his grandson for it is said because that for by galal this thing etc the school of our Ishmael taught it is a will galal that revolves in the world our Joseph said we hold as tradition that a rabbinical student will not suffer Poverty, but we see that he does suffer poverty. Even if he suffers poverty,
Shall I suffer two evils? He retorted bereavement and blindness. He held as our Yohanan said in the name of our Jose, the son of Alondris. There are six kinds of tears, three being beneficial and three harmful. Those caused by smoke weeping Talmud, Mosh of Bathe and the Privy are harmful. Those caused by chemicals, laughter or plants are beneficial in the day when the keeper of the house shall tremble and the strong men shall bow themselves, etc. In the day when the keeper of the house shall tremble. These are the flank sides and the ribs and the strong men shall bow themselves. The legs and the grinders cease the teeth and those that look out of the windows darken the eyes. The emperor asked our Joshua Behanani, why did you not attend the Bubidin? The mountain is snowy, it is surrounded by ice. The dog does not bark and the grinders do not grind. He replied, the school of Rab was wont to say what I did not lose. I seek it was taught our Jose because said two are better than three and woe four. The one thing that goes and does not return what is that said our Hisdawan's youth when our Dimi came he said youth is a crown of roses old age is a crown of willowrods it was taught in our Meir's name chew well with your teeth and you will find it in your steps as it is said for then we had plenty of victuals and were well and saw no evil Samuel said to Rab Judah O'Keen scholar open your mouth and let your food enter until the age of forty food is more beneficial than sport drink is more beneficial a certain eunuch Gaza said to our Joshua Bikar Havald head how far is it from here to Karan Havald town as far as from here to Gaza in a eunuch town he replied said the Sadducee to him Havald buck is worth four denarii a goat if castrated is worth eight he retorted now he the Sadducee saw that he our Joshua was not wearing shoes whereupon he remarked he who rides on a horse is a king upon an ass is a free man and he who has shoes on his feet is a human being but he who has none of these one who is dead and buried is better off. O eunuch, O eunuch, he retorded, You have enumerated three things to me, and now you will hear three things. The glory of a face is its beard, the rejoicing of one's heart is a white, the heritage of the Lord is children. Blessed be the omnipresent who has denied you all these, O quarrelsome bald head. He jeered at him, a castrated buck, and you will reprove. He retorted, Rabbi, ask our Simeon, be he laughed, why were we not permitted to receive you on? The festival, as my ancestors used to receive your ancestors, the rocks have grown tall, the near have become distant, two have turned into three, and the peacemaker of the home has ceased, he replied, and the doors shall be shut in the streets. This refers to the apertures of man when the sound of the grinding is low on account of the stomachs failing to digest, and one shall rise up at the voice of a bird, even the bird will awake him from sleep, and all the daughters of the music shall be brought low. Even the voices of male singers and female singers sound to him like a whisper, and thus too did Barzilla the Jalidite say to David, I am this day four score years old, can I discern between good and bad? This shows that the opinions of old men are changeable, changed, can thy servant taste what I eat or drink? This shows that the lips of old men grow slack, can I hear any more the voice of singing men and singing women? This proves that the ears of old men are heavy, Rab said Barzilla the Jalidite. Was a liar, for there was a servant in Rab's house, ninety-two years old, who could taste the dish. Yes, Rabbah said Barzilla the Jalidite was steeped in lewdness, and whoever is steeped in lewdness, old age hastens upon him, and was taught our Ishmael son of our Jose said, As for scholars, the older they grow, the more wisdom they acquire, for it is said, with aged men is wisdom, and in length of days understanding, but the ignorant as they wax older become more foolish, for it is said, he removeth the speech of the trusty and taketh away the understanding of the elders, yet he shall be afraid of that which is high, even a small knoll looks to him like the highest of mountains, and terrors shall be in the way when he walks on a road, his heart is filled with fears, and the almond tree shall blossom, that refers to the coccyx, and the grasshopper shall be a burden, the rump, and desire shall fail, the passions, Arkahana was expounding a portion of scripture before Rab, when he came to this verse, he Rab, uttered alongside, this shows that Rab's desires have ceased, observed, he Arkahana said what is meant by, for he decreed, and it was this refers to a woman, he commanded, and it did stand, this refers to children, a tanda taught, though a woman be as a pitcher full of filth, and her mouth be full of blood, yet all speed after her, because man goeth to his long home, our Isaac observed, this teaches that every righteous person is given a habitation as befits his honor, this may be compared to a king who Enters a town together with his servants, they all enter through the same gate, yet when they spend the night there, each is given a lodging as befits its honor. Our Isaac also said, What means the verse for youth and the prime of life are vanity? The things a man does in his youth blacken his face in his old age. Our Isaac also said, Worms are as painful to the dead as a needle in the flesh of the living, for it is said, But his flesh upon him hath pain. Our Hisdah said, A man's soul mourns for him after death seven whole days, for it is said, And his soul mourneth for him, and it is written, And he made a mourning for his father seven days. Rab Judah said, If there are none to be comforted for a dead person, ten people go and sit in his place. A certain man died in the neighborhood of Rab Judah, as there were none to be comforted. Talmud, Mosh of Bath, be Rab Judah assembled ten men every day, and they sat in his place. After seven days, he the dead man appeared to him in a dream and said to him, Mind be at rest for thou hast set my mind at rest. Our Rabbi said the dead man knows all that is said in his presence until the top stone Golal closes the grave. Our high and our Simeon be Rabbi differ therein one maintains until the top stone closes the grave whilst the other says until the flesh rots away. He who says until the flesh rots away because it is written but his flesh upon him hath pain and his soul within him mourneth. He who says until the top stone closes the grave because it is written and the dust returned to the earth as it was and the spirit returned unto God. Our Rabbis taught and the dust returned to the earth as it was and the spirit returned unto God who gave it render it back to him as he gave it to thee of his impurity. So do thou return it in purity. This may be compared to a mortal king who distributed royal apparel to his servants. The wise among them folded it up and laid it away in a chest whereas the fools among them went and did their work in them after a Time the king demanded his garments, the wise among them returned them to him immaculate, but the fools among them returned them soiled. The king was pleased with the wise, but angry with the fools of the wise. He said, Let my robes be placed in my treasury, and they can go home in peace. While of the fools, he said, Let my robes be given to the fuller, and let them be confined in prison. Thus too with the holy one, blessed be he concerning the bodies of the righteous. He says, He entereth into peace. They rest in their beds while concerning their souls. He says, Yet the soul of my lord shall be bound up in the bundle of life with the Lord thy God. But concerning the bodies of the wicked, he says, There is no peace at the Lord unto the wicked while concerning their souls. He says, And the souls of thine enemies, them shall he sling out as from the hollow of a sling. It was taught our Eliezer said, The souls of the righteous are hidden under the throne of glory, as it is said, Yet the soul of thine lord shall be bound up in the bundle of life, but those of the wicked continue to be imprisoned while one angel stands at one end of the world and a second stands at the other end and they sling their souls to each other for it is said and the souls of thine enemies them shall he sling out as from the hollow of a sling. Rabbi asked Arnaman what about those who are intermediate had I died I could not have told you this he replied thus did Samuel say both these and those the wicked and the intermediate are delivered to doom of these enjoy rest whereas the others have no rest. Armari said even the righteous are fated to be dust for it is written and the dust returned to the earth as it was certain diggers were digging in Arnaman's ground when Arahabi Josiah snorted at them so they went and told Arnaman a man snorted at us he went and asked him who are you I am Ahabi Josiah but did not Armari say even the righteous are fated to be dust said he but who is Mari he retorted I do. Not know him yet, surely a verse is written, and the dust returns to the earth as it was he urged. He who taught you Ecclesiastes did not teach you Proverbs. He answered, For it is written, But envy is the rottenness of the bones. He who has envy in his heart, his bones rot away. But he who has no envy in his heart, his bones do not rot away. He then felt him and perceived that there was substance in him. Let my master arise and come to my house. He invited him. You have thus disclosed that you have not even studied the prophets. For it is written, And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I'll open your grave, said he to him. But it is written, For dust art thou, and unto dust thou shalt return. That means one hour before the resurrection of the dead, replied he. A certain Sadducee said to Arab, Have you maintained that the souls of the righteous are hidden under the throne of glory? Then how did the bone practicing necromancer bring up Samuel
what day he will die, then all the more reason that he repent today. He replied, lest he die tomorrow, and thus his whole life is spent in repentance. And Solomon too said in his wisdom, let thy garments be always white, and let not thy head lack ointment. Are you and Bezak? I said this may be compared to a king who summoned his servants to a banquet without appointing a time. The wise ones adorned themselves and sat at the door of the palace. For said, is anything lacking in a royal palace? The fools went about their work, saying, Can there be a banquet without preparation? Suddenly the king desired the presence of his servants. The wise entered, adorned while the fools entered. Soiled, the king rejoiced at the wise, but was angry with the fools. Those who adorned themselves for the banquet ordered he let them sit and drink, but those who did not adorn themselves for the banquet let them stand and watch. Armadier son in law said in Armadier's name, then they too would merely look as being. In attendance, but both sit the former eating and the latter hungering, the former drinking and the latter thirsting, for it is said, Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, my servants shall eat, but ye shall be hungry, behold, my servants shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty, behold, my servants shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed, behold, my servants shall sing for joy of heart, but ye shall cry for sorrow of heart. Another interpretation, let thy garments be always white, this refers to fringes, and let not thy head lack ointment to tefillin, chapterxxiv, mission, if darkness falls upon the person on a road, he entrusts his purse to a Gentile, but if there is no Gentile with him, he places it on the ass when he reaches the outermost courtyard, he removes the objects which may be handled on the Sabbath, whilst as for those which may not be handled on the Sabbath, he unties the cords and the sacks fall off automatically tomorrow, why did the rabbis permit him to entrust his purse to a Gentile? The rabbis knew for certain that no man will restrain himself where his money is concerned. If you do not permit it to him, he will come to carry it for cubits in public ground. Rabbis said his purse only, but not something found that is obvious. For we learned his purse. You might say the same law applies even to a fine. And why does he mention his purse as a natural course? Therefore, he informs us that it is not so yet. We said this only where it did not come into his possession before the Sabbath. But if it came into his possession, it is the same as his purse. Other state rabbis asked, what about a fine that came into his possession before nightfall? Since it came into this possession, it is the same as his purse. Or perhaps since he had no trouble over it, it is not the same as his purse. The question stands over if there is no gentile with him, etc. The reason is that there is no gentile with him. But if there is a gentile with him, he must give it to him. What is the reason as for an as you are under an obligation that it should rest, but as for a Gentile, you are under no obligation to ensure that he should rest. If there is an ass and a deaf mute imbecile or minor, he must place it on the ass and not give it to the deaf mute imbecile or minor. What is the reason the latter are human beings, whereas the former is not in the case of a deaf mute and an imbecile, he must give it to the imbecile in the case of an imbecile and a minor to the imbecile. The scholars asked, What of a deaf mute and a minor on Aralizer's view? There is no question for it was taught. Our Isaac said in Aralizer's name, the Terima of a deaf mute Talmud, Mosh of Bathby does not refer to Holland because it is doubtful. The question is on the rabbi's view, for we learned five must not separate Terima, and if they do, their separation is not valid, and these are the deaf mute imbecile minor one who separates Terima on produce that is not his and a Gentile who separates Terima on. Israelites produce even with the latter's permission his separation is not valid what then must he give it to the deaf mute seeing that the minor will arrive at understanding or perhaps he must give it to the minor because a deaf mute may be confused with an intelligent adult some rule he must give it to the deaf mute others maintain he must entrust it to the minor what if neither a gentile and as a deaf mute an imbecile nor a minor is there are Isaac said there was yet another expedient but the sages did not wish to reveal it what was the other expedient one may carry it in stretches of less than four cubits at a time why were the sages unwilling to reveal it because it is the glory of God to conceal a thing but the glory of kings is to search out a matter yet what glory of God is there here lest one come to carry it four cubits in public ground it was taught our Eliezer said on that day they overfilled the measure our Joshua said on that day they made the measure deficient it was taught as an illustration what does this resemble on our Eliezer's view a basket full of cucumbers and gourds a man puts mustard grain therein and it holds it as an illustration what does this resemble on our Joshua's view a tub full of honey if one puts pomegranates and nuts therein it the tub overflows the master said if there is no gentile with him he places it on his ass but he thereby leads a laden ass whereas scripture saith in it thou shalt not do any work thou nor thy cattle said our Abba Abba he places it upon her while she is walking but it is impossible that she shall not stop for the calls of nature and so there is removing and depositing when she is walking he places it upon her and when she stops he removes it from her if so the same may be done even to his neighbor to our papa answered where one is liable to a sin offering in his own case in the case of his neighbor though he is not culpable nevertheless it is forbidden and wherever in the case of one's neighbor he is not culpable though it is forbidden in the case of one's ass it is permitted at the outset our Abba Abba said if one's bundle is lying on his shoulder he must run with it until he arrives home he may only run but not walk leisurely what is the reason since he has nothing to mark a distinction he will come to perform removing and depositing yet after all when he arrives at the house it is impossible that he shall not stop for a moment and so he carries it from public to private ground he throws it in a backhanded manner Rami Bihama said if one leads a laden ass on the Sabbath unwittingly he is liable to a sin offering if deliberately he is liable to stoning what is the reason said rabble because scripture said thou shalt not do any work thou nor thy cattle his cattle is assimilated to himself just as when he himself does work if unwittingly he is liable to a sin offering if deliberately he is liable to stoning so when he works with his Cattle too, if unwittingly he is liable to a sin offering, if deliberately he is liable to stoning rob. Observe, there are two objections to this. Firstly, because it is written, Ye shall have one law for him that doth not unwittingly, but the soul that doth not with a high hand, etc. All laws are assimilated to idolatry, just as in the case of idolatry, he personally performs an action. So here too, one does not incur a sin offering unless he personally performs work. Moreover, we learned he who desecrates the Sabbath is stoned, provided that it is an offense punished by stoning if deliberate and by a sin offering. If unwitting, hence it follows that there is an offense for which if done unwittingly, one does not incur a sin offering nor stoning if deliberate. And what is that surely leading a laden ass? No, the violation of the human in accordance with our Akiva's view or kindling in accordance with our Hosea's view. Talmud, Mosh of Bath A R Z, but recited it thus. Rami Bihama said, if one. Leads a laden ass on the Sabbath if unwittingly he does not incur a sin offering if deliberately he is liable to stoning rob objected he who desecrates the Sabbath by an offense for which if unwitting a sin offering is incurred if deliberate he is liable to stoning hence if one does not incur a sin offering when it is unwitting there is no stoning when it is deliberate does he detain it and teach hence if one does not incur a sin offering etc surely he says thus every offense for which if unwitting one is liable to a sin offering if deliberate he is liable to stoning yet there is an offense for which if unwitting a sin offering is not incurred nevertheless if deliberate one is liable to stoning and what is it leading a laden ass rob the brother of Armari B. Rachel other state the father of Armari B. Rachel on the second version there is a difficulty that Rab declared Armari B. Rachel eligible to hold office and appointed him one of the collectors of Babylonia perhaps. There were two men of the name of Mari B. Rachel recited this discussion in our Yohanan's name teaching non-culpability. Thus our Yohanan said if one drives a laden animal on the Sabbath he is not culpable at all. If it is unwitting he does not incur a sin offering because the whole Torah is assimilated to idolatry. If deliberate he is not culpable because we learned he who desecrates the Sabbath is stoned provided that it is an offense for which a sin offering is incurred. If it is unwitting and stoning if it is deliberate hence if the unwitting offense does not involve a sin offering the deliberate offense does not involve stoning neither is he liable for the violation of a negative precept because it is a negative precept for which a warning of capital punishment at the hands of Beth Din may be given and for such there is no flagellation Talmud, Mosh of Bath B. And even on the view that we do flagellate in such a case let the divine law write thou shalt not do any work nor thy Cattle why state thou to teach only when he person
cords so that the sacks would fall off the cords containers would burst then he should have brought mattresses and pillows and placed them beneath them they would become soiled and he would deprive a utensil of its readiness for use but there was suffering of dumb animals he holds that the suffering of dumb animals is only rabbinically forbidden have they found rabble letting a son glide down the back of an asset he to him you are making use of dumb creatures on the sabbath is but on the sides of the animal he replied and in that case the rabbis did not impose an interdict how do you know it because we learned he unties the cords and the sacks fall off automatically does that not refer to a pair of coupled haver sacks no a balanced load is meant alternatively it means where the sacks are fastened by a bolt he raised an objection if two walls are made by man and the third is on a tree it is valid but one must not ascend enter therein on the festival does that not mean that one made groups on the tree so that it is the sides only that would be used and thus the sides are forbidden no it means that he bent over the branches of the tree and placed the roofing upon it so that he makes use of the tree if so consider the second clause if three are made by man and the fourth is in a tree it is valid and one may ascend therein on the festival but if he bent over the tree why may he ascend therein on the festival then what would you that the sides are forbidden and still the question remains why may one ascend therein on the festival but there it treats of spreading branches and the tree itself was merely made a wall this may be proved too for he states this is the general rule wherever at the sukkah can stand if the tree were removed one may ascend therein on the festival this proves it shall we say that this is dependent on tanaim for it was taught one may not ascend therein on the festival are simian b eliezer said in our mayors name one may ascend therein on the festival is that not to be explained that they differ in this is one master holds the sides are forbidden while the other master holds the sides are permitted said they know all hold that the sides are forbidden but here they differ in respect of the sides of the sides one master holds the sides of the sides are forbidden while the other master holds the sides of the sides are permitted rabba maintained he who forbids the sides forbids the sides of the sides Two while he who permits the sides of the sides permits the sides to our measure raised an objection to Rabbah if one drives Talmud, Mosh of Bath a peg in a tree and hangs a basket thereon above ten handbreadths from the ground his Arab is not an Arab below ten handbreadths his Arab is an Arab thus it is only because he fixed a peg in the tree but if he did not even if it is below ten handbreadths his Arab is not an Arab thus this tana forbids the sides yet permits the indirect use of the sides said our Papa here we treat of a narrow mouth basket so that in taking out the Arab he sways the tree and thus makes use of the tree itself now the law is that the sides are forbidden but the sides of the sides are permitted our Ashi said now that you have ruled that the sides are forbidden one must not rest the lodge ladder on the palm tree because that is tantamount to the use of the sides of the trees but he must rest it on pegs without the tree and when he ascends he should Place his foot not on the picks but on the rungs mission bundles pekai of sheep may be untied for cattle and bunches given may be spread out but not small bundles iron neither fodder nor carobs may be chopped up for cattle whether small or large are Judah permits in the case of carobs for small cattle gemara arhuna said pekai and kippen are identical save that pekai are two bunches tied together while kippen are three iron are young shoots of cedar trees and this is what he the tana teaches bundles pekai of sheep may be untied for cattle and they may be spread and the same applies to kippen but not to iron which may neither be spread out nor untied are his da said what is arhuna's reason he holds that we may indeed take trouble over natural foodstuffs but we may not turn something into foodstuffs rab Judah said pekai and iron are identical save that pekai are two bunches tied together while iron are three kippen are young cedar shoots and this is what he teaches bundles pekai of sheep may be untied for cattle but not spread out but as for kippen they may indeed be spread out but not iron which it is not permitted to spread out but merely to untie rabba said what is rab judah's reason he holds that we may indeed turn something into fodder but may not take trouble over fodder we learned neither fodder nor carobs may be chopped up for cattle whether small or large surely it means carobs like fodder just as fodder is soft so our soft carobs meant thus proving that we may not take trouble over what is food stuff in any case which refutes arhuna arhuna can answer you know fodder like carobs just as carobs are hard so hard fodder is meant where is that possible in the case of very young foals come and here our judah permits in the case of carobs for small cattle thus only for small but not for large now it is well if you agree that the first tana holds that we may not take trouble over food stuff, yet we may turn Something into foodstuffs hence our Judah argues that cutting up carobs for small cattle is also an act of turning it into fodder but if you maintain that the first tana holds that we may not turn not into fodder yet we may take trouble over fodder then our Judah permits in the case of carobs for small cattle only all the more so for large cattle do you think that daka small is literally meant no by daka large cattle is meant yet why is it called daka because it grinds. Daka is food but since the first clause states whether small or large it follows that our Judah means literally small this is indeed a difficulty come and here one may cut up Talmud, Mosh of Bath be gourds for cattle and a carcass for dogs surely fit means gourds like a carcass just as a carcass is soft so our soft gourds meant which proves that we may take trouble over foodstuffs which refutes Rab Judah Rab Judah can answer you know a carcass like gourds just as gourds are hard so a hard. Carcass is meant and where is it possible in the case of split meat or in the case of very young dogs come and here for our hand of Nihar he recited one may break up straw and corn fodder and mix them together this proves that we may take trouble over fodder straw means putrefying straw is for corn fodder the reference is to young foals mission one must not stuff a camel with food nor cram it but one may put food into its mouth and one must not fatten calves but one may put food into their mouth and fowls may be made to take up food water may be poured into bread but we may not mix it into a mass and water may not be placed for bees or for doves in a dove coat but it may be placed before geese fowls and hardish and doves tomorrow what does one must not stuff of and mean said Rab Judah one must not make a manger of us in its stomach is such possible even so and as our Jeremiah of Diffie related I myself saw a certain Arab feed it with a core and loaded with a core one must not Fatten mom iron what is hamra and what is halata said Rab Judah hamra is forcing the food so far that it cannot return halata is only so far that it can return our hisda said both mean so far that it cannot return but hamra is done with a utensil while halata is by hand our Joseph objected one may force fowls to take food mehokadin and it is superfluous to state that we may fatten mokadin them but one may not fatten mokadin the doves of the dove coat or of it loft and it is superfluous to state that we may not force them mehokadin what is mehokadin and what is mokadin shall we say that mehokadin is hand feeding while mokadin is throwing grain etc in front of them once it follows that one may not even cast grain before the doves of the dove coat or of the loft hence mehokadin is surely forcing food so far down that it cannot return while mokadin is only so far that it can return from this it follows that hamra means stuffing with a utensil which refutes Rab Judah, Rab Judah can answer you in truth. Mehokadin means feeding by hand, while Mokadin means casting the food before them. But as to your difficulty, is it then not even permitted to cast food before the doves of the dovecote and of the loft? That indeed is so. For you are responsible for the food of the former sea fowls, but not for that of the latter. Even as it was taught, food may be placed before a dog, but not before a swine. And what is the difference between them? You are responsible for the food of the one, but you are not responsible for the food of the other. Our Ashi said, our mission to implies this water may not be placed for bees or for doves in a dovecote, but it may be placed before geese fowls and hardish and doves. What is the reason? Is it not because you are responsible for the food of the former, but you are not responsible for the food of the latter? But according to your reasoning, why particularly water, even wheat and barley, too may. Not be placed before them, rather say water is different because it is found in pools. Our Jonah lectured at the entrance to the Nasai's Academy what is meant by the verse the righteous knoweth the cause of the poor, the holy one blessed be he knoweth that a dog's food is scanty, therefore he makes him retain his food in his stomach for three days as we learned how long shall the food remain in its stomach and yet defile in the case of a dog three full days of twenty four hours while in the case of birds or fish as long as it would take for it the food to fall into the fire and be burnt. Our Hamna said this proves that it is the proper thing to throw raw meat to a dog and how much
Said Aristot Talmud, Mas Shabbat it is our Jose son of Arjuna but that is only if one does it in an unusual manner how does one do it in an unusual manner said Aristot little by little yet they agree that Shittai may be stirred round on the Sabbath and Egyptian beer may be drunk but you said that we must not mix there is no difficulty the one treats of a thick mass the other of a loose one and that is only if he does it in an unusual manner how does one do it in an unusual manner said R. Joseph during the week the vinegar is first poured in and then the Shittai whereas on the Sabbath the Shittai is first poured in and then the vinegar Levi son of Arhuna Bihai found on Sabbath the mixer of his father's household mashing up bran and feeding the oxen thereupon he rebuked him and his father came and found him there said he to him thus did your maternal grandfather visar Jeremiah B. Abbasay in Rab's name one may mash bran but not force it on the animal and if it the animal cannot take it the fodder up with its tongue one may feed it provided however that it is done in an unusual manner how does one do it in an unusual manner said Aryamar B. Shalmiya in Rab's name by stirring it crosswise but he cannot mix it well then said Rab Judah he shakes up the vessel itself it was recorded in Z.E.I.R.I.'s notebook I asked my teacher Bizar what about kneading it is forbidden replied he what about emptying it is permitted he answered Arminasiya said it is well to place one measure of food for one animal and two for two but to place three measures for two animals is forbidden our Jose said a cab and even two cabs may be said well said a core and even two core it was recorded in Levi's notebook I spoke to my teacher Bizar holy master about those who mix Shittai in Babylonia and my teacher Bizar holy master protested vociferously against the practice of mixing Shittai but none heeded him and he lacked the power to forbid it on Account of our Jose B. Judah it was recorded in our Joshua B. Levi's notebook he who was born on the first day of the week Sunday shall be a man without one thing in him what does without one thing in him mean shall we say without one virtue surely our Ashi said I was born on the first day of the week hence it must surely mean one vice but surely our Ashi said I and Dimi B. Kakistel were born on the first day of the week I am a king and he is a captain of Thebes rather it means either completely virtuous or completely wicked what is the reason because light and darkness were created on that day he who was born on the second day of the week will be bad tempered what is the reason because the waters were divided thereon he who was born on the third day of the week will be wealthy and unchanged asked what is the reason because herbs were created thereon he who was born on the fourth day of the week will be wise and of retentive memory what is the reason because the luminaries were Suspended thereon he who was born on the fifth day of the week will practice benevolence what is the reason because the fishes and birds were created thereon he who was born on the eve of the Sabbath will be a seeker Arnam and B. Isaac commented a seeker after good deeds he who was born on the Sabbath will die on the Sabbath because the great day of the Sabbath was desecrated on his account Rabbi son of Arshila observed and he shall be called the great and holy man Arhanan said to then his disciples go out and tell the son of Levi not the constellation of the day but that of the hour is the determining influence he who was born under the constellation of the sun will be a distinguished man he will eat and drink of his own and his secrets will lie uncovered if a thief he will have no success he who was born under Venus will be wealthy and unchanged as tomorrow what is the reason because fire was created therein he who was born under Mercury will be of retentive memory and wise what is the reason because it Mercury is the sun scribe he who is born under the moon will be a man to suffer evil building and demolishing demolishing and building eating and drinking that which is not his and his secrets will remain hidden if a thief he will be successful he who is born under Saturn will be a man whose plans will be frustrated others say all nefarious designs against him will be frustrated he who is born under Zedek Jupiter will be a right doing man set in Arnam and B. Isaac observed right doing and good deeds he who is born under Mars will be a shedder of blood Arashi observed either a surgeon a thief a slaughterer or a circumcisor Abba said I was born under Mars Abba retorted you to inflict punishment and kill it was stated Arhanan said the planetary influence gives wisdom the planetary influence gives wealth and Israel stands under planetary influence Are Yohanan maintained Israel is immune from planetary influence now Are Yohanan is consistent with his View for Aryohanan said how do we know that Israel is immune from planetary influence because it is said thus saith the Lord learn not the way of the nations and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven for the nations are dismayed at them they are dismayed but not Israel Rab 2 holds that Israel is immune from planetary influence for Rab Judah said in Rab's name how do we know that Israel is immune from planetary influence because it is said and he brought him forth from abroad Abraham pleaded before the Holy One blessed be he sovereign of the universe one born in mine house is mine ear not so he replied but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowel sovereign of the universe cried he I have looked at my constellation and find that I am not fated to be a child go forth from my east planet gazing for Israel is free from planetary influence what is thy calculation Talmud Mosh of Bath be because Zedek Jupiter stands in the west I will turn it back and place it in the East and thus it is written who hath raised up Zedek from the east he hath summoned it for his sake from Samuel too we learn that Israel is immune from planetary influence for Samuel and Eblad were sitting while certain people were going to a lake said Eblad to Samuel that man is going but will not return for a snake will bite him and he will die if he is an Israelite replied Samuel he will go and return while they were sitting he went and returned thereupon Eblad arose and threw off his the man's knapsack and found a snake there and cut up and lying in two pieces said Samuel to him what did you do every day we pooled our bread and ate it but today one of us had no bread and he was ashamed said I to them I will go and collect the bread when I came to him I pretended to take bread from him so that he should not be ashamed you have done a good deed said he to him and Samuel went out and lectured but charity delivereth from death and this does not mean from it. Unnatural death, but from death itself, from our Akiba too, we learn that Israel is free from planetary influence. For our Akiba had a daughter. Now astrologers told him on the day she enters the bridal chamber, a snake will bite her and she will die. He was very worried about this. On that day of her marriage, she took a brooch and stuck it into the wall, and by chance it penetrated, sank into the eye of a serpent. The following morning, when she took it out, the snake came trailing after it. What did you do? Her father asked her. A poor man came to our door in the evening. She replied, and everybody was busy at the banquet, and there was none to attend to him. So I took the portion which was given to me and gave it to him. You have done a good deed, said he to her. Thereupon our Akiba went out and lectured, but charity delivereth from death, and not merely from an unnatural death, but from death itself, from our Naman B. Isaac too, we learn that Israel is free from planetary influence. For our Naman B. Isaac's mother was told by astrologers your son will be a thief so she did not let him be bareheaded saying to him cover your head so that the fear of heaven may be upon you and pray for mercy now he did not know why she spoke that to him one day he was sitting and studying under a palm tree temptation overcame him he climbed up and bit off a cluster of dates with his teeth mission cords may be cut up for cattle and a carcass for dogs Arjuna said if it was not nibbled by the eve of the Sabbath it is forbidden because it is not mukin gemara it was stated Nimani Karl S. Hazula said the Halachadis as Arjuna and Rab 2 holds that the Halachadis as Arjuna this follows from ship mattings which Rab forbids while Samuel permits and Levi 2 holds that the Halachadis as Arjuna for when a tirfa was brought before him on a festival he would not inspect it save when he sat by a dunghill for he said perhaps it will not be found fit in which case it is of no use even for dogs, but Samuel maintained the Halachadis as Arsimian and Zeiri two holds that the Halachadis as Arsimian. For we learned if an animal dies, it must not be moved from its place. And Zeiri interpreted this as referring to a sacred animal. But in the case of an ordinary animal, it is permitted. Are Yohanan two said the Halachadis as Arsimian. Yet did Are Yohanan say thus? Surely Are Yohanan ruled the Halachadis as an anonymous mission. And we learned Talmud, Mas Shabbat, one may not chop up wood from planks nor from a plank that is broken on a festival. Are Yohanan recited that as the ruling of our Jose Bijuda come and here one may commence with a heap of straw for fuel supplies, but not with the timber stored in the shed. The reference there is to cedar and Ashuhi planks. For in the case of Muksa, on account of monetary loss, even Arsimian agrees come and here pasture animals may not be watered and killed, but home animals may be watered and killed. Are Yohan
Permitted whether it is required for the Sabbath or not, whereas absolution may be granted only when it is necessary but not otherwise, and for that reason they are divided from each other, or perhaps annulment too is permitted only when it is necessary for the Sabbath but not otherwise, the reason that they are divided being that annulment does not require a Beth din, whereas absolution requires a Beth din, come and here for city of the school of our proper recited vows may be annulled on it. Sabbath when they are required for the Sabbath, thus only when required for the Sabbath but not otherwise, another version the scholars ask does when these are necessary relate to both but not when they are unnecessary, which proves that for the annulment of vows a period of 24 hours is given, or perhaps when these are necessary is stated in reference to absolution only, but the annulment of vows is permitted even when it is unnecessary, which proves that for the annulment of vows. The whole day only is given come and here for city of the school of our proper recited vows may be annulled on the Sabbath when they are required for the Sabbath only when required for the Sabbath but not otherwise which proves that for the annulment of vows a period of 24 hours is given said Arashi but we learned the period allowed for annulment of vows is the whole day this may result in greater stringency or greater leniency e.g. if she vows on Sabbath eve Friday night he can annul on the Sabbath eve and the Sabbath day if she vows just before nightfall he can annul only until the night for if darkness falls and he has not annulled it he can no longer do so it is dependent on tanaim the period for the annulling of vows is all day our Jose son of our Judah and our Eliezer son of our Simeon maintain 24 hours and absolution may be granted for vows etc the scholars ask is that only if one had no time before the Sabbath to seek absolution or perhaps it holds could even if one had time come and here for the rabbis gave a hearing to our zitra b our and absolved him of his vow though he did have time they closed up the window with a pitcher and tied a pot with a reed rope rab judah said in rab's name there was a small passage between two houses and an unclean object lay there talmud mosh bath b and a split barrel shaped defective roofing rested over them then they closed the window with a pitcher and tied a fire pot with a reed rope to ascertain whether the barrel shaped roofing had an opening of a handbreadth or not and from their words we learned that we may stop up a skylight and measure and tie on the sabbath Allah visited the home of the resh and sarab b who not sitting in a bathtub of water and measuring it said he to him say that the rabbis spoke thus of measuring in connection with the precept did they rule thus when it is not in connection with the precept i was merely occupying myself he replied